the heavens were unleashed, and a monstrously powerful strike shook the earth. The lightning strike was so strong that the rock split in two. There was a feeling that the gods themselves had descended from the heavens and were now destroying everything around them. Two people clutching their blades were fighting like beasts. The clang of metal could be heard everywhere, their swords clashing together as if in a monstrous dance. One of the opponents was thrown aside and crashed into the ground with great speed. The force of the impact was so tremendous that shards of stone flew in different directions. The battle didn't stop for a second. They were moving at a monstrous speed. The average human eye was unable to keep track of them. Blood spurted in different directions. One of the opponents still managed to strike. The man wheezed in pain. The sky lit up with the brightest flash. The two rivals landed on opposite sides of the ravine. The gray-bearded old man was breathing heavily and holding his hand in advance. He turned to his rival, saying that he was really capable of competing with him for the number one spot in this world. It's a pity he's too young. A sneer could be heard in his voice. Jiang Chen, a young boy dressed in a snow-white cloak. He stood with his hand around his sword, which glistened in the sun with its sharp blade. The guy looked at the old man with hatred. Blood spurted out of his mouth. His body couldn't take the strain, and he was about to faint. His hands loosened, and the sword began to fall slowly to the ground. The last thought that flashed through his hazy mind. It was a pity that he would never have the opportunity to learn the art of swordsmanship again. His face darkened. Consciousness slowly began to leave his mind. His legs shook. The guy was about to fall to the ground. But suddenly, a bright flash of pain pierced his body. Inside him, he only had regret that he had missed his chance. He would no longer be able to learn this art with the Azulet Sword Law. The sword fell to the ground with a resounding clang, still emanating a phantom magic aura. The sword blade stabbed into the ground and the ground shook with such power. Shards flew in every direction and even the air became heavier. The old man clenched his teeth, his eyes filled with rage. Out of his last strength, he tried to resist his opponent, but his body was already at its limit. The mountain split under the onslaught of incredible power. The earth was shaken by a monstrous impact, and sparks of bright light flew in different directions. The old man couldn't believe his eyes. He had broken through. Suddenly, a lump of dark energy pierced through his senile body. How was that possible? The exhausted body of the protagonist flew down, along with piles of stones from the destroyed rock. The guy couldn't do anything. His body didn't obey him. All he could do was fall down. In a few seconds, he would find himself in the water, and the rushing stream would pick him up. With his last strength, he shifted his gaze to the sky. His eyes were about to close, but he gathered his remaining strength. He saw that the sky had suddenly changed color. It went from blue to dark purple. Something was wrong. The last thing his fading consciousness saw was the sky being shaken by another flash of light. He saw the huge boulder falling after him. A second more and the huge stone block would crush him. But after a few seconds, the consciousness finally left his body. The guy plunged into the abyss of black nothingness. Was he really dead? That was the only question that bothered him now. His eyes slowly began to open. He heard a pleasant female voice, a girl inviting him to come with her. All he could see was some vague silhouette in front of him. His eyes finally opened wider, and he saw the beautiful face of the girl in front of him. She was smiling and looking at him happily. She said in a warm voice that it was time for dinner. Suddenly he discovered that he was completely naked and lying in a strange place. He looked unhappily at the girl and demanded that she take her huge breasts away from him. Aren't you ashamed? The girl looked at the baby with surprise and horror. A woman's frightened scream shook the cozy cottage. The whole village seemed to hear her voice. The boy rose from his seat and looked in surprise at the fleeing woman. She screamed so much that the young master began to talk. Her voice was filled with surprise and fear. Young master? The boy was surprised. What is she talking about? The boy examined himself carefully. And why is he so petty? Had he become a child? The protagonist shifted his gaze a little below his waist and suddenly saw something he didn't expect. The kid thought about it. The last thing he remembered was a deadly battle with Doug Kubay. They both ended up dead. Back then, the sky had also changed its color. 
The child opened his eyes wide with surprise. Had the sky changed? Had it really broken through? It was simply unimaginable. And besides, what kind of place is this? The boy looked around. The atmosphere here was kind of strange. Could this be another continent? He tried to climb out of his cradle and amusingly started twitching his legs. Even though he killed the old man, his remains are still there. We should hurry back to the sect. The boy didn't realize yet what amazing metamorphosis had happened to him. A voice came from far away. The person was saying that Sion was only six months old. How could he start talking? It was obviously about the protagonist. Suddenly, several people burst into the room. There was an adult bearded man in his 40s. He looked at the girl in surprise and irritation and asked her if she might be hallucinating because of breastfeeding. Behind him stood the same girl and another man, apparently a servant. The protagonist looked at them in surprise and told them to immediately return him to Tianjian Mountain. Apparently, he didn't realize what had happened to him yet. The man suddenly picked him up in his arms and started squeezing him happily, looking right at the protagonist. All the others began to rejoice, too. The man shouted that it looked like their family had a child chosen by the heavens. The boy tried his best to get out of the man's embrace, but he could not. What family? Where the hell is he? Let the people from immediately let him go. He needs to come home soon. The man didn't even seem to be listening to him, instead continuing to find the small infant pressing it against his face. The thick tickles were tickling his nose, too, and the baby was about to sneeze. He later learned that this was another world, and the place in which he was reborn was called the Tian Yuan Continent. Soon he found himself with his new family. He was born into the Changguan family and was the fourth master. Now he was in the arms of one of his relatives, who also did not let go of his tight squeeze. The guy didn't understand anything at all. There were many people crowded around him, each of them wanting to hug him for some reason. However, he has retained the memories from his past life. So while he tries to figure out how to go back, he should also start practicing the Azalet Sword Law again. It's been three years since the main character found himself with his new family. The family's holy power test had begun, and he believed that after these three years of training, he would be able to amaze everyone with his talent. The boy had dressed in his ceremonial warrior clothes, but it seemed to be too big on him, and now he looked rather ridiculous. He stood with his arms crossed over his chest, and all the members of his family were around him, looking at their young lord with rapt attention and asking him to demonstrate his strength. The boy glanced at them and thought to himself, doesn't he frighten them with his power? He stood in front of some idol and an old man standing a little distance away told the young gentleman to put his palm on the stone. The boy came still nearer and laid his palm on the hard surface of the idol. The stone glowed, and in the small opening appeared a symbol exuding a warm, bright light. The symbol looked like a whirlpool. The old man looked surprised and stunned at everything that was happening. The protagonist did not understand anything at all. He asked the old man with interest, what was the meaning of all this? The old man's face showed that something not very good had happened, and now he was trying to find the right words. After all, the old man said that it meant that the young master could no longer use the holy power. Well, this news was like a thunderclap. Not only the young master was shocked, but also everyone around him. But the old man went on as if he wasn't embarrassed at all. To put it simply, it meant that the young gentleman was completely talentless. The boy just didn't know what to say. He got goosebumps. It was like that. Everyone standing around him didn't give up hope. They said they would always support the young master no matter what. No wonder, after all, this was his family. No matter what, they would always continue to love him. Another old man looked at the young gentleman with tears in his eyes, hoping that now he would find the new chosen one of his house. But things were not so rosy. The test was completed, and it turned out that the young master could not have holy power. The old man was furious, and everyone around him was shocked to hear this verdict. Couldn't he cultivate holy power? This was simply unthinkable. On the podium stood another man dressed in ceremonial clothes. It was the father of the protagonist. He was watching the whole thing from above, with their family's coat of arms unfurled in the background. He interrogated, did the old man really think that young master couldn't cultivate holy power? There was anger in his voice, and it was obvious that the man was very unhappy about this fact. 
A young girl in her early twenties looked at the young master fearfully. This was the fourth wife of the family, Bi Yun Tian. The girl with the impressive cleavage watched the whole thing with apparent indifference. She seemed to be in the clouds, not caring at all. She was the family's third wife named Bai Yu Shuang. The young gentleman looked at the old man with displeasure and asked, Is he a cripple? That can't be. The stone must have been broken. The boy tried hard not to believe that it really happened. The old man nodded his head and said that in that case they would do the test again. His eyes lit up with fire. It was a look of discernment. He could use it to find out if a person could possess the holy power. There was silence again, and his father was watching the process, clearly worried. He would hate to realize that his son had been born so untalented. When he had finished the dough, the old man sighed heavily again. Apparently, the result was no longer comforting. The guy scratched the back of his head and asked worriedly, Well, what's wrong here? They will not make another check? The old man turned to the head of the household and said that he had carefully checked the body of the young master. But there was no saint power there. He really can't cultivate. The master was furious. He was slowly boiling over. The fourth wife stood beside him and looked forward fearfully. She did not understand. How could this be possible? The third wife feignedly took hold of her head and shook it in different directions. She asked, how could a genius who enjoyed unlimited resources in the family be so useless? She was clearly mocking. The woman walked up to her master in his arms and began to speak loudly. She addressed all the people present. Did they hear that? Their master is no longer a genius. Why don't they take down all these shameful posters? It's a disgrace. The servant waved his hands, ordering everyone to remove the posters they had brought to support the young master. Now they had to clean themselves of this shame somehow. At this time, the young master didn't understand anything. All these years he had practiced the sword law every day. How could he not have saint power when he had already made significant progress? The essence here was more dense than in his world, so cultivation should be more fruitful as well. So what was the problem? But then a hunch popped into his head. The first level of the law of the sword is to refine the body, so he combined it with his holy power for quality purification. Maybe that's why they think there is no holy power inside him. Now, it seemed to make sense to him. He clapped his little chopsticks. She began to time to prove that he was not a mediocrity. Time, the third wife of the family, approached her master and said that since Xi'an cannot wield the holy power and has become crippled, the future of the family lies with another person. But the man ordered her to stop. He understood everything perfectly well himself. He turned around and frowned as he headed back to his quarters. Today, all the resources allocated to Xiang Tian will be transferred to Keir, and the money allocated to the fourth wife will be halved. The guy heard all that because he was made to look like a cripple. His attitude changed immediately. That's so mean. The son and father's gaze crossed. The man looked very angry and unhappy with today's procedure. But there was nothing the young lord could do about it. All he had to do was accept the fact that he was now an outcast. The head of the household ordered everyone to disperse. We're done for the day. The third wife approached the fourth wife and as if mocking her said that she had raised such a worthless son. It must be very hard for her now. The woman did not feel any pity for her but only laughed at her. The old man shook his head and told the young master not to blame the head of the family for such a cruel decision. After all, the man was responsible for the whole family. The boy nodded his head and said he understood. The boy thought about it and tried to stifle the resentment in him. He realized that the head of the family had his reasons, and he had his own now. Maybe it was even better this way. Everyone had already slowly begun to disperse, and only the fourth wife remained, still standing in her seat looking at her son. The guy walked up to her. The woman was clearly upset. They both had downcast looks. Everyone realized that things were not going to change for the better after this incident. The boy continued to look down. He almost cried and quietly told his mother that he had failed her, and now he was very ashamed. The woman looked at him still with the same motherly gaze that had an incredible amount of warmth in it. So what if he can't cultivate? There was nothing wrong with that. So his son must have other talents in other fields. When the time comes, he'll show everyone what he's worth. The woman smiled and tried to encourage her son. 
She clenched her hand into a fist and ordered him not to get upset. His mama was always there for him, and she wouldn't let anyone hurt her son. The woman put her arm around him, and now he felt completely safe. She was the one person who loved him unconditionally, no matter what. The woman came to see him and told him that I was the best son she had ever had. The boy broke out of her embrace and told his mom not to worry. Now he had made up his mind. The woman looked at her little son in surprise. There was an incredible amount of confidence in the boy's eyes. He said no way would he disappoint his mom a second time. Even if it's for his mom's sake, he will shut up anyone who goes against him. The woman smiled warmly at him once more. Of course, his mom would always have faith in him. The boy frowned and clenched his fist. In that moment, he had decided everything. He would use his knowledge and power to change the minds of these snobs. The boy sneaked into the library of Changguan House at night when everyone was asleep and began to absorb the knowledge written in the ancient scriptures, a large ball that was meant to collect energy. The boy had turned seven years old, and now he sat in the library and one by one studied books to absorb as much energy cultivation knowledge as possible. The boy slammed the book shut and sighed heavily. This was the last book. He had read over 1,000 books in this library. His head was aching from the overabundance of knowledge. He got to his feet. Well, he could try combining the techniques from the library with the laws of the ball and see how strong he would be now. Magical energy began to swirl around him, completely engulfing his body. He concentrated all his strength in his hand to demonstrate how strong a punch he now possessed. Swinging, the boy prepared to strike. The vortex began to swirl around, and there was a bright flash of magical light. The place where the boy had struck had a mark from his little palm, with cracks spreading out in different directions. The boy clenched his fist. He was definitely happy with the result. Three years ago, he had merged his body with holy power, and he no longer needed to expend it on his tempering. His cultivation was now progressing very quickly. Everyone around him was asleep, and only the boy continued to train, strengthening his skills each time. No one saw him, so he could concentrate completely on his training and cultivation. He peered cautiously out from behind the door jam. It was almost dawn. Gotta get back to his mother. She can't know he's practicing in secret. He had to be as careful as possible not to arouse suspicion. He went back to his mother's room. It was empty. The room was in semi-darkness. The woman was standing at the table doing something. The boy sat down beside her. In a small, neat plate, slices of cucumber were arranged in two lines. The woman reached over and carefully took one of them. She said, the boy needs something to remember. Her voice sounded tinkly and cheerful. A woman stuck some cucumbers on her face. From the side, she looked funny. The boy even almost laughed. The woman spoke in a warm, motherly voice. She said that no matter how dire the circumstances, and her son should be a man of high standards. She began to mold cucumbers on his face. The boy looked at her so pitifully that even the hardest heart could melt. He apologized to his mother and said that if he hadn't been crippled, she wouldn't have had to suffer so much. The woman smiled and told the boy not to talk nonsense. Just let him listen to her carefully. The woman smiled and began massaging her cheeks. The boy followed her example. Even though it's primitive food, it's still good for your health. Cucumbers are great for removing fat. Two birds with one stone, isn't that right? The girl thought for a moment and said that she had heard that the third sister, who had recently bought expensive skincare products, had a problem and her face was completely swollen. The boy listened attentively to his mom and opened his eyes wide with surprise. He laughed. She had done enough to annoy the boy and now she was annoying him. The woman caught up and remembered something. She handed the boy a small book, this book to read for today, and the assignment he must complete. The boy sighed heavily. He hoped his mom wouldn't remember. The boy took the leaf, unfolded it, and began to read unhappily. He asked the woman if he could just read the book. Writing all these assignments is quite difficult. He tried to press pity. He thought to himself that he could memorize it all completely just by reading, but he absolutely didn't need homework. The woman patted her cheeks. She looked at him sadly and said that since he couldn't cultivate holy power, he only had to rely on knowledge to pursue a bright future. She is doing this for his own good. The boy sighed unhappily and sat down to read the hated assignment. Maybe he should tell her that he could actually use the holy power. 
The woman looked at him with a serious look and said that if he could cultivate, his mom would ask him twice as much. The boy was horrified at this. He imagined the woman turning into a real demon and starting to just terrorize him with her tasks. Suddenly, in his imagination, the girl grew horns, and she said that since he could cultivate, he would do twice as many tasks. He decided to go for it after all. It was the best option. The boy quickly got up and said that he would go to the library to read. The woman smiled back at him affectionately and let him not forget his homework. She would check it that night. The boy nodded. He walked briskly to the library, but there were no books left for him to read, and he didn't feel like doing his homework. Where could he spend his time? Suddenly his nose caught a wonderful aroma. The smell instantly made him drool. Suddenly his nose caught a wonderful aroma. The smell instantly made him drool. The boy quickly ran towards home. He really wanted to try this delicious pie. It lay neatly on a small plate, laid out in a row. From here, the cake looked even more appetizing. Next to the treat was a beautiful lotus flower. There was an incredible aroma coming from the pie. The boy already reached out his hand to take the treat, but suddenly he heard someone's stern voice. The young master is stealing food from the kitchen. What a disgrace. No sooner had he reached his hand for the coveted pie than the plate seemed to run away from him. Someone picked it up and quickly moved it away from the boy. The boy asked the servant if he was not afraid, being an ordinary servant, to behave like that with a young master. Chu Er made a grimace. This boy was clearly provoking him, but the man needed to not give in to his provocation. The man said he was the third mistress's servant. The mistress can't tell him what to do, what to speak of her son. The boy looked at him unsatisfied and demanded that he give him the pie immediately. The servant leaned over to him and said he remembered that the fourth mistress liked carrot cakes. Isn't that right? Young master is so thoughtful, isn't he? The man was obviously being sly. The boy held out his hand to him and again firmly demanded that he give him the pie at once. The servant repeated his words, eager to mock the boy, and his face stretched in a satisfied grin from ear to ear. His eyes became even more sly. The boy thought about the servants discussing him behind his back. What a pity that because of this low life, the fourth mistress can't even eat ordinary carrot cake. Another servant said that he only stayed here because of the kindness of the head, otherwise he would have been thrown out long ago. The boy listened to all this without saying a word. He was just demanding the pie. The boy's eyes turned fierce, hatred glittering in them. For a moment you would have thought he was not a little boy, but a grown man. The servant deliberately jerked his hand, and the little plate of carrot cake flew out of his hands. He laughed, and purposely pitifully said that his hand had just slipped. After flying a few meters to the ground, the plate shattered with a ringing sound, and pieces of cake scattered on the floor. The boy came in a rage. Suddenly, unexpectedly to himself, he concentrated magical energy in himself and swung to strike the dastardly servant. Jumping up, he slammed his fist right into his jaw. Services even clanked his teeth and he fell backwards. The blow was really hard. The man certainly hadn't expected that. All the other servants stood and stared at this one in horror. The man almost fainted from such a strong blow. The boy just looked down at him. In a serious voice, he said that because of the third aunt's support, they had been letting themselves go too much for the past two years. His voice made himself even more serious, and his face took on an angry note. Now it was time to put them in their place. The boy looked rather belligerent. Another servant didn't have time to do anything before he was hit in the face by a powerful blow from his fist. The blow was even more powerful than the previous ones, and there was a crunch of bones. The boy must have broken his nose. Such a blow, the servant flew off in the opposite direction. He seemed to be spitting out a few teeth now. It flew a few meters, smashing into the wall. The impact was unbelievable. A seven-year-old boy couldn't possibly have that kind of awesome strength. A man with half a day gone and couldn't move from exhaustion. Suddenly, something rang upstairs. Several plates that were on the shelf rolled and fell directly on the man's head, and there was a loud sound of shattering china. They looked on fearfully and did not dare to do anything. They began to be afraid of the young master. Could he really have such power? At this time, the boy just stood there and looked down at the defeated servant who couldn't move a finger. Then he turned his angry gaze toward the others and began to speak. He said that for those two years, they had been demanding money from his mother, 
while giving him food made from substandard ingredients. Did they really think the boy wouldn't find out about it? The servants understood, but they did not dare to say a word. They only looked down at the ground with a blank stare. The boy came closer to them, and in an even more serious and belligerent tone said, If it happens again, they won't get off that easy. He asked, Did they understand it well? The servants nodded fearfully and confirmed that they understood. The boy quickly turned away from them and ran toward the exit. The others just watched him in astonishment, unable to say a word. Was it really that young master? He knocked out Chu Er, a servant who was already a level three saint force with a single blow. Life continued outside. The birds sang their beautiful songs. The sun shone brightly, illuminating all the surrounding space with its warmth. The main character put his hands behind his head and walked briskly down the street. He was completely satisfied with his prank. Now he felt much better. Apparently teaching him the mind of villains was good for his health. He should do it more often. Suddenly he heard a strange sound as if someone was fighting. The boy looked in that direction. A few meters away from him stood a boy who was swinging his wooden axe and was apparently practicing hard. It was the third lord of the manor, Chang Guan Jie. He shouted, shouting battle cries, swinging his club. Now he was completely immersed in the battle. Nothing existed for him but his weapon. One more swing, and he shouted that he was using a crushing blow. He spun around like a whirlwind, swinging his axe in different directions. The boy kept spinning around and screaming furiously. He looked like some kind of berserker now, but soon his strength ran out, and he stood breathing heavily trying to regain his senses. The protagonist watched it all with annoyance. That fat son of a bitch is here again. Does he really call this practice? From a distance, it looked like a simple dalliance. The boy turned away from him and decided to go another way, as it was simply disgusting to watch. But suddenly the boy noticed him. He didn't even hesitate to ask himself, is this the same little jerk? In his head, another dastardly plan was born. That was a terrible kid. Now would be the best chance for him to mess with his poor little brother. He quickly ran up to the boy and shouted to come to him. He will give him candy. The protagonist turned to him and asked irritably, what kind of candy? Does he think he's seven years old? But he was, actually. The boy looked at him in surprise and asked, isn't that right? It was true his current age was really seven years old, but that didn't add to his confidence. He was about to go about his business, when his half-brother grabbed him by the sleeve and asked him to practice with him. It wasn't a request. It was an order. He had no choice anyway. The brother told the protagonist not to worry. He would be gentle. The boy thought that these people were always bullying him and his mother. Why shouldn't he now pay them back in the same coin? That's right. He's going to take his chance, and now he's going to teach that fatso a lesson for all he's done. A sly smile stretched across his face and the boy told his brother to be gentle with him, for he was still young. The boy was definitely up to something, and the third brother definitely saw it. He looked at the protagonist in disgust and wondered, is this kid really up to something? He seemed a little strange today, but he immediately pushed those thoughts away after all. What was he afraid of? He's trash who couldn't cultivate, and the third brother already has a fourth level of strength. The protagonist asked in surprise, where will they spar? Fatty told him to follow him. Soon they came to the armory. There were many swords, spears, bows, and arrows. There were weapons for every taste. Fatty pointed his finger at the gun rack and said that the brother could choose any weapon he wanted. To everyone's surprise, the protagonist just broke off a small branch from a nearby tree. Is that really all the weapon he's going to fight with? The boy looked at his brother and said it wasn't worth it. He's going to fight using that branch. He seems overconfident. Fatty looked at the boy in surprise and joy. With this branch, is this brat completely retarded? He looks like he's very anxious to get to the other side of the world. The boy waved the branch in different directions as if he had to. Fatty shouted at him to be careful for he was about to attack. The protagonist swung the branch and prepared to defend himself. He was completely calm. At this time, the fat man swung his ax and shouted, Here I am, was approaching the boy and was ready to leave him nothing but a wet spot. But the protagonist deftly dodged the blow, and the axe passed a few centimeters from his face. Fatty did not calculate his strength, and now the axe struck straight into the ground. 
The boy swung his branch and concentrated all his strength into it. Fatty watched in horror. He certainly hadn't expected this. How can this little guy cultivate? The boy put a small branch up to his face. His speed was just some kind of astonishing. Fatty didn't even have time to react in any way, but only watched. The branch passed only a few centimeters from his neck. The air whistled, and the fat guy even felt it physically. A grimace of horror flashed across his face. The main character just looked at the third brother in a cocky way and smiled. In a loud, ringing voice, he said that the third brother had lost. But how is that possible? It's just nonsense. The third brother was furious. He pulled back the branch and shouted that this round didn't count. After all, his opponent had cheated. He couldn't have lost. The main character smiled and looked at his opponent. He had a mischievous smile on his face. He didn't understand what the third brother meant by cheating. Fatty's face changed. He was breathing heavily and didn't know what to say. Inside, he knew he was defeated, but he didn't want to admit it with all his might. Still, he pulled himself together and shouted that this round didn't count anyway. Now they'll fight a new round exclamation marks. The protagonist just looked at it all and smiled, waving his twig. Smiling, he said he would have no problem doing it again. Well, now they would start over the fatty stood behind him and just burned with hatred. This kid caught him by surprise. He underestimated him too much. If he fought seriously, this brat wouldn't stand a chance. At this time, the guy just stood there and smiled, looking at the third brother being rampaged. There's no way that bastard could have defeated him so easily. The third brother was furious. He was used to being considered invincible. Fatty squinted his eyes and looked at the branch the protagonist was holding. Maybe it was the branch? He smiled and asked the protagonist to show him this branch. The boy reluctantly threw the branch into his hands. It's an ordinary stick. There's nothing unusual about it. His eyes were tired. Once the branch was in the third brother's hands, he smiled widely. Now he had gotten his hands on this secret weapon. He threw the branch up and swung his axe. The boy looked at it and flapped his eyes in surprise. The protagonist realized that this scoundrel decided to go for the tricks. Well, this game can be played with two people. The excitement of war in his eyes. He squinted his eyes and focused his full attention on the battle. He couldn't lose. His honor was at stake. That fat bastard must pay for everything. Suddenly, a strange feeling crossed his mind. He had seen it somewhere before, right? When he was fighting the old man. The boy concentrated and began to accumulate divine power in his body. His body was covered with this energy, and now he would use the divine sword. At this time, not even suspecting anything, he was already celebrating victory because now he will swat this little brat. But at that moment, the wand he tossed began to move under the control of the protagonist. Fatty swung his axe and prepared to deliver a devastating blow. He would become the next head of the family, and now Xiang Tian will die. But the boy paid no attention to this and only continued to concentrate the magical energy in his hand to better control the wand. He did it perfectly, the wand flying straight at his opponent like a blade. The speed was insane. Fatty had already gotten close enough to strike, but suddenly something happened that he didn't expect. The fat man fell on his side and soon fell to the ground with a thud. He didn't see that one coming. The boy was just standing there, watching his defeated enemy lying on the floor, trying to bring himself to his senses. The fat man was holding his cheek, and he didn't understand anything. Next to him, a stick stabbed into the ground with great speed. He looked at his hand and saw that it was bleeding. His cheek had been cut open, and a small trickle of red liquid was dripping from it. The boy looked at his wound in horror. He screamed, how dare that little brat hit him? He's going to tell his mom. The protagonist crunched his fingers and said in a gravely voice that if Fatty called him that again, he would kill him. Now he looked as threatening as possible, and the third brother looked at him in horror. Soon he couldn't stand it after all, and fearfully ran to his mom to complain. He was very much frightened of his half-brother. How could he do this to him? The guy just stood behind him and silently watched the fatty crying. Looks like he overreacted this time. But still, it didn't matter. The worst they could do to him was punish him. So there was nothing to be afraid of. The boy turned around and walked in the opposite direction. He hoped that after this incident, they wouldn't drag his mom into it. At that time, 
someone approached him from behind. An unknown figure came closer and in one motion pulled a wand out of the ground. Who it was was completely unclear. But the boy sensed someone was watching him. The winds of change had already come to this house, and he had to adapt because this was not going to go away. There was a serious conversation waiting for him at home. As it happened, concerned cries were heard in the chapter house. Fatty stood near his mother and cried. His cheek was bandaged with a bandage. The woman didn't know where to put her anger. Her face was either swollen from the side effects of the skin care products, or she'd just eaten so much she'd gotten fat. The head stood there watching all of this in silence. His face frowned with anger. He wasn't going to let this go. The very servant whom the boy had struck in the face a short time ago was also there. He was also bandaged and shouting that the young master was absolutely out of control. He had hit him for no reason whatsoever. The head should have punished him immediately. The man said in a formidable voice that the boy was incapable of cultivating holy power. How could he harm Chu Eru and K Eru? The head didn't understand anything. His third wife moved even closer to him, and with swollen lips began to shout that the fourth sister was always spoiling that boy. She had probably ordered him to use something to harm her son. After all, he is the future head of the family, and a man must restore justice. The head looked at her and didn't say anything. The man thought, his family is known for their kindness and generosity. If this kid really is the one who did this, he will be punished severely. The man frowned even harder. The servant didn't relent and kept shouting. The head of the family ordered Xian Tian to be summoned with a formidable voice. If all this was true, he would be punished to the full extent of the law. The third wife frowned, a predatory look on her face. Now you'll be kicked out of the house for good. In the meantime, life went on. It flowed on in a measured and relaxed way. The weather was beautiful outside, and it was impossible to tell at a glance that something terrible had just happened. The man ended the conversation. Turning around, he said lastly that he would take care of them to appear before them. The wife continued to cry. She begged the Lord to get justice for their sake. Suddenly from outside came the affectionate voice of the fourth wife. She said it was not necessary to look for her son. She was trying to protect him. The woman looked at him with a serious look and told the gentleman that her son had nothing to do with what happened today. It was all her fault. The woman's voice was upset and embarrassed. The man looked at her in surprise, he asked. So it turns out she was the one who hurt those two? The woman lowered her eyes and quietly began to speak. She said that she was worried that her son would be bullied because of his inability to cultivate. Therefore, she mystery followed him to protect him. She approached the gentleman and began to whisper in his ear. She said that she had seen these two men bullying her son today. She got angry and decided to teach him a lesson. All the while, she was pointing her finger at the servant, the third wife, and her son. 226. The third wife was horrified. Her son was a good boy, and the servant was very responsible and honest. Would they abuse the boy? Kair, the servant, also started shouting that he was innocent. The third wife's cheeks were now completely swollen, and she now looked like a big hamster. Obviously, the fourth sister was feeding to take the full brunt of the blow to protect this boy. The woman didn't stop. The protagonist's mother tried her best to protect her child. She said that after all, everyone knows that her son is incapable of cultivating. How do they think he is capable of harming these people? The woman immediately thought about it and stopped shouting. It was true. There was logic in what she said. Now she was coming in. Now she looked as pathetic as possible. The makeup on her face had faded and her cheeks were even more swollen. Yun Tian kneeled down in front of her master and said that Pineapple did it all and her son had nothing to do with it. If anyone should be punished, it was only her. The man was in a stupor and couldn't say a word. Suddenly his face softened. He said that since she had confessed everything, her punishment would be meditative seclusion for a month. The third wife was furious. It was such a light punishment. She couldn't stand it. Yun Tian lowered her head and accordingly nodded. She couldn't cross her master, so she would patiently bear the punishment. The third wife did not relent. She screamed that her son was almost dead in. How could he let this woman go so easily? She took hold of her son's head, and he screamed that he was going to die. Kept screaming, the fate of the family is at stake. Why don't you send that nasty woman away? The woman thought, 
the fate of the family, right? A sphere of magic appeared in her hands, the woman asked. So if she cured care, she would be forgiven. Her eyes gave away that she was definitely up to something. A sarcastic smile appeared on her face. The third wife cried out that it would not happen. If she pretends like she's going to cure him but actually hurts him, that's dangerous. Yun Tian looked at all of this with obvious irritation. The head of the family had no more patience to watch this. He only sighed heavily. The women continued to quarrel. The fourth wife shouted that she was obviously just trying to get rid of them. As soon as the woman heard this, she screamed that this was just nonsense. This can't be happening. They're the ones who are injured here. The protagonist's mother shouted that the woman's son looked more like a fat pig. Why not give him to her to eat? The woman replied that her son was the opposite of a pig. It was going to be a big scandal. The argument between them continued and grew more intense with each passing second. The man had no more strength to listen to it and turned around and went to his bedchamber. Let these women quarrel among themselves. He had better things to do. The courtyard garden was peaceful. Somewhere fish were splashing in a pond, somewhere birds were chirping in the crowns of trees. It was so peaceful that one could fall asleep. The protagonist was just sitting there thinking. It had been quite some time. Why hadn't anyone come after him? Did the third wife, along with her son, not complain? The thoughts were just tearing his little head apart. Already he was tired of waiting, and besides, his mom had disappeared somewhere. Suddenly a strange sound was heard from afar, as if the wind was approaching him from behind with great speed. The boy noticed it all in time. He literally felt with his back that something was approaching him. Suddenly, just a few centimeters away from his body, a knife stabbed him. He didn't expect it, and dodged it at the last moment. It was some man. The boy had not seen him before. The man was father a strange shape, and on his face he had a mask completely hiding his appearance. In his hands was another dagger. The man shouted at the boy, how dare he hurt the third young master? He's going to die now. The kid. Now he understood everything, he shouted to the man. Did Bai Yushan send him? The man answered affirmatively. Right, that's the way it is. She had put up with them for too long. The man grabbed his blade and prepared to kill the poor boy. He jumped and brought his blade right over the boy. The protagonist was armed only with a wand, and now he was in mortal danger, for this man would kill him. The guy jumped aside and the stranger missed with his punch. Is this man really going to kill him? The situation was getting hotter by the second. The man put his hand forward and, concentrating energy in it, prepared to use his spell. A bright red magical color spilled out all around. Only a fraction of a second passed, and a column of bright flame flew a few centimeters from the protagonist's face. He even felt its heat with his body. But the boy wasn't afraid. This person is only at the fourth level of saint power. Therefore, he could easily deal with him. There was nothing to be afraid of. The boy swung around, concentrating all of his spiritual power with great force, and threw the branch at him. It accelerated so much that it turned into a beam of radiant energy. The stranger grinned. He didn't believe any twig could hurt him. The man just stood there, doing nothing. Who says a branch can't do any harm? The boy's face stretched into a smile. From afar, he looked like some kind of demon. The guy concentrated an incredible amount of magical energy in his body and transferred it into this small wand. The branch flew upward, and after reaching a certain height, it flew downward at an incredible speed. An incredible vortex began to swirl around the two of them. The man lifted his head up and stared in surprise at the wand that was flying straight at his head. He wouldn't have had time to dodge, so he just had to watch the projectile fly straight at him. The stranger's eyes widened, and he had already literally accepted his death. It was simply impossible to dodge. The air whistled, and fear flashed in the man's eyes. A split second later, the wand flew past him, slicing his mask into two halves. The man barely had enough strength to keep from falling. When the mask split open, the face of the head of the family appeared. He just stood there, breathing heavily, unable to say a word. The man was stunned. He even thought for a second that he was going to die. The main character was shocked. Was it really his father? The boy waved his hands. Now he would have a lot of explaining to do. He was scared and didn't know what to say. The man's face frowned even more, and he bared his teeth. 
It was obvious that he was incredibly angry. Right now, the protagonist would be better off running away. But suddenly, everything changed. A blissful smile appeared on the man's face, and his eyes filled with tears of joy. Could his son really be able to use the holy power after all? The man didn't know what to say. In his heart, he was only incredibly happy. After everything he saw, the man instantly stopped being angry at his son. The tension in the air instantly subsided. Cheka nodded his head and replied that his father had gotten it right. He could use holy power from the start. Now he had nothing to fear and could confess everything. He said that he was the one who had wounded the third brother and the servant. Let his father punish him as much as he liked, but let him do one thing, keep his mother out of it. The father was stunned and still could not believe it. He took his son by the shoulders and asked him why he hadn't told him about it right away. If he had known, both he and his mother would have. The man didn't know what to say. But the boy took his hand away and asked irritably, and why did he have to tell him about it? The man was shocked. What was it with his child? But the protagonist didn't share his father's joy. At first, everyone cherished him, thinking he was a genius. All possible resources were directed towards him, as well as his father's love. But suddenly everything changed since father found out that he was crippled, that he was unable to use the holy power. Immediately father left them to their fate. The boy's face changed in an instant, and now he looked more like a grown man than a small child. His voice changed and became rougher. The boy asked his father, so who was he to him, or a tool? The father began to stammer and didn't know what to say. It was the first time he had ever seen his child like this. His voice trembled with fear. He pulled himself together and began to speak. He said that he was going through a difficult time. He had to take care of his family's future first. The boy didn't stop screaming. He frowned and asked, what about their personal problems? Did he ever wonder what they had gone through in the last two years while the third wife abused them? Did he ever try to stop her? Or are they no longer family to him? The main character was just furious, and his father just looked at him with an incomprehensible look. The boy continued to scream. At a time when he was considered a cripple, he wouldn't even blink an eye if the boy died. The head of the family was ready to cry now. He asked his son how he could say such things. He would never be so callous to him or his mother. The boy frowned and continued to speak in a serious tone. He said that he honestly didn't care about anything that happened to him personally, but he couldn't forgive him for what his mother had experienced. The man tried his best to smooth things over. He spread his arms and said that there must have been a misunderstanding. Even though he is the head, he can't protect all the members. The boy turned his back on him. That's the way it is. He's the head of the family should be thinking of everyone, but he only cares about his own mother. The man was shocked and didn't know what to say. The boy said in a rough voice that his father could punish him as he pleased. In any case, family ties no longer meant anything to him. The man wanted to say something else, but his son wasn't listening. He just walked backwards. A sadness settled in the man's heart. He realized that he had made an unbelievable mistake, and now he had to try very hard to make it right. Suddenly, the gentleman heard someone's elderly voice addressing him from outside. The old man said that the gentleman should just admit his mistake and apologize. It's not that hard. It was Uncle Day. The man turned around to him fearfully and asked, did he see everything? He felt incredibly ashamed at this moment, not only in front of himself, but also in front of his uncle. The garden continued to have an atmosphere of tranquility. A small morning mist was flowing over the small indoor pond. The master, along with his uncle, were walking down the corridor and talking. The old man said that Xiang Tian not only wounded the third son with an ordinary branch, but also almost reached the Lord himself. The young master is very gifted. The man replied that he had lowered his Saint Force level to fourth so that the boy could fight him back. The initial test showed that he couldn't cultivate holy power. So what had happened? The old man replied that at that moment, he too felt that something was wrong. Even before the test, it was obvious that young master was the chosen one, so why did the stone show that he was unable to cultivate? That remained a mystery to them. He didn't believe it, and had been observing the master for the past two years. He secretly came to the library to cultivate holy power.
That's when the old man found out everything. The man wondered, since his uncle knew everything perfectly well, why didn't he tell him? So many things had passed his ears. The old man continued to speak in a measured manner. He said that he had been watching not only the young master, but also the head of the family himself. The man wondered, was he being watched too? The old man looked at him with a reproachful look and said that the head had been too blind all this time. The old man is going to take this boy to a place where he can be raised properly. The man was horrified. After all, his family had always been known for their good attitude. Besides, they were great to uncle himself. How could he say such a thing? How could he do such a thing? But the old man remained completely calm. He replied that he was only a guest in the family. Since they could not look after their own son, how could an outsider be blamed? The head of the family did not know what to say to this. Uncle was right. He lowered his head and still said it was his fault. He had failed to do his duty as a father, and because of that, his son hated him now. The old man replied affectionately that it was not too late to make things right. The young gentleman has a fair character. If the head is honest with him, it is he who will open his heart. This is the whole point of fatherhood. The man was finally struck with an understanding of the situation. He smiled and promised his uncle that he would do so from now on. The family residence looked majestic from afar. The enormous pagoda rose to the very heavens, astonishing in its scale. Inside, in the main hall, sat the third and fourth wives. The third wife was tending to her wounded son, who occasionally whimpered. She turned to her rival and angrily said that the head had gone to deal with her offspring. This time, they would be the end of them. Yun Tian looked at her with an angry look and said that this pig had too much hubris in her. She could take her son to her mother's house at any time, and there, she would already be powerless. How dare she show her face in public like that? The third wife almost choked on those words. Everything will be back to normal in a couple of days, so she'd better take care of herself. Suddenly, the doors opened, and the silhouette of the head of the house appeared in the passage. The man led his son in and said in a menacing voice that he had just found out that the boy was indeed the one who had injured the victims. As soon as the third wife heard this, she began to wail that the Lord was obliged to punish this boy severely. The mother of the protagonist was frightened, and it was as if something turned cold inside her. At this time, the boy just showed his tongue to the third wife. The head continued to speak calmly. He said that Kei Er and Chu Er should have stopped bullying others. It was simply unforgivable. Therefore, he considers the matter resolved. The case is closed. The head ordered his son to apologize, and the boy, picking his nose, quietly whispered an apology. But it didn't even sound like an apology, more like a mockery. The third wife was just furious. Are they just going to forget about it like that? The mother of the protagonist looked at her son with surprise. The woman continued to rage. Her son is the future of the family. How can they do this? But the master ordered everyone to be silent. Chu Er was secretly making life difficult for Yun Tian and her son, which is already a big violation of the family rules, so he has already banished him from the house. The man ordered everyone listen carefully. From now on, if anyone dares to disrespect Yun Tian and her son, they will be severely punished. The boy listened to all of this with his arms folded across his chest, a triumphant smile on his face. The third wife was just furious. She wanted to say something, but she just cried. The mother of the protagonist glowed with happiness. She couldn't say a word out of surprise. The father and son looked at each other, and the man asked him if everything was fair now. The boy nodded his head in agreement. The boy went up to his mother and asked, didn't they really do anything to her? The woman could not hide her surprise. She asked, did his father really not punish the boy? The man replied that they were just talking to each other like man to man. For these words, he received a light slap. The woman said that in their time, children always try to talk like adults. The boy looked angrily at his blood enemies now. The head of the family asked the woman to heal the wounds of his third wife and her son. The woman smiled and said there was no problem as long as her son remained intact. The third wife was about to object, but stopped short. The man interrupted her and ordered her to be quiet. All the woman could do was puff up her puffy cheeks. 
Yun Tian once again used the healing magic. A huge green-blue colored sphere appeared in her hand and she presented it to the third wife's face. The boy watched his mother's movements in wonder. In her hands flowed the special energy of heaven and earth. Is this what they call the radiant power of the saints? A few minutes later, the woman finished her treatment. All the wounds healed like magic. The third wife and her son began to feel their faces. They were as good as new. Yun Tian proudly looked forward. She was satisfied with her work. It was all done. The head of the household, along with his son, looked at her with surprise and admiration. The man recognized that his wife was simply gorgeous. The boy thought that if he understood how to use this energy, his training would be twice as effective. But suddenly his father's heavy hand was on his shoulder. In a stern voice, the man said that although he had closed the case, the guy was still guilty and should be punished. His mother looked at her son with surprise and horror. The boy wondered, what is this? This is not at all what they had agreed on. The woman was horrified, so he should be punished anyway. The third wife was rejoicing at this moment. She was incredibly happy that these two would be punished after all. The man furrowed his eyebrows and said that the boy had been training in secret and not doing it properly. So starting tomorrow, his punishment would be to follow Uncle D to the secret training room. There he will stay until he reaches the eighth level of saint power. Everyone was horrified. Is this punishment? The third wife's son cried out that he too wanted to be punished. Is this fair? The protagonist thought to himself, well, training with his uncle as a guide didn't sound so bad. But that wasn't all. The man still had something else he wanted to pass on to him. The boy looked at him with surprise. The man handed him a small envelope he told him to open the letter when he went to the eighth level. By now, his future could change drastically. The father's face was troubled. He was looking at his son with a kind of love, not like before. The boy wondered, did this letter concern his future? It remained completely incomprehensible to him, but nevertheless, he had to follow his father's instruction. All since then, it's been seven years of hard training. The uncle, along with the head of the family, were sitting in his room drinking tea and talking peacefully. The head asked, So, how's the training going? Has he been able to break through to the eighth level of strength yet? The old man replied, For the past few years, the young master has been progressing much slower than before. At the moment, he is currently at the seventh level. The old man thought for a moment, said with pride that this boy could be called a genius for his 14 years. But still, something appeared to him. The old man sipped some tea from his cup and said that it seemed to him that the young master didn't want to put his full effort into cultivation. The head of the household frowned and asked, how did he realize that? Did he have any proof of it? The old man thought for a moment and said that it wasn't that simple. He had a feeling that the young master, if he wished, could go to the eighth level of holy power at any time. The head of the household became serious if the boy didn't advance to the eighth level of saint power by the end of the year. He looked at the letter lying on the table. He would have to wait another year after all. The diligent training continued every day. The guy was improving his knowledge all the while, but still, he tried not to overwork himself. The fourth lady was lying on her chaise long, covered with rejuvenating cucumbers and sleeping soundly. Suddenly, a servant approached her and brought her a tray of seasonal fruits and snacks. The head ordered that they be given to the woman and the young master. The woman waved her hand and said that her son was practicing cultivation right now. Have the servant leave the fruit here and she would deliver it herself. The servant nodded his head and left. The woman leaned back in her chair and sighed contentedly. She was incredibly happy that her life was getting better. Her attitude was getting better and better every year. The woman couldn't stop rejoicing. At this time, the young master was diligently practicing in his room. He worked tirelessly, putting his training to the best of his ability. Now he was 14 years old. He looked much older already, grown, strong, and mature. He sat and meditated diligently with his sword in his hand. For better concentration, he even closed his eyes, completely immersing his body and mind in spiritual energy. Several people dressed in the uniform of assassins attacked the temple. The monks tried their best to repel the attack, but their strength was not enough. Without the protagonist, there was nothing they could do. The enemy outnumbered them. The assassins were dressed in black clothes and had curved blades in their hands. They attacked more and more often, each time their numbers grew. 
It seemed that the next time the monks wouldn't be able to hold back another attack. But they were sure that their brother would definitely avenge them. But even without him, they couldn't lose to the cultists. The assassin shouted that it's all useless. I'm their brother long dead, and now there's nothing they can do. The assassins jumped high into the air, preparing to deliver a fatal blow. Now they would definitely kill them all, leaving no one alive. But still, the monks tried their best to defend themselves. They stood back to back and put their blades forward, me trying to fend off another attack. Even though they were outnumbered, they weren't going to give up. The boy was sitting in his room, meditating hard. His face was contorted in a grimace. Apparently, he was having a nightmare. The boy woke up and slammed his fist into the floor with all his might. The impact was so powerful that the whole building shook. At that moment, he couldn't control himself. He was breathing heavily, his eyes open with terror. But it was only a dream. But what a realistic one. He could still taste that blood, and his heart beat with redoubled frequency. It was only a dream. The boy was sitting on the floor, holding tightly to the hilt of his sword stuck in the ground. The protagonist looked at his reflection in the shining sword blade. From it, a young boy's face looked back at him. He was too relaxed. Over the past few years, he seemed to have even lost his strength. The boy realized that he had never experienced the feeling of home in his past life, and now he was having a hard time letting them go. He wasn't trying to get stronger, and instead was just starting to get used to the idle life at the manor, he gripped his sword tightly in his hand. But still, the protagonist is not the man he is now, and the people in the cult are still waiting for him to come back. He can't just give up. Needed to keep going to get stronger and keep finding his way back. He got to his feet, his body once again covered in magical energy. This is something he must never forget. The boy swung his sword, and immediately a vortex of energy appeared and began to envelop his body. He looked at the engraved inscription, Always remember who you are and where you come from. Now he had the eighth level of saint power. He had become powerful enough to open that very letter. The boy quickly went to his mentors to break the news. The head of the family was shocked. The boy had actually advanced to the eighth level begging sign. Uncle was incredibly happy about this news. The master hadn't let them down after all. The boy stood before them with his hands folded in front of him. In a calm voice, he asked if he could now open this letter. He wanted to know what it had to do with his future. The father nodded his head and replied that of course he could do so. And now the time had come. He carefully unfolded the envelope and a piece of paper with an inscription slipped out. It said the boy had been accepted. What is this? A letter of acceptance? Father began to explain. This is a letter about his enrollment in the most famous academy of the Gesun Kingdom, the Kargat Academy. It trained countless top-notch strongest martial artists, and only those who reached the eighth level of Saint Force before the age of 18 would be able to attend it. The father patted his son on the shoulder and said, His son is very talented and is the perfect choice to enter the academy. The future of the family rests on his shoulders. The uncle looked at all this from afar and said that the entrance exams will start in three days. The young gentleman will definitely pass in time. Suddenly, from where you came, a huge eagle flew in and sat down next to the people. His father explained that it was a spatial belt he had prepared especially for him. If the boy could break through to the ninth and tenth level of saint power by the age of 18 and become a saint, he would give the boy a spatial ring. The boy nodded and said that it wouldn't take him long. Immediately, his mother appeared. She had brought many supplies for her son for the long journey. The woman looked at him worriedly and said that he was leaving home for the first time and would have to take care of himself since she would not be around. So she prepared him many delicious things, for they would be useful on the road. And also, she has planned his meals for a month in advance. He must eat well and not skimp on his studies. The boy irritated and said that he was no longer a child and could take care of himself. The woman smirked and said that when the third wife and her sons about the guy getting into this academy, it wasn't so angry that they got sick. Way to go, son. The woman was clearly gloating. The guy noticed it and smirked too. The uncle came closer to them and said that it was getting dark, so it was time to get on the road. The boy looked up at the sky and prepared for a long journey. The two of them sat down on the huge bird and prepared to take off. As the boy waved goodbye, the parents continued to stand and watch their child. 
In farewell, Mom told her son not to forget to write to them. The Griffon shouted, and his shout made everyone crouch to the ground. He flapped his wings, and in a second they were already in the sky. The boy was incredibly happy that he was now a student of such an honorable academy. His uncle was sitting at his back, struggling to hold on to the griffin's fur. They were moving farther and farther into the sky toward new life. It had been a long time since he had experienced the feeling of flying. How much he missed that feeling. The boy was sitting on the griffin's back, the wind wrapped around his face, ruffling his hair. He was incredibly happy at this moment to experience this forgotten feeling again. His uncle looked at him and said that he was indeed the chosen one. When his brother flew to the academy, he was so badly frightened that he was absolutely unable to move. The boy hearing this was very much surprised. Was it really true? Xi'an looked at the old man with surprise. Does he really have a brother in the academy? How come he doesn't know anything about it? The old man scratched the back of his head and laughed. His memory was failing him more and more often, so he just didn't have time to tell everything. Uncle raised his finger up meaningfully and began his story. Changguan Hu, the eldest brother of the main character, was born from the first mistress. After the head married the third mistress, there was no way for the two of them to get along. The first mistress was so angry that she decided to take the newborn young master back to her mother's house. And after the divorce, she severed all ties with the past family. The boy listened to all of this in surprise. Now it all became clear, no wonder he had never heard of his older brother. Now things were starting to make sense to him. It turns out that Bai Yu Shuang wanted to supplant his mother in the same way. As they say in a big family, you can't take your mouth off. I'll have to teach her another lesson. A sarcastic smirk appeared on his face. The old man noticed all this, I'm disturbing, but looked at him. Uncle sighed heavily. The young master was 17 years old when he entered the academy. In the future, let the protagonist feel free to ask him for help. Xi'an smiled and winked at him. Good, he will do just that. The boy thanked his uncle for the advice. Soon they arrived at the academy. The Gryphon flapped its wings vigorously and began to descend. They sat on his back and watched the roofs of the houses show in the branches of the centuries-old trees. The boy smiled and his face lit up with happiness. This was the academy. The boy froze in anticipation. They flew over the many houses. The academy grounds were indeed huge. Everywhere where their gaze stretched, there were many neat houses. Apparently, students lived there. The griffon flapped its wings and landed neatly on the white floor. There were already a lot of people crowded around them. Xi'an looked around everyone with a surprised look. There were so many people in this academy. How would he manage to find his brother here? The old man patted his shoulder and told him not to worry. His brother would be very easy to find. In the crowd, the protagonist suddenly saw a young, statuesque guy about 25 years old. He grasped his bokeh hands, and with a wide smile on his face, he greeted his brother. He had a welcoming banner hanging behind his back. Well, this guy wasn't that hard to spot. The guy's name was Changguan Hu. He was smiling widely, and he was observing the newcomers. It was obvious that he was very happy to see his little brother. Xi'an decided that it was better to pretend he knew nothing now and turned away in the other direction. He was indeed easy to find. The old man laughed and said that the young master hadn't changed a bit after years of his absence. Hu put out his hand to his younger brother in greeting, and the latter came closer with a disgruntled look. At this time, the uncle said in an affectionate voice that the head already missed his eldest son. Hu, as soon as he heard about it, he asked his uncle not to even mention his father's name. He has nothing to do with him. He looked at his younger brother and said that he had grown up surprisingly fast. Xi'an looked at him with an appraising look and didn't know how to react. Hu gave him a brotherly hug and took him aside. The man said that if anyone dared to bully his little brother, let them come to him at once. He would make them collect their teeth all over the academy. Uncle shouted in their wake that Hu should take a little walk, I look at his little brother, and he should go talk to the principal. The main character's eyes lit up with happiness. He looked at his older brother with admiration. Now in his eyes, he looked like the rock. Soon they came to a large building and stopped right outside its entrance. Hu looked still as unperturbed. He jabbed his finger in there and said that it was the Kargat Academy. Well, that's all he needed to know.
Xi'an cast his eyes downward. He certainly trusts his younger brother, but is it just me, or is it just me, or is it just him that his tour is too short? At this moment, he decided to take back his words. This big brother is very unreliable. Who wouldn't lose it? He cheerfully said that tomorrow is the freshman competition day. He signed him up too. If he socialized with others, he would get used to his new surroundings faster. Xi'an laughed nervously and said that his brother probably meant that he would be beaten on the first day. Big Brother put a small gold star on his chest. It's a battle between new students, and he is very excited about it. His little brother has to do well, and this star is his pass. The boy looked at the star on his chest. Big Brother is overly energetic. He's not really interested in playing these games, so it's best to just give up. Who realized he had completely forgotten about the application materials? He told his younger brother to go eat lunch at the canteen first, and he would go get the materials. In a second, the older brother has already gone somewhere, and he's just going to leave him like that? The protagonist was left standing alone in the middle of the square. This big brother is so strange. Xi'an went to the canteen. Soon he found himself in a spacious building where there were many people he didn't know before. They were all probably students. The smell of delicious food was spreading around the room. Xi'an walked over to the table where many delicious dishes were already displayed. The food here was cheap, but very delicious. Even poor students would be able to eat properly. This food academy shows equality between the poor and the rich. Suddenly, the boy's musings were interrupted by a thump on the table. A rough male voice told him to get out of here. After all, this is their table. A guy about his age stood in front of him, looking at him angrily. Behind him stood two other students, a guy with long hair and a girl. The stranger was trying to draw attention to himself, and his gaze became even more angry. Xianxi looked at him in disbelief and said that if they were so eager to eat, let them sit down and eat with him. This table belongs to the academy. It doesn't say on it that it belongs to them. The guy slowly boiled over at this insolence. He shouted that the new guy doesn't deserve to eat with them with. Will he ask one last time if he's leaving or not? The girl behind him sighed heavily and asked why he was being so polite to this scum. Let him just chase him away. The protagonist sighed. Well, he'll leave on his own, but after he finishes his food, if they don't want to sit with him, just let them stand there and wait. After saying that, the guy was just mad with rage. Is this brat looking for trouble? The girl shouted. Does he even know who he's talking to right now? The guy with long red braid hair looked at the protagonist with an evaluating look. He pushed that angry student aside and walked up to him with a strained smile. In a sweet voice, he said, looking at the quality of the protagonist's uniform, one could tell that he was also from a noble family. Can he recognize his name and what family he is from? The guy took a seat across from Xi'an and started talking. Although the academy and forbids oppressing commoners, but do not interfere in the squabbles between nobles. He squinted his eyes and scrutinized the protagonist with a look as if he wanted to eat him right now. There was a small scar on his face near his mouth. His voice became quiet and ingratiating. Would the guy believe him if he told him that he would make his life in the academy unbearable? The other students watched all of this with horror. Did this new guy provoke them? These three are from the Kadig clan, aren't they? Xi'an looked at him silently and continued to devour the noodles, bragging about his family and talking impertinently. This kind of thing had happened more than once in his past life. The guy with red hair shouted, he's talking to him, isn't he? Why is he ignoring him? The girl looked at him squeamishly. He's a stinking brat. Doesn't he realize who he's messing with? I'm her brother. I asked him a question. Another guy in their group couldn't take the insolence anymore. That kid's got a lot of nerve. He couldn't take it anymore. He yanked the tablecloth with all his might. Plates with food flew to the floor, but the protagonist managed to remove his plate. Now let him eat this. The guy pointed his finger at the leftovers lying on the floor. Xi'an realized that it was not the fault of the fight now. He quickly got up from the table and got ready. That annoying student swung his fist and was about to beat up the protagonist, but he ducked in time and the guy barely stayed on his feet. Deftly turning around, he forcefully elbowed him right in the back. The guy sighed heavily and gritted his teeth. This was definitely something he hadn't expected. He fell to the floor, and a few seconds later, there was a rumbling sound. The others just watched in horror with their mouths hanging open in surprise. Xi'an stood there nonchalantly, holding a plate of noodles in his hands. 
he smiled playfully and said that the guy was too impulsive, his base was unstable, and his kung fu was crap. Having said that, he enjoyed munching on the noodles. The guy was furious. This brat dares to mock him. Now he's going to kill him for sure. The situation was escalating at an unbelievable rate. Suddenly, they were interrupted by a rough voice. The guy sitting at the next table slapped his hands on the table and ordered them to finally calm down. He's already finished eating, and if those three are so restless, they can take his place. But it didn't seem to work. The guy turned around and yelled at him to mind his own business. Xi'an continued chewing his food. An unfamiliar boy turned towards them. He was tall and had a sturdy build. This fatty seemed to be able to pummel them all, but he seemed to be good-natured. He smiled widely and clapped his hands together. After all, they were all classmates here. There was no need for conflicts. But the guy didn't calm down. He glared angrily in his direction. Once again, notwithstanding, he swung around and with all his might hit the stranger in the stomach. Pig, who gave him the right to talk to him? A punch was heard, but the fat man laughed. It turned out that his looks were deceiving. The boy took hold of his fist and looked at it with horror. Pain coursed through his entire body. This guy's pretty tough. At this time, good-natured fatty laughed. If he wants to hit someone, let him hit him. He has thick skin, so he doesn't care. The girl looked squeamishly in their direction. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Is the pig asking for a beating? She turned to the second brother and said that they should teach them a lesson. At this point, the guy was already getting angry. Well, he had it coming. Xi'an already couldn't stand it and told them to stop immediately. They can fight him all they want, but don't let them drag outsiders into it. Suddenly, the same guy with red hair told the second brother to stop immediately. Conflicts between noble and poor are strictly forbidden by the academy itself. The second brother looked at the fatty, who continued to smile good-naturedly in surprise. The students had already forgotten about the food and were watching the conflict with interest. There seems to be someone fighting. A girl with bright yellow hair looked in that direction with surprise. Her friend pulled her by the sleeve and told her to get out of here. She doesn't want to get involved in their fight. The conflict wasn't going away. The guy with the red hair called out to the protagonist. Does he think he can insult their clan? Does he want to be expelled from the academy? The guy crunched his fingers, looking belligerent now. There was no trace of his former politeness and good-naturedness left. After all, the academy wouldn't interfere in the squabbles of nobles. He doesn't want to be beaten to death and leave the academy with broken bones. Xian Wuxing grinned while holding his chopsticks in his hands, and my own self would be interested to see it. Already prepared to fight back, it wasn't the first time for him, but suddenly, from behind him, he heard it. The older brother shouted that he himself would be interested to see who dared to attack his little brother. Who appeared literally out of thin air. He fell on the table with great force, and immediately the fragile wooden structure broke with a crack. In the hands of his older brother was a huge stack of papers. Xi'an heavily sighed and timidly asked his elder brother if he could not appear somehow normal next time. Who didn't understand a thing? What is it? What kind of table breaks just by standing on it? But he immediately turned back to his opponents. Pointing his finger at them, he shouted that if you want to fight, then let them fight with him, he will give them a real sparring match. Xi'an looked at all this with eyes burning with excitement. Suddenly, Big Brother remembered the papers. That's right. He handed a huge stack to the younger brother. Xi'an from the heaviness. He needs to sign this whole pile of papers. The older brother continued to smile. He said all these papers need to fill out to register for the rookie tournament, the guy with red hair asked in surprise. What rookie tournament? The red-haired guy smiled predatorily and looked at his older brother. He asked, is this kid his fourth brother? Who hugged his little brother so he blushed from overexertion? He smiled broadly and said that this kid is as talented as he is. The protagonist realized at that moment that his brother had never said he was talented. The students looked at him with surprise and disbelief. Really? How dare they mess with the Kadi clan? Aren't they completely afraid of death? The leader of their clan squinted his eyes. Provoking this rabid dog was not a good idea. He wouldn't be able to deal with him one-on-one. -on -one. He would have to think of something else. He hummed something to himself and ordered his henchmen to leave. He would remember this day. The others wondered, are they just going to leave it like that? Who smiled and looked at his little brother. He asked, well, 
He is cool, isn't he? Xi'an smiled and said he didn't think it would end that easily. Soon, Kadi. They did their best to keep up with their leader. The girl asked, who was it? Would they really leave it all so easily? The man replied that this hard-headed idiot was Chang Wan Hu. A predatory smile never left his face. The man continued to talk. He had signed up for the beginner martial arts tournament. If they killed him there, there was no way Hu would be able to stop them. He stopped and turned around. In the rays of the setting sun, his figure looked threatening. In an angry voice, he said that anyone who dared to insult their clan would pay with his life. Xi'an watched them follow standing at the exit of the dining hall. The bright red rays of the setting sun illuminated his lonely figure. The boy thought for a moment. Big Brother was really something with something. Again, he said he had something urgent to do and left. Now he was alone again. He was holding a heavy stack of papers. It's his first day here, so the guy's not really getting his bearings yet. And he doesn't know where the store is. His older brother was very unreliable. He only had to rely on his own strength. Who ordered his brother to go back to live? From this day on, they are friends here. If he has any questions, he can go to him. Xi'an thought it was a little early to say that they were friends now. That big guy looked pretty funny. He sat down on the floor leaning against a large stack of papers and thought. And this rookie tournament, he wasn't interested in it at all, so maybe he should back out. He stood up and walked briskly away from the dining hall. For now, he's just gonna walk around on his computer. I wanna get a good look at the kingdom's first academy. The sky was an extraordinary ruby color. Warm rays of sunlight illuminated the treetops, and the first bright stars began to appear in the sky. Two students were sitting in the forest and fearfully looked at each other. They were a brother and sister. It seems they were all so new here and didn't know anything. Xi'an saw all this in the past life. Siblings and sex also hid to play with each other. Apparently in any place and time, everyone has seven senses and six desires. The boy noticed that two figures dressed in black clothes were tiptoeing towards the opposite direction. Apparently they were up to something. That looked suspicious, the boy wondered. It's either jealousy or stealing. Several men wrapped in black were sitting in a circle, whispering about something. One, fat and apparently the most important, spoke in a whisper. He said he had studied the route properly. It's sure to pass through here soon. The rest of you, let them sit in this spot and wait. Let them pretend to be ordinary hooligans who decided to harass the girl and he will come and save her. Everyone nodded. Fatty said that his goddess was like a little sheep. Let the others be gentle with her, understand? Two men with masks. They understood perfectly. Xi'an was hiding behind a nearby tree at this time and heard everything. He sighed heavily. What a bunch of hackneyed cliches. It's not like it's original at all. It looked too funny from the outside. He jumped down and headed straight for them. He couldn't pretend he didn't see anything and just walk on by. Soon the sun was finally hidden behind the sky, giving way to the moon. A bright crescent moon floated into the sky and began to illuminate the earth with a dull white-blue color. Suddenly, light, uncertain footsteps were heard from outside. Someone was approaching, judging by the lightness of the steps, it was a woman. The brother and sister were hiding somewhere in the distance, watching. The boy looked at the girl with loving eyes. His sister looked at him as if she wanted to strangle him. Isn't that the new girl who stole the hearts of many students? She was quite beautiful. Her silhouette was incredibly delicate and graceful. The sister grabbed her brother's ear and pulled it to the side. The guy yelped. Several people dressed in uniforms similar to those worn by ninjas jumped out of the bushes and blocked the girl's path. They stood in front of her, not allowing her to pass any further. One of them yelled out to her, Hey girl, doesn't she want to play with them? Isn't it scary walking this late alone? The girl was startled. I was stunned with fear. What do they want? The girl was shaking with fear. One of the disguised bullies approached her and pulled his hands toward her. But before he could do anything, the girl grabbed his finger painfully and clenched it with such force that a crunch was heard. The boy did not expect such a thing. The plan was about to collapse. Suddenly, the girl forcefully threw the guy over himself, screamed before he could do anything. Does this girl have martial arts skills? She slammed her assailant to the ground with such force that cracks spread out and the ground sagged beneath their feet. What the hell? Didn't he say little sheep? 
The rest of the cloaked bandits became terrified. They realized at that moment that the girl was about to finish them all off. That's what you call pretending to be a pig to kill a tiger, right? The boy's legs shook with fear. The girl exhaled lightly and shook off her hands. She said, although she doesn't like to fight, this is not the case. She pointed her little finger towards the villains. Them she will definitely not spare. They attacked a defenseless girl, although you wouldn't know it at first glance. She unobserved all of this from the side. He picked up the body of the beaten bandit and grinned. This girl looks delicate and weak, yet she is very strong. The others shrank back and began to beg their older brother to help them. The protagonist looked at them in surprise. What do they want? Who were they calling Big Brother? At this time, the very beaten bandits rushed to run away. Xian shouted for him to stop immediately and come back here. The girl looked at him with a belligerent look. So he was the one in charge here? Then she would teach him a lesson as well. At that moment, the boy realized he was going to get in trouble. He waved his arms around and tried to explain. He wanted to say there'd been a little misunderstanding. But the girl didn't listen to him, and already swung around to smack the villain who dared to attack him. An energy aura formed around her. It looked as threatening as possible, so that the protagonist's knees even shook. The cloaked guys looked at each other. They couldn't believe that this guy was really their big brother. Something was wrong here. The other said it didn't make any difference. It was none of their business. Enough gawking time to get out of here. The guy smiled all right. He didn't want to fight the girl, but it seems he has no choice. He'd have to get over himself. Besides, he's bored anyway. Well, now he'll see what this little girl can do. The guy began to accumulate magical energy within himself, and soon an aura of power formed around his body. The two were already a few steps away from starting to fight when suddenly they were stopped by a stern female voice. The two students turned around frightened towards the voice. The female instructor was standing in front of them. Xi'an suddenly realized that he couldn't move. It was as if his entire body was restrained. At this time, the girl was looking at her master with an admiring gaze. In front of them stood a tall, statuesque woman. She looked incredibly beautiful, graceful, but at the same time, power emanated from her. She raised her hand up and said in a stern voice that the Academy had rules prohibiting the use of power for personal use. Have they already forgotten that? The girl walked up to the woman and started apologizing. It's her fault, but that guy's a villain. She pointed her finger at the protagonist. Xi'an boiled with anger. It was just a misunderstanding. He was in some kind of trouble again. The woman looked at her and said that she would sort it out herself and let her go back and keep practicing. The girl nodded obediently. Xi'an continued to try unsuccessfully to break free from the shackles. She walked over to him and started teasing him as if to wipe her hands. The poor kid had no choice but to watch as he was inhumanely bullied. And then, this girl, as if nothing had happened, bent over to him and showed him her tongue. At that moment, the guy boiled with rage. He was ready to strangle her here and now. That little brat. But the girl turned around and with an angelic smile on her face went the other way, leaving the boy to rage somewhere behind. In his thoughts, the guy begged this aunt to talk, just talk. It's not completely different from what her student said. Just let her, let her, let him explain. But the woman looked down at him with a stern look. She looked at the boy but didn't say a word. The woman saw with her discerning gaze that the power within this disciple was different from the usual. Goosebumps ran down the boy's body, did this woman realize that he was a reborn? That's not good. We have to think of something. The woman moved toward him and looked him straight in the eye. In an ingratiating voice, she said the boy had nothing to worry about. She never poked her nose into other people's secrets, even if it was about him, the kid from the Changwan family. The boy felt literally with his whole body that this woman was emanating some kind of ominous aura. Does she know him? She waved her hand and said that first he had to prove to her that he deserved to live in this world. Otherwise, it was hard to imagine what she'd do to him otherwise. The woman jabbed her finger at him, and the guy felt a simply monstrous energy emanating from her body. A clot of this dark force transformed into a ball and flew just a few centimeters from his face. The woman quietly said that otherwise she would just kill him with her own hands. It was obvious from her face that she was not joking in the slightest. Xian Pei is scared to death. This lady is just crazy. 
Auntie, you probably shouldn't take the sin on your soul. The woman waved her hands, dispersing the energy in different directions. She said that he had better memorize what she was saying. Suddenly, a sphere of dark energy appeared in front of the boy and began to slowly envelop him. If that's what he's thinking, it's not good. The energy was being absorbed into his body with every passing second. He still couldn't move and just watched in horror. Breathless, he could literally do nothing. The woman continued to look at him with a calm and stern gaze. She said that this time, let him consider it a gift from all her side. What kind of gifts are these? thought the boy one last time before his body was finally enveloped by magic. A few seconds later, he found himself in some strange place. There was a forest here, too, but a different one. The boy stood, breathing heavily, trying to regain consciousness. Where is he? Suddenly, a familiar voice came from behind him. Someone had called out to him. He turned around and saw his older brother, but he was bloody for some reason and holding his stomach. The protagonist immediately picked him up under his arms, trying to support him so he wouldn't finally flop to the ground. Xi'an asked, What happened? And why is he injured? Hu was breathing heavily and said that he wanted to go behind the mountain and kill a magical beast to obtain a level one magic core for him. But he accidentally disturbed a rank three beast and received a couple of blows from it. His big brother was smiling as if he didn't feel any pain at all. He was holding the same magic stone in his hands and said with a smile that he thought he wouldn't be able to get out. He didn't expect his younger brother to come to his aid. Unfortunately, he didn't have much time left. So let brother take this magic core. Xi'an looked at him with a frightened look. What do you mean he doesn't have long left? His brother didn't listen to him and placed the magic stone in the boy's hand. Soon he would have to participate in the rookie tournament and this core will help him become stronger. The older brother's hand weakened, and he quickly fell to the ground. Brother clutched the magic stone in his hands, barely holding back tears. So he had actually gone out that afternoon to get that core. Who smiled, and overcoming the pain said, they are brothers after all. May his younger brother forgive him for being able to help him only in this way. He walked in the other direction, still squirming in pain. Xi'an needs to do well in the rookie tournament the boy wondered. Did his brother really think that this stone was so important since he risked even his own life for this core? Xi'an stood and looked at his brother who was sitting on the ground and breathing heavily from his injuries. Suddenly, he lay on the ground and folded his arms on his chest like a meth on his deathbed. What's that brother doing? Asked the boy without understanding anything. Who was lying on the ground breathing heavily? He told the fourth brother that this was all he could do for him. Well, please let him take his ashes. The brother gave a fake cough. The guy scratched the back of his head and asked if he'd had enough. He examined his wounds. They are only superficial, so he won't die. Whose eyes bulged with surprise. Really? He thought he was dying. He laughed a wrenching laugh, but immediately coughed. Xi'an thanked his big brother, but if he wasn't here, then he might die from blood loss. Xi'an tugged his wounds with a torn off piece of sleeve. Everything was fine now, he was in no danger. So far, he had tightened his wounds. The bleeding had stopped. If Big Brother hurried to the academy, he would be treated and everything would be fine. Hu laughed and stroked his younger brother's head. He's a great guy, no wonder Uncle praised him so much. At this time, a female teacher was discreetly watching them. She smirked. Good. She was hovering in the air, absorbed in magical energy. She couldn't be seen from here. The woman looked at them with a stern look, but for a second they had a flicker of sympathy. She said to herself that this kid still had a lot of hardships and trials ahead of him. The towers of the academy rushed upward toward the sun itself. The day of the rookie competition had arrived, the most important event at the academy. The tournament was about to begin. There were many people crowded below, Everyone was wondering who would be this year's rookie king. People were crowding, trying to take the most comfortable seats. The arena was already completely filled. People were sitting in their seats and impatiently waiting for the tournament to begin. There was so much noise everywhere that you had to cover your ears not to go deaf. The arena was really big. As expected for an honor academy like this, even a rookie tournament could make so much noise. 
The protagonist looked around, examining the people present. It was very easy to get lost in such a crowd. Suddenly he heard his brother's shriek of exasperation. All the people present slanted their eyes in his direction, and the protagonist could hardly stand on his feet. Who stood on the platform, supporting his brother with all his might? In his hands, Ona held a huge flag with the banner of his clan. His arm was bandaged, but nevertheless it did not prevent him from being on full alert. The boy scratched the back of his head and felt embarrassed. With such a caring brother, he would often have to worry about embarrassing moments. The calm and even voice of the principal sounded. He addressed the students, waving a luxurious fan in front of his face. Everyone present stared at him. In front of them stood a young man dressed in the same uniform as the students. His name was Bai An, and he was the vice principal of the academy. He would be the one to conduct today's rookie tournament. The man smiled and folded his fan. He said that the prize for winning was the same as last year. First place will receive a level three monster core. Second place will receive a level two monster core. And third place will get a level one monster core. And the top 50 players will receive an amethyst coin. The same brother and sister looked at each other with surprised and stunned eyes. The brother said that if she made it to the top 50, she would get amethyst coins. One amethyst coin was enough to cover living among a statistical family for a whole ten years in advance. There were also the same students who bullied the protagonist, members of the Kadi clan. They were squinting at the rest of the points with displeasure and disgust. The girl snickered and said that the poor people who hadn't seen the world yet were so surprised by a single amethyst coin. That was funny. The guy grinned and said he had more pocket money alone than three amethyst coins. The herald waved his hand and said that based on the group draw, an elimination tournament would begin. Only two rules, no weapons and no killing. He hoped all would be well and everyone would abide by the rules. The man smiled and waved his fan in different directions. It was obvious that he was very happy as much as the students. Now he will announce the start of the competition. The crowd roared with joy. Everyone started waving their hands. To the protagonist, it seemed very pompous. None of this interested him. The Kadi clan guy glared wryly at the protagonist and told him to be careful. Let him not drop out early. He can't wait to personally break him in half. The girl chided him and said that if this goes on, she didn't think they were destined to meet. Xi'an sighed and said that in the Battle of Tongues, they are definitely no match for each other. Hearing this, they both became furious. How dare that bastard? Let him get him in the ring. He won't get away with it. The guy didn't listen to this anymore, but just went about his business. The tournament began, and literally in the first round, the protagonist knocked out his opponent with one punch. It was no problem at all for him. His older brother was cheering him on from the stands the whole time. Liang from the Kadi clan was not inferior to him either. He knocked out his opponents one by one. The contestants were quickly eliminated, and soon there were very few of them left. The good-natured fatty fought a girl who quickly lost. She was instantly knocked out of the ring, but she didn't seem to be too upset about it. They talked to each other like good friends. The quarterfinals had begun. The leaderboard already made it clear who the favorites were. Now it was time for the protagonist and the clan girl to meet. Her name was Chu Li. She was looking at him with disgust. Now she would wipe him into powder. Encouraging cheers could be heard from the stands. Everyone was cheering for their favorite. Hu shouted with all his might, but his little brother didn't seem to pay any attention to him. He was picking his nose so far the tournament was very boring. Chu Li threw herself at him immediately. The girl was intent on stomping her opponent. After all, this little brat was getting on her nerves. She already wanted to bring her hand in a punch, but the kid deftly dodged at the same moment. The girl missed. The protagonist stood as if it was a simple entertainment for him. Chu Li waved her hands in an attempt to get at this little brat, but he dodged every time with incredible agility. The girl became furious. How could this kid dodge so easily? She tried her best to hit him, but nothing worked. It made her furious. After another punch, the protagonist got bored, so now it was his turn. The guy swung, now he's breaking her right. Chu Li already realized that she couldn't dodge now. The girl only watched in horror as the boy's fist moved towards her face. She clenched her teeth with such force that she even bit down on the stick she was chewing on all the time. The fist stopped at the last moment, and the girl was only doused with a wave of air. 
If the boy had struck, she probably would have died at the same moment. Their gazes crossed. The girl's gaze was very scared. The guy said in a calm voice that he didn't want to hit the girl, so let her just admit defeat. Chu Li was shocked. Isn't he stronger than her? There's no way. The girl gritted her teeth. Anger was boiling inside her. She can't lose to some scum. She'd be a laughingstock. The girl shouted that this wasn't the end and swung her leg to hit the guy as hard as she could. Xian easily blocked her punch with his hand, but the girl was stubborn. He was starting to get tired of this. Suddenly, he saw something shiny on her boot. It was a small spike, and if he didn't look closely, he wouldn't notice it. Xian. Everything was perfectly visible. He saw the small spike shoot out of her boot and head straight for his face. The guy realized with horror that it seemed he couldn't dodge. The needle had almost reached his eye and was only a few millimeters away from his pupil. The girl was already celebrating the victory. This one he definitely cannot dodge. She won. Xian looked at the needle rapidly approaching his eye and concentrated all his strength to avoid disaster. His eyes filled with energy. He tried his best to stop the lethal weapon flying at him. It worked after all. His technique had stopped the needle. Now he had to redirect it, but he had to do it discreetly. Xian tensed up and using his technique with all his might redirected the needle directly at the girl. Now the clot of energy flew into her head. The girl still wouldn't have time to dodge it. She was hit in the head by a powerful blow, she screamed, and began to fall backwards. Xian Xiang brushed the sweat off his forehead and sighed heavily. Thanks to the sword technique, he was able to pull this off. If it wasn't for this technique, this all could have ended very sadly. There was a whispering noise through the stands. The spectators had definitely seen something. They saw something fly out of her boot, but why did the girl fall? No one could see from this distance, but it seemed to them that there was something wrong here. The referee instantly ran over to them. Fortunately, it was only an ordinary poison needle, so no one was badly hurt. The protagonist stood beside him and crossed his arms over his chest, unhappily telling him to finally announce the winner already. The judge raised his hand up and shouted that the girl was disqualified as a result of breaking the rules. The winner is Xian Tian, the stands roared. The guy stood and basked in the glory. His older brother just didn't know where to put his happiness for his little brother. He grabbed onto the two people standing next to him and started squeezing them. The people tried to break free, but his grip was ironclad. While the big brother was shouting with joy, the Kadi clan members were furious. Their plan didn't work. Besides, one of them was qualified. The principal approached the boy and said that he had done a nifty thing. The boy turned around and looked in his direction incredulously. Was that a compliment? It felt like the vice principal was up to something. The table of leaders was slowly changing. There were fewer and fewer participants, and the final was nearing its logical conclusion. The two clan members were standing and talking to each other. No one here could hear them. The guy with red hair handed the second brother a vial of some liquid. It's a forbidden drug that will strengthen him for a while. He needs to take this potion. Liang was horrified. Does he not believe in his own strength? The guy smiled and said, he can't rely on chance alone. The third sister had greatly embarrassed their family. He must win the competition and restore their reputation. Liang nodded. All right, he will only do it for their family's sake. At this time, the main character held up another victory. His opponent was lying down and was unconscious. The matter was progressing easier and easier. Xian stood and enjoyed the attention of the audience. Suddenly, that same good-natured fatty walked up to him and patted him on the shoulder. He said the guy was going to be amazing. Fatty's name was Tai Ta. They bumped fists and wished each other good luck. Tai grinned and said that now they would see each other in the finals. Liang standing, and he didn't look like himself. His veins suddenly swelled up. He looked like some kind of beast. Xian. This definitely noticed and took a closer look at this person. There was definitely something wrong with him. His opponent was the very same fatty. He smiled and good-naturedly said that he was very strong. So he wouldn't hold back. Liang shouted in rage for him to stop talking and start fighting. The principal joyfully struck the bell with all his might and heralded the start of the match. The opponents prepared to punch each other in the face. Tai Ta swung around, preparing his huge fist. This guy looked impressive. Liang Tu also swung around and gritted his teeth. The guy was simply furious. 
His mind felt like it was covered in a veil. He couldn't see anything but his opponent. Their fists came into contact, and there was a blow of such force that it seemed as if the space around them was about to break. Poor good-natured Fatty did not expect such force and flew backwards. He what? I was able to throw him back. He couldn't believe his eyes, for until now no one could defeat him. The fat man's physical strength was unbelievable, and now this guy had thrown him away like a toy. Liang, without wasting a second, I shouted that this fucking pig was going to die. He punched the poor guy in the stomach with all his might, so that his mouth even bled. The poor man coughed up blood, his breath hitched, and his heart seemed to stop beating for a second. The blow was of incredible force. Liang screamed, his brain had completely shut down, and he was determined to kill his opponent here and now. But suddenly, he was stopped by the headmaster. He grabbed the rampaging guy's arm and quickly pulled back. Xi'an ran up to his comrade and began to examine his body, asking, how is he feeling? The poor guy was lying on the ground and seemed to be unconscious. Tai coughed and apologized to his friend for losing. Xi'an smiled and said it was okay. He would avenge his friend. They smiled at each other. The guy won't just let it go. Xi'an turned to his rival and squeamishly asked, is he ready to die? Liang already completely mad. He shouted that he would bury him right here and now live. He was only stopped by the principal who held his hands tightly. Xiang asked the principal, Can we start the final match right here and now? The principal looked at him in surprise, continuing to hold Liang. Hu suddenly broke into their conversation. He shouted that this person had definitely used a drug. This is unforgivable. We need to expel him immediately. But the principal didn't seem to be listening to him at all. He was curious to see this one himself. He said that if they are all ready... This final match starts right now. Who, meanwhile, was trying to shout at him and asking to be expelled at last? He was yelling that the principal was just covering for them. He's a shameless freak, covering up, covering them up. The principal tried his best to ignore it. Eventually, he got fed up with it and shoved the pesky student away, shouting for him to go and think about his behavior. Xi'an looked at all this with undisguised surprise. His older brother knows something? The principal looked at him. He knew everything. Was this kid so confident in his strength that he would still dare to take the fight? The opponents stood there and glared at each other with hateful looks. Liang shouted that in order to defeat him, he had to let go of his pride and become like this. He didn't want that himself. Now this kid will learn what happens to those who cross their family. Liang slammed his fist into the ground with such force that it cracked under his feet. Xi'an closed himself off from the cloud of dust flying at him. Liang was like some kind of demon standing in front of him. His eyes were covered with a veil. He could not see anything in front of him and was only breathing heavily. A fire seemed to emanate from him. Liang was now so strong that he was completely covered in saint energy. He seemed to be composed of it. He said that he was now at the 10th level of saint power. Does this kid really think he can defeat him? It didn't make any impression. He just waved away the annoying dust. He would find out soon enough. Liang couldn't take this kind of bullying anymore. Let's see how he can smile. Now he would beat the crap out of him. Liang concentrated all his energy and swung his fist to kill the annoying freak. Xiang dodged, dodged, and the punch passed him. Seconds more and his opponent would fall to the ground. He successfully ducked, and now his opponent's arm was in close proximity. Action could be taken. He caught the elbow with his hand and redirected the full force of the blow to the opposite side. Liang could no longer control his strength, and his fist flew straight into his jaw, all the force came down on himself. The blow was so strong that he couldn't stay on his feet and flew in the opposite direction. How would he stay alive after such a blow? He was lying on the ground, not realizing anything. His head was ringing from the blow. How did it happen? Xi'an standing and smiling, he was pleased with his ingenuity. This was the way in which he would win without a single blow. Liang was furious. He couldn't believe that some kid would be able to topple him to the ground so cleverly and with his own punch. He dodged, pushing off with his arms. He aimed his foot straight at his opponent's face. But that wasn't all. Xi'an Tu didn't want to give up either. He grabbed his opponent's leg so tightly that he couldn't move it. With a dodge, he lifted the boy's leg high up, intending to topple him to the ground. The boy could no longer stand on his hands. A few seconds later, he flipped over doing a somersault and fell into a twine. Tears glistened in his eyes. He was incredibly hurt and angry. How dare that little freak make him look like a fool?
All those present in the stands broke out into loud laughter. They had a lot of fun watching such a hilarious spectacle. What's this kid doing? Did they come to find clowns? The head of the Cotty clan was furious. What the hell is second brother doing? Let him be serious. After all, their family's honor is at stake. Xi'an. At this time, he was twirling around in a dance with his hands raised as if nothing had happened. It seemed to be a simple entertainment for him. The second brother poked his finger at him and asked resentfully, Can't he fight him without dirty tricks? The protagonist squinted his eyes. Okay, now he would fight seriously. He exhaled lightly. Liang Just was blazing with rage like a demon. Now this little guy will go to the other world. He would definitely finish him off now. Xi'an began to concentrate his holy power, accumulating it in every cell of his body. Suddenly he began to move with such speed that his opponent couldn't even notice him. He was like a whirlwind. After a few seconds, the protagonist found himself already near his opponent and swung his fist to knock him out with one punch. Looks like the guy didn't even dodge. The fist hit the target, but it didn't do any damage. Liang loudly laughed. These punches wouldn't do him any damage. His opponent became faster, but not stronger. Xi'an looked at him furtively and asked, Who said it was a punch? Indeed, it was only a deceptive maneuver. The real strike was only being prepared. Liang didn't understand anything. What else did it mean? He gritted his teeth and prepared to fight back, at the speed was incredibly great. After a few moments, the main character's fist flew straight into his face, blood spurted from his nose, and the guy clenched his eyes. It looked like all his teeth were flying out of his mouth. The blows fell one by one, the opponent could not do anything and just stood there like a punching bag. The blows were so strong that the guy pressed into the ground and there began to crack under his body. The protagonist kept hitting. The blows were too many. He was like a machine gun at that moment. Finally, the blows stopped and the poor man lay on the ground that had cracked under the pressure. His whole face was swollen and bruised. Xi'an looked at him with disdain and said that he was lucky he couldn't use a sword in the tournament or he would have been killed for sure. Suddenly, a realization came to him and he slapped his forehead with the palm of his hand. Devil, he's a sword saint after all, and now he's standing here bullying a child. If anyone in his world found out about this, it would be very embarrassing. The principal loudly announced the winner, Xi'an becomes this year's rookie king. The man turned around at the protagonist and smiled his fake smile. This kid is only 14 years old, but why does he feel like he has a lot of experience in battles? He's more like a child with the soul of an adult in his body. The principal smiled, and I was told it was lucky that they had such a capable student this year. He is definitely up to something. Suddenly, from wherever you are in a balloon, whose older brother appeared and started taunting the opponents. Look at that. Kadi had lost all their reputation. Even after cheating, they lost to his brother. What a disgrace. Suddenly, his balloon was pierced by something, and air began to abruptly escape from it. Now he would crash to the ground. The principal and the main character said in one voice that he was too noisy. Yeah, that was them. They threw hidden blades into the balloon. The balloon began to gain altitude under the air pressure and flew high up. Back afterward, it shouted that it would still surely come back. The guy with red hair was just boiling with rage. He wouldn't let it go. He would still avenge his family's shame. He clenched his fist so hard that the concrete in his hands began to crack. It couldn't be left like this. He needed revenge, and revenge would be sweet. Now in front of himself, he swore he would make these two disappear from the academy forever. He was simply on fire from the anger that was overwhelming him. The sun was about to set, the rookie tournament was over, and the winners had already been announced. The headmaster placed a small chest in front of the protagonist. Opening it revealed a view of a beautiful stone. The headmaster smiled and congratulated the guy on becoming this year's rookie king. He pointed to the stone. This is his award. He is awarded a level three monster core for first place. The guy can take it to go. The boy briefly grabbed the offering and stuffed it under his armpit. If it's all over, then he'll go about his business. The principal continued with the presentation of the awards. In parting, he told the boy to keep working so hard, for he had great hopes for the student. Xi'an squinted his eyes and made a disgruntled grimace. He was already tired of this. In addition, the principal was annoying him. The boy opened the doors and moved outside. 
The vice principal turned to the principal and asked what he thought of this student. Behind him, a little old man sat on the windowsill and smoked a big, long pipe. In an aged voice, he said the boy was very talented and mature for his age. Is he really 14 years old? Should the academy sponsor his education and training? The old man said that it is not necessary for now. Some people may not approve of it. The vice principal asked, does he mean them? There was a special emphasis on the last word. The principal smirked and said that if this student passed the next test, they would make their move. The man folded his arms and bowed obediently. He understood everything now. It became their time to act. Xi'an walked out of the office. His older brother was already waiting for him at the entrance. The boy turned a surprised look over to him. What is he doing here? Is he spying on him? Who was sitting on the sidelines with his arms folded across his chest, seemingly asleep? As soon as he heard his younger brother's voice, it immediately turned to him and began to question him. Why had he been summoned to the principal's office? What had he said? The kid showed him the chest and said he was just given a reward. Xi'an, smiling with a full mouth, said that since Big Brother almost died trying to get the monster core for him, he was giving the core to him. Who suddenly took my usual serious look and said that this reward was for his brother? so he shouldn't give it away so easily. The boy wanted to contradict him, but he interrupted him. The older brother said loudly that he should obey his elders, that is him. Grateful Guy smiled and nodded. Good, he will keep this reward for himself since his brother asks him so. Who brotherly hello hugged him and smiled with a full mouth. That's a good boy. Now they have to go. We need to throw a party to honor and restore the king. The two brothers hugged each other and moved forward. There were posters everywhere with words of encouragement written on them. Xi'an again was embarrassed and asked his older brother, Is this his work? Who smiled proudly and said that it was. It's a big win, and he is very proud of his brother. Suddenly the protagonist listened and said that there was something wrong here. It felt like they were being watched. Who started to turn his head in different directions, but there was no one here. What is he talking about? But it wasn't that simple. All of a sudden, someone's quick footsteps were heard from outside. Looks like they won't be left alone today. It was still the same members of the Cadi clan. They weren't going to endure such humiliation like this. Their honor had been compromised in the tournament today, and now they must take revenge on them. Second brother said that this guy was showing demonic strength, so don't underestimate him. The first brother looked down at them and turned to the protagonist. He said that the guy defeated his second brother and third sister with the forbidden dot method, and now he wants justice for his family. Who warded off his younger brother with his hand a little to the side? He said that this pompous turkey just wants to regain his reputation. If he has the courage, yes, he can fight him. The first brother's mouth stretched into a predatory grin. He asked in a dull voice, is he so sure of his victory? An energy aura began to swirl around him, there was no way this fatty could handle him. Who was surprised? He had already learned how to turn holy power into a weapon. Indeed, a long, sharp spear was formed in the boy's hands. At this time, the protagonist slightly shivered in fear. Is this man stronger than his older brother? At this time, the man continued to admire himself. He looked incredibly belligerent, now Hugh Academy along with his petty brother. But then he calmed down and said that I, his family, is known for a theme that convinces people by its virtue. They do not fight the unarmed. The lad threw him this very spear. The weapon soared upward and flew straight into the hands of his older brother. He deftly caught the weapon and smiled. So what if he had reached the saint level? Big brother still isn't afraid of him. Xi'an stood behind him and was wary. Suddenly, big brother told him to leave this place, and he would detain these people in the meantime. Xi'an looked at him in surprise. Without waiting for an answer, the elder brother rushed forward to attack, concentrating his holy power. Now they would definitely not escape him. His opponent rushed towards him. Now he's going to kill him. The guy's too arrogant. It's time to shorten his long tongue. Their weapons clashed with each other and there was a clang of metal. The tension in the air had reached its limit. Even the air was electrified. Suddenly, the older brother noticed with horror that his weapon was breaking under the onslaught of his opponent. One blade began to cut into the other. This was simply unthinkable. 
Soon, his spear cracked in half. Hu managed to dodge at the last moment, and his opponent's blade slid a few centimeters from his head. What a devil! This was bad. The guy gritted his teeth and prepared to repel the next blow. He jumped to his feet and shouted for his opponent not to underestimate him. He grabbed his arms and squeezed him tightly. Turning on his brother, he ordered him to get out of here immediately. Kadi grinned. Did he really think he would be stopped by this? The young man's body began to burst into flames. A fire sphere began to form around him, pushing the poor man aside. He clenched his teeth and flew backwards. Now he would show them the difference between them. The man was already ready to kill the poor man here and now. He concentrated all his strength into the blow. His blow was so powerful that the poor big brother flew aside, bouncing off the ground like a ball. Xian picked him up, preventing him from falling further. He would not leave his big brother in trouble. Hu looked at him in surprise and asked why he was still here. There was blood dripping from the guy S mouth. Xian said that he couldn't just leave him here. Xian came in furious. How dare this freak injure his brother? Now he wouldn't let him go so easily. Wounded and now he'll just wipe him into powder. His older brother wanted to stop him. This rival was too strong. But the protagonist did not listen to him and confidently walked towards these bastards. The second brother tugged the first brother's sleeve and asked him to let him deal with the two himself. The sister supported them from afar. Liang Nu fingered his opponent and said that he was not ready last time. But the protagonist didn't seem to listen to him and just came closer and closer. The second brother did not have time to speak before a powerful punch hit him in the jaw. It seems he lost a few more teeth at this point. Liang flew aside like a piece of fluff thrown away by a mighty gust of wind. Xi'an was furious. He said that he did not intend to listen to the barking of his yapping dogs. Now he would deal with them and finally end their tyranny. The masked man standing next to him was horrified. The little guy threw him off with one slap to the face. Just how strong is he? Xiang walked up to Yun and raised his head up and said that he would deal with him himself. Kadi Yun smiled and said that he recognized his strength. He was able to defeat his second brother. But even who, being at the tenth level of Saint Force, couldn't handle him. What can a pitiful level eight do? Their sister kept shouting to support her brothers, while Yun the echidna smirked clearly feeling his superiority. The protagonist took on his true form for a moment. Well, he wouldn't mind playing with it now. Suddenly, it was as if a grown man appeared in place of the young boy, the same one who had been hiding in the child's body all this time. Xian frowned and said that he hoped that he would last until the end. He began to accumulate his energy, and it was as if nature itself had quieted down at this moment. His body began to literally exude holy power. Xian looked at him with the gaze of a true assassin. Right now, he was only interested in one thing, how to deal with this brat. Yun grasped his own and shouted that against his absolute strength, these pathetic tricks were simply useless. He's going to wipe him out. The guy threw himself right on top of him. Now he was going to stuff him and his older brother. It's like he's gone mad. The two rivals stood opposite each other, their energies clashing in a mad dance. There could only be one winner here. They were both as strong as each other, and now it was a battle to the death. Xi'an now did not hold back. He stood in a real fighting stance. His opponent had a weapon, and this made it difficult. But it was necessary to avenge his brother. The guy concentrated all his energy in his fist. Now it carries its crushing blow. The fist still reached its goal. It made contact with his opponent's jaw, and at that moment, it was as if time had stopped. The power was so unbelievable that it spewed out in a continuous stream. But it turned out that these attempts were useless. The saint's skin was just harder than steel. Yun He returned and swung his spear to cut the wretched freak in half. But the protagonist easily returned, and the blade whistled through the air. Xi'an moved with incredible speed, and the weapon could not reach him. For a second, fear flashed through him. Would such a strike have no effect? We had to try something else. The elder brother watched this monstrous fight with horror that his little brother should retreat, for he was too strong for him. Yun swung with his weapon, concentrating his energy in it. Now the protagonist was right in the line of attack, and it was impossible to dodge. Xi'an smiled. He realized that the saint's strength was really very great. However, it was not that simple. His opponent brought his spear straight down on the ground. It hit me, but the impact struck the ground like an earthquake. The boy dodged in time. 
Xi'an was standing a little to the side, gaining his strength. Yes, indeed, his skin was very hard, but there was one small nuance. Even with all of his unbreakable armor, his joints were still just as fragile. Whistling through the air, it struck straight into his opponent's arm. The arm was twisted backwards by the force of the blow. The joint was irreparably broken. The guy didn't take hold of his arm and screamed in pain. This can't be. He's a saint. Xi'an glanced at them with disdain. The spoiled nobles didn't seem to have any experience in real fighting. The sister immediately ran up to her brother and started asking what happened to him. What happened to his arm? But her brother sharply pushed her aside and ordered her to get out. The girl cried and clutched her eyes shut. Yun ran up to Xi'an and grabbed him by the scruff of the neck, shouting that he would kill him immediately. But the boy seemed to be completely calm. In a steady voice, he asked if he had ever killed anyone. Yun stopped and whined his eyes out. What did he just say? For a second, fear ran across his face. Xi'an looked threatening. He had accumulated enough energy and said that it was better for his opponent to take his word for it. If they continued this battle, Yun would die a simply horrible death. So let him get the hell out of here or die right now. Yun came to be horrified by this. He literally felt threatened by this kid with his whole body. He backed up that he wouldn't get away with it. His sister was surprised. Her big brother was retreating. Unbelievable. Xi'an disdainfully looked at them afterward. He decided to run away after all. What a loser. Who watched his younger brother admiringly? He asked his brother, is he really 14 years old? When he fights, he looks absolutely terrifying. Xi'an waved his hands, trying to drive suspicion away from him, but he didn't know what to say. Now he would have a lot of explaining to do. He made a naive, childish face, but he did not do it well, and it turned out to be some kind of horrible grimace. What's the big brother talking about? He's only 14 if he wants to go out and play. Hu squirmed in fear and started stuttering. He believes him. Just don't make that face. The protagonist wanted to get closer to his brother, but he waved his hands and said in horror that the boy should not come near him. The boys didn't notice that someone was already watching them. It was the vice principal. He laughed and said that the little guy was so funny. What did she think of him? He had a female figure in the background. It was the same woman who had met them in the woods. She looked away and said she shouldn't praise the boy so much. Besides, it wasn't up to her whether he lived or died. The woman looked sadly forward. Besides, the people from above have noticed this boy and will now be watching him closely. After all, this is his fate. At this time, the main character laughed heartily and tried to cheer up his scared-to-death older brother. The next day, he had a lot of things to do at the academy. He couldn't manage to sit down for a second because his older brother was very unreliable. Xi'an held a large stack of books in his hands and was walking somewhere. Big brother, too unreliable, suddenly decided to go private and told him to return the books to the library for him. Strange. The guy pondered, because of his carelessness, he had to teach his brother cultivation techniques from his past life. After all, that way, there would be a lot of unnecessary questions for him, and that was something that couldn't be allowed. The older brother was incredibly surprised by his younger brother's knowledge. He had been away from his family for several years. No wonder he knew nothing about this cultivation technique. The protagonist scratched the back of his head and blurted out that he had read Oni in the books of the family library as well. Who he was simply delighted with this technique, he would definitely reach the saint level. It was time to train hard. At this moment, why did he suddenly get so excited? Xi'an heavily sighed and brought out heavy books. He was terribly bored and didn't feel like doing anything at all. Suddenly, his gaze slid down to the cover of one of the books. However, he had one more little question. On the cover of the book was an incredibly beautiful half-naked woman. She was playfully looking directly at the main character, as if inviting him to join her. Where in the library such books beg signs seems now he understands why couldn't the older brother concentrate on training. Xi'an stood right in front of the library entrance. The building was really huge. From afar, it looked more like some kind of temple. The boy's eyes lit up with joy. This is what a library is like. It's pretty big. The boy was unspeakably happy. There would probably be a lot of cultivation books in there. After all, this library was much larger than the family library. 
It looked like he had found a great place to cultivate. Xi'an already ran towards the entrance of the library. But suddenly he was blocked by someone's two powerful hands. From somewhere, a voice was heard ordering him to stop. Two guys stood in front of him. One of them said in an important voice that he had to pay to get into the library. The guy was surprised. How? Pay? The guy said that since Kadi Yun had returned home, this library was now under Liu Jian's control. Xi'an asked with feigned surprise, did he decide to take a break from studying? The guy guarding the library told him to stop asking questions. Just let him pay and he can go. Xi'an didn't understand anything. He literally felt someone approaching him from behind with his back. Indeed, there were two more guys coming towards him from behind. They had ridiculously tall hairstyles on their heads. Xi'an was considerably shorter in height and raised his head to see who had come to him. One of the guys said that this was nonsense. The library grounds belonged to Cheng Mingxian. Besides, it's not their turn to charge admission. The first guy scratched his head and agreed. They are all classmates here, so let them dispense with conflicts for now. Xi'an has to pay for two passes. The protagonist began to shake his head and looked at one guy and the other. He sighed heavily. Are these two serious? This is just some kind of mockery. One of the guys just knocked the books out of his hands. He yelled that they were charging admission for everyone. Now let him do as he's told. Otherwise, let him prepare for the worst. Their faces changed. It was obvious that these guys definitely wouldn't just let him in. Xi'an Yu really didn't want to stand out, but he would have to. There is no other choice. The boy sighed heavily. The sounds of blows were heard from afar. The protagonist is looking for trouble again. A few seconds later, both boys were on their knees begging for mercy. They won't do it again. Let the brother let them go. Xi'an decided to play teacher for a bit and asked what they had done wrong. The boys kneeled down and said in a frightened tone that they had collected money for library entrances and shouldn't do that again. The main character bent down to pick up the book with the very woman as he suddenly felt someone looking down on him from above. He looked up. In front of him stood the very girl with whom they had almost fought in that forest. It's her again. Xi'an felt that some mishap was about to happen again. The girl pouted her lips and said in a nasty voice that her teacher had told her that he wasn't a bad person. But it turned out that all those people who charge money to enter the library were his henchmen. The girl pouted even more as well, and at something she saw. She picked up the very book with the girl from the ground. How dare he read such lewd books? Xi'an literally choked on air at this. Here we go again. He grabbed the book and held it against him. There was another misunderstanding. He just needs to explain everything. Let the girl just hear him out. She folded her arms across her chest and looked at him with a scornful look. This is just a pervert. She definitely won't spare him this time. The poor guy waved his hands. She girl didn't listen to him in any way. She misunderstood everything again. This is not his book, and these guys are not his henchmen. The girl pouted even more. He's still in denial. She heard those people calling him brother. She heard it all perfectly well. The girl swung around and hit the main character in Jaws with all her might. He didn't even have time to do anything and flew off to the side. He turned around at those two, and it took them to explain everything to her at last. But they were already running away with all their legs screaming. Let him just wait, and they would immediately avenge him for everything. Xi'an now didn't know what to do. Damn it. The situation was getting more and more complicated. There was no choice left and the guy began to concentrate his magical energy in preparation for another strike. Now he's going to show this girl for sure. The girl got ready and realized he was attacking. Xi'an started to look threatening again. A magical aura that could scare anyone was emanating from his body. He put his arm forward and prepared to strike. The girl was not frightened and her pupils narrowed. Xi'an suddenly jabbed his finger behind her back and shouted that the vice principal was standing there. There was genuine terror on the guy's face. The girl also turned around and fearfully looked in that direction. But as it turned out, it was just a trick. The protagonist taking advantage of the moment began to run away in the opposite direction. He just fooled her. It was a better option than showing his strength again. Started to turn her head in different directions, but no principle was there. She realized she had been tricked. The girl puffed up her cheeks in resentment. She was filled with anger, but from afar it looked cute rather than intimidating. She started stomping her feet. The girl was beyond furious. 
It was the villain who had escaped again. Let him just get caught by her one more time. Next time, he would definitely be the end of him. Xi'an hid around the corner and watched the girl freak out. Everything worked. Now it was just a matter of not giving himself away. The girl hummed and said that she was in a bad mood because of that rascal back. Xi'an sighed heavily. He should avoid this girl for now. He was a sword saint. There was no point in him fighting seriously with a little girl. Indeed, one must have some pride. But suddenly, from behind his back, the headmaster's voice was heard. Smiling, he said that the boy was very good at hide and seek. The main character looked at him dumbfounded, and his eyes bulged. As soon as he saw the principal, his knees shook with fear. What is he doing here? Where did he come from? The headmaster put his hand on the wall and approached the boy. He looked at him with his sly gaze and waved his fan. Also, he was very good at pretending. Xi'an stood and didn't know what to say. He apologized to the principal, but he didn't understand what to talk about. The principal looked at him from top to bottom and asked, what is his relationship with this girl? Why is he avoiding her? Xi'an Gai sighed and even blushed a little. It's not to say that they have any kind of relationship. This was only the second time he had interacted with her. There was a slight misunderstanding, and to not make things worse, he decided to run away from her. The vice principal turned around and asked the guy if he believed in fate. The protagonist's eyes bulged. What is this uncle talking about? What kind of riddles? The vice principal smiled. He said, I, in this academy, there are four main areas. There are a total of 10,000 students here, and he thinks that the meeting of these two is nothing but fate. The boy wondered what kind of fate is this. It's one big misunderstanding. The principal laughed and said that soon the boy will realize everything. And now, he had to go do his own thing. And he ran off in the other direction, leaving the boy alone with his thoughts. Xi'an still didn't understand anything. He looked after the fleeing man. After all, he would never be able to find out what this strange man was thinking. The boy sat down and began to pick up the books that were still lying on the floor. Oh, well. I'll just have to get them to the library. Suddenly, a familiar voice came from outside. It was the same guy who tried to steal from him at the library. He shouted to his brothers that it was the same guy pointing at the protagonist. Now he needs to be taught a lesson. The protagonist turned around. In front of him stood already several dozen people dressed in the same uniform. The guy continued to rant. He said that this freak took advantage of the fact that there weren't enough of them. But now he'll find out what happens to those who go against them. Xi'an stood in front of them, looking at them with surprised eyes. What on earth is this? What kind of attack? He just wanted to return the books to the library. Is it really that difficult? Why does everyone who meets him want to get him? Well, it couldn't be helped. Soon, everyone else was also kneeling in front of him and begging for mercy, saying they were wrong. The boy smiled and looked at them over his shoulder and said, let them stand like that and think about their behavior for a while. And he should get those damn books back. The boy walked into the library while the rest of them continued to kneel and obediently obey their big brother. Some man ran quickly across the courtyard and shouted that things were very bad. Opening the doors, he shouted for Brother Luo Jian. Their people were beaten up near the library. A huge, heavy hammer came down on the ground and surrendered just a monstrous sound. The man was frightened, his knees shook with fear. Luo Jian, standing in front of him, holding a huge sledgehammer in his hands. He was a muscular guy who looked very formidable. He looked at the newcomer with a disdainful look. The man shifted his formidable gaze to the side and asked in a rough voice, who dared to touch his men? A huge beast that looked like a mixture of a boar monkey and a lion stood and stared forward with its blurred eyes. There was blood spatter everywhere. It appeared that there had been a monstrous fight. The beast roared with a wrenching roar, revealing its bloody, toothy mouth, which seemed to have a split tongue. Suddenly, the monster's body was torn apart. Blood splattered in different directions, showering everything around it. In the center stood someone completely covered in blood. He looked up with crazy bloodshot eyes. Who was that? He asked, holding a bloody skull in his hands. Xi'an walked out of the library. A cluster of people were already waiting for him there. The boy sighed heavily. Finally, the books were finished. There was no way he would ever help his brother with such things again. He had had enough. Suddenly, he saw this cluster of people and turned his surprised gaze on them. What has happened here? Why were so many people standing here? Did someone die? 
Xi'an squeezed through the crowd to see what had happened. People were standing in rows, looking forward. In the center stood that muscular man and spoke in a loud voice. He asked, since Ka Di Yun had decided to take a break, did Cheng Mixiang want to stand in his position as the person in charge? The man frantically continued to stare at him. Ah, uh, he's a quick thinker. Ka Di Yun had never been their equal. They just didn't want to waste their time on him. Xi'an looked at the real person next to him and asked, What's going on here? The one turned to him and asked, Did he hear me? Someone beat up Cheng Mixiang and Luo Jian's men. The boy stepped forward and said that of course he heard, for he himself was the one who did it. The man asked, then why is he asking if he knows? Stop? What? After saying that, everyone walked away from him horrified, so he did it. The boy just stared at them with astonishment. What's gotten into them? A man with a swollen face pointed his finger at him and said he was responsible. Two men came up to him and looked down on him with astonished looks. Luo Jian smiled predatorily and asked, is this the one who injured his men? He had heard something about him. This kid is kind of the one who became the rookie king this year, right? The man with long hair smiled. Now he looked like a snake. His eyes were red and bloodshot. Xi'an cautioned. He realized that this man was very dangerous. He had the look of a man who had killed before, and more than once. The man said, let him not think that he has become a king. I'm not too late to ask for mercy. It was heard everywhere. If he messed with their boss, he's definitely finished. Even if he's strong, I think he can take them all. Xi'an smiled. He wasn't afraid of these people at all. They posed no threat to him. Snippets from his past life surfaced in his mind. Even if there were many of these people, it wasn't a problem. In his past life, a lot of people had tried to kill him, and their strength was much higher than that of these students. He remembered the moment when he had already confronted countless of his enemies. Even if the whole world stood against him, he would destroy everyone with his sword. No matter how many of them there are, they will all die here. The guy already prepared to attack and took a fighting stance with his energy concentrated in his hand. But suddenly he was interrupted by the good-natured fat man he had helped at the tournament. He stood between them and spread his arms out to the sides. Xi'an looked at him in surprise. What was he even doing here? Taita said that this guy was his brother. And if they were annoying Xi'an, it meant annoying him as well. The guy had a wide smile on his face. Xi'an turned around and looked at him with an evil look. He told the guy not to get involved between them. He shouldn't waste his time. But the good-natured fat man had no thought of backing down. He said, does the boy think he looks like a man who's afraid of trouble? Does he really think he's his friend? At this time, Luo Jiang angrily shouted for those two not to be arrogant they still couldn't stand up to them. The man ordered his henchmen to slowly eliminate those two. The snake-like guy revealed his red eye and ordered his men to attack. The friends stayed back to back. Good, now they will fight together. It's even more fun that way. The silent mountains were astonishing in their majesty and tranquility. At their foot grew trees, creating a cozy grove. In one mountain, there was a deep cave from which someone's voices were coming. Inside the cave, it was cold and wet, Water was constantly dripping from somewhere. The walls were incredibly high. Rare, dim lights illuminated the whole space inside. Inside was a large temple, at the foot of which stood a small table, at which sat the director. Across from him sat to see the headmaster, and asked if the old man was sure that this new student, Xi'an, could be allowed to participate in the hunt. Doubt could be heard in the man's voice. The old man chuckled and said, even if not, what can he do? They are putting too much pressure on the academy. The vice principal faded his gaze. He said, he didn't expect them to make their own so quickly. Should he warn the boy? The principal shook his head. He shouldn't have done that. It would become part of their test. The headmaster moved the chess piece forward. The vice principal asked, what does he mean? The chess pieces moved one by one. It was not a bad allegory for what was happening. There would be several candidates in the hunt for the cannonballs. Let them rely on themselves. That way they'll prove their worth. The chess game continued, pieces falling one by one. To the winner goes everything, and to the loser nothing. The old man took on a threatening look and moved his piece forward. Only the strongest will be able to marry Princess Gerlan. Yes, it was chess. The old man smiled widely. The game was over. The vice president didn't know what to say. There were only two pieces on the chessboard. 
Did the director take advantage of being distracted and make a few moves? The principal waved his hands and closed the chessboard. Let him just accept defeat. There's no need to go into details. The vice principal asked, is he always this strange? The old man smirked and asked, by the way, what is this young student doing now? He heard that he disappeared somewhere after the incident. The vice principal smiled and said, after that incident, he found a secluded place to cultivate. He's still a hammer, but he's already quite experienced. The old man frowned and said in a serious voice that he felt that in this upcoming competition, this boy will accurately show himself. Night was already prevailing outside. The dark cave was frightening with its obscurity. No one would have guessed that there were two people in it, discussing the future plans of the whole academy. In his hands was glowing stone, which the guy had recently received as a reward for the victory. He was absorbing the magical energy from it. The stone seemed to float in the air, obeying the unknowable force. Xi'an sat on a small dais and practiced cultivation hard. A huge amount of magical energy had accumulated around him. Combining the law of his sword together with the consciousnesses he had acquired in the library, his cultivation speed increased greatly. He struggled to cultivate as much magical energy as possible. His face looked tense. The core of this level three monster contains enough saint power to allow it to immediately go from level eight to level ten. The core of the monsters in his hands shrank getting smaller and smaller. It was absorbing energy and converting it into holy power. Soon, the core completely vaporized. The boy had absorbed enough energy. After absorbing the monster core, he would finally be able to form his holy weapon. It's about time, it's about time. He tensed his whole body, trying to concentrate all his power in his hands. Clenching his eyes, his body was already at its limit. Energy swirled around him, transforming into a weapon that created itself in his hands. The guy gritted his teeth. His body was under incredible strain. The weapon required too much holy power. The veins on his face swelled up, the saint force was about to run out, and still no results. Suddenly, a clap was heard, echoing throughout the cave. A few drops of blood splattered on the floor. The guy coughed. Still, his body was not yet adapted to this level of exertion, even though he was absorbing energy. But still, he still needed to train. Although he had not been able to fully create a weapon, but right now, he was as close to the saint level as possible. The silhouette of a sword stuck in the ground stood beside him. He took hold of the phantom sword and ripped it out of the ground. Only after combining the saint weapon with one's soul would one reach such a rank. He wasn't going to stop. Once again, starting to concentrate the power in his body, he wants to become a saint. This, he would need a lot of saint power. And the monster core for winning the competition is his chance. Disgruntled, angry shouts could be heard in one of the academy buildings. That man with long hair and snake-like eyes was shouting with rage. How could this little guy be his equal opponent? In front of him stood several people dressed in dark hoods. The man was simply furious. A terrifying magical aura emanated from him. Even his hair rose into the air. He turned to his servants and said that they now had a new task. This time, and would need to deal with all the trash on the hunt. The men nodded in agreement. They were always used to agreeing with their master. The man stretched in a predatory smile. This time, the princess would belong to him alone. No one is worthy of her but himself. His eyes twitched with a white film of madness. The day of the hunt was fast approaching. It was to take place surrounded by high mountains. It formed a great circle in which the main events would unfold. A second later, a portal opened, through which the participants of the competition would pass to the place of battle. Many people were already crowded in front of it, the protagonist stood with them and looked around. Why hasn't Big Brother come yet? Is he going to miss the competition? Suddenly his gaze locked onto something, something very familiar. The boy's eyes widened and he took a closer look. It was the same girl he'd recently seen and who he had grown completely bored with. What is she? The boy was surprised and looked at her with his big eyes. He's already had a couple of embarrassments with this girl and he doesn't even know her name. That's funny. The girl opened her eyes easily. She looked incredibly beautiful in this sunlight. Her long white hair lay softly on her shoulders and slid down her back. She had deep blue eyes. She shifted her gentle gaze to the side and squinted slightly. Suddenly, she saw the main character, and he waved at her and tried to greet as kindly as possible. The girl looked at him in surprise. 
The moment she saw the protagonist, her face contorted with a grimace. She pouted her lips again and turned away. The boy smiled and thought that he should try to explain everything to her sometime, because it can't go on like this. Suddenly a man appeared from the portal. He was in a bright ceremonial uniform appropriate to the solemn day. It was the vice principal. Next to him stood a man fully dressed in a dark black hoodie that completely hid his face. From this angle, it was impossible to see who it was. In a joyful voice, he announced that the core hunt would soon begin before he explained the simple rules. The director began to speak. He said that the forest is divided into three tiers. The deeper they go, the stronger monsters they will meet. The very first tier is the human tier. The next is the earth tier, and the next is the heaven tier. The competition would last for three days. In the end, they needed to bring five cores. The director showed his palm. They would be disqualified if they decided to give up or didn't bring enough kernels. Suddenly, his face became more stern. And some students who have already managed to break discipline may not expect leniency if they are unable to even pass this test. Luo Jiang smiled, only five monster cores? This was an easy task for him. The vice principal looked at everyone with a stern look. He wouldn't allow rules to be broken, and he would keep a close eye on every student. The protagonist closed his eyes and squeezed shut. The vice principal was so grumpy, just like an old grandfather. Also, the man was quite strange. The man raised his hand upwards, which had a belt in it. He said that each student would be given a spatial belt. At the end of the competition, half of the cores would be given to the academy, and the students would keep the other half. Xi'an prepared this time, he would need to get as many monster nuclei as possible to become a saint as soon as possible. This is his only and surest chance. The vice principal said that the students who failed to reach saint rank could team up and hunt in the human and earth tier, and those who have advanced to the saint stage can go to the heavenly tier. The man made a serious face and said that he would now announce the start of the hunt. He didn't have time to say anything. As everyone looked up, a balloon appeared from nowhere. The man sitting there laughed loudly. Perfect. There were a lot of people there. Everything is going according to plan. It was the protagonist's older brother, as always. The man shouted, Let everyone look at the new Saint Changguan Hu right now. Xi'an sighed and screwed up a disgruntled face. It seems like his big brother's attention deficit is usually a big deal. Something must be done about it, or he would continue to embarrass him. And so, as usual, the balloon hit something and a hole was formed in it, from which air began to escape. Hmm, he was horrified. Oh no, the balloon is out of control. The balloon began to gradually descend, along with his older brother sitting in it. The balloon was hurtling high into the sky. The protagonist just watched silently, and then as his older brother did something wrong again. The vice president slouched his gaze. Everyone else present was also in my best mood. The man tried to get everyone in order. So although the atmosphere had been destroyed with Chang Guan Hu's help, but still, it was necessary to continue. He waved his fan and said that the students could now go. The competition had begun. With their heads lowered, the students walked towards the portal. None of them would have his mood. Everything was ruined. The protagonist scratched the back of his head. Yes, his older brother knows how to ruin the atmosphere seriously. There was no fighting mood left at all. He went forward because the competition had already begun. It was impossible to delay. At this time, the guy with long hair ordered his henchmen to keep an eye on this kid, keeping a close eye on him. If an opportunity arose, have them kill him immediately after entering the forest. Then have them finish off everyone else. No one must survive, for victory must go to only one. Leave no one alive. He came with her, nodded his heads in agreement. The protagonist at this time, unsuspecting, went into the portal. His mood was already spoiled by the prank of his brother. The forest was full of dangers. Dense thickets hindered the passage, and everywhere flowed a light fog. The boy jumped on the branches with great speed. He needed to find the monster cores as soon as possible, because without it, he would not be able to transform his holy power. Guy stopped on one of the branches and listened. The forest was quieter than ever. Only the chirping of fairy birds could be heard around. The boy looked around. This forest was very big. So many students had come in, but he hadn't seen anyone yet. It turns out they had spread out to different parts of the forest. Suddenly something caught his attention. The guy became wary. Somewhere down below there were strange sounds. 
Sitting on a branch, he shifted his gaze downward. There was someone cowering there, someone very large and horny. He saw two large horns. There was a fabulous beast standing below. It looked like a huge bull, but it was all covered with wool, and it had branchy long horns on its head. It's a monster of the first class. The boy smiled. Well, you can get a first class core out of this monster. Here comes the first prey. He summoned energy and made the decision to stealthily approach and kill this creature with a single blow. It wouldn't be too difficult. The guy already swung his magic ball to throw at the monster. He was already anticipating victory, but something went wrong. The monster heard it and raised his head fearfully. The bull immediately started running in the opposite direction with great speed. Did he run away so fast? Here comes the prey right out from under the guy's nose. The voice sounded vaguely familiar. It was T-Ta. Something's wrong. Why is he yelling like that? Did he get into some kind of trouble again? That was most likely the case. The guy quickly jumped down from the branch and ran towards the sound. His friend was in danger, and he couldn't leave things so quickly. A huge rattlesnake wriggled on the ground and entangled its prey with its big, strong body. And so it happened. The lad was in trouble. The poor fellow was on the point of death and was swinging his axe in all directions, trying to fight off the huge monster. He was screaming and crying for help, and the snake was staring at its prey with a greedy look. Xi'an, surprised, looked at it sitting on a branch. Is this a second-class monster? But on the human tier, there should only be first-class monsters. What kind of thing is this? Staring at it in surprise while sitting on a branch. What is this? A class two monster? But on the human tier, there should only be first-class monsters. What the hell is this? Xi'an quickly reacted and flew at Lion and grabbed his friend at the last moment. The monster snapped its teeth and could only grasp a huge tree root. The protagonist asked, How did the guy manage to run into a second-class monster? Tai cried with happiness while clutching his axe. The guy grinned and said that the thing came out of nowhere and tried to eat him. He struck it with his axe, but that only made the huge snake angrier. What was he doing here? They were sitting on a branch and were now in relative safety. The snake was on the ground, looking at its elusive prey. Xi'an. He had come to help him, after all. So the best option now would be to team up and kill this snake. The fatty said fearfully, it's a second grade monster after all. Did he think they would succeed? The protagonist didn't seem to care at all. It was a one-time thing. The two of them would be more than enough. Okay, so what's their plan? The guy took up his weapon and prepared to attack. The main character said to make the snake stop moving. And the rest, let them come deliver it to him. Ty jumped to the ground. He understood everything, and now he will make everything in the best way. He landed on the ground with a big thud, grouping his body together. Now it would be much easier for them to defeat. Smiling, he looked the snake straight in the eyes as well and told it to attack. The predator looked at his prey with a baleful look and hissed, sticking out his split black tongue. The snake opened its mouth and lunged at the lad in an attempt to devour him. It had huge, long, and most likely poisonous fangs in its mouth. Tai Ta grasped his axe and swung it around to hit the snake right in the forehead. The blow was so strong that the snake swayed and flew straight into the nearest tree, at this time, the protagonist stood and accumulated his magical power to defeat the monster with one blow. After waiting for a convenient moment, the guy concentrated and jumped high up to deliver a crushing blow. He jumped on the unsuspecting snake and with all his strength, hit it directly in the head to kill it for sure with one blow. A satisfied smirk stretched on his face. Now he would get a second class core. That's even better. The blow was so strong that the snake's skeleton crackled. The bones began to slowly break, and magical energy spread through its body to sizzle it from the inside. Soon only bones were left of the snake. The energy had completely incinerated its body, and now the monster was defeated. Its charred body lay on the earth. Up close, the snake looked even more terrifying, but now this monster posed no threat. Tai Ta happily rummaged through its remains, searching for his core. The boy was very happy that he could do it, but the protagonist did not let his guard down. The danger was not over yet. Xi'an suddenly heard something. Something very big was approaching them from the forest, and his friend didn't suspect anything as another huge beetle-like creature rushed at him. Xi'an shouted to warn his friend, 
but he didn't notice anything. The beast had already opened its mouth to devour the unsuspecting prey. But the boy heard the shout and grabbed his axe and began to repel the attack. He swung his weapon and hit the monster in the head. There was a crunch and the shell split open. The monster's head rolled on the ground. This guy killed the monster with a single blow. Amazing. Ty wondered, how did his friend have the presence of this monster? The guy smiled and replied that he must have a talent for it. Ty enjoyed looking at the core that he was able to extract from the monster. The protagonist thought and looked up at the sky. In a past life, on the verge of death. Back then, he was able to cover hundreds of miles with his divine sense using his holy weapon. No one could escape him at that moment. But now, with such a great limitation of his powers, the distance. Otherwise, hunting these monsters would be much easier. He kicked the monster's head away with his foot. It was a true abomination. His friend turned to him, holding a cannonball in his hands. It was a monster of the first class. They are in the beginner tier. It is logical that only first class monsters should be here. Tai Ta smiled and said that this monster python was a second class. They should try to find another one. The boy thought for a moment he really didn't know what this monster was forgetting here. Perhaps someone or something was standing over it. At any rate, it wasn't all that simple here. In the forest, the sounds of monsters that were eager to find their prey could be heard. Suddenly, the thicket next to the boys with themselves. They fearfully shifted their gaze to that direction. There was definitely something wrong there. Strange sounds were heard from the bushes. The friends became wary and prepared to face another monster. In this forest, danger awaited them at every turn. Suddenly, a huge werewolf jumped out of the nearest bushes. Its mouth was full of sharp teeth and its eyes burning red. The monster rushed at the friends, wanting to tear them apart. The monster landed just a few meters away from them and started breathing heavily, sniffing around. Tita looked towards the monster with surprise and fear. The monster looked like a large wolf, but stood on two legs. Is this monster a first-class werewolf? Tita smiled and placed the axe on his shoulder. Well, first class, but as his mom used to say, even cheap bread can be full if you have a lot of it. Xi'an recalled reading about these creatures. They are called forest werewolves, and they always move in large packs. Therefore, if a person came across one of these... There was only one thing that could be certain. They are surrounded. Several of these creatures were already sitting on the branches of the nearest trees, looking greedily at their prey. There were about five or so of them, breathing heavily and growling from everywhere. Each of them had several hundred sharp teeth in their mouths, and their eyes glowed in the darkness like lights. Xi'an smirked. It seemed like it was past time to hunt werewolves. Now they would have more fun. Taita smiled and put his axe on his shoulder and winked at his friend. Yeah, they're gonna have a lot of fun. Two figures in dark hoods stood in the middle of the forest, one of them cursing loudly. Damn it, why is that guy so fast? It was as if he vaporized immediately after entering the forest. If the young master pro knows that they lost this guy, it's the end of him. They stood there not knowing what to do. Suddenly, they turned their gazes upwards, and from there... A vague silhouette of some creature was already flying towards them. A few meters away from them, a huge monster landed with a rumble. Shards of stones flew in different directions. The two men barely had time to bounce aside. The monster was really huge, its eyes glowing in the darkness. What was this even? The people were scared. They had never seen such a monster before. Suddenly, the vice principal burst into the principal's office, slamming the door. He shouted that something was wrong surrounded by a barrier and cut off from the rest of the world. The old man was reading a book at the time. He looked closely at his colleague and bulged his eyes in surprise. What happened? This can't be happening. But that was it. The forest was indeed surrounded by an energy barrier that separated it from the rest of the world, preventing anything living from entering it. After the competition started, this barrier appeared around the forest. The vice president said he tried many ways to get through it, but he never succeeded. Two people were standing in front of the entrance to the forest. The old man frowned and said that this barrier was created by the principal. No wonder he hasn't been able to disable it. He doesn't think even he will be able to do it. The man wondered, was it really put up by the first principal? Then why did it suddenly turn on? The man touched the barrier with his hand and waves came from it. The old man hesitated and said he didn't know about it himself. It must be related to the secret research the headmaster was doing at the time. 
Anyway, the first director died suddenly without telling anyone what kind of research he was doing. The man was horrified. What were they going to do now? A lot of students are trapped on the other side of the barrier. What if something happens? The old man said that all they have to do is believe in them. They are the pride of their academy. He will try to break that barrier. If he fails within a day, he'll have to use all his power. Until then, all they can do is pray for their students. The old man transformed, gathering a lot of energy. He used dissipation. A magic circle of symbols appeared behind his back. The earth beneath him sagged and the air around him began to electrify. The deputy director stood in front of the portal and looked forward into the bottomless abyss. The man's face was anxious. He hoped very much that they would be all right. The headmaster tried his best to break the barrier. He used all his strength, but even that was sometimes not enough. The werewolves roared, grinning their toothy mouths. They prepared to attack the defenseless victims. The friends stood completely surrounded by these creatures, and there were also some strange beetles. The boys prepared to fight back. Now they had to go through this ordeal together. Tai Ta smiled and proposed a competition to his friend. They'll split up and see who can kill more of these werewolves, the protagonist in agreement. They started the battles. The guys started fighting. Not one of them backed down each other, Al Lee. The werewolves were flying in different directions, felled by one blow from the protagonist. Tai smiled and prepared to chop up the monsters. It was nothing more than simple entertainment for him. This kid was incredibly strong and sturdy. He swung his axe at the werewolves one by one. The monsters whimpered and bounced in different directions, but they could not escape the boy's axe. Xian Xiang didn't even fight at half strength. He swung his sword, chopping the monsters like a plant. With each passing second, the werewolves became fewer and fewer. The last one left, he trembled with fear, because he realized that he alone could not stand. The monster rushed at the duck, unable to remember himself from fear. There was no trace left of the werewolf's former might and strength. The protagonist smirked. Not what, running away already? That won't do. Taita swung his axe due to shouting that they can't escape. The protagonist was surprised. Where did this kid get so angry? He used to be so good-natured. The poor werewolf looked up for the last time and looked at the guy who was flying at him and had already swung his huge axe. At that moment, the poor animal realized he had nowhere to go. Soon, the werewolves were finished. Tita was breathing heavily, resting his axe on his shoulder. He turned to his friend and said they made a great team. Just how many werewolves did they kill? Xi'an scrutinized the battlefield carefully. It seemed to him that there was something wrong with these werewolves. The main character started to remember something. The book he was reading said that forest werewolves were low-ranked class one monsters, but these werewolves were clearly high-rank monsters. His friend was surprised, really. He hadn't even noticed. The corpse of one of the monsters was lying on the ground bleeding. The guy went on, and there's human blood on them. The stains are fresh, which means that before it was put on them, these things attacked other students which means there must be other people nearby who were attacked by monsters? The guys quickly jumped up and rushed to look for the other students. Probably they had suffered a miserable fate. Soon they found several disheveled bodies. Where they lay in blood, they were definitely students. Their clothes testified to that. From the looks of it, these poor people had been torn apart by werewolves. Ty didn't know what to say. The guy was terribly scared. Are they all dead? How could they be? His friends started to say, want and werewolves and were stronger than usual, but they didn't manage to kill so many newbies. Fatty turned to his friend and asked, how could he be so calm? Are they really the same age? There are too many unusual things in this forest. Xian watched the bloody painting with horror. Suddenly he saw that one of the students was still alive. One of the students, a girl about his age, was lying on the ground, barely breathing. Soon they built a fire to keep warm. Night was falling and they needed to find a place to sleep. The poor girl sat leaning against the trunk of a tree, breathing heavily. She still could not regain consciousness, but the boys bandaged her wounds and made her comfortable. A little time passed, and she began to slowly open her eyes. Her body was still very exhausted, but the fact that she had regained consciousness was already a great achievement. Ty noticed this and waved happily at the girl. She was finally awake. The girl waved her head trying to regain consciousness. 
A grimace of horror was reflected on her face. It was obvious that the girl was still very scared. Where is she? The last thing she remembered was being attacked by werewolves. And after that, her voice was confused and her hands were shaking with fear. Exactly. And the companions, what happened to them? Surprisingly calmly, the protagonist said that the comrades were all dead too. The girl looked in his direction with horror. She refused to believe it. It just couldn't be. And her voice a little more would have broken into a wail. She waved her head in different directions. But wait, where the werewolf must still be around. They need to hide. The girl wrapped herself in her dress and fearfully began to look around. Ty smiled and said she had nothing to worry about. They had already dealt with them. The meat was just finished roasting. Would she like to try some? He presented her with an axe that had two appetizing pieces of meat on it. So it's werewolf meat. The girl got to her feet and looked in their direction in surprise. This is nonsense. There was a whole pack of werewolves, and they're saying that the two of them could handle them? She still couldn't believe it. Ty Ta put on his werewolf skin and said with a smile, They're a great team, even if you can't tell. The girl looked at them with frightened eyes. Now she didn't know who she was more afraid of, the werewolves or these two guys. They continued to sit and warm themselves by the fire when suddenly a howl came from the forest. The girl was frightened and trembled even more. She hid behind the fat man's back and said it sounded like your werewolf. She freaked out even more. The main character told her to let her finish her food first, and then they would go and see. The girl was surprised and looked at him. Does he really want to go there alone? The werewolf must most likely be very strong. Ty smiled and said it would be fun. Does she want to join them? The stranger wrapped herself in her dress and to the boys said that she would like to get out of here quickly. The boys looked at her and said that she should be very careful in that case. She walked quickly towards the forest and was very frightened, but still she had to move on. At parting, she turned around and thanked the boys for saving her. After that, she took a quick step and headed away. The boys stayed around the fire, roasting the meat of the werewolves they had just killed. Ty smiled and looked at his friend in incomprehension. He asked, his, was he the one who scared her away? The protagonist looked away and said that this girl was very strange. Soon, they finished their meal and moved on. Fatty asked his friend, but isn't it normal for girls to be shy at that age? What's wrong with that? The protagonist replied that it's just a premonition. It's best to forget it. Gotta go and keep hunting monsters. A huge monster with two fangs was hunting in the forest. It was breaking trees, ripping them out by the roots. One of the level one monsters was running away from it at a breakneck pace. It was the same bull that the protagonist had seen earlier. The trees were breaking, and a terrible cracking sound was heard everywhere. It's the fire cloud beast, a second class monster. The book said its attacks were weak, but its defense was very strong. The guy looked surprised at the scene going on. The book said that this monster's attacks were weak, but its defense was very strong, and it couldn't be penetrated easily. His friend looked at him from the side and said that the guy knew a lot. A satisfied smile could not leave the boy's face. The main character answered that he just read a lot of books in his free time. Now gotta focus. Can't let this beast get far. His friend nodded in agreement. After a few seconds, they had already rushed to attack the monster. It was difficult, but it was necessary to break through the monster's tough shell before reaching its core. Ty lowered his axe, but it hit the monster's shell with a clatter and bounced aside. The blade was unable to cut through the tough armor of the creature. Even the energy sword was powerless. It's called very strong. You can't even get through it, even if you pound on it all night. The blows didn't even leave a scratch. They sat on the back of the huge monster and tried to pierce its shell, but all was unsuccessful. The creature noticed the two pesky humans at its back, and its eyes filled with blood. The monster tried to throw them off and roared with all its might. He started kicking in an attempt to throw his friends off his back. Xion barely able to stay on his feet, damn. Looks like they pissed him off. Now they need to leave. The creature opened its mouth and a bright light appeared. It looked like it was preparing another energy attack. After a few seconds, the monster spewed a beam of bright light from its mouth, which began to sizzle everything around it. The guys had to be very careful. It was only a matter of getting hit by this attack and they would be finished. 
Tita rebounded in time, and the beam of flame flew near him only a few meters away. Xi'an asked, Is he all right? He himself was trying to fend off the creature's attack. Tai was fine, except that he was now completely bald. He had dodged it, but his hair seemed to have failed. The guy noticed this and almost cried, Where's his hair? But a second later, he was overcome with rage. How dare that bitch make him bald? He's only sixteen. Now the beast will definitely regret it. The boy swung his axe at it and ran straight into a frontal attack. The monster roared, displaying its huge fangs. But it didn't seem to be an obstacle for him. He jumped up and swung his axe with all his might. After a few seconds, the guy let go of the axe right on the monster's head. There was a ringing sound. Its paw dropped its blade right on the monster's head. The monster grinned, and the sword took on a blue color due to the energy overflowing from it, even though the armor was strong but it forbade under such pressure. The guy was struggling to hold the huge paw of the monster that the monster wanted to crush him. The earth sagged beneath him, but the lad stood strong as flint. Xi'an Ti immediately rushed to help his friend. He was jumping on the branches and trying to catch the best moment to attack. At this moment, someone was already watching them and chuckled snidely from the side. That's hilarious. Two brave rookies took it upon themselves to kill a second-class monster. They have no idea what they're dealing with. A man was standing, or rather floating in the air. He was watching everything that was happening and was enjoying it almost physically. Well, should they show mercy and save the wretched lives? The protagonist sensed that someone was watching them. Brother, it looks like both sides have enough power. Why don't they watch them beat each other to a pulp? In the meantime, they'll just relax and reap the rewards when it's over. There were three people sitting on a tree branch. They watched with smiles but did not interfere. The oldest of them told them to listen to words of wisdom from their elders. There is a proverb that goes like this. The mantis chases the cicada while the Volga sneaks behind. Life is unfair, but all they have to do is accept it. Xian Xian heard all of this perfectly well and slowly boiled over with anger. He was annoyed by these three who were only laughing at them from afar. He turned to his friend and said that it was time for them to show their arrogant elders what they were made of. Tai Ta from his last strength, he tried to hold on to the monster's paw. He shouted that he didn't recall such freaks among his elders. The guy was giving his best. He was holding back the blow of such a strong monster, even though he was on his last breath but he still didn't plan to give up. He panted. The monster had left him no choice. Now he should use all his strength. Suddenly, the monster felt his feet lifted off the ground. He bulged his white eyes and breathed heavily. At that moment, the guy caught him and threw him over himself, holding only one of his toes. A few seconds later, the huge monster fell to the ground with a monstrous rumble, and rocks began to fly up around it. The monster had both of his fangs broken. He was lying on the ground and breathing heavily, but it wasn't over yet. He wasn't dead yet. Taita lying on the ground like a starfish. He was breathing heavily, for this was his limit. He couldn't even feel his legs. The boy had given his best, but it still wasn't enough. The monster roared and immediately rushed at the defenseless boy, opening its wide, monstrous maw. The poor fellow lay on the ground and could not even move. Xi'an summoned his magic sword and grasped its hilt tightly. Now it was his turn to save his friend's life. He couldn't just leave it like that. He gathered all his will and strength into a fist and rushed towards the horrible monster, which was already a few centimeters away from the poor fatty, who suspected nothing and had already accepted his death. The monster's jaws clicked, but suddenly something changed. Something incomprehensible flew in front of him. A second later, there was a monstrously powerful explosion that threw the monster some distance away. Xi'an flew straight at him, with flames blazing behind him as if he had jet engines in his legs. After a few seconds, he was already at the monster's eye. The monster was looking at him with its white eyes and could do nothing. The boy's speed was too great. After a few seconds, he stuck his small blade right into the monster's eye. The body of the fire cloud beast is completely covered with non-piercing fur, but its eyes are unprotected. The boy had no choice but to use his sword technique. Heaven-splitting punch. The monster's head split in two from such a strong blow, an energy wave erupted from there. Its skull crunched and split in two. After a few seconds, the monster was defeated. It lay in some distance where a few trees had flown off. The people who were sitting in the trees at that time opened their mouths in astonishment. 
What do you mean, what kind of power does this guy have? No one understood anything. Xi'an Bud Ghost was sitting in a nearby tree. His voice was heard from somewhere. The guy mockingly said that before, this person was talking about some bullshit analogy in life. The stranger was scared to death. He opened his eyes and looked in the direction where the main character was sitting. Xi'an blurted out a smile and asked him hash redo about who is the mantis here and who is the Volga. Now they will see how the arrangement of forces has changed. Xi'an on the dais and looked at the defeated body of the monster. He had slain it with one blow with the frightened people sitting below. The same guy who had been watching them all this time knelt down and poured out in front of him all the cannonballs they had managed to obtain. He was incredibly scared and asked to receive them as a sign of apology for the words previously spoken. Tai Ta took one core and began to examine it. All right, we can let them go this time. The stranger cried with happiness and began to thank them heartily. If everything worked out so well, then his brothers would go too. He was about to run away when suddenly he heard the stern voice of the protagonist behind him. Turning to him, he asked, Does the Lord want to discuss anything else with them? They were incredibly scared and really wanted to get out of here as soon as possible. Xi'an pensively looked up. Since they are elders, it let them answer one question of his. The guy looked up at the dome that enveloped the entire expanse of the forest. He would like to ask if they had encountered something like this in past competitions. One of the brothers hesitated and said that he hadn't seen anything like this before. The second brother answered the same way. He too is seeing it for the first time in his life. It seems to be very much like a dome. Xi'an continued to look up thoughtfully. So this really hasn't happened before. Could the headmaster be behind it? This was the question that worried him the most right now. However, he had one strong feeling that things were not as simple as they seemed at first glance. He needed to find out more about this incident. Find out what was wrong. At that time, the same brothers rushed to the duck. Let's get out of here, before he sees them. Tie ta to the running men. What a bunch of scum they are. They say they're so tough, but in reality they just run away. The guy looked up and asked the protagonist what that strange dome was. He had never seen it before. The guy continued to look up with a pensive look and said that judging by everything they had seen earlier, they should prepare for the worst. It's not going to be easy. Perhaps he was overthinking it. But since there was no notification that the hunt was over, it was probably all right and the competition was going smoothly. The boy sat on the rock, immersed in his thoughts. But there was no point in worrying about it. They should collect as many nukes as possible. His friend didn't lose his fighting spirit. The dome vibrated the entire space of the forest. They would return to this matter later, but for now, one should be concerned about finding as many nukes as possible. Several snakes covered in scales crawled into a large cave. They hissed and stared ahead with red eyes. But as soon as the snakes approached the cave, their heads were immediately cut off in a moment. The girl stood before them, swinging her sword. When did these monsters in this forest become so strong? It was somehow unusual. A group of people stood nearby, sighing heavily. If they weren't with them, they wouldn't have lived to see the dawn. These monsters were left too strong. They wouldn't be able to continue hunting. Someone said that he wanted to get out of there quickly, too. The girl turned around to them, and in a serious voice, she began to speak. Now they should listen to her carefully. There was no need to panic so much. The academy won't sit idly by once they realize what's going on. Sheath and looked at the corpses of the slain monsters. All they have to do is hold out here until help arrives. Then they can all survive. And her voice sounded confident. All agreed, yes, they must survive. They can't give up. They're just a bunch of worms. One of the boys was filled with determination. He's gonna tear them all apart. The girl readied her sword and looked at the others. Then they should fight together. The snakes looked at them with their burning eyes, and their hissing seemed to sound like human speech. The huge beast looked at its prey with red, burning eyes. It seemed like someone was ordering it to kill these people. Someone was definitely directing everything that was happening. The girl rushed at them in an attack, followed by the others. They cut down the damn monsters one by one. A strong smell of blood hung in the air. Finished, she looked at the monster, which was to be expected from a second class. They are much stronger than the first-class monsters. It would take even more effort to fight them. She stood on a small elevation 
and watched the monster's huge body wriggle somewhere below. The snake rose up and hissed the girl. The girl stood right in front of the monster, holding her sword tightly in her hands. The monster prepared to attack with a split tongue moving in its mouth. The serpent quickly crawled towards the girl, ripping Xena into its huge maw. The monster was really huge. It would take several people to deal with it. Besides, it had magical properties. The girl gritted her teeth, damn. At this rate, she thinks all these people won't last long here. The monster was too strong for them. The monster clenched its rings, shattering the rocks. The poor woman didn't know where to go anymore. The monster was of incredible size and her entire body was covered in an impenetrable shell. The girl fought it almost alone. She jumped in different directions, trying to dodge its attacks. She realized that she didn't have much strength left, but the monster didn't think of giving up. She jumped up to dodge the monster's next attack, but that was her fatal mistake. The snake extended its jaws to finally grab the pesky victim. The girl covered herself with her hands with all her might and used her strongest spell to somehow repel the monster's attack, but still it was useless. At this moment, she realized that she was finished. The monster was too strong, and she couldn't handle it. But then the voice of the protagonist came from somewhere. He gathered all his strength and used his azalet sword spell. It was the heaven-splitting blow. It fell with all its might on the monster's head, and the snake fell to the ground with a crash. The girl did not realize what was happening. She looked in surprise in the direction from which they came unexpected help. She did not expect that someone could save them in such a desperate situation. A dark silhouette was looming over the lifeless body of the defeated monster. She couldn't see, much less understand who it was. A familiar voice sounded. The boy said it sounded like he was just in time. It was the main character. He crossed his arms over his chest and stood looking at the frightened girl. He said hello to the little one and asked Riley, how was she, that he saved her life this time too? The girl could not say and words from surprise. She only stammered and asked, where did the fellow come from here? Suddenly, Tita appeared from nowhere, waving his huge axe in different directions. He was ready to fight. Killing this monster with one blow was now only a matter of honor for him. The boy swung around and hit the snake with his axe as hard as he could, so hard that it flew high into the sky. Now it was a flying dragon. The guy smiled in embarrassment. Oops, looks like he sent that monster flying. Now he'll never see the core again. They looked at each other while those wriggling worms continued to crawl around them. Xi'an looked at the girl obliquely and said that now was not the time for hostility. They came to help them, so why are they treating them as enemies? The people began to look at each other. Someone in the crowd recognized the main character and said that it was the champion of the rookie tournament. And also, next to him was that third place winner. They're saved. The girl looked at the protagonist with surprise and seemed to realize everything. So he is that famous Xi'an Tian who won first place, the one who won the rookie tournament? The girl blushed a little red from embarrassment. Xi'an at this time just stood there and enjoyed the enthusiastic cheers. He looked at the girl and asked, what happened? Why did you swallow your tongue? Speech? Yeah, how about that? Let him hope. The girl smiled. Since that's the case, it's great news. Then she'll have him save those people too, since he's such a hero. Her body couldn't take the strain anymore anyway. The girl's mouth spurted a small line of blood. Suddenly, she started to fall to the ground. No wonder, since her body was subjected to such a monstrous overload now, she needs to at least get some rest. Xi'an saw this and immediately rushed to her aid. What's wrong with her? The girl was lying on the floor unconscious. Looks like she lost consciousness. The guy picked her up in his arms. This is bad. The girl was barely breathing and closed her eyes. Her pulse is extremely weak and she also has a lot of internal injuries. How did this girl survive this long? She's really strong. Her pulse is extremely weak and she also has a lot of internal injuries. How did this girl survive this long? She's really very strong. The boy looked at the exhausted body of the girl who was lying in his arms. She had saved everyone here and had single-handedly cleared the cave passage of monsters. She had continued to fight despite her condition. If she wanted to, she could have left them to be eaten and walked away. But she insisted that they stay and didn't give up until the very end. The protagonist thought about it. He even felt ashamed for a second for such behavior. It turns out that this girl is quite kind and resilient. 
he had the wrong opinion of her. Xian Xiang told his partner to take the others to the safe place, and he would stay here and cover the rear. His friend A only hummed to himself. He said he wasn't going anywhere without him. He swore that he would never leave his fellows behind. The protagonist smiled. He had a very good comrade after all. Then everyone else only had to count on these two guys. It's decided they'll help them retreat together. Now get them out of here and take that girl with them. Get her to a safe place and treat her injuries as soon as possible. The others did so, and the two friends stayed behind, and now they were to fight these monsters. The hero said that he should warn his friend that these monsters were far from being so weak. But now it was too late to back up. His friend grinned. Let him not make him laugh. If he's so scared that he's standing, then so be it he'll help him. The boys rushed right into the thick of things, right toward these monsters who were looking at them with predatory eyes. One by one, the snakes fell to the ground, shredded by the mighty blows. Their shells could not withstand such power. Tai Tamahal with his axe chopping the monster one by one, it turned out to be no problem for him. This guy really loved a good battle. The last huge serpent was left. It looked at the guys with a blazing gaze, sticking out its split tongue. It was probably the most important of the snakes. It had sharp fangs in its mouth, and its eyes were covered with a white film. The boy stood, the protagonist saying that he should warn his friend to be careful here. A snake towered above them. It was Kuda bigger than the rest. This second-class monster is strong enough to be considered third-class. Ty gritted his teeth and told his friend to leave him and run away. It would be better if only one of them died. But the protagonist didn't think of backing down. Did he tell him not to joke about it? Or did he really think he'd run away and leave his friend to die like that? There's no such thing. A long, sharp sword made entirely of magical energy appeared in his hand. The protagonist has already fought many of these monsters, and now feels that he is close to breaking through to the next level. He can't miss this chance. The kid smiled. As the saying goes, the best way to get stronger is to constantly be on the verge of death. Tai Ta looked at his friend with an admiring look. He didn't expect such fortitude from this kid. Xian held his long sword that was already almost formed. No matter if they died or survived, retreating didn't stand a chance. And so once again, he would entrust his life to this sword. The protagonist looked at the shining blade of his weapon, and it reflected his determined face. The guy swung his sword, and at great speed, he began to run straight into the monster's face. At this moment, he had no fear or doubt, only an endless desire to slay this thing. The beast hissed and began to wag its split tongue. Its eyes reflected death itself, and it saw only prey to be devoured. The snakes began to wriggle and headed straight for the guy, who ran straight into their mouths. They opened their mouths and looked at their prey with fierce eyes. Snakes, out of their mouths, split tongues. They were monstrous creatures, many times the strength of ordinary students. An ordinary man would not have been able to cope with these monsters. But this was not about the protagonist. He bravely rushed towards them and began to cut them with his sword. There was a scraping of metal. The bodies of the monsters were scattered. Suddenly, the boy felt an incredible power in his hands. He was incredibly close to going to the next level. His strength increased so much that he was able to chop the monster's body in half with a single blow. A few seconds passed, and his friend was already standing in front of the monster's chopped body. He did not even have time to say anything as the head of the snake fell to the ground. He opened his mouth in surprise. This was simply unbelievable. His friend was just unbelievably strong. In his past life, the main character was known as the fastest swordsman in the world. Therefore, he can't dishonor his title. He must prove to the world just how strong he is. The monster's body scattered in different directions, blood pouring out in an endless stream. The protagonist moved at such an incredible speed that it was impossible to follow his movements. One of the snakes began to breathe fire. It accumulated magical energy like a dragon to finally spew out of its mouth flames. And so it did. The snake opened its huge mouth and began to breathe fire. The fire spread farther and farther, sizzling everything in its path. But the protagonist, as if not noticing this, jumped up and swung his huge sword trying to kill the monster. He already realized that victory was within his grasp. He used the azalet sword technique, strengthening the weapon's blade to incredible limits. 
He landed on the monster's head as if he was fused with that energy, and the crunch of armor breaking was heard. The guy did it. He sliced the monster in half with one blow. Blood splattered and the monster roared, letting out one last wheeze. The battle was over. The protagonist stood there, breathing heavily. He had defeated the monster, but there was less and less strength left in his body. Because of this battle, he had used up all of his holy power, and now his body was getting weaker by the second. His eyes slowly began to close, his consciousness leaving his inflamed head. After a few seconds, the guy fell exhaustedly to the ground. His friend noticed this and rushed to his aid. Tita picked him up in his arms and began to squeeze him. The boy's mouth even spurted blood. The boy cried and ordered his friend not to die. Xi'an tried to shout to him and told him that he would just crush him now. In the end, they managed to obtain a whole mountain of magic nuclei. These snakes were incredibly rich in loot. Now they had an inexhaustible supply. Tai Ta sat up and threw rocks in different directions with joy. He laughed loudly. They were very lucky. I'll ever be able to meet and defeat so many monsters. This is a complete success. Xi'an looked at him and smiled. Suddenly, something swept over their heads with great speed. They looked up, trying to see what was going on up there. Suddenly, a few meters away from them, someone fell. Dust flew in different directions. The protagonist seemed to guess who it could be. It was like that. It was his older brother. He was lying on the cracked ground and almost lost in knowledge. Bugger. He had been beaten again. Xi'an blurted out his eyes in surprise. Big brother, what is he doing here? From afar, a formidable voice was heard. Someone was calling for his big brother. He seems to be in trouble again. The protagonist looked away in surprise. Soon, Luo Jian and his henchmen came out of the forest thicket. They laughed and said that no one had taken the magic cores yet. Apparently, a bunch of idiots had killed all those monsters and then left all the catch here. What luck. The man looked at the main characters and contemptuously asked, Are they a bunch of those idiots? A predatory smile stretched across his face. That's lucky. They really do say that good things come in pairs. Not only will he be able to deal with the two brothers, he'll also be able to take all those monster cores. Xi'an looked at them and asked his friend to look after his older brother for him. Who was horrified? Is his little brother really going to fight them? Let him not be so impulsive. This is a middle-level saint after all. The protagonist didn't listen to him anymore. He started to gather holy power in his hand to materialize the sword. So they want to get rid of them? Soon, a huge sword appeared in his hands. Does he really think he can handle it? Is it strong enough? He stood and looked at his opponent with a contemptuous look. Who looked at his little brother with astonishment? Had he? Had he already reached the saint level? The boy couldn't believe it. After all, so recently, his older brother was so weak. Xi'an tightly grasped onto his dreams and began to concentrate the saint power in him. Who, asked Tai Ta, when was it that fourth brother managed to become a saint? How did it happen? The guy raised a finger up and cheerfully said that it actually didn't happen that long ago. Xi'an. Continuing to accumulate his power in his sword, he wasn't paying attention to anyone right now. For him, there was only what he had to do right here and right now, get even for all his wrongs. But instead of appearing, the magical energy suddenly began to evaporate. It was flying away literally before his eyes, and in the school totally disappeared. Xi'an looked at his hand, which only had a little bit of saint force left in it. It was flowing through his fingers like water. The transitional level saint had depleted it greatly, so much so that even I had saint power left to materialize the weapon. Luo might not have been killed by the magic weapon, but right now he was on the verge of not dying from laughing. The man was laughing until he lost his pulse, meaning all this showing off was just a bluff, and he was beginning to think he was some kind of unimaginable genius. His accomplices were laughing too. No one even believed that the guy would be so weak. Well, if that's the case, it will be very easy to finish him off. The man began to form a sphere of magical energy in his hands and looked at the protagonist with a predatory look. Now he would show him what a real magical weapon looked like. After a few seconds, a huge sword stuck into the ground stood beside him. He had a lot of holy power, so he could materialize any weapon without difficulty. Who realized that things were bad? Damn it! Why did he even get involved in this? He's out of his depth! His brother ordered them to flee from here, and he's going to try to hold them off. 
but suddenly a soft, chubby hand was placed on his shoulder. It was Tia Ta he smiled and told brother not to worry and just trust Xi'an. The protagonist turned to him and smiled a wide, sarcastic smile. He told his brother not to worry. He would beat the crap out of this jerk and without the help of the saint weapon. He just didn't need it. Under his feet was a pointy stick like a spear. There you go. What's not a weapon? For a true fighter, it doesn't matter what kind of weapon, it's the skill that counts. He tossed it with his foot and caught it deftly. Now he's going to show everybody what he's worth. He doesn't need a holy weapon to fight these assholes. Everyone here is greatly surprised. Is this really enough? Isn't that Tita's axe handle? It must have been. The protagonist smiled and said that it was enough for him to fight. Luo looked at the protagonist and squinted his eyes. This kid dares to look down on him? It was humiliating. It couldn't be tolerated. The man grasped his sword and put it forward and ran straight at the protagonist. But now he would say goodbye to his life for such unimaginable disrespect. Is he an idiot? Does he think he's going to stand up to him with that stick? But the guy seemed to be standing there, and he wasn't embarrassed about anything. It was just a matter of time for him. The older brother, meanwhile, was shaking with terror. He shouted to his younger brother to be careful. Luo Jian's saint force had incredible attributes that allowed him to move with great speed. But his opponent shouted that kid, there's no way that's going to help anymore. He started moving with some amazing speed, bouncing off the walls like a beam of light. It was impossible to catch it with human eyes. They were not looking in different directions. All they saw were bright flashes of light. Everyone became alert, gripping their weapons. This was simply unbelievable speed. This man was recognized as the fastest among all the students. Those who went up against him were forced to surrender by his speed alone. Xi'an smiled and thought for a moment. Too fast, huh? What if he says he can predict the future? Who does he think would win then? His older brother looked at him with rounded eyes. What was he going to predict? He can predict the future? Xi'an squinted his eyes and poked his finger at one of the areas. According to his prediction, first he would perform a stabbing lunge, then a horizontal chopping strike, and lastly, a vertical slash. But he would still win with that stick. His brother and his friend looked at him in surprise and disbelief, and they seemed to have doubts. What? Is he serious? It sounded incredibly absurd. That's right. Their lives are at stake right now. This is no time for jokes. Xiang tired of explaining all this, he said to just observe. The guy jumped up and extended his long stick to strike. One of the beams of light was human-shaped, so it was possible to anticipate where the opponent was now. The speed was tremendous, a blink of an eye, and the man was already behind the protagonist's back. He laughed and put his sword forward. Now he will pierce him through. But something strange happened. Xi'an easily dodged the blow, and the sword slammed into the ground with a clatter. It was unbelievable. It was as if he had read his mind. He knew ahead of time what was about to happen. His friends watched him in amazement, and indeed he had made a stabbing lunge. It was just like the guy said. Xi'an smiled. His plan had worked. Now the only thing left to do was to wait for the opportune moment and then attack. He smiled and said, now it's going to be horizontal. As it happened, his opponent swung his sword trying to cut off his head. But the kid saw it all coming and smiled deftly. The blade of the sword flew right over his head and did him no harm. The boy stood back and watched in amazement. He was right. He could predict the future after all but Big Brother still didn't believe it. How could Xi'an take one look and realize his fighting style? It's some kind of magic. Luo Jian was acting exactly as planned at this time. He swung upwards to deliver a large vertical chopping blow. The man shouted and put so much strength into the strike that it seemed like he was about to chop the earth itself. The protagonists jumped back in time and the heavy blade came down to the ground while the man was completely open to the blow. Now it was safe to strike, and lastly, he had to make a vertical cut. His friends were already used to the guy predicting the future and just watched it, and they were bored. He had predicted again. His older brother said his little brother couldn't be surprised by anything anymore. Xi'an, you had been waiting for the moment, and now it had become time for his wand to come out. Now everything will be decided in an instant. Everything was going perfectly according to plan. The final touch was left. As his opponent hesitated, the protagonist seized the moment and stabbed him in the chest with a sharp stick. 
A man, but it was all a foregone conclusion. His opponent couldn't believe his eyes. How is this possible? It's unthinkable. The man's agility was far superior to that kid's. How was he able to dodge all of his attacks? The kid approached him from the back and stuck the stick even deeper into him. Tai Ta laughed. His friend was very happy for him. His brother smirked and said that he knew all his moves from the beginning. Luo Jing coughed up blood and asked the protagonist, can he really see the future? The boy smiled and said that it was a lie. In fact, he had just fallen into his trap. In fact, there was nothing complicated about it. He was purposely making it seem like he was open to provoke him. So you could say he actually predicted the whole thing. The man held on to his wounded chest. Tai said he didn't understand any of it, but his friend surprised him a lot. The brother said it all sounded even weirder than predicting the future. Lo squinted in fear and ashamed of himself. He remembered a moment from his childhood when his father was teaching him. He told the little boy to listen to him carefully. He still wasn't experienced enough in martial arts, and if he ever got to fight an experienced master, he would be able to predict his every move. He would even be able to direct his attacks against him. Now those words have taken on new meaning, but the man still didn't understand one thing. How could this little boy be more experienced than him? He stood there, looking at the boy spitefully. He was only a few years younger than himself. For a second, fear came into his eyes. He didn't understand what was going on. Who was this guy anyway? Why does he know so much? What kind of monster is inside this little boy? At this moment, the protagonist snapped his fingers. I took everyone with a victorious look. Everything had gone exactly according to his plan, and now he was basking in the glory. A few lights were glowing below. It was the magical energy coming from the main characters. From above, an unknown creature that looked like a blob of red energy was watching them. Suddenly, a smile stretched out on this ball and two eyes appeared. The monster chuckled. This was simply an excellent prey. All his friends cheered for the protagonist. Not only had he disarmed his opponent, but he was even stronger than him. The older brother laughed, and in his heart he was proud. This was another small victory for him. His brother rejoiced a lot, because Luo had recognized his little brother's strength, and from now on he was the new boss of the academy, and now they would follow his orders. Now these people will definitely not be exactly annoying. He smiled, and said that I, his rival, had already paid enough for his stupidity. So, he should be forgiven. At this point, he looked even more mature in the eyes of his friends. Who looked at him with pride? His younger brother's words are so fair and generous. He is sure that in the future, his little brother will definitely remain the most respected person in the entire continent. His friend is confirmed. The name of the protagonist will spread everywhere and be known to every person. But the protagonist didn't seem to care about that at all. He looked up thoughtfully. He was more concerned about why they hadn't met anyone yet. After all, it had already been quite some time since they had entered the Earth tier. So why aren't there any monsters here? Indeed, surprisingly, this tier was completely empty. There were no humans or monsters. Who also pondered until his brother mentioned it? No one would have thought of it. Last time he participated in the competition, this tier was teeming with dangers and various monsters. They were ready to tear the contestants apart at any moment, and now it was empty. Suddenly the forest thicket was cut by some strange sound. Someone or something was rapidly approaching him, cutting through the thick of the forest. A few meters away from our heroes, something landed in the bushes with a loud sound. Everyone turned there in surprise. What could it be? Is it some kind of monster? Tai Ta grabbed his friend's hand and led him to the nearest bush. There was something glowing with a strange red color. At this time, his older brother pondered, what was it after all? but he had no idea that behind his back there was a terrible black figure looking at him with saucer-like eyes. And then a hand came over his mouth and clamped it shut. The man didn't expect it, and his eyes widened in horror. He did not even have time to say anything. It was a girl. She held him by the head and pulled him behind her into the bushes. There was a predatory smile on her face. What was she up to? It seemed that this girl was vaguely familiar. Who wanted to call for help? His people were closed, and only a suppressed scream escaped from there. He stretched out his hands to his friends, but they did not hear him. Xi'an
Noticing a strange sound, I went back to see what was going on. It was night outside, and danger could be waiting for them at every turn. Xian looked over with his friend and asked fearfully, Where is his older brother? The boy wondered. He had just been standing there, and now he was gone. Suddenly, Hu appeared from the bushes and waved at them in a friendly manner. He apologized for scaring them. He just tripped and fell into the bushes. But something was wrong. He looked strange. Tai Ta shouted that his brother was so clumsy. The guy laughed. He was very happy to see his friend. Xian didn't share the joy at all. Apparently, he noticed some oddity and squinted his eyes to watch his older brother. Xian realized that something was wrong, but it was too early to act. He said that in that case, if everyone was alive and well, they should continue killing the monsters on this tier. Everyone smiled and agreed. The friends moved on. They continued onward, but something changed. Something changed in the older brother. He was no longer acting like his usual self or just trying very hard to imitate. Suddenly, the older brother's mouth stretched into a wide smile. Yes, indeed, he liked to smile, but right now something wasn't right. Books were scattered on the ground. There were pieces of paper with hieroglyphics flying everywhere. Someone was diligently searching for something, scattering the books on the ground. Finally, the needed book was found, lying on the table, open for reading. The vice principal stood in front of the table and diligently read the put book. The first headmaster had sealed a fourth grade monster deep in the forest. It could become completely invisible, which went against all earthly rules. His lips slowly whispered terrifying words. Suddenly, the vice director's face transformed. A look of horror flashed across it. There was one more point which made his body shudder. This monster could easily take over a person's body completely. This made it incredibly dangerous, as it could disguise itself as anyone. Right now, the students were simply in monstrous danger. Who was sitting by the fire, warming himself with everyone else. No one even suspected that now, in his body hides an unknown and very dangerous entity that could destroy them all. Suddenly, someone's heavy sigh was heard. It was a magical starting owl monster second class. It flew straight at them, spreading its claws in different directions. The boy looked at the owl, and then another plan was born in his head. He called the owl little brother without anyone noticing. Suddenly, something changed in the monster's gaze. He became more frightened. The eyes of the creature widened, and in them appeared some incomprehensible blot. The owl's eyes lit up with red fire, and it started looping in different directions, as if it was confused by something. After circling a bit above the main characters, the owl flew away. She flew high into the sky, leaving her friends alone. Who was now fully under the control of the creature that had taken over his body? He clenched his fingers and looked at his little brother with a maddened look. He seemed to have heard those words for the first time, and now he was repeating only one thing little brother. Xi'an sat under the tree with his hands folded on his chest and seemed to be asleep. He didn't see anything, didn't see his brother gradually losing his mind under the control of the horrible entity. The man squatted down as if preparing to jump. His eyes lit up and his mouth stretched into a wide smile. He looked like a giant frog that had seen its prey. He reached his hand out to his little brother and looked at him with clouded eyes. The man could no longer control his body. It was in complete submission to the parasite. His hand was already a few centimeters away from the protagonist's face, but the boy still seemed to be asleep, or just pretending to be asleep. He grasped his older brother's hand and squeezed it tightly. Who gritted his teeth in fright, not expecting his younger brother to be awake. Xi'an looked at him with a stern look. In a cold voice, he asked, What, he can no longer keep his temper? Who is he and why is he pretending to be his big brother? The guy looked at him like a murderer at his victim. The one in his older brother's body wondered, was he really exposed so quickly? He disguised himself well, perfectly copying that idiot's behavior, didn't he? His acting must be flawless. The guy stood there looking down at him. Alas, his acting was indeed too flawless, so much so that it was easy to recognize. Sucks to be him. The protagonist smirked. His brother was originally a normal person, the parasite was surprised and looked at him fearfully. Suddenly, the older brother's face stretched into a smile. Here, this was what he was looking for. This guy is a pretty savvy small. 
He already can't wait to try him out. Xi'an, scared, looked at him. What is he talking about? Suddenly, his older brother grabbed his hand and squeezed it tightly. The guy didn't understand. What was going on here? The older brother pinned him against a tree and shouted that his body now belonged to him. The boy tried to break free, but it was all useless. The brother held on tight. Their gazes crossed, and before them some spark seemed to flash between them. Something left the older brother's body and moved into the protagonist. After that, as if an electric discharge happened between them, the bodies of both of them were thrown in different directions. Now, the older brother was lying unconscious. Looks like the parasite failed to relocate. How did it do that? But he just became a saint. How can his soul be so strong? The protagonist smirked and looked at the squirming parasite and put his finger on his brother's forehead. The guy said that his soul had been many times in such situations where he was between life and death. And in a way, he's already taken possession of this body himself. Now it's time for him to get the hell out of his brother's body. The boy squinted his eyes and used the Azuleta sword technique. It was as if smoke was coming out of his eyes. Right now, it would be necessary to banish this demon so that it couldn't bother them anymore. This was a demon exorcism technique. Eldest brother flew into the air, and a beam of energy passed through his head, which was meant to destroy the hell spawn occupying his body. The old man was quickly reading the book. It appears that this barrier was created to contain the monsters inside. The seal that's on the barrier is activated because it's trying to escape, and they must do their best to prevent it from doing so. The old man's eyes were running through the book. He was very scared. However, monsters have the ability to possess a person completely, both mind and body. The old man slammed the book shut and frowned even more. Now their first priority is to save the students. We need to direct all attacks to one point of the barrier to weaken it. The vice principal was scared, but after all, if the monster took over the body of any of the students and tried to escape, they would have to be very vigilant. The principal understood that it said here that it could only affect those who had not reached the saint level, so after they break through the barrier, the D.O. will have to gather all the students and check on everyone. The old man began to concentrate his saint power to break through the barrier. If they have any questions, just have the vice principal say that he decided to check the results of the hunt. The female teacher asked, is there possibly another way? The vice principal looked at her and said, no, it seems like this is the only way to check. The principal at this moment was accumulating power to destroy the portal. The woman applied her spell and said, let him then help her break the damn barriers. If anything happens to her students, they will be next after that monster. The vice principal said that unfortunately, that's all they can do for now. They tried to break the barrier with all their might, using all sorts of magic on it, but so far it was all to no avail. They couldn't even scratch the energy field. The guy sat by the fire and rested warming his body. The night was dark and the campfire was the only source of heat and light. The main character, along with his friend, sat nearby and rested. Tita was sound asleep and neither heard nor saw anything around him. But the protagonist was vigilant. He heard every rustle in his past life. It saved his life many times. Suddenly, it was as if something fell from the sky with great speed. It flew a few dozen meters and crashed into the ground. It was none other than who. His body was still under the control of this parasite, and now he intended to use it to fight. He smiled and advised the protagonist to be careful, for he would injure this body in a fight, but it would not do him any harm. It can stay in the body until the host dies, or until he himself wants to leave it. The parasite got into a fighting stance and prepared to attack. It looked at the protagonist with a challenge and invited him to fight. The guy couldn't take it anymore and got to his feet. His body began to slowly envelop with magical energy. Was he so sure of that? The protagonist looked as threatening as possible at this moment. Suddenly he looked at his hand and assessed the situation. Suddenly he either jokingly or seriously started punching himself in the face with his fists and trying to kick the demon out of his body. Suddenly, it was as if his brother's true nature had awakened. He screamed for the parasite to get out of his body. The monster was horrified his control over his body so weak. It just couldn't be. What the hell? How could this be possible? 
Big Brother swung once more to punch himself in the face to finally kick that monster out of his body, but the protagonist didn't pay any attention to that. He was already preparing his hidden strike. The man held onto his arm and tried his best to kick this demon out of his body. Xi'an flew up to him, and with all his might, he punched him with his fist straight into his head. The blow was so hard that the ground beneath his elder brother's feet sagged and began to crack. His body began to wriggle and the guy himself screamed in pain. An evil spirit began to come out of him. It looked like a strange purple haze. Eventually, the monster came out completely into the white light. It looked like a large jackal, only it had an infernal body. Its entire body was made up of haze and its eyes were burning with red light. Unbelievable! How can it be injured? The monster couldn't believe that some ordinary kid could hurt him. It was unthinkable. Xi'an stood and looked at the monster. In this world, there might not be a way to deal with it. But that didn't mean it didn't exist in other worlds. The guy held his holy weapon in his hands. He had already accumulated enough power. The monster shouted at the kid, What's he talking about? Is he saying he's not from this world? The monster couldn't believe what he was saying. Xi'an jumped up and rushed at the monster, waving his weapon. Let it think what it wanted, however. He would not allow it to continue to exist. The boy swung his sword to chop the damn thing. But it was too fast. The boy missed and hit the ball into the ground. The creature bounced aside just in time and prepared to attack back. But the protagonist did not waste time, put up two fingers, and concentrated magical energy in them to repel the attack and his fingers burst out a beam of magical holy energy, which immediately pierced the paw of the monster, tearing it to shreds. The monster wheezed. He shouted that he knew he should have killed that kid back on the first tier. Now it was obvious that this jackal had three eyes. One of them was on his forehead. The boy wondered on the first tier. Had they met him even then? He didn't understand anything. How could that be possible? He had never seen him before. But he was beginning to realize something. This monster had possessed that poor girl they had seen near the entrance to the forest. Screaming that he was going to get out of here by pretending to be a student. But the barrier made it impossible. People couldn't get out or in. Now the protagonist has figured it out. So this barrier was created to prevent him from escaping? What kind of creature is this, if they built such a defensive structure for it? The monster flew up and said it looked like he had a story to tell. The jackal's name was Mei Mao, and he has the ability to inhabit anyone. One day, an old man passed by him and said that he was only using his power for evil deeds, so he locked him up in this strange place. Jackal his mouth, and looked at the protagonist with burning eyes. He went on with the story. Many years had passed, and he had taken countless number of attempts to escape from here. But each time, it ended in failure. And as it turned out, this old man had not only sealed him in here, but had also put up a barrier just in case. Xi'an listened to this without paying much attention. He asked, how did he manage to break the seal? Who had helped him? The monster smiled and said that the guy was quite perceptive. Yes, there really is someone who helped him do it. And after his release, he put all his efforts into teaching the monsters here to cultivate. By doing so, he made them much stronger. The answers to the questions came by themselves, so he was the one worthy of these monsters. And while he told him about his tragic fate, was it just stalling for time until help arrived? There were already several monsters behind the kid's back. The monster flew up. All right, this kid knows too much, so why should he let him survive a begging sign? The monster floated in the air and ordered its servants to attack. A multitude of magical beasts rushed straight at the guy in an attempt to tear him apart. Xi'an Nachal looked up at the beast, which began to accumulate magical energy to deliver a crushing blow and tear the kid apart. In his thoughts, this monster was already celebrating victory. He grinned, and now there was nothing stopping him from killing this kid in the most painful way possible. At this time, the older brother was just sleeping soundly. After such an overload, he just passed out but something made him wake up suddenly. He rubbed his eyes and began to tell the fourth brother that he had just had a crazy dream. A girl had stolen him and then taken over his body. But it seems it wasn't a dream. The poor guy didn't notice as the figures of the monster began to loom over his head, roaring looking jaws in an attempt to devour him. 
Who wondered, could he still be asleep? It just couldn't be real. I guess he's not fully awake yet. He needs a good nap. The monster stopped and looked at him in surprise. The boy went back to sleep. Meanwhile, his little brother prepared for battle. He had to protect not only himself, but also his foolish older brother. Xi'an told his older brother to stop fooling around. There's actually an enemy in front of them. The boy woke up and looked around in surprise. What? This isn't a dream? This is real? The jackal looked at them and waited patiently, but his patience was wearing thin by the second. He opened his mouth and prepared to attack. The guy pointed his finger at him and said that it was that thing that was behind everything that was happening in the exam and was also the one who stole his body. The older brother couldn't believe it. He really hadn't fully woken up yet, and he wasn't thinking straight. His body was possessed by such a monstrosity. He became cold with fear, who said fearfully and hopefully he hoped that it wouldn't affect his attractiveness in any way. Monsters suddenly got tired of listening to all this, and he shouted, Did the jerk think he needed his body begging sign steam imbeciles? He was just furious, and where's the fight? Why are they having these conversations with each other? The two brothers were standing by hordes of monsters that were ready to pounce on them and tear them to shreds for all of an hour. These monsters were under hypnosis, and also their strength had increased manifold. The main monster smiled. Now it would finish what it started. Those two had managed to make him angry. Now he was simply furious. He wouldn't let this go. Some two brats had managed to disrupt his plans. Now he would tear them to shreds. The monster extended his finger forward, ordering his henchmen to rush forward. The monsters immediately followed his order and rushed at the two boys with a roar. The protagonist realized that these beasts were too many and he would have to fight for two. He gripped his sword tighter and prepared to fight. Monsters approached from all sides. He shouted to his friend to wake up immediately. It turned out even the stomping of the monster could not wake him up. As the protagonist did not try to get him to his feet, all was useless. The guy was sleeping just a dead sleep. A huge, rabid elephant was approaching him. He had already raised his leg to crush the poor guy, and he did not even suspect anything. One more second, and he would be nothing but a wet spot. But luckily, his friends arrived in time to drag his body away. One more second, and the kid would have been finished. But the shameless one continued to sleep as if nothing had happened. The boys dragged him by his feet and dragged him far away from here. They had to get out of here. They couldn't handle this many monsters at once. They ran in the opposite direction, deep into the forest. The monster turned around to them and ordered his beast to chase after them. He couldn't let these brats get away alive. The monster was just furious. He would definitely eat them alive now. Xi'an, along with his older brother, dragged their sleeping friend along the ground. It seemed like nothing could wake him up at all. Only his thunderous snoring could be heard around. He dragged himself along the ground as if he didn't notice anything. He just slept like a baby. That's what dead sleep is all about. Suddenly, the boys realized they couldn't move. Something was wrong. In a few seconds, they were holding only the shoes of their comrade who had suddenly gone somewhere. It was as if something was dragging him backwards. They looked at the two shoes they were holding and still couldn't understand what had happened. It was as if they were in a field in a stupor. At this time, the guy flew in the opposite direction, straight into the monster. But all this time, he continued to sleep. He accelerated to such a monstrous speed that no one would be able to see him anymore. Surprisingly, he was moving precisely into the jackal floating in the air. The guy slammed his head into its furry body and the monster shrieked in pain. He didn't expect this. What's even going on here? And why was he sleeping? The monster coughed. What a blow! He had hit him right on the weak point. It hurt like hell, but he fought with all his might. Eventually, the monster couldn't hold on and began to fall down. Only his legs flashed overhead. The boys stood and watched their friend in amazement. How did this even happen? No one could believe their eyes. What the hell was going on here? Why was their sleeping friend flying? Just like magic, the guy woke up. He was smiling and looking at everyone with sleepy eyes. With the clock in the back of his head, he wondered, how did he get here? Was he really sleepwalking? At this time, the monster's body fell to the ground right next to him. The jackal was lying on the ground with his tongue out and breathing heavily. He didn't realize who had hit him so hard. 
His soul had almost left his body. The blow was incredibly powerful. All the beasts that were under his control woke up from their sleep and now looked at him with round eyes and did not understand anything. Suddenly, the monsters turned in the opposite direction and frightenedly ran deep into the forest. Why are all the monsters running away? The guys stood there and didn't understand anything. It seems that after the headmaster lost consciousness, the magic that he had been controlling everyone immediately dissipated. The jackal stood up and rubbed his bruised head. Damn it, if he hadn't let his guard down, he wouldn't have regained his physical form. How careless. He was angry with himself. How could he have let such an unfortunate lapse happen? However, it wasn't over. As long as he used his strength, these two wouldn't be able to defeat him. He once again got into a fighting stance and began to accumulate combat power. The protagonist at this time didn't waste any time. He rushed straight at his enemy like a bullet holding a sword. His face darkened. He approached the jackal closer and closer. The monster did not have time to finish his sentence, but suddenly the blade of the sword pierced his throat. Blood splashed in different directions. The monster did not even have time to react to such a lightning-fast lunge. He wheezed, and his eyes slowly began to fade away. Had he already forgotten? His strength wasn't as monstrous as he had imagined. The guy was standing behind him. He made such a quick strike that the monster didn't even have time to realize anything. Xi'an disdainfully looked at him. He seemed to have forgotten that his azulet sword technique and this monster's demonic power were sworn enemies. At this time, the principal, along with the rest of the teachers, were trying their best to destroy the dome. They were using their most powerful spells that were like lightning bolts to pierce into the dome. They braided it like a spider web, but the structure absorbed all the energy as if it was not damaging it at all. But suddenly, something changed. The dome forbade it, and it shattered like glass. The spell had worked after all. The principal shouted for everyone to block the entrances immediately, and also told all the teachers to go in immediately and help the students if they were inadvertently injured. The old man was incredibly serious at this point. It was as if he had undergone a transformation and was no longer that silly old man. He shouted for the teachers to save them at any cost. The others nodded in understanding and rushed forward. Soon it was all over. A lot of students left the forest. Luckily, most of them survived. A small tent camp was set up near the dome with students who had just come out of the dome. They were receiving full medical attention. The kids were very scared that a bunch of students had died. They thought they wouldn't survive. The princess stood and looked fearfully at the surviving students. Her eyes were still filled with the nightmare she had experienced just a few hours ago. She couldn't believe that she had managed to get out of that hell. She squinted her eyes and began to scrutinize everyone present. She still couldn't get the horrible images of the murders of innocent students out of her mind. Suddenly her gaze crossed with one student. The girl asked the princess, is she still trying to find Xi'an Tian? The princess looked at her in surprise, but the girl didn't bother to be surprised. She looked at her with round eyes and taking hold of her chubby cheeks began to ramble, taking the initiative to take an interest in the boy. That's so unlike her. Princess All listened to all this and blushed more and more every second. But soon, there is a huge labor managed to pull herself together. The girl sniggered. What is she talking about? Is it wrong that she wants to thank the one who saved their lives? The girls looked up at the pulsing dome. The teacher had said that all the surviving students were already here. Since he wasn't here yet, it was possible that something terrible had happened after all. But the princess didn't want to believe it. It was impossible. This guy wasn't the type to die for nothing. The girl thought about it. He's a head taller than all those who are here, so she's sure the guy is fine. The vice principal came into the tent and addressed the principal. They have searched the entire forest, but the monster's whereabouts are still unknown. There is a possibility that it has possessed one of the students. His voice was anxious. The old man wondered if it was expected. He got up from his seat and wanted to run outside. To prevent the monster and the chance of escape, many students were hurt or killed altogether. The old man intended to take drastic measures. His colleagues spread his hands and said that he still needed to recover. Let him let him deal with it all himself. 
As if the old man didn't listen to him, his eyes lit up with rage and he shouted that he would kill the monster with his own hands. It was impossible to stop him at that moment. He walked quickly out of the tent. All the research devices are ready. Have them act as soon as they notice any anomaly. The vice director simply nodded. He realized that there was no need to argue with him now. The old man came out of the tent and ordered all the students to come up one by one and lay out the monster cores they received. He would evaluate and announce the results of the competition. There were cheers from everywhere. Some were lamenting the fact that they hadn't been able to kill a single monster, and now they simply didn't have any cores. The vice principal put on his monocle and silently watched each of the students, pretending to evaluate the stones. The monsters were too strong this time. They were lucky to have survived at all. 29. A multitude of students crowded in front of him. Everyone was talking amongst themselves in a low voice. Someone was saying that he was only able to buy four monsters. Then he would definitely pass. Another student teamed up with other people and killed three but still passed. Among them, that snake-like man was also standing there. He nodded contemptuously at them and said they were just a bunch of trash. It's not that the monsters were strong, it's that they were too weak. Now he's going to show them what real strength is. He threw off his bag of cannonballs. Many colored pebbles with holy power poured out onto the table. There were at least a few dozen cores. The student had really done a very good job. A whisper was heard among the other students. There are so many nuclei. Cheng Mixiang is truly worthy of being the young master of his clan. His strength surpasses many geniuses of this generation. At this time, the guy was just mocking the other students without paying attention to anyone. This is what real strength means. They're all just pathetic worms. The girls glared at him. What an arrogant, insolent, and oppressive freak he was. With such a young master, she was beginning to worry about the future of the Huayun clan. Her friends snickered. But he's still a force to be reckoned with. All of his statements backed up by his incredible strength. Unfortunately, she doesn't think there's any student stronger than him. Suddenly, the student's tirade was interrupted by a familiar voice. He was asked how he could be so loud with so few nukes. Everyone else turned around in surprise at the voice. They recognized it immediately. That voice couldn't be confused with anything. The princess, as soon as she heard it, immediately smiled. The girl had already understood everything. Bathed you went boys. They were intact, alive and well. Xi'an walked along with them, putting his hands behind his back. They were completely unconcerned and apparently satisfied with the work they had done. Behind their backs were bags of booty. Who smiled with a full mouth, echidically said that it was cool to be the center of attention. Xi'an looked irritably at his brother who had the same girl on his back. It seems she would have been conscious if he had told me about the treasure, and they would not have wasted their time and would have been out of here long ago. His brother looked at him with a hurt look. He was the one who thought that there would be treasures in the sealed area. It wasn't his fault that there was nothing there. Brother tried his best to justify himself. The protagonist folded his arms across his chest and said that this competition was pretty much fun. Chang madly laughed and said that he was able to survive after all. What did he just yell out there? Xiang that he was able to gather more nukes than him? Xian smiled, of course, but what else could it mean? He realized that he was now the winner of this competition. Everyone else looked at the protagonist in surprise. The princess's friend shouted that he was incredibly cool. She seemed to be falling in love with him. The guy walked over to the table where the magic stones were already poured out and asked the principal to bring him a bigger table. The guy smiled and squinted his eyes at everyone. He shifted his gaze to his rival and said that he wanted to show him that there was always someone better than him. After a while, there was a big table in front of him with Chung standing behind it, and the echidna asked, Is this table enough for him? Well, now they will see how many kernels he has collected. The guy smiled and said, Now let him watch carefully. He carefully took off his spatial belt. In one deft motion, he tossed it high into the air. The belt glowed with a bright light. The protagonist told everyone not to be very surprised. A second later, magic cores sprinkled from the sky like rain. There was just some incredible amount of them. Indeed, it was as if there was some kind of emerald rain all around. Chung bared his eyes in astonishment. It was simply impossible.
How did he have so many magic nuclei? It was simply impossible to believe it. The guy just stood there as if dumbfounded. A mountain of magic nuclei was already flying at him. Everyone else, including the principal, was just shocked. So many nuclei. How did he manage to gather such a large amount of nuclei? Chung was already completely engulfed by these nuclei, but they were still coming. Were there students? How did he manage to collect so many cores? Did he kill all the monsters by himself? Chang was already completely buried under those cores. His henchmen looked at the mountain of magic cores with envy. There were their cores there, too. Xiang glared at his rival, but was he satisfied now? One's strength should not be used to look down on others. Chung finally made it outside and looked at the protagonist. The princess and her friend looked at it with admiration and surprise. That's right. He had completely trampled on that freak's arrogance. Chang got to his feet and looked like he had been possessed by the devil. He shook himself off and spit on the ground and told the protagonist not to lecture him. So what if he took quantity? Quality is a far more important factor. Killing one highly ranked monster is far more valuable than a hundred somewhat ranked ones. He took out a large glowing yellow stone from his pocket. A smile stretched across his face. What could he say about this level three monster core? This core is much more valuable. The vice director corrected his monocle and took a closer look. This is indeed a level three core. It looked like he had kept an ace up his sleeve until the last moment. The headmaster crossed his arms over his chest. Well, he is the young master of the clan. They always like to do that. Chang approached the protagonist and gazed triumphantly into his eyes. So, his pile of knee-eye with Koran voice trash against a single level three core. Who does he think will win? The protagonist just crossed his arms over his chest and looked at the core with indifference. Xian smiled and called out to his older brother. The boy tossed the sleeping girl and Tita managed to catch her. Chung, he didn't relent. He shouted that it was too late to call his brother and beg for mercy. The guy was in his repertoire and still just as arrogant and condescending. Hu ran closer and told him to shut up. That's not why his brother called him. They bumped fists in a friendly way. The main character always trusts his older brother to play to the public and show two cool things. Who got proud of himself? He's a pro at it. The guy rummaged through his pockets. And after a second, he pulled out a bright red colored stone from there. It glistened in the sun and literally exuded the strongest magical energy. Who pointed his finger at it and shouted, and what does he say to that? Would he not like to share his thoughts on this stone? Chung didn't know what to say. His legs shook and his breath hitched. This is a level four core? That's simply impossible. Even the principal and vice principal couldn't contain their astonishment. What the hell? Could this be the core of that monster? The two men stood there not knowing what to say. In all their practice, they had never seen such a thing before. Who didn't stop being important? He was leaning on the table, proudly looking at the stone. So? He said something about the importance of quality over quantity. Did he have anything to say for himself? Chang began to stammer in disbelief. He shouted that these two were definitely cheating. How were they able to kill a rank four monster? Even he wouldn't be able to handle it. The old man didn't know what to say. He was in a bit of shock himself. But still, this was something that needed to be sorted out. Chung just boiled with rage. He couldn't believe that his strength was being questioned. The others started to make fun of him. And no, the kid cried. He had asked for it. Xian made a grimace and told him to remember that there would always be bigger fish. So he advised him to be more restrained next time. Here he still could not stand it because of shouting at the protagonist that, how dare this freak to talk to him like that? Who the hell is he? The guy just stood there and smiled. Suddenly, the vice principal intervened. He grabbed the student's arm and stopped his attempt to start a fight. The man said that they were now on the academy grounds. Let him watch his behavior. At this time, the principal looked at the protagonists and said in a serious voice that they would go with him. They would need to clarify something. Everyone looked at each other with uncomprehending looks. The director cast his spell, and after a second, they started moving to another place. The protagonists were enveloped by pillars of energy and began to move them to some unknown place. 
Everyone else watched in horror and amazement at what was happening. The girls wondered what was even going on. It was the first time they had ever seen the headmaster look so serious. The princess couldn't say anything. She only stuttered and asked herself how did they manage to get a level four core. The girl raised an uncomprehending gaze upwards and thought for a moment. There were many dangers in this dense forest, the likes of which they had never encountered before. This core was not as simple as it looked at first glance. This magical thing held some kind of secret, and now it had to be made clear. In the middle of the room stood a large mirror that reflected everything that was happening in the arena. Next to it stood a female teacher. By all appearances, the result was obvious. Several people whose silhouettes were hidden by the darkness sat on high chairs. One of them who sat in the middle began to speak. Tomorrow, it will be Yu Yue's 16th birthday, and coincidentally the day when they should announce the candidate. The other one sitting next to him asked, Who does His Majesty think is most suitable for the role? The man replied that obviously, after the competition, it was clear that Changguan Xiantian was a much more suitable candidate than that arrogant and pompous frivolous turkey Chang Ming Xiang. Everyone else supported him. The fat man sitting on the edge laughed. I said that he would never have thought that this clan could cultivate such a genius. The king sat back on his throne and folded his hands in front of him. Well, now that they've come to a unanimous decision, we must issue the decree. The man smiled. His voice sounded very happy. Apparently, he was pleased with what was happening. He said that he wanted Xian Tian to marry his daughter. Concerned voices were heard in the temple that was in the very same cave. The headmaster was sitting in his office, and looking at the core, the main characters stood in front of him and explained the situation to him. The old man couldn't believe it. So they are saying that this monster got angry, and because of that, it went into physical form, after which T. Ta and the protagonist finished it off. Hu smiled with a full mouth. He clearly felt proud. The boy said that the principal and himself realized that in terms of annoying, he is the best of the best. His brother confirmed, thanks to his older brother, Mei Mao was off the hook. The old man frowned. This was indeed the truth. He had never met a more annoying student. The old man sipped some tea from his mug. He still didn't fully believe it. But could it really be possible for rank four monsters to be knocked out so easily? Tai Ta was even a little offended, Principal. What doubted his strength? The boy said that if the principal wanted to, he could hash redo this blow right now. The principal waved his hands and even got a little scared. Good, good, good. He doesn't think his room full of antiques can take that punch. He sighed heavily. The old man couldn't believe that this monster was so easy to kill. These people were obviously hiding something. It was necessary to find out as much as possible. The headmaster chuckled. He never would have thought that the monster that even the first headmaster couldn't kill was killed by a trio of students. The main character said it was pure luck. Tai Ta confirmed his words, right? It was just luck and nothing more. The old man made things serious again, no matter. Since Oni killed that monster, the first place in this competition is awarded to him. He pointed at the main character. This is by far the best result. The boy hesitated. He thought that the headmaster realized that they didn't tell everything, but he decided not to ask further. Perhaps he doesn't want to make things worse. The principal broke out into a smile. He was very pleased. The old man thanked them for helping him deal with such a problem. Now he could breathe a sigh of relief. The students were still standing in their place and were in utter incomprehension. Suddenly, the very pillars with which the protagonists had moved appeared. Something was happening again. They watched in amazement as the principal along with the students appeared from the pillars of light. From this angle, they looked amazing. When the movement was complete, the principal smilingly said that the winner of this competition was Changguan Xian Tian. At this time, he stood a little far away from the principal and looked around everyone with a victorious gaze. The principal continued to speak. This is the end of the competition. Everyone can be dismissed. The injured should be examined as soon as possible. Chung was just furious. He didn't intend to leave it like this. Xian had definitely cheated. How come he was the winner? He couldn't believe it. He wouldn't be able to kill a rank four monster. The headmaster suddenly transformed from a good-natured old man to a stern, gray-bearded old man. He ordered the boy to be silent. 
How dare he interfere with the Academy principal's decision? If he had any questions, he could ask them in the principal's office. Chang overwhelmed. This was the first time he had seen the principal like this. The guy immediately shut up and nodded his head. He didn't want to cause more trouble for himself. At this time, the vice principal was tending to the wounded. Hurry up and help the wounded. The rest of you can go back to your rooms. Tai Ta rushed into the tent with the doctor and said that they brought the wounded girl. At this time, the female doctor was holding an enormous syringe, and there was a guy tied up on the table, apparently preparing for the worst. A little prick, and he'd be as good as a cucumber. There was an unconscious guy sitting next to him. Apparently, he'd already been through the procedure. At that moment, they realized that they were more likely to be crippled than cured. The protagonist came out of the tent and there was a princess waiting for him. She said she was looking for him and immediately blushed with shame. The guy looked at her and asked, Is everything with her early and all right? The girl blushed with embarrassment and blushed even more. Yes, everything's fine. She heard that the guy had saved them all, so she wanted to thank him. Xi'an smiled a good-natured smile and said that it wasn't necessary, but he hoped that they had sorted out the past misunderstanding. The girl became even more embarrassed, and her cheeks finally blushed. She said in a quiet voice that those who sacrifice themselves for the good of others definitely can't be bad people. Earlier she had insulted him, so let the guy forgive her as well. A sincere remorse could be heard in the girl's words. She smiled and said that her name was Yu Yue. The girl extended her hand to the protagonist. He smiled and also extended his hand to her that his name was Xian Tian. Their hands were already a few centimeters apart, and a handshake was about to take place. But suddenly, that same female teacher appeared from somewhere. She stepped between them and pushed both students away from each other. She appeared literally out of nowhere. It seemed that this woman was following them. Yu Yue didn't expect to see her teacher here. The girl looked at her with a surprised look. What is she doing here? What's the matter? The woman shifted her gaze to the protagonist and sternly said that he shouldn't relax. He should not be happy yet. For him, the problems had just begun. The girl looked at all this and understood nothing. The woman teacher told her student to follow her and added significantly that something big was about to happen. Without waiting for an answer, she grabbed the girl and dragged her behind her. The poor girl waved goodbye and stammered an apology. She was terribly embarrassed at this moment. Xi'an waved back at her, but still didn't understand anything. The little guy sighed heavily. Why is he speaking in riddles again? Couldn't he just say it in normal language? He was starting to get a little annoyed. That woman seemed strange. What did she want? Tai Ta was sitting at the table eating a huge piece of meat. The guy was incredibly satisfied. It had been so long since he had eaten well that he would eat anything in the world right now. The main character was also sitting next to him. It looked like he was just meditating. Tita lamented. What a pain in the ass. Once the girl woke up, she said she couldn't remember anything, and he thought he could be friends with the two girls in the academy. Xi'an told him not to be discouraged. At least they still had a prize left. Just have him wait for his brother to bring all the monster cores to them. The doors swung open, and Big Brother appeared on the doorstep. He was the one they were talking about. The guy laughed and shouted at the top of his voice that he had great news. Xi'an smiled and asked why his brother was so excited. Was the prize really a beautiful girl? A sneer could clearly be heard in this question. To everyone's surprise, the older brother said it was like that. Does he really know everything? Xi'an and his friend looked at Big Brother in surprise. What? The prize was really a girl? This was simply unbelievable. Such a guy was definitely not expected. After hearing that, the main character seemed to be upset. This wasn't going according to his plan. He frowned and stopped talking. This had to be dealt with. Who puzzled? Why did his little brother seem so upset? Tai Ta confirmed. He would be able to marry the beautiful princess. What's wrong with him? Obviously, the main character didn't share their joy. He turned away and folded his arms across his chest. He doesn't even know who this girl is, and he's already being told to marry her. He won't stand for it. Who seemed to be happier than his younger brother? He spread his arms to the sides and shouted that this princess is the only child of the current emperor. Xi'an listened to this and became even more gloomy. He disliked all of this even more. He shifted his gaze to his older brother and looked at him spitefully. 
He was silent and did not know what to say. Xi'an turned to him and asked in a completely indifferent tone, So what? What's the big deal? It turned out it didn't bother him at all. Hu hesitated for a moment. He didn't expect such a reaction. But that's all he knows. The guy scratched the back of his head and tried to remember anything else. This princess is quite a mysterious person. Only the imperial family knows what she looks like, and outside the palace and no one has seen her. Tai Ta wondered, is this princess so scary that they decided to hide her? Hu began to explain, even if she's scary, she's still a princess. If his brother marries her in the future, the whole country will be in his power. Xian Na frowned. He wasn't the least bit interested in becoming emperor. Why should he let anyone decide his fate? This was all starting to make him incredibly angry. The boy got up from his seat and walked briskly towards the door. He'd decided to go for a walk, and this whole thing had pissed him off, and now he needed to calm down. He opened the door with a sharp movement. 129 Tai to Scared asked his older brother, He wouldn't refuse, right? Who replied in an equally frightened voice, If he refuses, then things will be very bad. Giving a refusal to the emperor is tantamount to insulting his honor. We need to persuade the guy as soon as possible. He jumped out into the street following his younger brother and shouted for him not to jump to conclusions. He needed to change the boy's mind as soon as possible, or there would be trouble. But the main character was already gone. There was no one on the street. Xi'an probably went somewhere secluded because it was beginning to annoy him. A small, neat gazebo stood on a hill in complete solitude. There were several people in it, two women standing inside talking about something. There, the princess and her teacher were talking. The girl holding a piece of watermelon asked in a concerned voice, Does the teacher think the guy will agree to the wedding? After all, he doesn't even know that she is the princess. The woman replied that his family would definitely agree. After all, it's a great opportunity for them to rise again. But she can't say anything about Xi'an Tian himself. Yu Wei took a bite of a piece of watermelon and began to chew diligently. If he is one of those who is greedy to power and agrees to the wedding, then she will immediately go to her father and ask him to cancel it. The woman asked, what will happen in the event that he does not agree? Hearing this question, the girl blushed and bit off a little more. But if he doesn't agree, she will. We'll think about it. The girl became embarrassed. The teacher sighed heavily. So if he says yes, this girl will say no. But if he says no and she says yes, the older she gets, the less their generation understands. Suddenly, the woman looked somewhere to the side. She saw something there. Loud footsteps came from outside. Xi'an was walking straight towards their gazebo with a fast gait. Well, as soon as they remembered him, here was the guy. It was as if he didn't notice them and was muttering to himself. Just a little while ago, he was in the forest and just hunting monsters. And now, out of the blue, they want to marry him off to a princess. He wouldn't be able to advance in cultivation with another person by his side. Suddenly, a watermelon rind flew just past him and he snapped out of his musings. The boy looked forward before him in surprise. He shifted his eyes to the direction from which it had come and looked there in surprise. U.S. sat there and held a watermelon in her hands. She looked at the guy and asked if he wanted to have a snack together, since it was such a coincidence. The main character walked up to her and asked why she was here. I had somewhere to go, after all. Yua said that she was all sorted out and decided to rest, and also she heard a rumor that he was going to marry the princess. Is that true? Xi'an sat down next to her, and the girl gave him a slice of watermelon. He asked where the girl had heard this already. She replied that she had her sources. The girl congratulated him on his future marriage. The guy didn't seem enthusiastic. What's there to congratulate him on? What good is that? And he's going to have to marry someone he's never even met. Yua said that if he marries the princess, the power of the country will be transferred to him in the future. Many can only dream of such a thing. Xi'an looked at her with a serious look, and biting a piece of watermelon said that if he needed anything, he would get it himself. The girl looked at him with surprise and asked if he was going to reject the emperor's offer. The guy continued to chew the watermelon with a nonchalant look. He said thoughtfully, if it's the imperial family's decision, then if he refuses, it might affect his family too. Especially, he didn't really want to offend the princess. He didn't want to hurt innocent people. The girl looked at him with great respect and said that she didn't think he cared so much about other people. Xi'an turned to her and said, He carries too young for all this. 
Therefore, he only wants to focus on cultivation. And for marriage, he will deal with it when he becomes strong enough to negotiate with the imperial family as an equal. Yue admiringly looked at him. These are two mature words for a young lad. Did he really lie about his age? Xi'an almost choked on his watermelons. Is she suspecting something too? He tried his best to deflect suspicion and said that he was still a child. Let the girl eat the watermelon and don't get distracted. She just looked at him with a suspicious look. They continued to sit in the gazebo for a while longer with someone watching them. It was the same woman teacher. She was also chewing watermelon standing in the bushes. She realized that she no longer understood today's generation at all. Strange kids. The sun continued to give its bright rays in the land. Vegetation was a buzz all around. The day was in full swing. Chung Ming Xian somehow managed to steal the protagonist's older brother, and now he had introduced interrogation. He beat him to a pulp, so much so that the poor guy was covered in blood and lay on the earth. The guy asked, where is Xian Tian? Chang was furious. If this freak didn't tell now, he would go to the other world right now. His eyes were burning with madness. They were facing each other, and a fight was about to take place between them. The situation was getting hotter and hotter by the second. Who already had a broken head. He was breathing heavily and said that it was the emperor's decision. Did he really think he could get the princess by killing Xian Tian? Chung had already completely lost his mind with rage. He was shouting that he was the young master of the Huayun clan. Princess Gaylan should marry him. The fact that this old Marasmus decided to marry the princess to this little brat was definitely a mistake. Who said that they are not allowed to behave like this on the academy grounds? The principal will not allow such behavior. They definitely won't get away with this kind of behavior. Chung didn't hear him at all. He had built up energy in his punch and swung his fist. His father had invited the principal and Bai An to visit his clan. And that's why no one in this academy will save him now. Who climbed to his feet and got into a fighting stance. He doesn't expect anyone to come to his rescue. His opponent seems to have forgotten something. The kid's eyes squinted. He still had his trump up his sleeve. He seemed to have forgotten that his main element was earth. A second passed as the ground shook beneath Chang's feet, and several stone pillars grew. He barely had time to stay on his feet. He was standing on one of those pillars, and he didn't realize anything. It seemed like he would have to chase after that bastard. Who took advantage of the moment and started running in the opposite direction? He needed to save his life. The guy realized that he couldn't do it alone against this man. He was too strong. Chung was not confused, and waving his clawed hand released several energy waves towards the poor guy, which began to chase him with a whistling sound. A second later, the older brother felt something sharp and hot slamming into his back. He was unable to stay on his feet and fell to the ground. His breathing became labored. There were several cuts on his back. And not bleeding, the guy turned back around, and there were already several of Chang's henchmen ahead of him. They seemed to be surrounding him. The situation was getting more and more complicated. He prepared to fight alone against the three. He wouldn't be able to hide in the academy grounds. One of those freaks had already started to accumulate energy for his strike. He won't be able to fight since he's outnumbered. He can't hide in the academy either. We should try hiding at the foot of the mountain. The guy pushed himself off the ground, if with incredible speed he began to run away. Chang gritted his teeth and ordered his buddies to follow the bastard. There was no way to let him escape. While his brother was on the verge of death, the protagonist was having a nice conversation with a girl in seclusion. She said he had better not be in a hurry to refuse the marriage proposal. There were no more watermelons left in the plate, but only a few empty crusts. Yue raised her finger up and said meaningfully that the princess might be much better than he thought. The girl suddenly changed her attitude towards the guy, and now it was as if she was trying to change his mind. Xi'an almost swallowed his tongue. He looked at the girl with surprise and asked, Does she know the princess? Is she a member of the imperial family? The girl smiled and hummed some uncomplicated song to herself. She leaned over to the protagonist and said that he would soon find out everything himself. Xi'an did not understand anything and only goggled at her. Yue stood up from her seat and said that she had to go now. The girl did not wait for an answer and walked backwards. Xi'an was alone with his thoughts. The girl ran so fast that he did not have time to ask her any questions. 
Now he stood by the empty gazebo and pondered. Yes, in the past and now. He couldn't understand what the girl was thinking. The boy looked thoughtfully into the distance. Suddenly, his musings were interrupted behind his back. The protagonist immediately came to his senses and twitched with fear and surprise. A familiar feeling visited him. Several holy forces clashed in a battle. What was even going on there? He turned around towards the sound and looked there with a surprised look. Who already, who already was holding on to his feet with his last strength? His clothes were completely covered in blood. He no longer had the strength to run away, and his opponents were not tired at all. Cheng seems to have just started warming up. What a brave man, except their cat and mouse game ends here. He jumped up sharply and thrust his clawed hand forward. Now he's going to deliver the final blow and that asshole will be finished. There were already a few meters between them when suddenly, a magical holy energy began to move towards them. Cheng was forced to repel the unknown attack. He put out his hand and knocked the energy beam aside. He didn't understand anything at all. The main character appeared from somewhere, and he quickly jumped towards his big brother. Xi'an jumped up to him and helped him to his feet. He was scared and asked his big brother if he was all right. Who, still not understanding anything, looked at his little brother who suddenly came to his aid. Who looked at his little brother and said, that man wants to kill him. Tell him to hurry up and get out of here. The protagonist didn't understand anything and let out his eyes in surprise. Out of his last strength, the older brother told him to let him find the principal. He no longer had any strength left at all, and the guy fell to the ground from exhaustion. Chang pointed his clawed finger at them and laughed a crazy laugh. What a pleasant surprise this was. Xi'an Tian decided to take the initiative to show himself first. If he kills him, the princess will belong to him. Chung was already completely mad and was ready to destroy everything in his path. Xiang's face changed. He became serious, even angry. His voice was somehow metallic, even and calm. Right now he had a real killer in him. Even though his brother can be annoying and stupid, but still, he is his brother. He's always risking himself to help him and he gives his best. In this world, his older brother is the only person besides his mother he can consider his sister. And now, his blood is on Xi'an's hands. His voice became more and more threatening. The guy had changed beyond recognition. He was emanating an aura so monstrous that anyone standing nearby would have their legs buckled in fear. Xi'an just stood there, staring at his opponent. Right now, all he saw in front of him was a target to be destroyed. His face transformed and became predatory. Blood must be paid for with blood, didn't he think? Now the guy looked like he was ready to tear the world apart. His brother had dared to be hurt, and now they would all pay. An energy aura began to grow around him, engulfing his entire body. The entire space around him was enveloped in light. He began to accumulate holy power. How dare they hurt him? They'll all pay for this. Xi'an was furious. Now this freak is going to die. He looked at his opponent with the eyes of a true beast seeing its prey. It didn't take Chung long to realize that he was afraid. But why is he afraid? He's the young master of his clan, the strongest in this academy. So why does he feel fear? The boy prepared for the fight with clenched teeth. He looked forward, but he didn't feel as confident as before. For some reason, fear for his own life appeared in his soul for the first time in a long time. Now, he's in a fighting stance. Well, let's see who's going to die today. He released his claws forward and looked like a huge spider. An aura of magical energy also appeared around him. With a wave of its clawed paw, it threw a squeeze of meteor towards the protagonist. A bundle of energy erupted from his hand and flew straight forward. Xi'an summoned his sword and looked at his opponent with a fierce gaze. Does he still think that he is the strongest in the Cargot Academy? Right now, his self-confidence would diminish. The protagonist broke out of his seat and ran forward. It's about time to bring him down. He wasn't afraid. There was only rage and a desire for revenge in his soul. Within seconds, the two boys clashed in a fierce battle. Metal rattled, and shards of light flew in different directions. Their strength was almost equal, and now there could only be one winner. Chung couldn't believe what he saw. This guy could parry his strike so accurately. This was the first time he was facing an opponent who was as strong as him. Now fear had finally entered his soul. 
He didn't understand. This guy had only recently reached the saint level. How could he be able to control saint power so perfectly? There was no way. Xi'an wielded his sword perfectly, fending off all attacks as if he was not just a student, but a skilled warrior. That was basically the case. It was just that no one knew about it. He deftly dodged another attack and stealthily prepared to stab his opponent with his sword right in the throat to finally finish the creep off. But his opponent was not so simple. Chang saw all of this and dodged. The energy jet passed within a few centimeters of his face and flew further away. It crashed into a nearby tree and in one fell swoop sliced it in half. He saw that there was blood on his body. This made him horrified. This guy was able to hurt me? He thought simply. It was impossible. No, he was just lucky. He concentrated even more magical energy in his hand and swung. Anger raged in his soul. It was necessary to defend his part or else he wouldn't survive this disgrace. They fought again. A punk like him can't do that. He swung his arm but missed again. The protagonist dodged every blow. Chang was already out of control. This was his fatal mistake. He swung his arms in different directions. His movements were unfocused, and the protagonist easily dodged them. Running behind him, the guy dodged, and with one powerful blow hit him right in the back. Blood spurted out. Chang and gave a surrendered groan. He couldn't dodge this attack. He stood holding his injured back and felt the force slowly leaving his body. The blow was incredibly strong and fast, the likes of which he had never seen before. Gritting his teeth, he looked at his opponent. But why? Why? It seemed as if he was anticipating all of his attacks. He can't hit him at all. Xi'an stood a little far away and looked at his opponent with a piercing gaze. His body was enveloped by an energy that literally became one with him. Previously, it had been lenient on him. The guy thrust forward his sword, which had an incredible amount of energy accumulated in it. Normally, he wouldn't kill anyone, but not today. His eyes looked frantic, anger swirling within him. He dared to injure his big brother. This was unforgivable. His voice suddenly became quiet and calm. His face transformed and only one phrase escaped his lips. Die. A multitude of rays of light pierced Chung's body. He had no time to do anything, not even to think of dodging. His body was immediately pierced by an incredible pain. He tried to cover himself with his hands, but it didn't work. He was so hot that his blood seemed to boil. He fell to the ground, covering himself with his hands in fear. All of his clothes were bloody, his heart was beating at an incredible rate, and there was incredible fear in his soul. The main character slowly approached him while holding his sword. Chang held onto his shoulder in advance and slowly crawled back. Xi'an disdainfully looked at him and began to speak softly. What good is the title of young clan master or the strongest in the academy? He doesn't care about those ranks. If he wants to kill him, it will just do it. Chang continued to stagger back, his voice trembling. He begged to sit him down, his eyes running in different directions. He had already accepted his fate. Inside himself, the guy realized that he had lost this battle. He realized that now his end was coming. With his last strength, he clung to the last shards of life. His eyes were running in different directions. He couldn't believe that this man was about to kill him. His whole life flashed before his eyes. He began to remember moments from his training. He was proud of him as a kid. It takes months for ordinary people to learn these moves. The master was able to learn them in just a day. He is the most gifted genius of this generation. He remembered how he had mocked his peers, calling them just a bunch of trash. He thought all this time that he was special, that he was exceptional. Absolutely everyone in the clan praised his merits, extolled his efforts. The young master has a bright future. Their clan would prosper with him. The boy knew no pity. He killed everyone in his way. He was foretold a great destiny. He would not only become a clan elder, but also the future emperor of this kingdom. This fame and recognition eclipsed the young lord's mind, and now he became just a monster craving only power and might. All this will be his, only his estate. He is the future of the clan and the emperor. He can't lose. He's a genius. He tried to convince himself of his exceptionalism even though he was on the brink of death. Unwilling to believe this, he ordered his henchmen to attack this man altogether. No matter how strong he was, he wouldn't be able to handle so many people. If they kill him, he will lavishly reward each one. 
The men in dark robes immediately rushed towards the protagonist to kill him on the spot. They were unquestioningly loyal to their master and were willing to do his bidding. Xi'an generally was not afraid of anything at this moment. They could be as many as they wanted. They could be 100, 200, 1,000. But they were all nothing. They were just nothing in front of his true strength. The guy concentrated the energy of all of his previous generations into himself to deliver a single crushing blow. No one even noticed before he swung his sword, and there was silence in the air. The bodies of the men who had just been ready to tear him to shreds were now themselves shredded. Chang still recognized the strength of the protagonist, but he advised him to stop. This cunning serpent didn't want to back down, and even though he was on the verge of death, he tried to manipulate. He kept his older brother pinned to the ground and was ready to kill him this very second if the protagonist didn't stop. So if he wants to save his brother, it's right now. Let him cut off his right hand. Xi'an silently looked in his direction. He had a choice in front of him. It was necessary to save his brother after all. It was almost his only family member in this unfamiliar world. His eyes were filled with rage and anger. Chang continued to hold the poor man and was already squeezing his head with his sharp fingers. One more second, and the poor man would simply die of exhaustion. Suddenly a sword slid through the air. It was cutting through space itself. The speed was so inconceivable that it was simply impossible to see it. Chang couldn't take anything in. He suddenly felt a monstrous pain cutting through his body. Blowing his eyes out, he stared forward. The very hand that was holding Hu was cut off. His body was pierced with pain. He didn't even immediately feel what had happened. But still, realization began to come to him. His right arm had been cut off exactly at the shoulder. Xi'an looked at him with a formidable gaze. He had an extra arm? No problem at all. It could be fixed now. Now he didn't need it anymore. Chang stood, holding on to his severed arm. The protagonist jumped up to his older brother, preventing him from falling. Chang screamed with anger and hopelessness. How dare he do such a thing? His father would not forgive him. He will destroy his entire family. Xiang looked at him and calmly said, If he kills him, no one will know about what happened. Right? An incredible cruelty and confidence could be heard in his voice. Chang swallowed his tongue and didn't know what to say. He just stared with frightened eyes and realized that he had nowhere to go. After standing like that for a second, he ducked. He ran headlong, screaming for help to save him. The protagonist just looked after him and laughed quietly. Xi'an turned away and said that he was just a lousy coward who didn't deserve anything. Suddenly, voices were heard behind him. It was the watch or academy. They were asking, what's going on here? Didn't you decide to break the academy's rules? Several teachers jumped out of the bushes. Chang shouted for them to help him because this man wants to kill him. The protagonist stood and held his sword in his hands. People ran to them asking what had happened here. One of them told the others to help the others. There was concern and fear on their faces. Xiang S was disappointed to realize that it looked like he wouldn't be able to deal with him quietly. Chang ran up to the teachers and Thee began to examine his earlier body. Never mind, none of this was important. We needed to get the injured brother as soon as possible away from here. He picked him up on his shoulders, and with a quick step, he ran in the opposite direction. Soon he came to a small cave that was hidden by a thicket. Here they could hide without fear of being found. Who woke up? His eyes slowly opened. His whole body was sore from his wounds. He didn't realize where he was, so it was all over. He turned his head to the side and saw his little brother lying next to him on the ground. They were in some strange place, and the older brother was very much frightened. His brother was lying next to him with his hands folded on his chest like a dead man. Hu jumped up from his seat and shook his head in different directions. It looked like he had tragically died along with his fourth brother. Is this the underworld? He saw how there was only a cave around him. Hu began to wipe away his tears and apologized for his younger brother for not being able to save him from that man. Now he can't retire. Xian stood up a little and sighed heavily. His brother started talking nonsense again. He had just woken up and didn't understand anything himself. The protagonist asked for his older brother to finally stop yelling. He had already taken care of Cheng Ming Xiang. There was no way that Hu could not calm down. 
He should become a ghost and find this person. He would haunt him for the rest of his life. Suddenly, he heard his brother's words. Wait, what? Who looked around? Then why is there blood all over? He was sitting on a big bamboo blanket, and he didn't understand anything. His younger brother was sitting next to him. Xiang smiled and looked at him from the bone. He said it wasn't blood, but a berry he found in the forest. Its juice can stop bleeding. The brother looked at the little berry and said that it was amazing, but how is that possible? Who threw the berry into his mouth and asked his brother to tell him what happened then? Xi'an answered. He made it so that this man could no longer use his hand. Originally, the plan was to quietly get rid of him, but the teacher's help came to him. Who choked on a berry as soon as he heard that? He couldn't believe it. The older brother began to tremble with fear. He bulged his eyes with surprise. What had his little brother just done? He's the only one from the Chung family. The clan will definitely look for him. Who said in a frightened voice that the fourth brother needed to run away from here, and as far away as possible. The protagonist sat in front of him and listened to him carefully. Xi'an said that if he escaped from here, the Huayun clan would not leave his family alone. He can't let his mother be dragged into this as well. The boy looked worried. Who said that unfortunately, the principal and vice principal left to visit the Huayun clan. Right now, there was no one in the academy to help them. The protagonist looked at him in surprise. At this moment, an idea flashed through his mind. So the headmaster is with them now. This could play to their advantage. It was necessary to take advantage of such an opportunity. The Huayun clan had a very large influence in this kingdom. It had a really large and lesser one, and right now the head of the academy was right there. The headmaster was sitting in the large hall, along with the vice headmaster. They were at the reception of the clan elder. The large building was filled with the smell of incense. The principal was extremely serious. He addressed the clan head. He asked, had they invited them just to have a drink together? The vice principal said that if that was all, they should go back. They had a lot of unfinished business at the academy. Mr. Cheng looked just like his son. He had the same crazy face. Now he looked like some kind of lunatic. They just got here. Let them stay a little longer. The academy will be fine. The man looked a bit twitchy. He waved his finger and said that if anything were to happen, it wouldn't bother them in any way. It was all very strange. The man seemed a little out of it. The principal and vice principal looked at each other. They liked it less and less. The principal asked if this man might want to get rid of Xian Tian. The vice principal replied that he wouldn't dare to do it on the academy grounds, right? The clan head thanked the headmaster for looking after his son for all these years. This calls for a drink. But no sooner had they done so, a strange man in black clothes burst into the room and quickly ran straight towards them. He shouted to the master that things were bad. The man looked very worried. The master got to his feet and asked what was wrong. He was so tense, wasn't he? The man tried to catch his breath and said that the young master had lost his arm in a battle with Changguan Xian Tian. He is very seriously injured and is on the verge of death. Such news made everyone present choke on their drink. This was simply impossible. The man's face transformed, his eyes lit up with rage. Something had happened to his son Yu. Now it was his personal problem. The stars were already lighting up in the sky. Night rained everywhere, but the windows in the house were burning. The young princess holding a small flatbread happily said that Xiang Tian had injured Ming Xiang's arm. Even though it was terrible news, her face looked joyful. Next to her was that female teacher. She lowered her gaze and said that he would no longer be able to use his arm unless I still called for a seventh rank saint master. The princess took a bite out of her bun and anxiously said that even in the whole kingdom they could not find such a master. The teacher said that their clan head had already sent a letter asking for Xian Tian to be severely punished, causing the emperor to be very worried. Suddenly, the princess stood up from the table and said in a serious voice that she would go and personally ask the emperor to forgive the protagonist. Her teacher told the girl not to be so impulsive in her decisions. Yua said he wasn't the kind of person to hurt someone for no reason. Something was clearly not clean here. The woman said that one way or another, it didn't matter now. The Huayun clan, so all right, number one in the entire kingdom, and Changguan is just a genius from a poor family. This situation is not at all in his favor. 
Yue frightenedly lowered her gaze. Would the emperor forgive him? The girl was very worried about her friend because she realized that his situation now was dire. The teacher said that the emperor had enough problems. And besides this guy, he is the emperor after all. The princess was frightened. She realized that an unenviable fate might soon await the lad. She went to the balcony and looked into the distance. The girl was very much worried and did not know where to put herself. The woman watched her and understood her anxiety, but unfortunately she couldn't help her. The next day, the emperor gathered a council to solve the problem that had suddenly arisen. In the emperor's bay were several people who had been at his reception. The emperor himself was seated on a throne on a dais. The man was dressed in opulent clothes that shone with all shades of luxury. His stern gaze stared straight ahead. A whole day has passed, and Xiang Tian hasn't returned yet? Asked the emperor. Chung said that he was sure he was still hiding in the academy grounds. May your majesty allow him to join the search. The headmaster is furious, not anymore. He won't let him do whatever he wants. Chung made himself crazy. He was recently informed that Chang Guan had arrived at the academy. How will the principal be able to explain this? The old man wondered, Chang Guan has arrived at the academy? This is unbelievable. The vice principal was also in a bit of shock. Chang folded his arms and once again asked his majesty, allow him and his men to join the search before Chang Guan Ba and his son escape. Suddenly, a rough male voice was heard from outside. He said there was no need for that. He had brought his son. On the threshold of the royal palace stood the head of the family along with his son. The main character was bound in chains and couldn't move. Everyone was simply shocked at what they saw. Ba sincerely apologized for allowing his son to make such a mistake and asks the emperor to punish him justly. Chang shouted at him not to make a spectacle of himself. At this time, the man kneeled down and bowed low. He just wants his majesty to forgive his son, Chang Guan. Kneeling in front of the man with his hands folded, he sincerely asked for forgiveness for his son's actions. He would bring him to the Huayun clan's house where he could punish him as he wished. Chung was shocked at this sudden appearance. He waved his hands and shouted for the man not to touch him with his filthy hands. Xi'an suddenly shouted. He said that he himself should answer for the crimes he had committed. He was the one who maimed their son. So if they want to do something, let them punish him and let them keep his family out of it. The emperor said that if it was the family that wanted justice, he thought Chung should take them up on their offer. The man looked at the emperor in surprise but the emperor was completely serious. He gritted his teeth in rage no matter what this family was up to. Since he had ventured into their territory, he wouldn't come out of there alive. The man nodded his head in that case. Only Xi'an Tian would be punished. He was furious and wanted to get justice for his family. He ordered his servants to take the boy to his family's house. They obediently nodded and prepared to fulfill the master's will. The directors, along with the vice principal, just watched the whole thing. The vice principal gritted his teeth and couldn't hold back his anger. The old man looked at him spark but didn't say anything. The director gestured him to stop and ordered him not to interfere. Let him not be so impatient. We should just observe. They stood back and watched the chained boy being led forward. The headmaster squinted his eyes. Perhaps this boy had another surprise in store for them. The old man was sure it wouldn't end that easily. An hour ago, the protagonist's father flew to the academy. The griffin landed right on the main square. The man jumped off it and ran to his son. He ran up to him and said that he flew here as soon as he heard about the incident. Is he all right? The father looked very worried, but the protagonist looked at him with an uncomprehending look. The guy asked in surprise. He wouldn't blame him for causing trouble for his family. The head of the family said it was his fault for failing to protect him. His son did the right thing by punishing the villains, but he's afraid they won't let him go. The head of the family said that he had already prepared everything to get his son out of the kingdom, but the protagonist shook his head. No, if he left, the Huayun clan would not spare his family. It can't be like this. Hearing these words, the father was ready to cry, what a good son he is. He's so worried about his family. The main characters made a disgruntled grimace. He's more worried about his mom than his family. He turned his gaze to his father, a snide smile appearing on his face. Besides, he has a plan and he's counting on his father's help. And so he was already standing chained in front of his abusers, but the guy was completely calm. 
He had a plan. All that remained was to put it into action. He smiled widely. Well, now he would see what this clone was capable of. Of course, he wasn't going to give up so easily. Several people were leading him, holding on to the hook. The boy didn't have a chance to break free. The servants held tight. They were walking down the steps, or the guy to their residence. Xi'an looked around and studied the surroundings. There were many trees growing all around. They were climbing up the mountain. It was not a long way ahead of them. Xi'an asked the people leading him, This is not the way to the mountain, right? The servant raised his eyebrows in surprise. It seemed like the guy was starting to guess something. Suddenly, a familiar figure appeared in the distance. It was Chang. His hand was bandaged, and he was surrounded by his loyal subjects. The boy shouted that now the protagonist would pay for what he had done to his arm. He was completely rewrapped in bandages and now looked like a mummy. The guy was furious. He would finally get even with him for all the wrongs done to him. Xi'an smiled. Finally, this freak had finally stuck it out. Now his plan to realize himself. He looked at his abuser carefully. He was really looking forward to their meeting now. No one would interfere with them. His father was shocked. His son wants him to turn him into the Huayun family? Is he crazy? It's certain death. They won't let him live. Xi'an smiled and said that he heard that the headmaster is currently in this particular clan. As long as they are there, then this clan won't dare to touch him. So he is safe for now. Chung Ming Xi'an. He is a very malicious person. So if he goes to their mountain, he will definitely want revenge. This is a good chance for him. So don't let his father worry about anything. But there was no way the man could agree with this. This is enemy territory. He won't let his son do such dangerous things. But the protagonist was not going to back down. He looked at his father with a look that made the man feel cold inside. If he wanted to save his family, there was no choice. He has to do it! The boy waved his hand, and electrical discharges appeared in the air and flew into the trees at a rapid speed. The father shifted his gaze in that direction with horror. Several energy waves flew straight into the nearby trees. They split the air and moved at some unthinkable speed. A second later, all the trees that were standing there were cut by a sharp sword. My father stood there and couldn't believe his eyes. The man began to stammer. Now he was even afraid of his son. He couldn't even imagine what kind of power his child had. Xi'an looked at him and calmly said, With his strength, there is no one in this clan who can stop him. So let his father not worry about him. He is completely safe. No one can harm him. At that moment, the father realized a very important thing. His son was no longer the little boy he knew. He had matured a lot in that time. It's been a long time. Punching himself in the chest, the father said that this time he would help him. The servants rushed at the protagonist and bared their swords. They realized that as long as Guy was chained, he wouldn't be able to harm in any way. Chang triumphed. Now he would kill this insolent man. Xi'an smiled with such a number. Is he hoping for something? This is just stupid. The protagonist, in one easy movement, broke the chains as if they were some kind of rags. Now a magical weapon formed in his hands. He prepared to attack. The boy already realized that victory was in his hands. Little Chang had no idea what kind of trap he had just fallen into. Xi'an took off from his seat and ran at such a speed that the ground began to fly out from under his feet. Cheng Ming Xi'an just stared stunned and couldn't do anything. The emperor's residence was still as calm. The meeting was still going on there. The sun was already nearing sunset, and its warm rays covered the big, beautiful castle. The emperor put his hand on his head and asked Chang, what was he going to do with this boy? The exact cause of his son's injury had not yet been determined, so he advised him to forget about his revenge for now. Chang says it's okay, no need to worry. They will find out the truth first, and then try to come to a fair conclusion. Suddenly, his servant burst into the room. He told his master that things were very bad. The man looked worried. He said that Xi'an Tian had taken his son hostage and then escaped. Everyone present was simply shocked. This wasn't within the realm of anything at all. Chung was furious. It looked like he'd been tricked. The principal himself was shocked. He didn't understand anything at all. The servant fell to the floor completely exhausted. His face was mangled and his eyes rolled back. What the hell happened? What the hell is this guy doing? The servant realized that his master had ordered Xian Tian to be captured and killed. 
but it was the master himself who ended up being captured. The protagonist put a ball to his throat and told them to get him out of here if they didn't want the guy to be headless. After that, he beat everyone up badly and ran away. The main character left everyone lying on the ground and quickly walked in the opposite direction. The protagonist's father pointed his finger at Chung and asked why they had given their son permission to kill Xi'an Tian. It was clear to everyone now. They are simply not controllable. The emperor was furious. This is what they call a fair decision? This is simply unacceptable. Chang realized that he was now trapped. Damn it, he had to think of something or he would be executed on the spot. He hit his servants as hard as he could. What a loser. The protagonist's father at this time was just contentedly watching. It was just perfect. Their plan had worked like clockwork. He kneels before the emperor and asks him to allow him to go in search of his son and asks him not to blame his family for what happened. The emperor rose from his seat and looked sternly forward. For such a just and praiseworthy attitude of the Changguan family, he will give the following order. Their family is no longer involved in this case. Therefore, all charges pertaining to this family are no longer valid. The man smiled to himself. Their scheme had succeeded. However, there was one thing. Due to Changguan Xiangtian hiding from the scene of the crime, he is declared a wanted criminal. Everyone folded their hands and obediently lowered their heads in agreement. Everyone knelt down and obediently bowed to the emperor. But still, the case ended in success. Five days have passed since the events. The events moved to the border city of the Gesun Kingdom, Bayun City. The place was bustling with activity. The market was crowded with people selling various goods. A few food carts stood near the stalls. Today they are a kingdom. A man in dark clothes greeted the merchant and said that he would be their escort from the Mercenary Association. The man took a piece of paper and began to scrutinize it. However, this man was so young, how did he get such a job? He asked what his name was. The stranger adjusted the collar of his clothes and smiled. It was none other than our protagonist. He wrapped himself more tightly in his cloak and said his name was Zhang Chen. The palace was as bustling as ever. The emperor had innumerable matters to attend to at once. There were several people sitting at the big long table. It looked like the emperor had an important meeting again. Hua Yunzong had again sent him a letter asking him to marry Ming Xiang to the princess. The man folded his hands and looked at the people present carefully. He told them to tell him that the princess was away, so the matter of the wedding was postponed indefinitely. Everyone wondered, is the princess really gone? Wouldn't it be rash to postpone the wedding like this? The headmaster slapped his hand on the table and raised his voice. He said that the right to the wedding was given to Changguan Xiantian because of his outstanding skills. Perhaps he could be the one to solve the kingdom's crisis. The emperor seemed to be furious. Everyone present lay low. No one wanted his wrath to fall on them. The emperor continued to rage. But now that he's gone, who is worthy of the princess? The handicapped Chung Mingxiang? Everyone present didn't know what to say. But if they didn't explain themselves in front of the Huayun clan, there might be trouble. The emperor sighed heavily and sat back down. That's why he issued a decree to give the Huayun clan a huge compensation in the form of a huge amount of gold and silver to make them forget about the wedding. The emperor waved his hand as a sign that the audience was over. That was the end of it. He was very tired, needed some rest, too many events in a day. The men rose and bowing to the emperor walked away from the hall. He needed to rest now, silence at last. The emperor came out of his office. A woman from the academy was already waiting for him there. She greeted the emperor and gave him a respectful bow. He looked at her. The man asked, had she already finished her preparations? You could see from his face that he was incredibly tired of all this talk and the endless problems that came out of nowhere. The woman looked at him and said that Yu Yue had just left and would be leaving the kingdom in a few days. She worriedly asked the emperor, does he not want to tell her about the crisis of the kingdom? After all, it is a very serious matter, and she is a princess after all. The emperor replied that if he told her and she wanted to stay. The emperor's voice sounded tired. If the destruction of the kingdom was inevitable, this emperor's torment alone would be enough. She will become responsible for Yue's future. The woman bowed and said that she was serving his majesty. The emperor waved his hand and walked quickly to his room, the woman following him. Suddenly, the man raised up his index finger and said in a loud voice that she should show loyalty not to him, 
but to this kingdom. She looked fearfully at the emperor. She hadn't often seen him like this. Literally with her whole body, she felt that a very strong change was about to come that would invariably affect all of them. The emperor went on his way. The woman was left standing in thought. She did not know what to say in this situation, for she herself realized that the emperor was not in the best position now. Xi'an stood looking at the setting sun. He was wearing completely different clothes, the cloak hiding his student uniform. He looked pensively into the distance. Soon he would be leaving this kingdom. His father had sent a letter saying that his family's involvement had been completely removed so he could leave with peace of mind. This situation suddenly reminded him of the times when he had ventured to go down the mountain alone. Suddenly, a very loud rumbling sound was heard from his back. It was as if someone was approaching him with great speed. The boy became alert and got ready. Several riders were rushing towards him, riding strange creatures that looked more like some kind of balls and had horns on their heads. The riders dispersed everyone present, pushing them out of the way. Boxes of goods flew in different directions. The animals were frightened and the merchants could hardly calm them down. One of the merchants saw a huge box flying straight at him. He had no time to dodge, and the man realized that he was about to be crushed. But the protagonist reacted in time and pulled the man away by the scruff of his neck. The crate with a rumble fell just a few centimeters from his body. The man was trembling with fear. He was already ready to say goodbye to life. In a shaky voice, he thanked the guy for saving him. He just smiled and said that he was a mercenary after all, and it's his job to protect them. He looked ahead where the riders had stopped. Their animals stood beside their masters, tongues out and breathing heavily. Xi'an suddenly saw something that made him very worried. His eyes widened and the boy became frightened. Men were putting up flyers that had his picture on them. The inscription announced that this man was wanted. There was a bounty on his head. The riders who arrived shouted to the entire county that there was a very big reward for the criminal Changguan Xiantian. Even if they just saw him somewhere, they would also be generously rewarded. The guy sighed heavily, as expected from the number one clan in the entire kingdom. He left rather quickly, and they had already caught up with him. He wrapped himself even more tightly in his cloak so that no one could notice him. After all, the bottomless cloak would definitely recognize him, all because of that pattern. There had to be any way to get rid of it. The caravan had already begun to move forward. The bulls roared and slowly began to move the heavy wagons. Suddenly, one of the visiting horsemen noticed the protagonist and stared at him. The man seemed to suspect something. He approached him and ordered the protagonist to remove his hood immediately. He looked suspicious, so he needed to check it out. Xi'an stopped right in front of him and stared intently at the man. Devil, now the situation was getting worse. If he was revealed, a very big howl would be raised. It couldn't be allowed to be revealed. The men in raincoats surrounded him and said there was a suspicious person here. Well, now they're going to raise the alarm and the trouble's going to come of its own accord. The guy stopped, and he didn't take any action. He just stood there and waited. A spark appeared in his eyes. He had to act decisively. If it's his people know who he is, whose trouble will abound? The men continued to surround him and pointed their large spears at him. The guy standing in the middle, tangled in his hood, it was impossible to give himself away, but the situation was getting worse by the second. Guy already prepared to attack, there was no choice anyway. These people would now find out who he was, and he would either be imprisoned or he would have to kill everyone here. But suddenly help came from nowhere. The very man who had hired him jumped up and told the commander that it was all right. This man was with him. The commander was surprised. This man is with him? Does he know him? Wu Dei hugged the protagonist and laughed and said that he was her wife's younger brother. He insisted on going with him to see the world. A man ran up to the guard and started whispering in his ear. He said that a misfortune had happened to him here when he was a child, and that because of it, his face was very badly disfigured, and that was why he wore a cloak. The commander looked at the man with disbelief, but still seemed to believe him. Wu Dei continued to persuade the commander. He said that he knew he was a coward, so he would definitely not harbor a criminal. The commander took another hard look at the protagonist and then waved his hand that they could go. They sat down on the wagon and moved forward. The man waved goodbye to the guard and said that when he returned, he would call him and his brothers for a drink. 
Xi'an looked at the guards who continued to patrol the city looking for him. Wu De Relieve said it's all right, the guards won't chase them. Let him not worry about the people in the caravan either, they only obeyed him. The protagonist sat on the sacks of goods and said nothing. The boy thought for a while and looked at the merchant incredulously. He asked, why was there help for him here? If he turned it in, it could get him a large sum of money. Wu replied that if he was a bad guy, he would have turned him in without hesitation. But his gut told him that the stranger was clearly not one of those. The man looked at the protagonist over his shoulder and smiled. Xi'an asked him, does he really think he's good? The man sighed and smilingly replied, he has seen countless people over the years, so he can easily tell the bad from the good. Besides, it saved his life at a time when he could have been crushed by a heavy box. Is that a bad deed? It follows from this that he is a good man. Xi'an smiled and said that he was very pleased to hear that, but now he had to go. The guy already wanted to jump off the wagon and had already moved to the edge. But the merchant caught him by the scruff of the neck just in time and pulled him back. Xi'an almost choked. He bulged his eyes and fell on his ass. The merchant stopped him and shouted at him not to run away in a hurry. The man began to poke him in the nose with a paper. It was their business contract. Now he is the escort of this caravan. The man paid to get him to the Blue Wind Kingdom safely. The protagonist sighed, right, totally forgot about that. Xi'an Zan thoughtfully looked forward. Well, he still had no idea where to go. Traveling with the caravan wasn't the worst idea. Besides, he would have food, water, and money. He sprawled out on sacks of goods, staring up at the sky. Good, now they're counting on him. For now, he will continue to accompany them. After a while, they built a small camp to rest. Besides, they had to get the animals drunk. They stood in a special campsite for caravans. It would be safer here. Several tents of other caravans were already standing in this place. Also, wagons with goods could be seen there. It was evident that people often stayed in this together. Xi'an A looked around and said that there were quite a lot of people here. The merchant rummaged through his merchandise and replied that everything then, that not only caravans were here, but also to seek or adventure with mercenaries from different places. They often camp here, so there was nothing to worry about. There were a lot of people here, so it was possible in a pinch to get lost in the crowd. They walked a little way into the interior of the place when they saw a strange man completely wrapped in a cloak who was sitting in the lotus posture and seemed to be meditating. One of their squad members shouted to the stranger to get out of here immediately. The chief merchant said it was fine. Everyone here is his own. Let him not be so impulsive. Xiang. With interest and disbelief, he looked towards the stranger. It continued to sit there, unmoving, as if it was some kind of statue. There was some strange energy reeking from this non-acquaintance. It seems he had felt it somewhere before. The boy looked at the merchant, setting up camp in the most remote place, away from everyone. They're just asking to be attacked. The trader laughed. He knows but there's nothing you can do about it. They don't communicate with each other with other groups, so there are no options. We can only hope that nothing happens during the night. They continued to move deeper into the depths. The sun was already nearing sunset, and its bright rays painted the variegated trees in warm colors. Wu shivered a little and said that every time they came here, he worried so much that he couldn't sleep. The guy looked at him in disbelief. Is this even a merchant or what? Soon night came, the moon came into the sky and lit everything bright blue. The tops of the trees were pointing straight up into the sky, creating a forest tent. All the members of the squad were asleep in the tent, the head merchant snoring through everything and wouldn't even notice the caravan passing by. His subordinate lay next to him as well. Xi'an sat on the crates of goods and surveyed his surroundings. His job was to keep watch over everyone else so they wouldn't be attacked while they slept. Frowning, he listened to the loud snoring coming from the tent. Who was it that said he couldn't sleep? That merchant is not only a coward, but also a liar. There were a few more men armed with spears standing near the other tents. They were looking in the direction of the protagonist for some reason. Something is about to happen. Suddenly, there was a loud whistling sound. Something like an arrow cut through the air with great speed and was coming straight towards them. Two huge arrows slammed straight into the bodies of the remaining guards, knocking them dead. 
The men didn't even have time to react. They just wheezed and fell to the floor. Xian closed his eyes and concentrated. The boy listened and prepared to repel the attack. A few seconds later, a large arrow flew towards him as well, but he reacted in time, and with one powerful blow of his hand, he knocked it aside. The arrow spun in a whirlwind and flew backwards. The protagonist shouted to the others to wake up immediately. They were under attack. The merchants woke up immediately, and for a few seconds they couldn't figure out what was going on. Xian jumped to his feet and grasped his sword. He had already realized that they would be attacked by some robbers, as expected. The guy prepared to defend. Literally out of the ground came a strange man who was armed with a long spear. He swung and prepared to strike the boy right in the forehead. Xian was already prepared for this. He drew his sword and began to energize it. Now he would quickly deal with this thief. The boy swung the ball and immediately many energy slashes appeared around him. Xian squinted his eyes. This thief was incredibly strong. Saint Master level? He was going to be a pain to deal with, but that was okay. The guy was ready for it. The other merchants had already woken up too. They grabbed their weapons. Wu shouted for everyone to be alert because they were under attack. Soon the rest of the bandits appeared as well. The merchant looked in their direction with a frightened look and realized that now they would not be able to avoid a skirmish. One of the bandits shouted that the boundless bandits had arrived, which meant they were all finished. In front of him stood several men armed to the teeth. They were dressed in furry clothes. Some had a bow, some had an axe. They looked more like cavemen. It seems these bandits were well known here since they often equipped in these places. A man shouted that if they didn't want to die, let them take their weapons and fight. The thieves started waving their weapons in different directions. The men screamed. They were caught off guard, and now the bandits only had to finish off the remnants. The thieves started waving their weapons in different directions. The men screamed. They were taken by surprise, and now the bandit had only to finish off the remnants. But suddenly, Something invisible repelled the attack. The axe flew a few centimeters from the merchant's face. He even smelled the metal. Xian at this time was fighting with one of them. He looked down on him and shouted at him to get the people out of here. The situation stopped getting more and more dangerous. There were too many bandits, and apparently they were very strong opponents. The guy fought against this master. He said he would cover the others, let them leave quickly. Wu Dei ordered all his men to get out of here immediately. The merchants grabbed their belongings, and with all their legs, they rushed to run away. They had to save their goods and their lives. One of the bandits swung his spear, and the protagonist barely had time to dodge. A powerful energy wave passed just a few centimeters from his face. He hadn't expected that this mere and thief would prove to be such a strong opponent. Besides, he wasn't alone. The man shouted that running away from them was very naive. Now they would definitely kill everyone. Xianyu. There was nothing left but to use his sword technique. These people were incredibly strong. If he didn't fight at full strength, it would definitely get him killed. The boy applied an aerial move and jumped away from the pesky bandit to the side. The man didn't understand anything. Where did this kid go? The man gritted his teeth in anger. This kid is only a saint-level kid. Why can't he hit him? It was as if the protagonist was floating in the air. He didn't even need to touch the ground. As soon as the villain opened up to attack, the guy thrust his sword forward to pierce the freak in one fell swoop. The man dodged at the last moment. This was something he definitely didn't expect. This guy was incredibly fast. What's wrong with his speed? How can he be so strong? The men used a technique to get away. He was picked up by the vortex and carried a great distance away. He began tumbling through the air like a circus performer. What is that, wind paraphernalia? The bandit stood some distance away from him, his body covered by the whirlwind of air. The boy realized that he couldn't hit this man even at full speed. What kind of strength does he have? Now he definitely needed to be dealt with. The bandit, who also didn't expect such a fight, didn't realize where this kid had come from. What's he doing here? Is he a mercenary? Why am I so strong? The man jabbed his finger at him and asked what just happened. How can he control the sword at such a high speed? Xian smirked, and was he surprised by what? What if he said that his sword could be even faster? 
The protagonist's weapon began to emit lightning bolts. He was storing more and more energy in it for a crushing blow. The criminal began to tremble with fear. He didn't expect such a repulse. How much faster? His knees shook and his breath hitched. Xi'an scowled such a face that he looked more like a beast. He grasped his sword and prepared to chop the bandit in half. The poor man ran with all his legs and screamed with fear. He had not expected to see such a thing, for he had thought that this boy was only a weakling, and now he was running away with all his might. Xi'an clutched his stomach with laughter. What a jerk. He hadn't laughed like that in a long time. The criminal noticed this and turned around on the guy. Is he mocking him? The man was furious. The bastard dared to mock him. He's going to chop him to pieces. The man is furious. How could this kid mock him like that? The man swung his spear and used the holy soldier stance. Now he's going to kill that little brat for daring to mock him. Xiang Yi ran in the opposite direction. He had no desire to fight that man. The robber at this time angrily yelled at him to stop. How could he run away from the battlefield? Xi'an Auburn turned around at him. He realized that this was the strongest opponent he had fought. For now, he wouldn't be able to defeat him due to the fact that his power wasn't enough. Therefore, it would be best to retreat. He tried to escape as stealthily as possible without attracting much attention. Where did Brother Wu Dei and the others go? We had to find them as soon as possible. Suddenly, he saw something. His gaze caught on something strange. The guy took a closer look. At a short distance, he saw a figure dressed in a hoodie completely covering his body cowering near the dead man. What is he doing there? The boy saw the stranger take out a purse with money. The stranger had happily fumbled for the money pouch and was now looking at it smilingly. They are nothing but miserable thieves. The protagonist ran up to him and grabbed the stranger's arm, preventing him from pocketing other people's money. The protagonist was furious. How dare this man even dare steal from the dead? This is looting. Suddenly, the stranger's hood pulled back, and the guy saw that it was actually a girl. Her face seemed vaguely familiar to him. The protagonist was stunned. What is she even doing here? Who was she? The guy continued to hold her hand and stared straight at her with an uncomprehending gaze. Is that a woman? Suddenly, she ripped his hand away and screamed that she was a man. Have him let her go immediately. Xian looked at her with incomprehension. What's she saying? Is she even normal? At this time, the bandit had already caught up with them, and waving his spear, was coming closer and closer to them. Now he's gonna see how that freak can run away. The man swung his ax and slammed it into the ground with all his might. The two men bounced just in time, and the ax hit the ground. The earth split open, and rocks flew in different directions. The man was furious. He swung his ax in an attempt to hit our heroes, but they skillfully dodged all his tack. The girl who was pretending to be a boy said she was just passing by. Maybe they'd better make a deal. It was obvious she was scared and didn't want to get into unnecessary conflict. The man was without mercy. He shouted that they were all going to die now. No one would leave here alive. It was obvious he had no intention of just backing down. He didn't want money but human lives. The girl gritted her teeth. What bad luck. No one would believe her. She put out her hand and began to accumulate magical energy in it. In a few seconds, she had a huge sword in her hand. Well, he asked for it. This girl can concentrate holy power. This just keeps getting better and better. Suddenly, a hail of energy blasts rained down on them from the sky. They stood below, not realizing anything. The same stranger who was pretending to be a man jumped high up and unleashed his full power on them. The bandit laughed. It was another suicide bomber. He would definitely be dealt with in no time. The man jumped up and prepared to finish this insolent man off. Before he knew who he was facing, the man swung his spear, and its blade passed a few centimeters away from the cloaked stranger's face. The girl ducked at the last moment, and the blade passed within a few centimeters of her face. She gritted her teeth. This man's strength was at the level of a saint master. There might be a problem with that. The brigand swinging his spear threw lightning bolts in different directions. He would deal with this upstart first and then deal with the others. The man was furious that some two brats dared to interfere with him. He swung his spear and the space around him began to distort. Waves of energy force flew in different directions, raising up whirlwinds of air. The girl held on with her last strength. It was very difficult for her to hold back such power. 
Her strength was already slowly leaving her body. She gritted her teeth and gathered the last of her will into a fist. The protagonist shouted to her that they had better unite against this man now. Alone, they would not be able to oppose him. The girl held her sword, holding back the blows of the spear. She panted and shouted, Who the hell does he give up to? Let the guy back off. She could handle it herself. The girl held on with all her might, her face flushed red from the exertion. It was obvious how hard it was for her at that moment. The bandit laughed. Even if there are ten of them, they are still no match for him. The protagonist jumped towards her and tried to repel the attack. It was necessary to cover this man or else he would die now. Apparently the odds were not equal. They stood opposite each other and breathing heavily spoke. The boy said that if they didn't deal with this freak, he didn't think either of them would survive. We need to stop bickering. The stranger folded his arms across his chest and as if doing a favor said, well, since he insists, then so be it, he will accept his offer. Xi'an suddenly realized that this person's voice sounded more like a chicken. It didn't sound like a boy. It seemed like he had been tricked again. Wu. Along with the rest of the merchants were running away from countless bandits. He was screaming at the top of his lungs for someone to finally help him. The forces were uneven. They were about to be chopped to pieces. Suddenly, the guy went in the opposite direction, ordering the stranger to hold them off and he would be back soon. What? What the hell is he thinking? The girl just stared after him and shouted indignantly. She was furious. That kid said they were going to team up. And then he took off the first chance he got. Now, she was alone again against that creep. The criminal had his spear on his shoulder and was celebrating his victory. He realized he was about to cut everyone to pieces. The man pushed himself off the ground with such speed that it broke under his weight. He shouted that no one should be afraid. After he dealt with her, it was sure to avenge her. Contempt could be heard in his voice. The cloak man began to concentrate magic again. He wanted to draw this as a last resort, but since this was the situation, he would have to act decisively. The forces were obviously uneven. He had to use his only trump. The girl threw back her hood, and it was clear to everyone already clear who she was. She looked forward with a confident look, holding on to the handle of her large ball. We would have to fight alone, there could be no mistake. At this time, the robber had already prepared to make one last strike to finally put an end to those pesky gnats. He swung his spear and launched an incredibly powerful energy wave towards the girl. It was impossible to dodge. But it wasn't that simple. The girl grasped her sword and jumped up high, ready to finish off the bastard once and for all. Suck it! she shouted, swinging her huge sword. She thrust the sword into the ground with incredible force. All the energy in it was transferred to the ground, and it began to fall to pieces. The bandit could hardly stay on his feet with such power. Suddenly, he felt the earth behind him begin to break apart. Something was about to appear there. It was very familiar to him, the man wondered. Could this be what he thought? Is this a combat skill? Could it be that this upstart has that kind of power? The ground behind his back began to split apart, and tongues of purple flames appeared from underneath. A few seconds later, a huge pillar of energy flames appeared behind her back. The girl stood there while the power raged around her, and from afar it seemed that there was some incredible explosion. She looked askance at the bandit, and Riley asked if he still wanted to kill her and ask for a sign now he saw that she was not so easy. The man's mouth stretched in a wry smile. That's right. Who would have thought it? He was greatly surprised the man didn't expect that such a small child could have such power. It turns out she knows a martial skill. If he didn't have a Saint Master level, he would have probably died by now. He stood, and his body was enveloped by the fog from the explosion. The man was able to withstand such an attack, but still, it made him stagger. The villain laughed. How interesting. If she gave him her combat skill, he would spare her. As it was, the man realized that the opponent was much stronger than he had anticipated. It would have to be a challenge to deal with him. And wasn't about to give up, she showed him the middle finger and said, Dick, he them combat skill. The man went into a rage. How dare this little girl treat him like that? Now he would definitely wipe her into powder. He swung his spear. First, he decided to chop off her leg so that this brat wouldn't be able to escape. Anger raged inside the man. His pride was hurt. She looked forward fearfully, 
Now it looked like she was going to be finished. With her mind, she knew that she couldn't stand against such an opponent, but it was almost impossible to dodge such a speedy attack. The man was about to bring his huge sword down on the helpless girl when suddenly the main character appeared from somewhere and blocked the blow. There was a loud scraping of metal. The man clenched his teeth in anger. Once again, someone was in his way. When are those two little kids going to die? The girl looked at her sudden savior in surprise. Frightened and surprised, she asked. Didn't he run away? She thought he had left her to her fate. Suddenly, some merchants appeared from somewhere. They confirmed that of course the guy hadn't run away. He was just helping them. The other merchants confirmed. They said it was the truth. Xi'an frowned and looked at his opponent. He said in a serious voice that they had agreed to unite, and he always keeps his word. Xi'an swung his weapon and shouted that this was the end of her work. Let her leave the rest to him. A column of energy flame erupted from his sword and immediately flew straight at the bandit. The man did not have time to dodge at the last moment, and the strongest wave knocked him off his feet, throwing him back a great distance. He barely managed to stay on his feet, that kid. What kind of strength does he have? He's never faced anything like this before. The man gripped the wooden hilt of his spear even tighter. It was truly gold now. It was time to end this. He would chop this little brat to pieces right now. The man used the combat skill he hoped to use to finish this little bastard off once and for all. In a split second, a huge energy tornado formed in the man's place and began to move forward, sucking in everything in its path. People began to panic and run for their lives. Xi'an stood firmly in his place. He stood in a fighting stance and prepared to repel the attack. A bunch of energy daggers flew at him from different directions, which were about to take his body through and through. The girl stood holding her sword and couldn't understand anything. Something incredibly scary was happening. The battle was serious and she had almost no strength left. She had completely exhausted them. Xian Wu stood at this time and prepared to repel the attack swung his sword. Lightning bolts began to form around him which spiraled into a vortex. He concentrated all his energy in one blow, now could not make a mistake, otherwise it would cost him his life. The guy tensed his whole body and swung his sword. There was an explosion of incredible power. From his weapon flew out a jet of pure energy, which at an incredible speed flew forward directly into his opponent. It was just some incredible power. I just could not possess it, ordinary man, even at the level of saint. The energy wave slammed straight into tornado and pierced through him. The wind began to slowly subside, even the air itself electrified from such incredible power. The bundle of lightning pierced through the tornado. Xi'an was fully concentrated. The girl looked at him, frightened and surprised. She didn't expect that this kid could possess such incredible strength. The main characters covered her with his body and began to reflect the energy daggers flying at them. The girl could not move from fear. The guy just stood like a rock. His body was impossible to move from the place he put forward his sword and with each time reflected more and more blows. But unfortunately, even he wouldn't be able to handle such power. Still, he began to miss hits, the lightning bolts passing through his body leaving serious wounds. There was something incredible going on around. From such a load, the body of the protagonist now seems to disintegrate into pieces. The girl suddenly realized something. Her eyes rounded with surprise, as if she recognized someone very long familiar. Xi'an crossed his arms and began to accumulate all the energy he was able to absorb. He was already exhausted, but he couldn't give up. It would be over in a little while. On his face were many cuts. His mouth was a thin trickle of blood, but the main hero did not give up. He smiled and winked at his rival. Now he's a dead man. The man stood there, and for a while he still couldn't understand what had happened to him. For a couple of seconds he couldn't feel any more, but there was a huge through hole in his chest from the incredible blow. The man stiffened and began to stammer. That blow had just pierced him through and through. He couldn't believe it. A kid who seemed to have just graduated from high school yesterday had given him such competition. And now the experienced robber was dying from a single blow. Xi'an exhaled, relieved. He had just relied on luck, and he was unspoken lucky. His body was pierced by an incredible pain a second later. The overload was monstrous, and of course he wouldn't be able to stay on his feet for so long. The guy was about to faint. He coughed 
and blood spurted from his mouth. It felt as if his body was being struck by lightning. The guy coughed harder and harder. His body couldn't take the overload, and now he was on the verge of death because of the overload. The girl picked up his weakened body, preventing him from falling. The protagonist held onto his chest and tried to regain consciousness. It was hard for him to breathe. His heart was barely beating. She measured his pulse. His heartbeat was barely perceptible. She frowned and looked at the boy. He had forcibly increased his holy power for that blow. His internal and external damage is very serious. We need to hospitalize him immediately. The girl shouted angrily. And what kind of idiot would just sacrifice himself like that? The girl was furious. How could anyone act so recklessly? Xion smiled, and in his usual sarcastic manner, he said that if he didn't do it, they would only die. Nothing of the sort. She looked at him spitefully and frowned even more. But then her gaze softened, curiosity in it. She asked him why he had saved her. He doesn't know her at all, and she was a marauder. Xian S. proudly looked at her and answered. Like he said, he did his job. Just let her trust the rest to him, including keeping it safe. Suddenly, after saying those words, he received a hard blow to his side. The stranger didn't seem to share his bravado. He's not badly bedded, so he's all right. The guy could barely keep his feet up without falling over. Xian rubbed the bruised area and said resentfully that he was really saying what he thought. He wasn't embellishing at all. In the background, the merchants were still running away from the remnants of the bandits. The stranger looked at the protagonist with contempt and distrust. One of the bandits noticed that their boss had been killed after all, the older brother of the dead one. A look of horror appeared on their eyes. How could this be possible? The bandits began to look at each other fearfully. Some of them had tears in their eyes. They couldn't believe it. Their leader was dead. Now the situation became more complicated. Xi'an cast a disdainful glance in their direction. It turns out that man was their boss. His strength justified that title. He had to mess around with that asshole to finally finish him off. As always, another sparkling thought came at the last moment. A satisfied smile stretched across his face. Now he was going to do something wonderful. Xi'an adopted a threatening stance. The boy shouted to the bandit that their lousy brother had been killed. Now it became their turn. The bandits rushed over frightened. They screamed in fear. We had to get away. If this kid killed the boss, they're no match for him. What a devil. They're not ready to die. We should have gotten out of there. The rest of the guards had already prepared to repel the attack, but they were surprised to see the bandits running away. How did they escape? So now everyone would be alive. The men breathed a sigh of relief. Their lives were saved. Wu looked at them. Some of the guards were exhausted and were just lying on the ground. The man shouted in a serious tone that although they were able to fight back this time, it was only a few of the boundless bandit's strength. His voice sounded frightened and worried to prevent the others from still reaching them. We need to set off as soon as possible. The man clenched his fist. He looked as anxious as possible. Xi'an nodded in agreement. This man was right. It was necessary to leave this place. He wasn't going to die in this backwater. He was already sick to death of fighting with these offspring. 76. He looked at his recent acquaintance and said that he was going to the Blue Wind Kingdom with these people. But what would this boy do? At this time, the stranger was just searching the bodies of the slain bandits. Smiling, he said that it just so happened that he was also heading there. So he would keep them company that way. He happily took the gold coins from the corpses and put them in a small pouch for himself. The protagonist looked at him with distrust. There was something about this man he didn't like. Xi'an told him that everyone had seen his fighting skill. If the news spread, it would not be good for him. The boy stood up and turned his back to him. He said that none of this matters. He is not afraid of it. He turned to the main character as if remembering something and held out his hand to him. The guy looked at her in surprise. What did he want? John pondered, and what does he need to do? What is this guy waiting for? It finally came to him. Maybe he wants to get acquainted? The protagonist shook his hand good-naturedly and told him his name. It was a pleasure to meet him. The boy didn't seem to share his enthusiasm. He slapped him on the palm of his hand and shouted, Why does he need that handshake? He burned his cloak because of him, so let him give him his money back. 
The protagonist looked at him with astonishment. What is this even about? Xi'an smiled and scratched the back of his head. The boy looked at him and asked curtly, he wouldn't deny it, right? He smiled and said there was no problem with that. But first he would like to know the stranger's name. The boy sighed and said to keep it in mind. He proudly pointed at himself and said that his name was Mu Yun. It was still unclear whether it was a boy or a girl. It all looked as strange as possible. Soon they approached the city. Many other merchants were at the gate entrance. The carts were pulling in behind the fortress, and the merchants were ready to sell their wares. It was their only income. The protagonist sat in the cart and meditated while cultivating. His new acquaintances watched it all from the side and said with interest that it was a very interesting way of cultivating. May he teach it to him. The boy replied that it was a family technique which he was forbidden to pass on to anyone. Boy, this was offensive. The Blue Wind Kingdom is known as a mercenary kingdom, so there are a lot of orders here. They walked up to a large board that had many pictures of people on it. There seemed to be a bounty on the heads of these people. The protagonist scrutinized the board. The people on this board are worth a lot. Yun S looked at it with admiration, and already he was anticipating how much money could be made from all this. Suddenly, the protagonist's eye caught on something very, very familiar, something he had seen in the distant past. His eyes widened and his heart felt as if it had skipped a beat. On the plaque hung the same old man he had fought back in the distant past, in his past life. It was a face he would recognize out of a thousand. The old man's face stared back at him angrily from the bulletin board, his face the same as it had been that day, angry and not boding well. The wagons with traders continued to arrive in the city. The people were already crowded there. It seems that there was a small queue. It was still a challenge to get into the city. Yun asked the protagonist what surprised him so much. He must have noticed how excited and surprised he looked at the order board. Xi'an pointed his finger at that old man and asked if he knew the man. The guy looked incredibly excited, as if he had seen something he had been waiting for a long time. The boy leaned back and indifferently said that of course he knew it was the lonely old man, Xin. I guess that was his nickname. He pounced on the boy and grabbed his hands. He asked him, where is this old man now? The boy was frightened by this reaction and simply couldn't do anything. He didn't expect his companion to be so abnormal. Yun Yi said that if he knew everything, he would tell all the information to the mercenaries. Xian continued to hold on to his shirt and looked at him pleadingly. The boy smilingly asked, was he that interested in the reward? He advises him to surrender. In terms of strength, they are far behind this man. Xian looked at him with a serious look and asked, how much does he know about this person? Any information is important to him right now. And this kid turned out to be smart. He said that if that person wanted more information, let them pay. What a small-minded bastard. Is it hard to say that? There was nothing left but to pay this little impudent. The protagonist threw his bag of gold and asked in a rough voice, Is this enough? The boy accepted the payment and began to examine the shiny coins. With a satisfied smile, he began to narrate. The boy said that the lonely old man is a very powerful man who appeared out of nowhere in the Blue Wind Kingdom over ten years ago. He only cares about killing, so he quickly became the number one target for all mercenaries. Xi'an Pensive more than ten years ago comes out. So it happened when they both died, right? But why did he become a child and this battery remained the same? That's the first mystery. Yuan continued to narrate. Later, his location became unknown, and all information about him became a state secret and was hidden by the mercenary union. The different cities still have a charge on him, which means he's still alive. Xi'an was surprised. A state secret? Apparently it was a serious matter. He looked at his new acquaintance with interest. So only people from the mercenary union have access to this information? The boy shook his head. No, it's not like that. Yun leaned on the side and said, only the top people of the mercenary union have access to this information. A very limited number of people know this. 109 Xi'an book literally burst into flames at this idea. So if he wanted to get information about this old man, he would have to become one of the top mercenaries? Yun nodded his head. Right, 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 right. Also, he had heard that the lonely old man was looking for a person named Zhang Chen. 
and then the protagonist felt as if he had been hit on the head. Jiang Chen? So the old man wants to find him? At this time, Yun was admiring his bag of money. It seemed that this boy didn't care about anything but making money. No wonder, he's a mercenary after all. At that moment, the protagonist made a firm decision. We have to find him. Maybe he knows how they ended up in this world and he can figure out how to get back to his life. At this time, move through the center of the city. Soon they arrived at their destination. They were greeted by a magnificent gate that towered going high into the sky. Wu said goodbye to them and said that he had to take the caravan to the Chamber of Commerce, so that was the end of their journey. The protagonist said goodbye to his employer. Yun snapped his fingers and said that he too needs to get out of here, so goodbye. He was about to leave when suddenly the protagonist stopped him by grabbing his shoulder. Stop! He still has a favor to ask of him. The guy turned around, frightened, and gritted his teeth. He was already starting to simply get pissed off at this prying. What else is it? If he wanted to, he had to pay. Did he even have any money left? Xian X said that he didn't have any money left, but he knew where to get a couple coupons. As soon as the boy heard this, excitement and curiosity flashed across his eyes. Coupons. Soon, they arrived at the agreed-upon place. In a few minutes, they stood in front of a large, beautiful building, more like some fine restaurant. When they opened the doors, they saw the poor decoration of the room. It looked much more aesthetically pleasing from the outside. There were rags everywhere, and the smell was unbearable. It must have been some kind of local eatery. As soon as they stepped inside, they were immediately stared at with disgruntled and distrustful looks. The people here were strange and even dangerous. It seemed like every single one of them was a former criminal. Their faces were as if they were ready to kill them at this very moment. Yun, surprised, looked at his companion. Wasn't this his first time in this kingdom? So how does he know about this tavern? The protagonist replied that back at the camp, he heard the mercenaries talking about the favorite place of the bad guys of this town. They approached the bar, and the protagonist told his companion to take a seat for now and let him order something to drink, and he would be right back. Yoon leaned on the bar and ordered a glass of water, but he did so with a look as if he were ordering a strong sake. The bartender took the order and began to fumble under the bar in search of a glass. The atmosphere here was unpleasant to say the least. There was shouting everywhere and a drunken balaganza. The food here was apparently disgusting and the odor was even worse. Two men sitting at a table were laughing loudly and singing liquor. Protagonists Walked over to one of the tables where several people were already sitting and apparently playing some kind of game of chance. One hundred gold coins for Puse, said one of the people present. The guy added, and one hundred fifty gold coins for Ralph. The men turned around on him and looked at him with angry glances. Who is this guy? And what does this kid want? Let him get out of here before they get angry. Xi'an smiled and repeated the question. What does he want? At this moment, he looked as threatening as possible, befitting the contingent here. He smiled and said they were getting out his coupons. The guy was smiling some kind of crazy smile that would make anyone's knees shake. Yun was sitting at the bar, drinking his glass of water, when suddenly the sounds of fighting came to his ears. The bartender listened, too, and looked in that direction. A moment later, pushing the rags aside, the protagonist came out. On his back, he dragged these two guys. They appeared to be unconscious. The protagonist seems to have finished them very badly. 131. He threw the breathless bodies of the bandits on the ground, and his companion looked in that direction with horror. What is even going on here? He approached the bartender and told him that from the city wall, he had found only these two. Is there enough reward from them to pay for it? Everyone got up from their seats and looked at him fearfully. Something strange was about to happen. Xi'an stretched into an even bigger smile. He began to run his eyes over everyone present. If not, he could look for a couple more suitable options. Everyone present apparently took the hint. Oh, shit. The guys got scared and started packing up to get the hell out of here. No one wanted to be victimized by this stranger who had somehow found out everything about them and was now a danger. In a few seconds, the diner was completely empty, with only the two protagonists left. Yun stood looking at his glass of water. It seems that he even turned green from fear. 
Running out of the establishment, the brigands shouted that there was no reward for them. Let him just leave them alone. They will become decent people. Just let him spare them. After seeing this, Yoon approached the bartender and suddenly said that he should pour him something stronger than water. The bartender looked at him in surprise, but accepted the order. He sighed heavily. After completing the mercenary union's missions and accumulating enough merit, you can be promoted. The protagonist looked at him in surprise. Is there any way to accumulate those merits quickly? The boy pondered for a moment. He hummed and said that he should first visit the mountain range of magical beasts, as there were a lot of quests there. Also, the first ancient monsters appeared in that place. Xi'an even hadn't finished drinking his drink and had already put his glass on the table with a clatter. At this moment, he made his final decision. After wiping his mouth, he smiled and squinting his eyes said that they would immediately move forward. The decision was final and irrevocable. Now a long and dangerous road awaited them. The guys were walking fast on the rocky terrain. The road ahead of them was long, full of danger and new adventures. They had to be well prepared. Soon, they stopped at the big mountain. They looked down with a gaze all the nearby space. The view from here was truly beautiful. The forest raged below with a beautiful bird in the clouds. Xiang noisily sucked in air with his nose and began to admire the beautiful views. So this is the mountain range of magical beasts? It turns out to be very beautiful here. His companion looked at the map and said, The scenery here is really something, but they get bored quickly. Yun revealed the map and said he clarified, He is only here to guide him and provide information. Hunting and killing monsters is his job. If he wants the boy to help him, it will have to be paid extra. The protagonist grimaces. Yes, he's already figured it out. He just needs someone who knows enough about the mountain range to guide him. The boys began to scrutinize the map. The most valuable quest was in this place, the hunt for the silver-striped golden snake. But it is very rare and its power is terrifying, so it is not worth it. The monsters on this map were divided into different ranks. For starters, Yun advised the protagonist, this one. Hunt ten phantom mice. Although it's difficult, the reward is very high and is considered a great merit. The protagonist sighed in. Good, since that's the case, he'll listen to a professional. Though trust he didn't have any confidence in him. Yun stretched in some sort of strange smile, which in all likelihood did not bode well. The boy said that of course he should obey. The boys were walking along a forest path. The sun was shining all around. The weather was fine and the mood was elevated by it. Yun began to tell about the object of their hunt. The phantom mouse inhabits this area. Their specialty is that they are transparent, and there is only one way how to find them. Does the boy want to find out? The protagonist nodded his head without much interest, and naturally, he heard the already familiar answer. His companion smilingly replied, Then you'll have to pay. Xi'an rolled his eyes. What a bastard. This guy was starting to piss him off. The protagonist couldn't take it anymore. He advised this task, but really, just want to fight him for more money? Yoon replied with an important look that it's just called business. Why is he angry? Xi'an averted his gaze to the side as if he saw something there. His gut never failed him, and right now, something was approaching him. The boy quickly drew his sword, and immediately something was thrust at him. There was a crunch as if someone's bone had broken. To everyone's surprise, his ball had the same phantom bat on it. The guy caught it without much difficulty. Yun was just shocked. He couldn't believe his eyes, after all. These bats are quite rare creatures, and it's very difficult to catch them. How did he do it? Xi'an smiled with a full mouth. If he wanted to find out, who would he have to pay? What a good idea to use his own weapons against his enemy. Yun crossed his arms on his chest resentfully and shook his head not that it interested him very much. The protagonist at this time was triumphant. He laughed loudly while swinging the bat worn on his sword. Yun crouched on the nearest rock. He didn't move. Since he had his own way of hunting mice, let him hurry up and get it over with. He won't wait long for the protagonist. Okay, it's done. The boy started jumping in different directions with incredible speed and catching the bats one by one. The beasts had no time to run away from him, and soon, he had enough. Yun watched him. He had envy inside. This guy has a lot of interesting tricks up his sleeve, so he was also interested in the old man. Maybe they know each other? 
Suddenly, a hunch popped into the boy's head. Wait a minute, is what he's thinking true? A horrible hunch pierced his head. His body began to tremble as if in fear. Perhaps this kid is the son of a lonely old man. That's simply impossible. The boy held his head and began to tremble even more with fear. It was the first time he had ever been so badly frightened. Xi'an head to his side and stared at the boy with astonishment. Now it was clear why he had insisted on coming here. It was all to find his father. Yun was already completely lost in his own conjecture. He was trembling with fear and didn't know where to put himself. Xiang looked at him in surprise. Why was this kid looking at him like that? Suddenly, it was as if something realized something. He opened his eyes wide and froze in place. Xi'an suddenly transformed. His stance became menacing, and he looked menacingly at his companion holding the ball in his hands. It seemed that the kid suspected something. Yun noticed this and shook even more violently with fear. He saw his companion take out a sword and start charging it with magical energy. What is he doing? Is he going to kill him to keep him quiet? That's not Wee's thoughts. The boy waved his hands. Xi'an quickly ran towards him, waving his weapon. It looked like he wanted to kill his companion. The poor guy shouted, stammering that he wouldn't tell anyone about this. But to everyone's surprise, the protagonist ran past him and swung his sword stabbed somewhere backwards. There was a strange sound. The sword had hit somewhere after all finally realized that the target wasn't him. Xi'an jumped back, and immediately a hissing sound was heard from behind, as if there was a huge snake. Xi'an bounced back. This thing had an incredibly strong recoil. He held onto his sword with both hands and prepared for the next attack. His companion stood and tried to recover. The snake did not waste a second and rushed to attack its prey. It did not want to miss such a tasty lunch in the form of two guys. Mu Yun pulled his eyes out and couldn't move from his seat. Devil, that snake is incredibly strong. He grasped his sword and it burst into bright flames. Yun swung it around and sparks from the fire flew in all directions, and it seemed his element was fire. We had to defend ourselves against this thing or it would eat them all. Now the boys stood back to back and prepared for battle. Yun asked his companion, did he see anything? The protagonists replied that no, it all happened too fast. Meanwhile, the snake was approaching its prey. It circled around the boys. On its back was something like a bone comb, and the scales were all gold in color. It's that rare golden snake. Xi'an, together and his comrade, realized at this moment that they were in mortal danger. What a devil. They definitely couldn't handle this thing. It was that golden snake with silver stripes. A huge serpent appeared as if from the ground. It spun around creating whirlwinds out of thin air. The snake looked at its prey with white eyes. It felt that these two could do nothing to it. Compared to this monster, the two guys were just tiny. The snake began to crawl closer to them so that it could swallow both of them in one fell swoop. As soon as it crawled close enough, the boys realized how huge it was after all. Now fear and doubt settled in their souls that they would be able to handle this monster after all. It looked incredibly threatening. 179 Yun Na frowned, he said, doubting how he should think. Whether or not they were lucky enough to encounter the golden snake. The guy realized that the battle wouldn't be easy. The protagonist took a closer look and said, If judging by the size, it is a silver-striped golden snake of the second rank and the one he cast off the first. Yun was frightened and surprised at the same time, that is, the guy wants to say that there is more than one snake here. Xi'an smiled and squinted his eyes ready to hunt. Looks like it. So unless they want to become its lunch, they should run away from here as soon as possible. Yun scared looked at him and asked if he had a plan. He still had the last bit of hope that the guy would save them all because he didn't know what to do. Xi'an got up from his seat and ran. Lastly, he said that he would divert the attention of those things, and Yun let him use his combat skill to clear their path. Yun started to get indignant. He was actually asking for okay, not directions. But the protagonist didn't listen to him, and was already running at full speed to distract the snakes. The beast opened its big golden eye and noticed the protagonist, who was rapidly running towards her. Such was the luck, the prey itself running into its jaws. 
The snake bared its teeth and prepared to swallow the little boy. But the protagonist did not think of retreating. He ran straight ahead towards the terrible monster. After a few seconds, the distance between them decreased, and the boy took out his holy sword as hard as he could hit the snake right in the nose. The monster bared its teeth. She had not expected her prey to resist. Xi'an physically felt a powerful recoil. His entire body felt as if it was vibrating after the impact. He didn't expect that the scales were so hard that he couldn't even leave a scratch on it. He bounced to the opposite side and with a ducking bass. It was necessary to save its life. He alone could not handle it. The monster shook his head, and the guy landed just a few meters away from him. The monster only got angry from such a blow and prepared to finish the boy off. The creature racked its head in different directions, trying to bring itself to its senses. But it wasn't that simple. The boy suddenly noticed that this snake was splitting into several pieces. His eyes widened with horror and realization of the hopelessness of the situation. The door, several energy clots flew in his direction. The snake had split into several parts and was now attacking from different directions. At the last moment, the protagonist applied his shield and all three energy snakes hit him. The shield crackled from such a strain. It seemed that the earth was about to break and the guy would fall into its very depths. Xi'an shouted to his comrade to immediately use the spell or else they would both be finished. Yun already prepared to attack. He shouted that he understood everything and swung his flaming sword. He was literally engulfed in a whirlwind of fire energy and was ready to deliver his crushing blow. The boy didn't notice anything, but a sharp snake tail was already moving at him from the back. One more second, and his body would be pierced through. The boy wouldn't have had time to react anyway. He noticed it too late, and watched in horror as the huge snake tail approached him at an unimaginable speed. There would be nothing he could do now but simply await his fate. The tail wrapped around his body in a split second. The serpent gripped him tightly and began to squeeze him harder and harder with every second. He screamed to the protagonist that another snake had grabbed him. He can't get out. The tail clamped down harder and harder with each passing second. The poor guy's mouth was already spurting blood. The tip of the tail aimed right at his head to pierce it in a split second. The guy screamed and started to pass out. Xi'an was fighting the main snake at this time. He saw at the last moment how his friend was in the snake's tenacious grip. But unfortunately, there was no way he could help him, as he himself had many problems with these creatures. The protagonist swung his sword in his hand. He couldn't leave his comrade in such a situation. He had accumulated enough power, and now it was necessary to try to summon him somehow. Xi'an concentrated his energy and released an energy wave with his sword right into the monster's tail to free his friend. However, the snakes were too many. The guy did not have time to calculate the action of the monster, and it Razinu in its huge mouth was already approaching him from the back. The poor fellow pulled his arm forward in an attempt to break free, but the snake's jaws were already too close. There was no way he would be able to break free. The snake's jaws snapped shut, and there was a crunch of breaking bones. Its teeth sank right into his flesh. The guy clenched his teeth from the incredible pain. He tried hard not to scream. The snake had caught its prey after all. Yun Yun was struggling to hold on. The snake's tail was being pulled tighter and tighter. Soon his body would simply not be able to withstand it. But suddenly, the main character's sword stabbed straight into the snake's flexible body, piercing through it. The sword stabbed right into the scales, and even though it was very strong, it still managed to penetrate it. There was a crunching sound, and shards of light flew in different directions. Yun was already holding on with all his might. One more second and his body would be flattened. What did he save him for? Now none of them would leave alive. Xi'an already felt something viscous begin to rapidly spread through his body. It was snake venom. It slowly filled the entire space, displacing the blood, their partners. And he's not going to let his partner die in front of him. The snake tossed its victim high up and opened its mouth to swallow him in one fell swoop. There was no longer any strength left in the body of the protagonist. The poison was beginning to take effect. He could not move a thing. Xi'an was falling straight into the mouth of the monster. His consciousness began to fade. For a second, he became unbearably dreary at the thought. He was now flying into the snake's mouth, and in a few seconds he would die. 
The guy almost cried. He didn't think he would die so miserably. His face was already slowly starting to change color. The snake venom had already slowly started to spread, filling his entire body. Suddenly, the guy felt a strange sensation. His body could hardly feel anymore. His eyes were closing, and his consciousness was slowly leaving his exhausted body. What was this feeling? He'd never felt this before. Ambient. Can he see without his eyes? Vague silhouettes shrouded in fire began to appear in front of his eyes, even though they were closed. It turns out that even though his eyes were completely shut down, he could feel and. His senses sharpened. He could sense the world around him without even using his eyes. His saint force had just become several times more powerful. A second later, the jungle had a crushing explosion. Bundles of light saint energy flew in different directions. It seemed that even the neighboring state was affected. The guy suddenly felt that he had become much stronger. His body rose upwards and began to emit lightning like a thunderous sky. Even the air started to become electrified. The snake looked up, still waiting to catch its prey. Yun looked at his comrade with surprise. Is this a breakthrough? The snake was still squeezing his body, but suddenly it loosened its grip so that the guy already was able to breathe. The sword that was stuck into his body began to glow with a purple light, and wisps of lightning also began to burst out from it. The weapon as well as the protagonist's body was transformed. It had gained incredible power. The sword burst out of the snake's tail and immediately rushed in the opposite direction. Yun just stunnedly watched all of this. He couldn't believe it. His eyes looked like they were deceiving him, but it was all true. Yun. With his own eyes, he saw the sword move with itself right towards the head of the terrifying serpent. That was Jian Chen's sword. It was simply unbelievable. The spirit sword gained its true power. It began to cut through space, moving at a speed that a human brain wouldn't be able to see it. The snake opened its eyes wide and watched as the weapon approached it. It had to get out of here. Mentally, the monster realized that it was about to be finished. But he could no longer do anything, even with a great desire. The sword at great speed crashed into his neck, even the hard scales that I could not penetrate any weapon for bad under such pressure. Blood splashed in different directions. The scales were pierced, and a horrible wound appeared on the monster's body. The snake roared with more nudging in its sharp fangs. Xi'an still couldn't see, but he felt that he had managed to wound the laughter after all. With some sixth sense, he saw a wound forming on the snake's body. Even if he died, he would take that thing with him to the other world. His body was overflowing with energy. His spiritual power increased several times, so that even though he was blind, he could see everything. The sword continued to swirl around the snake, cutting its scales like paper. The beast could do nothing. It was completely powerless against such a colossal weapon. But that was just the beginning. The sword spun around the snake's entire body like a spiral, slicing it apart. The snake screamed in pain, but could do nothing. Yun still being held captive by this creature, he couldn't believe his eyes. A sword flying by itself. This was simply unbelievable. He looked at it all with genuine surprise and delight. Is this person also like this? Xi'an. Patiently waited, he watched from the sidelines as his weapon chopped the snake apart by itself. With only a few moments left, this snake would finally die. The snake roared, emitting a death rattle. Its body was completely shredded by the sword. Blood spatters were flying in different directions, and the protagonist was in the air looking down on it. Maybe this body is as hard as stone, but what about this one? The protagonist pointed his sword straight at the snake's head. His weapon took only a fraction of a second to reach its target. There was a long scream and a crunch of bones. The sword hit its target. Its blade pierced through the snake's head before it could do anything. The wounded body began to emit black smoke from its wounds. The snake roared, its death rattle echoing through the neighborhood. Thick black smoke billowed from the horrible creature's mouth. The protagonist looked at all this, and in his heart rejoiced he had succeeded after all. The effects of the poison gradually began to dissipate. His vision returned and the boy opened his eyes. He sighed heavily. Victory was in his pocket. Yun stood on the ground and looked at his friend in surprise. He couldn't believe his eyes. This man had won. But the question remained, who was he? The boy's eyes widened with surprise. He saw something terrible. His pupils narrowed with fear. 
239, the protagonist exhausted by the battle down at a great speed. One more second and then the body just crashes to the hard ground. Yun watched the whole thing and prepared to run to his friend's aid. He couldn't leave it like this. One more second and he would die. A second later, the main character's body flashed like an arrow and fell into the thicket of trees. The branches cracked. Eyes slowly began to open. The body was all weakened and more spread just throughout his body. The boy was breathing heavily, his eyes twitching convulsively. Yun standing nearby, his face, it was the first thing the protagonist saw after waking up. The boy looked at him fearfully. He was finally awake. He stood up a little and sat up. Surprised, he looked at his savior and asked, and how come he's perfectly fine? The boy blanched. Yun reached for a small glowing ball, a golden snake core with a silver stripe works as well as the antidote. Xi'an smiled and said that this was his best skill, and he hoped that what happened would only remain between them. The guy still couldn't believe that he was so strong that he was able to kill a silver-striped golden snake. What's the name of this skill? Yun started gibbering. He said that's right. He remembered. He just doesn't want everyone to know that he's the son of a lonely old man. The main character looked at him in surprise. What's he talking about? And what the hell was he freezing up about now? How did he become his son? Yun smiled and said that it was obvious. He's the son of a lonely old man and don't even let him try to hide it. Xi'an looked at him with an annoyed look, but the guy continued to speak. The flying sword is a famous technique of the old man, and he wants to say that he is to me his son ask for a sign. The protagonist continued to stare at him with an uncomprehending look. So it turns out that when the old man tried to enter this world and succeeded, he learned the spirit ball? I see. Yoon didn't stop. His eyes glittered with lust for profit. The guy said that since he came to his senses, he should gut this snake. She's a valuable treasure after all. The guys started looking at the snake's body with enthusiasm. They needed to cut it open and get all the magic cores out. It could fetch a fortune. He felt surges of saint power, but he never thought he would stumble upon such a rich harvest. This is the most authentic silver-striped golden snake. Looks like luck is on his side. The boys turned around at the unfamiliar voices and looked in his direction in surprise. Who the hell was that? A strange man in blue clothes was approaching them. The man smiled, a large scar on his face. He looked at the two guys, and in his eyes was nothing but endless lust for profit. He didn't see the two guys in front of him, but his victims. Suddenly, several more men in dark robes appeared from the forest. The man appeared to be their leader. He said the snake belonged to him. He stood in front of the boys and looked at them with a vicious stare. They were just a barrier to his enrichment. And it was necessary to deal with him as quickly as possible. Xian smiled and said that he could take the snake away. But how was he going to deal with them? The man raised his hands to the sky and said theatrically, There is such a beautiful scenery around. Just a beautiful place to die, don't they think? His henchmen clapped their hands. Xian Rasupena faded his eyes. And why are all the villains so unoriginal? He was already hoping for something interesting to happen here. They said it together. It was hard to tell who said it first. The guys were surprised and looked at each other with a smile. Who said it first? The situation was comical. Yun was determined. Since they were able to kill the silver-striped golden snake, isn't this person afraid that hash redo its fate? The man smirked maliciously. Good joke. One of them has almost no light power left and the other is badly injured. How do they plan on killing them? After all, there are simply more of them. The man shouted at the top of his voice. How are they going to scare them? They're just brats. Just two kids who don't know anything about the outside world. A holy sword suddenly materialized in the man's hands. He smiled and gloatingly thanked them for helping him kill that snake. Now they would die here and now. The man swung his sword. The people standing behind him prepared to attack. They realized that these two simply couldn't handle them. Victory was almost within their grasp. Yun, he's going to try to hold them off. And the main character, let him run away from here, the guy asked. But how is he going to get away by himself? After all, there's just more of them. He won't be able to confront them all by himself after all. His comrade replied not to worry about him. He has enough aces up his sleeve without a dead weight. Escaping from here won't be a problem. 
Xi'an understood and gave an angry look. And who did he call dead weight? What a joke. The guy was furious. Yun said that the main character had almost no holy power left. How could he be useful? He was in command before, and now it was his turn. The protagonist gritted his teeth in anger. He didn't like that some guy perch unknowingly from where he came from was starting to command here. Who the hell is he? Liz. He didn't want to give up so easily. He had worked so hard to kill the snake. How can he just give it to these bastards begging sign guy put his hand forward and began to accumulate holy energy in it? His friend wondered, does he want to do what he's thinking? A second later, the holy sword was in the hands of the protagonist. Among them, only that old man is a danger. The rest of them are all just cronies. Dealing with them will be easy. Yun turned around at him and asked, how is he going to fight when his saint force is only enough for this knife? Xi'an looked at him in disbelief and said that he would see for himself now. There was no need to jump to conclusions. Xi'an ordered him to deal with their boss and he would take on the others. His friend nodded in agreement. They put their swords forward, ready to fight back. Yun used his attack skill, his body beginning to be covered in fire. Now, he needed to concentrate all his strength to deal with this old man in one fell swoop. He could be a big problem in the future. The boy gripped his sword tightly and swung with all his might. A fire aura began to appear around him, enveloping his entire body. The old man was completely confident in his victory. He smiled and said that this kid was just a fool who didn't know when to surrender. Now he's going to die. Well, he had chosen that fate. Yun ran up to the old man in an instant and struck him with his sword, but the old man drew his weapon and skillfully blocked the blow. It seemed to pose no threat to him. Xi'an Gai didn't pay any attention to their taunts at all at this time, stood opposite the others, and held his small sword in his hands. The black-clothed people laughed with loud laughter. That's it? He wants to fight them alone? But the guy didn't pay any attention to them. He just concentrated the energy in his dagger. To him, these words were nothing more than empty sound. He knew that soon all these people would just die. But those freaks wouldn't stop. What's wrong? He's so scared he decided to close his eyes. But the guy didn't see anything but his target. He felt with his sixth sense every move they made, every breath they took. After the amplification, all of his senses sharpened, and now he could wield the spiritual sword even with such a small amount of saint power. The battle with that serpent was what went in his favor. These lousy mercenaries are no match for him. He jumped high up and used the spiritual sword. The guy swung his dagger and prepared to chop these miserable scum in an instant. The small dagger, despite its size, flew at a tremendous speed straight at one of the mercenaries. The man was holding onto his axe and didn't understand anything. Death flashed in his eyes for a second. He had already accepted his fate. There was no way the man could have expected that a guy with so little strength could be so threateningly strong. It was only a fraction of a second, and the mercenaries were already cut by the energy blades in an instant, before they could even blink an eye. Blood splattered in different directions. People didn't even have time to react. Their lives were cut short at the same moment. Xi'an standing and looking down on them, he saw people squirming from the field and stretching their hands towards him. But to him, those screams were music. He massacred them in a split second. But at this time, his friend of the city was fighting the most important. Their strength was almost equal. He easily parried all the attacks of the old man, not letting him even get close to him. The scraping of metal rang out. The battle promised to be bloody. The old man noticed how one of these guys chopped his entire entourage in one second. That's impossible. He shouldn't have even a drop of saint power left. How could he even move? Yun saw this too and happily laughed. Xi'an stood holding on to his little dagger. Dying in the middle of such a delightful scenery really sounded good. In front of him lay a pile of the corpses of the mercenaries he had just killed. He turned to the old man and asked him, he doesn't think so. In his opinion, this is the perfect place to finally die. The old man frowned. He realized that he had underestimated these suckers too much. However, not enough to come up with a backup plan. The old man shouted that it was time to act. And suddenly, from the thick of the forest, two fiery arrows flew at them. They were aimed straight at the protagonists. They moved with such speed that it was almost impossible to catch their movement. 
Yun reacted quickly and swung his sword to repel the attack. The arrow hit the blade and flew in the opposite direction with a loud sound. Xi'an displayed his weapon and also repelled the attack. Was there another Saint Master here? Now that was a big problem. They wouldn't be able to fight together against two experienced masters. But surprisingly, the old man didn't attack. He just ran away in the opposite direction. What kind of fighter is that? Is he really that weak? The protagonist shouted to run right after him. The old man was running away at this time, and Yun ran after him, swinging his sword. It was obvious that the old man was definitely very frightened, and he tried to run away as fast as possible, because these two could kill him, and he didn't want to lose his life. But instead of chasing the old man, the main character stood like a stumbling block and just looked at him with an angry look. He felt something change in his body. There was pain everywhere. Yun turned around to him and shouted, What's the matter? Why is he standing still? What is even happening? But suddenly, his eyes widened with fear. He saw something that made him flinch. There was clearly something wrong with his friend. At that moment, he had already spat on the old man. Xi'an lay on the ground completely exhausted. This fight had completely exhausted him, and now he was lying there unable to move Yi a finger. The day continued. The sun shone brightly illuminating the nearby grove where the incredible battle was taking place. Yun, with a frightened face, rushed to his aid. What's wrong with his friend? Why is he suddenly lying unconscious? Is he really dead? The guy opened his eyes with the last of his strength and started muttering something to himself. He said he had no idea what had happened. His eyes suddenly went black and he felt dizzy, and then he slumped to the ground. Yun assumed that all of this could be because of another light master. The guy already rose to his feet, rubbing his aching head. No, the problem was him. He had used up too much saint power. Now he had almost no strength left. But the guy wouldn't stop worrying. The protagonist rubbed his head and said that it was fine, no need to worry. His comrade had little faith in that, after all. The protagonist looked really bad. Even suddenly, a small purple fire lit up in the protagonist's hands. Everything was clear to him now. The spiritual sword had spent not holy power, but his spiritual power. Everything was now falling into place. It was clear why he was so weak. His supply of spiritual power was almost depleted, which is why he almost lost consciousness. It seems like it's not a good idea to use the spirit sword so often just yet. It might lead to undesirable consequences. The boy sighed heavily. He said with annoyance that they couldn't catch up with that old man now. He had run too far away. His comrade folded his arms on his chest and said that he never thought that another holy master was hiding here. But they were lucky that they decided to retreat. Xi'an squinted. Because of their escape, the news of the silver-striped golden snake would quickly spread. When they returned to the city, there would be a lot of rumors. It would cause a lot of problems. 311. There was a whole graveyard around the books. The bodies of the slain mercenaries were lying there, as well as the huge corpse of a golden snake. Now, they would have a hard time. They would have to hide again so that these people wouldn't cause too much trouble. Yun smiled broadly. The mountain range of magical beasts was big enough to hide, and with him as their guide, they definitely wouldn't have any problems. On his chest, some strange magical symbol suddenly lit up. This magic clot flew out of the boy's chest and hung in the air. Everyone stared at it in surprise. What is this even? Yun looked at it and didn't understand anything. The main character pulled his eyes out. He had never seen something like this before. Just, what is it? What kind of magic power is there? Yun's face suddenly changed, but a hysterical smile appeared on his face. He quickly apologized and said that he had to run, so it was time to say goodbye. The protagonist didn't understand anything at all. What the hell was going on here? Yun Budo didn't hear him. He said it was a secret. No one should know about it. The matter is urgent, so we need to make a deal. Suddenly, he took out a paper and a brush from somewhere. The protagonist even opened his mouth in surprise. The kid sounded like that was the way to go. The silver-striped gold snake is too big, Zotto, so he can have it for himself. But the protagonist must compensate him with 50,000 amethyst coins. If we add the fact that he was his guide, provided information helped in the battle, then he only owes 60,000 coins. 
He held out a sheet of contract to the protagonist. Sheehan noted that this kid makes a pretty good businessman. At this time, his comrade was smiling. He was glad that they had come to an agreement. Xian Yi had no intention of paying him. He snatched the piece of paper from his hands, also his brother. This ring contains all his savings. He'll give the rest when he gets more money. He threw the ring into his hands, and the boy gratefully accepted the gift. Yun smiled and told the protagonist not to forget his duty. Now it was time for him to go. The boy took this very magical sphere of purple color in his hands, and it began to disassemble even more. Something began to change around it. The air became liquid and viscous. A second later, he if it was gone. The protagonist stood on the ground and understood nothing. He didn't even have time to say goodbye as the boy vaporized literally in the air, leaving behind him only a purple haze. Xi'an did not understand anything at all. He held out his hand and said, at least it was necessary to tell him how to contact him. Otherwise, how would he be able to pay him back? But it looks like this matter will remain unresolved. Xi'an stood beside the corpse of a huge golden snake. So, what should he do with this big guy? Dragging it around on his back is obviously not an option. So what's he going to do with it here? The boy thought, by the way, the books from the academy said that if you swallow a silver-striped golden snake, you can get invulnerability to all kinds of poison. It was an incredibly useful ability. Besides, he knows the right technique. Even though there's a risk of being poisoned by the snake's venom but not leaving it here, that would be sacrilege. The guy put his hand on the snake's scales. It was cold and hard to the touch. He began to concentrate the energy in his hand, sucking out all the power and the snake. We need to finish this before the mercenaries come back with help. He concentrated harder and harder every second. Gotta feel the snake. The snake is a part of him. His hand began to glow with a purple light, indicating that the absorption had begun. The guy began to recite the spell, let the snake become his blood and flesh so that no eater would harm him. The snake's body began to vaporize, turning into a ball of yellow energy. The protagonist began to absorb it all. But it didn't happen the way he thought it would. The absorption process was too painful. An incredible pain spread through his body, and he had to fight it somehow. Otherwise, he would just pass out. A dazzling light began to develop everywhere. One had to squeeze his eyes shut. Otherwise, the guy would risk going blind. Xi'an stood, but his legs began to shake from overexertion. The energy had completely left the snake and was now starting to transfer into his body. It felt like he was being pierced by a thousand swords. Xi'an completely merged with this energy. His body began to burn, his skin covered with some strange scaly growths, similar to the ones the snake was covered with. The overexertion had reached just some kind of cosmic force. This sucks and his mouth was bleeding in a flash. If he passed out now, no one would be able to help him. The boy fell to the ground, and a few drops of blood dripped from his mouth. His strength was gradually leaving him. He could feel the snake spreading through his body. His head began to ache with unbearable pain. He grabbed it. I think the snake was trying to take over, he thought. His head was splitting from the unbearable pain. His hands were suddenly transformed, long claws instead of the usual fingers. His skin turned into scales and a golden light began to emanate from it. Xi'an clenched his teeth. Fangs began to appear there. He tried his best to fight so that the snake couldn't take over his body finally. But it was just some crazy pain. His body couldn't take this kind of overload, especially after such a grueling battle. The guy's face began to transform. Fangs appeared instead of teeth, and his ears stretched out, turning into some semblance of animal ears. His eyes were white with film. If he continues like this, he will lose himself and turn into a snake eater. The guy had already almost transformed, his face deformed. That's right, he has that technique. He suddenly remembered the moment when he knocked the demon out of his older brother. He had to use it immediately. There was so much time left for me. He had already almost lost his human form. His mind gradually began to fog up. It was necessary to try his luck. At the very least, he had nothing to lose. Xi'an brought two fingers to his forehead and began to apply the demon banishment technique. He prayed to all the gods that this technique would finally work or else he would be finished. He would turn into a mindless monster. The spell worked. The energy began to spread out, filling the space around him. 
The guy didn't know what to do, but he was barely holding on. His head was almost foggy. He was on the verge of becoming a monster. But luckily, the technique worked. The snake demon immediately burst out of his body. It looked like a dragon, but only without the bodily shell. 346. The spirit began to gradually dissolve into the air, leaving behind only a slight golden haze. It had all worked. Now his life was saved. Xi'an heavily breathing, he looked at his hand. His skin was now a normal color. His teeth had shrunk and his eyes were clear. Great, it all worked. He thanked everyone he could for what would now remain in human form. The boy fell to the ground, breathing heavily. If the technique hadn't worked, he would have been finished by now. Absorbing the snake was much harder than he thought. His body was now completely exhausted. After being absorbed, his body now began to absorb the energy of the silver-striped golden snake, and its spirit was destroyed. He could literally physically feel his body changing. Everything had worked out, and he had now gained new abilities. The boy looked up at the sky with joy. Now, we need to let the energy be assimilated so that the susceptibility becomes even higher and higher. It will take time, but the main task is already accomplished. He got to his feet. I watched. He also wanted to get out of here as soon as possible, and it wouldn't hurt to wash up. Not the most pleasant odor was coming off of him. The day was gradually coming to an end, but a large crescent moon had already emerged and began to illuminate the earth with its bright white light. Small stars had already begun to appear in the sky. Soon, the mercenaries arrived at the same place. Now they were much more numerous than before. The same old man was walking in front. He was furious. He wanted to tear these two brats right here. They had interfered with him, and now they would pay with their lives. But unfortunately, he noticed that there was no one else in the place. Shit, they didn't get away. The man was left with his nose again. Suddenly, someone's soft and pleasant voice was heard from outside. The stranger said that everything had happened as expected. It would be strange if they didn't run away. In front of them stood an obscure person in strange clothes. The man looked at him in horror and asked what should they do now. The man stood in front of them and looked down from above. It was their captain, a man of tall stature dressed in luxurious clothing. He ordered his servants to set a reward for them and tell them that besides the silver-striped golden snake, they had also killed his men. These brats won't leave this mountain range alive. A predatory smile appeared on his face. Now the protagonists had another huge problem. They are being hunted by a group of experienced mercenaries. At this time, the protagonist didn't suspect anything. His clothes were lying somewhere on the ground, and he himself plunged into the water with a loud sound. It was time to take a bath. A waterfall was rushing around, and the protagonist was splashing in the water. The water was quite cool, I refreshing his whole body. The boy smiled. Finally, for a long time, he would be able to take a proper shower. He happily dived under the water like a fish. After absorbing the snake's energy, his senses became sharper. His sense of smell, allowed, and vision sharpened. He felt much better now. It seemed to him that he had become part of all the nature around him. The lad swam in the water and enjoyed the pleasant and coolness. He felt this sensation for the first time. The guy dove deeper. He felt himself merged with the river as one. It was like he was part of this big organism called nature. He was the river. A big, ugly octopus with many eyes on its head looked at the unknown alien in surprise. He raised his tentacle upward as a sign of greeting. He saw and understood the fishes, all the sea creatures. He saw the rocks and felt them. It was as if all the living things around him had become his own. It was as if he had become part of it all. When he reached the waterfall, he threw himself down, but he was not afraid of crashing. He realized that the water would pick him up, and he was in no danger. The little figure of the boy flew down with great speed. A second later, he plunged into the water. The boy opened his eyes, a blissful smile on his face. He'd never felt so good before. He could feel everything around him. Everything around him was supporting him. He cried out with joy. He is everything around him. He had finally reached this level where he could feel all of nature around him. Suddenly he felt some strange energy. It was like a holy energy. It was much purer and lighter than normal. The boy surfaced from the water and looked around joyfully. 
He was overwhelmed with incredible emotions. He had not felt so full of energy, alive, truly alive for a long time. But suddenly his gaze caught on something that made him stop. He stared forward with eyes open with surprise. The guy saw an incredibly beautiful girl who was sitting on the shore, covered only with a small light towel. The girl looked at him with surprise and interest. What was she doing here? At that moment, the guy as if fell through the ground. While he was splashing in the water, he didn't even notice that there was a girl in the river besides him, but he couldn't stop. The guy completely naked flew straight at her, and in a few seconds, he would plunge into the water. There was fear in the girl's eyes. She saw exactly what she wasn't supposed to see. Is that its chick? The girl opened her mouth in surprise, and her cheeks immediately turned red to the extreme. Xi'an couldn't stop anymore. He flew into the water at full speed, and there was a sound like a bomb exploding somewhere. Splashes of water flew in different directions, and they would definitely splash the girl. After a few seconds, the protagonist jumped out of the water and waved his hands. He tried to explain everything. He asked the girl to wait. Let her not scream. The stranger looked at him with a frightened and surprised look. She probably thought he was some kind of pervert. The guy tried to explain everything. He said he didn't know there was anyone here but him. Honest. The girl didn't seem to believe it too much. She looked at him in surprise and said, And it's just an accident, right? The girl looked scared. Her head was swarming with many thoughts. She realized that something irreparable was about to happen. Before the guy could say a word to me, a huge boulder flew into him. Despite her appearance, the girl was incredibly strong. The boulder fell into the water and it felt as if the guy was about to be flattened. Xi'an flew in the opposite direction, thrown away by the blast wave. How strong this girl was after all. He almost lost consciousness from such a strong blow. The guy hit the rocks and now it felt like his head was turned upside down. A stone fell on the place where the protagonist had just been, splashing water. Fortunately, the protagonist was able to dodge in time and dive deeper so that the rock wouldn't flatten him. He was underwater and held his breath as much as possible. While underwater, he pondered, this girl was around his age, but had already reached the level of a great saint master. This was simply amazing. The guy couldn't believe it. There were so many talented people in his academy, but no one could even come close to matching this girl. Her strength was simply staggering. The guy was floundering underwater like a frog. The air in his lungs gradually began to run out. She must have been through a lot. He'd have to explain himself to her properly, or he'd make another dangerous enemy. Oh, for crying out loud! How does he manage to get himself into these situations? But first I had to get my things. He dived out of the water and got dressed, but the girl was gone. Where did she go? Suddenly he heard a woman's angry voice from behind him. He turned back, already realizing who he was going to see there. What's about to happen another fight? The angry girl stood and held her holy sword in her hands. She looked at him as if she was ready to kill him right now. In fact, she was. Her clothes fit her perfectly, emphasizing her beautiful form. But it was too soon for the boy to admire the girl's beauty. She swung her sword, and with it a huge jet of water rose into the sky. The first form of the imperial water arts. The girl seriously intended to kill him. Not even a few seconds later, a huge water wave flew at the protagonist. The girl was really pissed off. The wave took the form of a dragon which flew straight at the protagonist opening its wide mouth. It was a huge effort for him to dodge such a fast attack. The water was like a blade. It cut through everything around him, even the rocks. A moment more, and the protagonist would have been cut into several pieces. Xi'an shouted for the girl to wait. He just wants to explain everything to her after all. The guy wasn't trying his best to prevent conflicts after all, he didn't need to have another strong enemy. But it seems like no one was listening to him. She was moving at a phenomenal speed. In a second, she was already behind the protagonist's back. Swinging her sword, she screamed, whether it was a misunderstanding or not. Peeping on a bathing girl, it's a serious crime. The guy gritted his teeth and prepared to get a big kick out of this. She moved incredibly fast. The guy was hit by a lot of blows. He couldn't dodge them or flew all over the waterfall like some kind of ball. There were several people standing below and raising their hands up, supporting their mistress. They were shouting for her to hit him properly. There stood two men, one of whom struck the second and shouted, 
How did he allow such a thing to happen, that a stranger should sneak over the waterfall and approach the young mistress? Fung rubbed the bruised spot and blushed. He said that it wasn't his fault. He was following the saint force in the river, but this guy somehow managed to avoid his perception. The second man frowned even more. He said that he was sure it was all because of Fayan's constant drinking. A look of squeamishness was reflected on his face. He got to his feet and walked forward. Fung said that perhaps all of this was true. However, when the young mistress dealt with this guy, she wouldn't complain. This guy might not turn out to be that simple, replied the other person. Fung again took out a pot of alcohol from somewhere and tipped it into his mouth. He asked, he really thinks that this guy will be able to handle her begging sign compared to his peers. The young mistress is invincible. At this time, the fight continued. The protagonist was dodging because of all his strength, but a so-and-so girl was incredibly fast. She was cutting through the rocks with her water magic like a blade. One more move and the guy would be finished. He realized that he couldn't handle this girl one-on-one. -on -one. Why does she have such power? She's still so young. Poor guy tried to shout at her. He apologized several times, but she wouldn't listen to him. The girl looked completely pissed off. She shouted that she could hear him perfectly well. Something about the way she looked didn't seem to notice it because she was going to kill him. In fact, the girl didn't even want to hear anything. She swung her sword, sending another wave of water towards the head hero. He must die. The guy didn't have time to dodge, and a sharp jet pierced his shoulder like a blade. Blood spurted, pain spread all over the guy's body. The girl was still able to hurt him. He couldn't handle that kind of speed. At this moment, he thought, this girl is incredibly strong. If he wasn't serious, he would just die. The water had already almost collapsed his body. Now either he would drown or this girl would cut him with her blades. Xian Wu grasped his sword. Well, if the girl wants to fight in earnest, that's how it could be. Now the guy will show off all his strength. Literally a few centimeters away from the girl's face flew a magic jet. She looked at it with horror. The girl didn't expect that this stranger could show her such resistance. Fear for her life flashed in the girl's eyes for a second. Xian sprang high into the air and swung his sword. The girl dodged it with her last strength, but still, the main character's attack reached her body. The girl cried out in pain and surprise. She flew straight down. The guy rushed after her, holding his sword at the ready. The girl gritted her teeth. She wasn't ready to give up but at the same time, she didn't expect that this no acquaintance would be so strong. 410, after flying a few dozen meters, the two of them slammed into the water with great force. There was a loud splash. Water mixed with vapor flew in all directions. The energy was unbelievably strong. Xian jumped out of the water and stood on the ground completely wet. He was breathing heavily and holding his sword in his hands. He tried his best to explain himself to the girl. The guy breathing heavily said he wasn't arguing with her. She may be stronger than him, but she lacks real experience. What just happened was just a misunderstanding. He apologized and asks her to stop fighting. Otherwise, the guy was silent for a second. A girl of such insolence. Otherwise, what, he dares to threaten her? The girl tensed her whole body, and it seemed that the very air near her began to vibrate. Her face became incredibly angry. She was not only offended that she had been spied on, but also that this impudent man was now daring to threaten her. She sprang to her feet high into the air in one swift leap. She was followed by a tail of magical energy. The guy definitely didn't expect this. It seemed to be a special battle technique. For a second, fear flashed in his eyes. This was something he definitely didn't expect. The guy looked at her and didn't know what to do. He realized that now the girl would just kill him. He had to concentrate. He didn't want to fight her, but there seemed to be no other way out. They stood opposite each other and glared at each other. The girl looked at him with a surprised look. He was able to get her to use a fighting technique. He's definitely an unusual pervert. The guy stood a little far away, her head released. But the girl had no intention of backing down. She raised her hand once again and activated her battle sword. However, this pervert wouldn't leave here alive. The sword stabbed into the ground with tremendous force. A water vortex began to form around it. Something terrible was about to happen. The girl was getting really angry. It had to stop, or they would just kill each other. Water pillars began to form all around. The ball stand was stuck in the ground, and water was splashing around it. They will definitely kill each other. 
The dragon reappeared from the water, roared and lunged at its prey. What's the matter? Why can't we just talk? Are all women like that? Xi'an finally lost his temper. Finally. At least someone will fight back against that little brat. He looked at her menacingly and said that he was going to let her go, but since she's so ungrateful, she's going to get punched in the face now. He didn't want to do this until the last minute, but it seems he was left with no choice. He'd have to get a little rough. The guy got into a fighting stance and began to accumulate energy. Xi'an released a beam of purple energy in her direction, which immediately began to split the water that flew at him. The water dragon that was summoned to kill him disintegrated into many droplets. It was powerless in front of this technique. Now, a jet of electricity shot straight at the girl. Now she was seriously scared for her life. She wouldn't be able to dodge. Now this spell would just destroy her. But at the last moment, literally, if out of nowhere appeared someone's hand, and with a flick of the sword that flew straight at the girl. It was almost a few centimeters from her face, but the stranger came up in time. It was the same old man who stood at the foot of the waterfall and watched the girl. He had only a slight snap of his fingers to repel such a powerful attack. Xi'an's eyes bulged out in surprise. This old man was strong. He would definitely not be able to handle him. The old man frowned and asked in a formidable voice, How dare this rascal injure madam? The old man was furious. It seemed like he would just destroy the protagonist right now. Looks like those two were the bodyguards of that girl. A second later, Fung appeared behind the boy's back. His face was as red from alcohol as ever. With his toothless mouth, he said that it was a great technique, but still not enough. The guy turned around in surprise and frightened. He didn't expect this old man to appear behind his back. When did he have time to move so quickly? Fung was furious, he shouted. How dare this little asshole peep on a young girl? Now he would destroy him. The old man swung, and his fist was filled with magical energy. Naturally, the protagonist wouldn't have time to dodge. The fist hit exactly on target, his case riddled with incredible pain. Hit so hard that the guy flew several meters into the air. His breath hitched and his heart seemed to skip a beat. A second later, a trickle of blood came out of his mouth. The old man was incredibly strong. The guy couldn't do anything, not even react. Now it was hard for him to breathe because of such a blow. He's definitely dead. Why can't we just have a normal conversation? Is that so hard? Xi'an flew upwards and slid down the waterfall in the opposite direction. The impact was incredibly strong. The guy ended up high in the sky, soaring like a bird. I wonder if he'll even live. The poor guy was flying upwards and he couldn't feel his body. The speed was so great that it was hard for him to breathe. It seemed he was going to lose consciousness and go to his ancestors. Too bad for the kid. Fung rejoiced at his blow. He shouted and the girl clapped her hands and said that her uncle was very cool. At this time, the poor protagonist was lying somewhere in the bushes. He could hardly feel his body. His mouth was bleeding. He was breathing heavily and too could come to his senses. Feng smiled with his mouth in which the teeth grew not in a row, but in... The man said that this guy took a direct hit from him and managed to survive? Yeah, that's a pretty capable kid. The man looked away in surprise. What, this guy's still able to move? Suddenly the man felt a strange sensation throughout his body. It was as if he stopped moving. His body stiffened and he couldn't move a finger. The girl shouted for her uncle to kill that impertinent man. She couldn't bear such humiliation. But the uncle told her to calm down. The kid is seriously hurt, so he thinks he's had enough. Besides, it wasn't his policy to kill children. The girl couldn't get over it. That creep was watching her. She can't just let him go. Soon another man approached him. He told the girl that they had important things to do. If those people caught up with them, it would become a big problem. The girl looked frightened at her uncle. Fung again continued to whip alcohol from his throat. A few seconds later, a dragon landed on the ground next to them. This, in all likelihood, was their transportation. Some distance away from them lay the protagonist, the ground beneath him sagging from such a forceful impact. His mouth was bleeding. The guy was still unconscious and barely breathing. The girl standing on the dragon's back looked down at him with disgust. She turned to him one last time and squeamishly said that now he would just lie there and die. The dragon flapped its wings a few times and flew upwards. The protagonist was left all alone. Thank God those crazy people flew away. Now all he had to do was come to his senses. 
The dragon disappeared through the forest. A few stars lit up in the sky. A few of them fell. There, someone didn't have time to make a wish. The dragon swiftly flew away somewhere far away, into the night sky where dawn was already beginning to break on the horizon. Two men were sitting on the dragon. One of them was drinking alcohol as usual. The older one I asked, what was wrong with that guy? Fung laughed and asked why he thought that. The princess sat between them and looked at one and the other with an uncomprehending look. The man replied that he had known him for years of you. Does he think he can hide anything from him? The girl, frightened and surprised, asked her uncles, What are they talking about? It seems that they are not telling her something. Fung showed his hand and said that the moment he hit that kid, he cut him in the palm of his hand, and he has no idea how this kid couldn't do it. Does he really move with that kind of speed? The girl didn't understand anything. This damn pervert is weaker than her, but he was able to hurt her uncle? Uncle Yun asked, How could a guy who had only recently become a saint be able to injure him? Speaking of which, his weapon was quite strange and he could control it from a distance. And there was also one other strange thing. The man hesitated and furrowed his eyebrows. On top of all that, this little brat was able to escape his perception of the holy power and get closer to the mistress. Fung frowned and began to speak. He's afraid that this guy's origin isn't that simple and there might be a huge power behind him. So he decided to let him go. It might not be that simple with him. The man frowned. The girl squeamishly hummed. She didn't like hearing that. And what power could compare to their clan? Her uncle is too kind and speaks too well of a scum like this guy. Yun frowned again. Madam, let her not be so rude. Right now, they're not going through the best of times, so they can't afford to create new enemies. The girl showed him her tongue and her middle finger. Well, that's fine. It wasn't much of a stretch to say I don't know. But it was as if the man saw everything. He immediately turned around, and the girl showed another gesture. Okay, she understood everything. The girl was really scared, and her uncle was an incredibly strong man, and to cross him was like death. The girl sighed heavily. Just a little more and the unmentionable would happen. She greatly feared and respected her uncle. I didn't want him to be angry with her. The girl turned back for the last time. It was a pity she couldn't finish him off in person. A small annoyance had now settled in her soul, but nothing. She would surely get even with him. They were getting farther and farther away from this place. The girl thought that this pervert would not be able to survive such a wound after all. Life continued to go on as usual. Huge masses of water continued to fall down, dissolving into the river. The protagonist was lying on the ground and was barely trying to catch his breath. His whole body ached unbearably after being hit so hard. He closed his eyes and tried to regain consciousness. Damn it, the injury was too serious. He can't even move. It looks like this old man broke him into silver. If it wasn't for the sword technique, this was the end of him. Who the hell is that old man? Where did he get such strength from? The guy remembered how this stranger had drained all the spirit out of him with one blow. At that moment, the boy thought he was finished. The protagonist grasped his chest and felt his heart beating. If it wasn't for his technique at that moment, the blow could have been fatal. He still had the picture of the fight in front of his eyes. It made him feel cold inside. He angrily clenched his fists. Although he didn't die immediately, but now he only had to wait for his death. His body had become so weak that even breathing was difficult for him. The most frustrating thing was that there was no one around. No one could help him or even finish him off. Except he didn't want to die right after he could have gotten stronger. It just wasn't fair. So much energy. What is it? Suddenly he felt an incredible amount of energy spreading through his body, filling in all the gaps. Incomprehensible images began to pop up in front of his eyes. They were immediately blurred. The guy could not focus his eyes. It was like some form of holy power. Exactly. Could it be that after his perception was enhanced, he could see something new? That holy power looked very familiar. The guy felt something. He remembered something long forgotten. Something he had left from his past life. From the surprise and realization of everything, he opened his eyes as wide as he could. He remembered. It was the same light. It looked exactly like his mother's holy power. His memory flashed back to his childhood 
when his mother had treated him with the exact same magic. Light Saint Force Masters are able to heal by drawing on the energy of their surroundings. If he could use it, it was possible, and he would be able to heal his wounds. In any case, it was worth a try. He has nothing to lose. If he succeeds, he can survive. It's better than waiting to die. He touched one clot of holy power that was flying nearby, and as soon as he did, a pleasant chill began to spread through his body. It filled all his veins, all his veins. It seemed as if he was reborn anew. The boy opened his eyes wide. He was surprised. The feeling was so familiar that he had a pleasant pinch in his chest. Finally, he would be able to heal. While the protagonist was struggling to heal himself, several unknown dragon-like creatures were hovering in the sky. They came closer and closer. And riding on top of the dragon sat a man. The monsters flew, flapping their huge wings. Their riders were dressed in dark clothes, almost completely hiding their bodies and faces. A man, apparently the most important of them, ordered all the others to pursue them. It doesn't matter who's out there, we have to kill them all. His face looked incredibly cruel. It had a predatory smile on it like some kind of beast. Several flying dragons approached the foot of the waterfall. The water was noisy and fell with a rumbling crash onto the ones lying down to me, merging the rest of the river. The men began to jump off their animals and with quick steps head forward. Only their vague silhouettes were visible. No eyes, no physique could be discerned. You couldn't even tell if they were men or women. They walked backwards and forwards here, examining every pebble, but it looked like they were too late. There was no one here, no matter how many times they looked. At this time, the protagonist was hiding deep under the water, holding his breath as best he could. From beneath the thickness of the water that concealed him, he watched the vague silhouettes that wandered along the shore and seemed to be sniffing for something. There were only muffled voices, but apparently there were several men. The boy listened. No good intentions from these guys, but luckily, he had learned to dissolve his holy power into his surroundings. Otherwise, things could have ended very badly for him. Now that it's here, these people won't be able to find him. Suddenly the man swung his hand as if he had thrown something straight into the waterfall. A huge boulder flew right there, splitting the water, and crashed into the wall with a crash. The rocks flew down and began to fall into the water with a noise. But there was nothing there, except the stones and the water. The people continued to stand on the hillside and watched intently. The ringleader finally made sure that there was nothing at all here, nothing much in the water either. It looked like they had indeed escaped. The man in a loud and gruff voice ordered everyone else to set off in pursuit. Everyone else obeyed him and quickly jumped on their riding animals. The griffins flapped their wings a few times, and in a second, they were already high in the sky, rising above the cliffs. Xi'an lay deep under the water, and smirking watched all of this. He was incredibly curious. It was good that he was in a stable state, and they hadn't noticed him. All around him was just water and rocks with the occasional small fish swimming by. But to his horror, he saw that something black and very big like a stone was approaching him. The boy's eyes bulged with fright and he began to gasp with fear. He wanted to breathe, but his ribs cracked and he felt an unbearable pain all over his chest. There was less and less air left and the wave was about to crash over him. He could no longer stay underwater for such a long time. A huge rock fell right a few meters away from him. The poor guy couldn't take it after all, and opened his mouth to let out air bubbles. What a devil! He moved too much, and his mouth opened up again early. That really sucks. If he keeps this up, he'll just choke on the water. The thicker water was hiding him securely, but it looked like it was about to become his grave. Everything that could go wrong had gone wrong. He didn't think his life would end in such a ridiculous way. He became incredibly resentful of his indiscretion. He began to faint. His eyes slowly opened, and the first thing he saw in front of him was the beautiful faces of the girls who were looking at him worriedly with their big eyes. Xi'an tried to come to his senses. He opened his eyes, and he couldn't believe them. This couldn't be true. This was just a dream. His whole body ached. Realization slowly came. The beautiful girls screamed in fright. Master, he's finally awake. Could it be that he had fallen into every guy's wet dream? The guy started dreaming to himself. Suddenly, 
It was as if some invisible voice ordered him to wake up immediately. The guy immediately opened his eyes. What he saw, he did not like at all. There were no beautiful girls in front of him. In front of him was the face of an old man smirking evilly. There were several other bandits there. A horrible guess pierced his head. He had been found after all. What a devil! Who the hell are they? The guy jumped to the ground in horror and instantly came to his senses. The men began to talk to each other. One of them said they heard loud noises nearby, and when they went to check, they found him. Who was he? Why was he drowning? What happened out there? Was he caught in the act during the battle of the Holy Masters? The other man ordered him to be quiet. This I'm not yet fully recovered. Xi'an realized that it was his older brother's fault with his lewd books. The guy jumped up on the ground and stood up shaking himself off. A man said that his buddy was too talkative. Let him ignore him. Xiao Dao shrieked resentfully. Hey, he's just talking a little more than usual. The third fat man turned to the protagonist. So what happened to him? His injury looks very serious. The guy rubbed his bruised head. He said he dived into the water to catch some fish. And then something happened overhead and a bunch of rocks fell on him. They hit him and he began to sink. Soon, they came to the bottom of the waterfall where it all happened. It looks like the Holy Masters really fought here, so the waterfall looks different now. Indeed, the waterfall had changed its course, and now a large boulder stood in the middle of it. The protagonist noticed it too, completely destroyed. Who were those people? They had something to do with that girl begging sign the case was taking an interesting turn. Xiao Dao couldn't hold himself back. He turned to the main character. Brother, what's his name? Doesn't he want to join the fire mercenaries? Even though there are only three people in their group, in the future, they will definitely become the strongest mercenary group in the entire Blue Wind Kingdom. The boy looked at him with disbelief. Fire mercenaries? He had never heard of them before. The mustachioed man covered his mouth and told the protagonist to ignore it and not to worry. His friend was just kidding. The fat man was supportive. He said the guy could think he was fucked up and talking complete bullshit. Xi'an continued to stare thoughtfully into the distance. They don't look like the bad guys. He's still injured and doesn't know where he is at this moment at all. So joining them isn't such a bad idea. Besides, what do you have to lose? Xi'an approached them and good-naturedly said that he had nowhere to go. So if they didn't mind taking him in, that would be great. The men were surprised, right? Brother is really sure. Xiao Dao almost went crazy with joy. He was glad that the strength of the fire mercenaries grows tell them by the day. The mustachioed man looked at the protagonist and said that his name was Kendall, and he was the head of the fire mercenaries. Indeed, the man's eyes were not the same as those of the native Chinese. The fat man also introduced himself. His name was Hu Po, and he holds the position of vice leader. The man folded his hands in a gesture of prayer, looking a little comical. The last to introduce himself was a man with long yellow hair, who said cheerfully that his name was Xiao Dao, and he was the current leader of the fire mercenaries. The boy also smiled and introduced himself. He said that his name was Wu Jiang Chen. Kendall smiled good-naturedly and said that he was now a member of the fire mercenaries. Welcome. Xiao Dao was incredibly happy. He said that this guy would now be the vice leader. Hu Po resentfully looked in his direction. Hu Po said that guy looks much more trustworthy than Xiao Dao. Let them give the post of acting leader to him. The guy got angry. He has more experience, so he should be the leader. Kendall said, since that's the case, this new guy will be the second vice leader. They started bickering amongst themselves, and the main character laughed heartily. These guys didn't look bad. Besides, they were cute and even funny. Joining their group wasn't such a bad decision. The boy thought about it. These guys reminded him of his allies from the past world when he first gathered their group. He was asked if he became a leader in the future. Could they become vice leaders? Someone replied not to even dream. I guess he's the one who can do it. Even those very voices surfaced in his memory. He remembered all the moments from his past life when he was gathering his past group and his companions were as shibur like these guys. However, he must not forget his ultimate goal. He must find the lonely old man to find out the truth about his rebirth and return to his clan as soon as possible.
He's already tried in this world for a ridiculously long time, Kendall said loudly to celebrate a new member joining their group. We should head to the mercenary market. Everyone agreed it was a great idea. The boy wondered, a mercenary market? He had heard of this place, but had never been there. Well, that would be interesting. The mercenary market looked rather strange. The structures there were unusual, more like large beehives. Birds were flying everywhere. Some strange things like big balloons were floating in the air. This place was unusual. The main character was here for the first time. He took a full breath and looked around better. This place was simply huge. A satisfied smile appeared on his face. He seemed to be enjoying himself here, but he shouldn't let his guard down. Kendall was in a good mood. He said loudly, Welcome to the mercenary market. Originally, this place was where mercenaries exchanged loot, and only much later did it become an actual market. The protagonist said admiringly that he never thought it would be so lively on the mountain. The mustachioed man wondered. He saw something there in the distance. As soon as the protagonist looked there, his jaw dropped. Oh no, shit. This is getting worse and worse. Damn it. It was the main character who was on the bulletin board. Xiao Dao looks exactly like their recruit. Pretty similar, it says here, that two people killed a second-class silver-striped gold snake. Kendall was simply shocked. He couldn't believe his eyes, but only holy masters could do that. Xian screamed, this sucks. He didn't think the news would spread so quickly. Gotta trick these guys somehow. He called out to them, he said, what had only recently become ordinary light. How could he kill a silver-striped gold snake? Suddenly, they looked at him as if they wanted to tear him apart right now. What greedy eyes these people had. The guys looked at the protagonist with contemptuous glances for a few more moments. They didn't quite seem to trust him. But things got around here. They began to say that a holy master capable of such a thing would definitely not have drowned you. It's just someone very similar to this guy. The protagonist sighed heavily. It was a close call, but he was blown away. Xiao Dao Said that it would be great if such a master joined them. The protagonist realized that it looked like he was able to fool them. Yes, it was basically not such a difficult task. These guys clearly didn't have much brains. Kendall meaningfully raised his finger up and advised the protagonist to disguise himself differently, or people will think that he is the guy who hangs on the bulletin board. The protagonist threw a hood over himself and thanked the mustached man for his advice. And now, it's time to spend the money. Their eyes lit up with lust for fun. It was obvious that these guys really liked to have fun. Hu Po was the only one who tried to think rationally. They're just going to waste it again. But no one seemed to listen to his voice of sanity. They started buying stuff because it was free money. They were very fond of spending it. They bought everything they could get their hands on. There were a few books on the shelf. The salesman was calling out to his customers. Buy one, get the second one as a gift. Unbelievable, what wonderful discounts of 50% off on everything. There were many delicious dishes of freshly cooked animal meat in the store. The mere sight of it already made me drool. Xiao Dao looked at the leader and said that he had saved up so much money, and now he could buy something for his sister and Mira. The man blurted out a smile. It's already been half a year since he's been home. Doesn't even know if his daughter will call him father. He turned around and told the protagonist to buy whatever he wanted. If he didn't have enough money, he could add more. The guy thanked them, but he doesn't need anything. Xiao Dao. Even cried a little. The leader is too biased. He never lends him any money. Hu Po was holding a few loaves of bread and a piece of meat. He said that if you gave him money, he would blow it on food. What a talker. The leader said Fatty is right. He will never give Xiao Dao money. They are so friendly, the guy went behind and watched their cheerful company. Looking at these people, he himself was getting warm at heart. Suddenly, he felt a strange sensation in his whole body, as if his body began to be pierced by lightning. It felt like he was summoning a weapon. He didn't do that. The guy looked at his hand in surprise, which was already concentrating magic. Why did you his sword awaken by itself? Something seemed strange to him. It seemed as if it was happy. The guy opened his eyes in surprise. This energy has its own consciousness? How is that even possible? Soon they came to a market where there were many animals and a variety of goods. Could it be that the energy was attracted by something nearby? 
He approached a shop with a strange vendor who was selling some trinkets. The vendor looked strange, and he was wearing some fancy clothes, sitting in a lotus posture, and looked more like some kind of frog. The man seemed to be asleep, for from under his hat came an audible snore. A strange stone was lying on a soft bedding, and it sparkled brightly, casting bright reflections from the sun. The protagonist had never seen such stones before. It looked strange, and it was an unusual color. He squatted down and scrutinized it closely, studying the funny object. All the while, the stone continued to glow. Xi'an realized that the unusual feeling of his strength was due to this particular stone. The longer he looked at it, the more he became convinced of it. The stone continued to glow and began to pulsate as if emitting rays of strange energy. The boy literally physically felt this power. He had never felt it before, and it seemed that his body would begin to tremble. He clenched his teeth tightly. Something strange was happening. What the hell was this? He had never felt like this before. It was as if all the insides in his body were starting to turn upside down. Power was literally oozing out of every orifice. He let his eyes bulge with incomprehension and shock. His energy was reacting to that rock again. The boy clutched at his chest, trying to hold back the incomprehensible feeling. His breathing hitched and his heart began to beat much more frequently. He had never felt this before. The protagonist grasped the rock with his hand. It was warm for some reason. This pebble is quite tricky. He had to get his hands on it so that it wouldn't become a stone. It gave off such power that his legs gave out. The boy tried to lift the stone, but it was incredibly heavy, as if it weighed several hundred kilograms. Is this little pebble really that heavy? It's strange. This unusual stone not only radiates incredible power, but is also incredibly heavy. Xiao Dao was surprised to see their newcomer fiddling around the magic stone merchant. What was he doing there? Did he see something interesting? At this time, the boy was struggling to lift the stone from its place, but it was somehow so heavy that even moving it a couple centimeters seemed like an insurmountable task. Jian pushed as hard as he could, but the stone wouldn't budge. It was as if a number of it had grown into this small cushion. I, his hands felt a probable warmth and strength emanating from this stone. The inner strength began to rage. Apparently it was reacting to this stone. His whole body began to tremble from the overabundance of energy. The power of his ball began to react to this object again. Something very strange was happening. As soon as he touched this thing, the internal power started to increase. The merchant finally woke up, and noticing that the protagonist was interested in the item, asked him in a squeaky voice, Does he want to buy this stone? The guy looked at him in surprise. All this time he was so engrossed in the stone that he didn't even notice anyone around him. The merchant smiled broadly, two large teeth clearly visible in his mouth. He raised a finger up in the air. This is the treasure he picked up on the mountain range of magical beasts. The merchant said this with pride, emphasizing his achievements. Hearing this, the main character was surprised and listened. Mountain guy's magical beasts? Could this stone have something to do with the lonely old man? He needed to figure it out as soon as possible, because this thing could be a clue. The market continued to live its life. The sun was shining down its bright and warm rays on the ground. Everywhere one could hear the noise of people talking. The boy looked at the merchant in surprise and asked, What is this stone doing? Why is it that he calls it a treasure? The merchant grinned and replied that he didn't know that. All he knows is that this stone is very heavy and hard, and its holy power cannot be dispelled. The boy looked at the cloaked little man in disbelief. So he doesn't know what this stone is. The merchant waved his hands and began to justify himself. This stone conceals a mysterious but immense power. It can be compared to a beautiful woman whose face cannot be seen. As long as no one knows what she looks like, sharing will attract more attention. Although it was a strange analogy, it was also a valid point. The guy pondered. After the merchant's story, he was even more interested in this item. Even if this stone wasn't related to the old man, it was still able to awaken the sword energy in him. Perhaps it would help him become stronger. The guy realized at this moment that he had to buy this stone by all means. However, something was stopping him. There was one small problem that kept him from realizing what he had planned. The boy gritted his teeth in anger. 
He had given all of his money to that trickster Mu Yun. He was ready to tear his hair out in frustration. How had he gotten himself into such a mess? Now he would have to give up buying this item. Xiao Dao poked his finger at the stone and looked at it in disbelief. What's so special about this pebble? It would be better to buy more meat. This man was only interested in food. Kendall walked closer and looked at the pebble with interest. He asked the protagonist, is he so eager to buy this? The guy scratched the back of his head and embarrassedly said, he really wants to buy it, but he doesn't have any money at all. That's why he's embarrassed. Kendall replied that it's okay. He'll buy it in honor of him joining the band. The man was incredibly generous as always. The man smiled and said with confidence that he was taking the stone. How much is it worth? The merchant smiled and said that the price was not that great, just pennies, only 1,000 gold coins. Hearing this price, all the squad members opened their mouths in astonishment. This was an unbelievably large amount of money. How could anyone even give such a sum of money for a magic stone? It was simply a robbery. The guys still couldn't believe that it was worth so much. How much what? 1,000 gold for some boulder? That's just barbaric. Hu Po shouted that this merchant just saw that they wanted this stone and overcharged them, right? The chubby merchant smiled and his cheeks glowed with a blush. He politely said that the price could always be negotiated. His voice sounded sly. This fatty was definitely up to something. The protagonist looked at Kendall with embarrassment and said that this purchase was something he'd better forget about. It was too expensive. He would be extremely embarrassed if he made his new friend spend so much on him. But the man was adamant. He said he had promised to buy the stone, so he would buy it. The man quickly threw the bag of money on the table and said that there were 830 coins. That's not a bad amount of money, he thinks. Immediately, everyone started to fuss. It's all their savings. How can he just give it away? The merchant immediately grabbed the bag of money and said it was sold. He slyly thanked them for their purchase. Well, that was the deal. It seems the little fat man was a simple charlatan. Zhang frowned and looked at the sly bastard with a formidable gaze. He would definitely pay the price, and the guy would get that money back. At this moment, he set his sights on getting revenge on this trickster for charging such a price. The guy kept glaring at the merchant with his hateful gaze. He's a common profiteer, but he didn't seem to pay any attention to the boy and clutched the small bag of money even tighter in his hands. As soon as their gazes crossed, a fear settled in the merchant's soul that it was a terrifying look. But he can't lose that money so easily. The little fatty shook with fear and clutched the tightly stuffed money pouch even tighter. In a trembling voice, he said that since they were so accommodating to his business, he was willing to make a small concession. Kendall wondered, what kind of concession? What was the meaning of all this? Why had the merchant changed his mind so abruptly? Smiling, in a shaky voice, he continued to speak. And it just so happened that he had information about the two-headed lynx. He took out a small paper bundle from his pocket and continued to smile playfully and held it out in front of him. As soon as Kendall heard it, his eyes widened in surprise. He couldn't believe what he was hearing. A two-headed lynx? A class four magical beast? Judging from the man's reaction, this beast was quite rare, and they were paying good money for it. The protagonist looked at the still trembling merchant in surprise, and why did he suddenly decide to give them so much valuable information? A menacing energy offered to emanate from the guy. The merchant chuckled again and replied that he wouldn't lie about the fact that this information was probably valuable, but it was already known to most of the important people, so it was only worth a couple hundred coins. He said that he really didn't think they would buy the stone, so just let them accept this information as a gift, a small addition. The merchant seemed to be very much frightened. Jian Tao immediately grabbed the piece of paper. Okay, since that's the case, they won't refuse. And his mood instantly changed. A wide smile appeared on his face. He had gotten his way after all, even though this freak had set an exorbitant price, but still they would benefit from it. After saying goodbye to the merchant, they set off. The little fatty continued to stare at them fearfully and quietly muttered a wish for a good journey. Xiao Dao studied the information with his eyes glowing with joy. 
At this time, the fatty sighed heavily. This time, he had gotten away with it. A few seconds more, and he would have been robbed himself. Fear continued to bubble up in his soul. This stranger was truly terrifying, and how could he have such power? He literally physically felt the approaching threat. The heroes were returning from the market. Since all the money had been spent, they could return home. Xiao Dao continued to lament, and after all, he had just entered the flavors, and it was all over at once. But it couldn't be helped. They still had no money left. The main character looked guiltily at the mustachioed man and said that it was her fault that they all ran out of money and couldn't spend it on themselves. The man smiled and replied that it wasn't worth paying attention to the others. He had only fulfilled his promise. The protagonist wondered, but if they could kill the two-headed lynx, they would recoup the lost money. Xiao replied that except that a fourth-grade magical beast was beyond them. It was too strong. Even if they all fight it, they would definitely lose. But it seems like the guy wasn't going to give up. Now that they were out of the market, it could stop hiding. He stuck a sign with his image on it on the nearest tree. In fact, he's the one on that sign. He was the one who killed the silver-striped gold snake. Naturally, no one believed him right away, but he denied it right away. It's impossible. Then how did he manage to drown? Their faces were bewildered and disbelieving. They could hardly believe that this kid had such tremendous strength. Of course, the protagonist was prepared to be disbelieved. His mouth stretched into a smile. Now he would show them all his strength, and they would definitely make sure not to underestimate him. He struck the tree with all his might, and energy sparks flew in different directions from his strike. As soon as the guys saw this, a grimace of horror appeared on their faces. None of them expected that the stranger who had just arrived in their team would be so strong. Now they were even afraid of him. At this time, the protagonist was triumphant. He had proved his strength. So do they believe him now? The guy looked at them with a glare. None of them noticed how they were already being followed at this time. Tree and stared straight at the group of friends. The man tried to be silent so that no one could notice him. It was the same man who had been hunting for the protagonist earlier. A triumphant smile appeared on his face. He had finally found the little freak. Now, he would definitely finish him off. All that was left was to wait for the right moment. His path was now straight to the market. He had to find out where they were going. There were many people in the market, and someone knew them by sight. The man headed that way. The first person he came to was the very same vendor. The man didn't bother to be ceremonious and beat him up right away. Little Fatty was on his knees surrounded by black-clad men and whimpered pitifully. He swore he wasn't lying. Did he really just sell the stone and the information from the two-headed lynx? At that moment, he really wanted to save his life. The man didn't even bother to listen to him. He grabbed him by his clothes in one deft movement and pulled him up with a jerk. The fat man had time only to bark and to close his eyes in preparation for another blow. The man shouted in a menacing voice that since that was the case, then let him give him the information about this monster, and then he might spare him. The fat man waved his hands and held out a small roll of paper to him. Of course, by pure coincidence, he still had such a copy left. The merchant wanted very much to save his life. He saw in the man's eyes only the desire to kill and realized that he should only make one mistake and he could say goodbye to his life. The man took the sheet and began to scrutinize it. He turned to the leader and said that this kid, along with the fire mercenaries, went to hunt the two-headed lynx. The man, covered by an almost transparent shawl, sat with his back turned to them. It looked like he was completely naked and taking a bath. The man rose to his feet and asked briefly, Is the other man not with them? The man bowed and replied that he received the information from his men and went straight to the market, but only saw this kid. The man smiled. They decided to split up. Unbelievable, but it was a smart move. The man stared at the piece of paper and asked the leader, what should they do next? The leader got up and covering himself with only one small towel walked out of the bathroom. He ordered in a gruff voice to find this guy and at the same time fulfill the order for two head lynxes. He wants them both. His henchman asked the man in a trembling voice what he should do with the traitor. 
The fat man was standing nearby at this time and continued to shake with fear. The man irritatedly replied that now the fat man was useless. We should get rid of him. He said this as if it were something taken for granted, and yet he was going to kill the man. His servant obediently embraced the screaming fat man, and the poor man just waved his hands. He was definitely having a bad day today. The man didn't even turn around and ordered the men to gather the men. They were now setting off on the trail of the squad. The man sat down on his throne and lolled around in a large chair. This time, he would not leave so easily. All of his servants bowed at his feet and obediently obeyed his orders. They were accustomed to obey their leader in everything, for they realized how cruel and unscrupulous he was. A light mist flowed over the high mountains, descending lower and lower. This haze enveloped all the surrounding space, hiding it from prying eyes. Somewhere in the distance, a sword swung and a monster roared. The huge, bear-like creature was bleeding, but the blows kept coming one after another. Seconds more, and the beast was defeated. The protagonist stood and looked at the result of the work done. The breathless body of the bear fell at his feet, bleeding. Everyone else looked at him with admiration. They had never seen such strength. So how to defeat it without doing anything? After that, they would definitely choose him as their leader. But the guy didn't seem to care about that. He smiled and asked them how it was that they could talk about such things so calmly. Kendall replied that the main character was too strong, so they would be of little use. But with their new brother, the fire mercenaries were solidly close to becoming the strongest mercenary group in the entire Blue Wind Kingdom. Their voices were filled with hope and delight. Previously, they didn't even dare to dream of hunting fourth-grade magical beasts. But now they couldn't wait to find a two-headed lynx. Kendall sighed. It had already been half a day. But they still hadn't found her. Hupo continued to scrutinize the map. This was the right area, after all. Maybe the merchant had lied to them. Jian pondered. Perhaps the two-headed lynx was too cautious. We should move on. Sooner or later, they would still find her. Suddenly, something rumbled loudly in Xiao Dao's stomach again. This man was constantly hungry. It seems even all the food in the world couldn't satiate his bottomless stomach. He scratched the back of his head and pretended to complain. Who would have thought being in a cheerleading squad would be such a time-consuming job? Why don't they have something to eat? Hu Po glanced at him and said that he was the nerdiest, but when it comes to eating, he becomes the most active. The main character turned around at them and said that he was a little hungry too. We need to rest a bit and get some energy. Soon, the aroma of roasting meat began to spread throughout the neighborhood. The boys set up camp nearby at the edge of the forest and started cooking. They squeezed the huge bear. For this, they needed to cut down some logs to build a small brazier. The sun was nearing sunset and the first stars were beginning to appear in the sky. Despite all the situation, the protagonist continued to remain vigilant. One should always be on the gull because they are still being hunted, and who knows what dangers they will have to face again. The bushes stirred, there was definitely something there. There was an incomprehensible noise as if someone or something was approaching them at a great speed. The boys were alert, something was definitely coming towards them. Could it be a two-headed lynx? If so, they need to be on their guard. The monster is pretty strong, and their level is so high. Jian prepared his weapon, charging it with magical energy. Everyone else also got into a fighting stance and prepared to reflect. And so there you go. To be honest, everyone except the protagonist was a bit afraid, but they felt more confident with him together. And now the beast is about to attack. The bushes rumbled even louder. The boys prepared to face the incredible monster. Everyone's breath caught in anticipation of the battle. To everyone's surprise, instead of a huge two-headed monster, a small kitten jumped out at them, stuck out its tongue, and playfully looked at them with its shiny eyes. The boys were shocked. And what was it? Could it be the monster? He didn't look like a huge monster that could tear anyone apart in a split second. Everyone looked at the little kitten in amazement. It was as if the kitten didn't notice them, but rushed straight to the fire where the meat was cooking. He ran past the friends with incredible speed. They did not even have time to react. In a few great leaps, the kitten was right next to the piece of meat, 
and jumping up even higher, he clung to it with his teeth and claws and began to greedily eat the glistening, appetizing piece of meat. This kitten seems to have come running here because of the smell of food. He began to nibble the bone with such speed that in a few seconds there will be nothing left of it. All he's thinking about is stuffing his belly. It seems to be a relative of Xiao Dao. Jiang looked at the strange cat carefully. What kind of creature is this? Where did it even come from? It jumped right out of the forest. It didn't attack. And it doesn't look like a level four monster. The guy thought about it. He thinks he's seen it in the Academy books. It's a golden royal tiger. The adult specimens are equal to level five magical beasts. His eyes lit up with anticipation. If they managed to find the adults, they could earn a hefty sum of money. Once the others heard about the class five monster, their eyes lit up with happiness. At this time, the little kitten continued to devour huge chunks of meat like nothing happened. It seemed he hadn't eaten for a year. No wonder they didn't find the two-headed lynx. Golden king tigers are their natural enemies, and it seems an adult nearby scared off all the others. The protagonist walked over and grabbed the little beast from the bugs. It wouldn't stop chewing a huge piece of meat. Well, he caught it, and it won't stop eating. What a greedy little kitten. The boy laughed. This picture made him laugh. Kendall's eyes lit up with happiness. This fifth grade cub, if he could tame it, it would become a valuable assistant. Suddenly, he was interrupted by someone's rough voice. A dark, tall silhouette of a man appeared from behind him. He approached closer and closer, a smile flashing across his face. This man did not bode well. Kendall turned around. I looked back in surprise. Who the hell is this guy? It was that commander. It seems this man had been following them since the market. The man smiled and looked at them with a predatory look. This man's appearance did not bode well. It was Captain Cross. As soon as the others saw him, a look of horror flashed across their faces. Apparently, they had met this man before and were well aware of how powerful he was. The protagonist bulged his eyes in surprise. How was this man able to escape his magical perception? Is he a great saint? At this moment, goosebumps ran through his body. Since this man has such power, it would be hard to deal with him. If they had to fight, they would definitely die. It was already deep night. The bright crescent moon appeared in the sky. Only the loud cries of forest birds could be heard in the distance. It was as if the boys were dumbfounded with fear. Their faces were covered with grimaces of horror. None of them could move from their seats. Mentally, they realized that this man could finish them off at any moment. Captain Cross stood nearby and crossed his arms over his chest, watching the others. This man reeked of death. It was obvious that it would not cost him anything to kill them all in one blow. Now, the protagonists were in great danger. If they had to fight this monster, they would surely lose. Suddenly, the golden tiger kitten started hissing and grinned, looking at the man. The kid looked at it with surprise. It seems this beast doesn't like Captain Cross either. The kid shifted his surprised look to Kendall and asked him, did he know this man too? The guy only looked forward fearfully. He is the commander of the second regiment of the Joe Mercenary Group, said the man in a trembling voice. Captain Cross began to speak. He calmly said that the protagonist may not know anything about him, but he knows a lot about the kid. The protagonist didn't understand anything. What was he babbling about? The man, as if not paying attention, continued talking. He said that the protagonist had stolen a silver-striped gold snake from his people. Before him, no one had ever dared to steal from Joe mercenaries before him. The man's voice sounded angry. He was clearly annoyed. The boy wondered, so those freaks were his men? And what does he want him to return the snake? Guy had already mentally prepared himself to have to fight this man. The captain smiled and said in a predatory voice that the boy underestimated him too much. Behind the captain's back, several people in black robes had already appeared. They were obviously his servants. Indeed, he would never come alone in his life. He was already surrounded by the rest of the mercenaries. All right. We should have forgotten about the silver-striped golden serpent. It's just a second-class door. The man said it with a kind of indifference, but it seems there's no fight to be had now. One of the captain's henchmen replied that the snake was worthless compared to the fifth-grade beast in the boy's hands. The captain continued to stare at him with a greedy look. It was evident that he was determined to take their prey away from them, whatever it became.
Somewhere behind, hiding in the bushes, someone already prepared to draw a bow and release an arrow directly at our heroes. No one could see it yet, which gave the man the opportunity to strike stealthily from the back. There was a loud whistle, and the arrow flew forward, cutting the air with its sharp tip. The man was sitting far away in the bushes. No one could see him. He was also dressed in a black uniform. Obviously, it was one of the henchmen of Captain Cross. Kendall turned around and looked back with horror. The man heard something approaching him. Upon seeing the arrow, a grimace of horror appeared on his face. The man realized that something irreversible was about to happen. He shouted for the others to be more careful. Grabbing his friends, he quickly threw them aside, thus saving them from impending doom. The arrow flew past them at a rapid speed, leaving behind a plume of magical energy. The friends gritted their teeth in anger, attacking from behind? That's despicable. Since he is so brave, let him come down and fight fair. Xiao Dao had already said goodbye to his life. He was ready to die at this moment. The guys were very frightened by such a sudden attack. The protagonist frowned. He also felt guilty for getting his new friends into such a mess. This has nothing to do with them, so let them leave, and the boy will hold these freaks back. The boy looked sternly ahead. He had already prepared to fight these bastards. Kendall shouted and shook his head. What is he talking about? He's a member of a group of fire mercenaries. They would never abandon their own. All confirmed, that's right. They'll beat the crap out of them. Even though their forces were not equal, they were filled with determination. Kendall glanced at the captain of the cross. The man was not going to give up. Even though he was stupid and naive, he would never abandon his own. The man took a fighting stance and began to make a heartfelt speech. His voice became rough and confident. If their brothers are in danger, it is they who will fight back together. All the members of the group prepared to fight shoulder to shoulder. These men would never abandon their friends in trouble. A fleeting smile appeared on the protagonist's face. He was very glad that he had joined this group. It reminded him more and more of his comrades from his past life. Well, it would be much easier for him now. Guy got ready and told the others to deal with the rest of the mercenaries and let them leave the cross captain to him. Everyone nodded affirmatively. The protagonist continued to hold the little tiger cub in his hands, which waved their paws and hissed belligerently. Captain Cross noticed this and grinned predatorily. The man was in anticipation of killing these insolent here and now. He shouted to his henchmen to kill these idiots now. Several black-clothed men rushed straight at the company of our heroes. Now the battle would begin and their lives would depend on it. Kendall swung his huge fist, which had knuckles on it. With one powerful blow, he knocked down one of the mercenaries. There was a crunch of breaking bones. It looked like he had broken his jaw with such a powerful blow. Hupo also did not lag behind. He swung his small dagger and slashed the bodies of the mercenaries one by one. Blood flew in different directions. Even though Xiao Dao was just an ordinary glutton and braggart, he looked intimidating in battle. He had amazing fighting skills, deftly dodging oncoming blows by parrying them and following up with his point-blank lethal jerks. The protagonist began to accumulate magical holy power within himself. His main target now was this Captain Cross. He planned to slay this freak with one blow. Making one quick leap, the guy pushed himself off the ground, and overcoming obstacles rushed straight at the captain. This man was not to be underestimated. He was very dangerous. You had to be ready for anything. The little tiger did not expect such a leap, and squealed being in the hands of the protagonist. The captain still stood with his arms crossed on his chest and waited patiently. He watched every movement of the protagonist. This guy seemed very strange to him. Why is he attacking head on? At this time, the guy wasn't thinking about anything at all. He was only concentrating on his one goal. He had to summon all his strength together to deliver one big point-blank blow. It would determine whether he survived or not. It was as if the captain was mocking him. A wry smile flashed across his face, and why doesn't this idiot duck? Is he sick of living? Jian jumped high up, and swinging his sword, which was already overflowing with energy, he shouted for the captain not to look down on them. I another second and he would deliver his crushing blow. The man stood there the whole time and didn't even think of moving. A split second later, there was a deafening rumble. The boy's blow came straight at the target. 
The man didn't even dodge. Rock splinters and clouds of dust flew in different directions. When the dust cleared, the boy stood and held his sword, which was leaning against the body of the captain of the cross. But to everyone's surprise, despite the full force of the blow, the man didn't even move. The ball was just resting on his shoulder. The blade couldn't even do the slightest damage to him. Not even the slightest scratch was left on his body. The sword just lay there as if it had hit something incredibly hard. It looked like this man's body was covered in some sort of magical armor. The guy was holding the sword and didn't understand anything. How was this even possible? He had put all his strength into his strike, and the sword didn't even scratch him. At this moment, he realized that his opponent's entire body was covered in armor. The captain stood with his arms crossed over his chest and looked at the boy contemptuously. He was beginning to tire of this childish game. The captain smiled and said that it was right. His holy weapon was different from the others. He looked at the boy the way a parent looks at a hapless child. An ironic smile continued to gleam on his face. The man felt his superiority, and now he would use it. A second later, his entire body was covered in armor made of an incredibly strong material. It was a complete covering of holy armor. When the man was in his armor, no weapon in the world could destroy it. He stood in front of the protagonist with his arms spread out in different directions. He looked like some otherworldly demon. There was an incredible magic power emanating from his entire body. It looked like it would be quite difficult to defeat him. The protagonist stood in front of him, but he didn't tremble in fear. He smiled as well. Looks like he'll have to use a different method. It didn't seem to embarrass him at all. Yes, this man had armor, but no one canceled this fact that the boy wasn't fighting at full strength. The captain laughed. Does this brat really have a second plan? He treated his opponent with contempt as he realized that this brat would not be able to defeat a strong opponent like him. The man grasped his ghostly weapon and asked, Will the boy give up and admit defeat, or perhaps run away and leave those assholes behind? The man slammed his fists together, and it seemed even the very air around him vibrated with magical power. The kid smiled and looked at the kitten, who was wandering around with a frightened look. The kid smiled and said pitifully that he could only sympathize with this kitten. The poor thing continued to flutter in his arms, awaiting its fate. Guy swung to throw the poor kitten far forward. He asked, does the captain want to deal with them or get his hands on this prey? Not a second later, the boy swung and threw the poor kitten far forward, and it flew with a shriek of terror into the bushes. The captain turned around in surprise and looked at him. He had not expected such a turn of events. The captain was furious. He really did not want to lose such a valuable cargo. He had to find this kitten as soon as possible because it is worth a fortune and this impudent man would just ruin him now. The captain turned around and ran in the other direction to look for the kitten. Lastly, he shouted that as soon as she goes, Tiger, he will come back and kill them all. The boy smiled and shifted his gaze back. Without the cross, the remaining mercenaries posed no threat. He would deal with them in a split second. All that was left was to help his boys deal with the rest of the mercenaries. The captain continued to chase after the kitten which was running headlong into the bushes. Although the man ran fast, but he could not catch up with this little bastard, his breath was getting short, and his strength was slowly leaving him. The kitty didn't think of stopping. The captain was breathing heavily. How could this cat be so fast? It's just an ordinary kitten. The captain shouted for the scoundrel to stop, and jumped directly after him into the nearest bushes could not miss such prey. After all, he is worth a fortune. But suddenly... Somewhere in the bushes, someone's comfortable growl was heard. There lay the carcass of some bear-like creature, with a bloody silhouette standing on top of it, apparently devouring its prey. Powerful jaws with long, sharp teeth deftly tore off pieces of meat from the rest of the body. The whole face of the creature was bloody. It seemed to be the parent of that little tiger cub, its violet eyes gazing greedily at its prey and devouring it faster and faster. Hearing a pitiful meow somewhere in the forest, the tiger stopped eating and raised his head listening to all the sounds around him. This pitiful meow seemed very familiar to him, and his maternal instinct naturally kicked in. The tiger looked in the direction of the sound and grinned his toothy maw. He heard something, and the sound seemed very familiar. 
The tiger roared with anger and opened his terrifying, toothy mouth. His eyes were bloodshot and blood-red in color. Now he was ready to tear anyone who dared to harm his child. At this time, the guy continued to fiercely fight the oncoming mercenaries. Although there were many of them, but to cope with them was no problem. Without their captain, they are just a bunch of losers. Jian clenched his teeth and chills ran down his spine as he realized whose roar was that. He understood whose roar it was. The others stopped fighting and began frantically looking around. Is there some kind of monster approaching them? A huge beast came out of the nearby bushes with a crackling sound and rushed straight at the group of fighting men. With quick leaps, it approached and rapidly shortened the distance. After a few seconds, it opened its huge maw and grabbed one of the mercenaries and threw him to the ground. The man only managed to give a squeeze, and blood spatters flew in different directions. Xiao Dao watched in horror as the huge beast mauled his recent rival. Another monster appeared from somewhere. It looked like a huge bull. Its entire body was covered with horns, and its mouth was also covered with sharp fangs. The monster was breathing heavily and staring at its victims. Those who so recently wanted to attack the protagonists were now shaking with fear themselves. A man screamed that this monster was being controlled by someone. In front of him lay the mangled body of one of their minions. There were pools of blood everywhere. The sight was truly horrifying. But suddenly, the entire friendly company opened their mouths in surprise and horror. They had seen something that directly threatened their lives. A whole horde of goosebumps ran down their backs. At that moment, they realized that now they would all be finished. On a small hill sat a huge monster. It was the king of tigers. His silhouette against the night sky was simply terrifying. With an incredible magical power emanating from his body, the monster bared its teeth. We had to run away from here as soon as possible. The entire company of fire mercenaries rushed towards the duck and begged the protagonist to help them. They were already being chased by several monsters. The guys had to act quickly. Otherwise, their friends would simply be torn to pieces. He twitched and used his strongest spell, the smell of blood in the air. The guy swung his sword, cutting the monsters one by one. He moved as fast as he could to save his comrades as quickly as possible. After landing on the ground, he breathed heavily and said that the king of tigers was already too close. They should leave immediately. Otherwise, they will all die here. Everyone nodded understandingly. The guys realized that the best option now was to retreat. No one thought to argue with the protagonist. Everyone agreed that John would now be their leader. The guy looked around fearfully. More and more magical beasts were approaching here. The Tiger King seems to be very worried about his cub. Kendall said that the cub is not with them now, so they are safe, right? Those mercenaries were killed without this. We should get out of here as soon as possible. Xiao Dao was right. The guy pondered for a moment. If his perception was to be believed, it was this side that had the least number of magical beasts, so we should run over there. The main character's magic sense told him that there were only cute, harmless beasts in that side, so they had best run over there. The night sky was serene, and only below were the sounds of a monstrous battle that shook the entire nearby forest. A large, horned shadow was approaching, advancing farther and farther down the road into the forest. It was Captain Cross. He had succeeded in catching the little cub after all and was now holding it tightly by the scruff of the neck. The poor tiger cub was crying and was wrapped in some rags and had a gag in his mouth too and could not call to his mother for help. There should be the least beast here so he should be safe. The captain looked around. Suddenly something whistled in the air. Bright flashes of red appeared. The captain became wary. Someone was on his trail after all. He smelled that odor and immediately thousands of goosebumps went through his body. The man knew for sure that this soft footstep belonged to a large predator. He turned and looked back with horror. Before him stood a creature of incredible size. It was exactly the royal tiger. Its eyes were glowing in fierce red light, and its mouth was probably not 1,000 sharp teeth. Its entire body was covered in thick, lush fur, and a long tail fluttered behind it. The captain, compared to this creature, looked just tiny. He continued to hold the little cub that was pulling from its paw towards its mother. At that moment, the man felt something inside him.
He realized that now he was going to die. He had to run away as soon as possible. Now he finally realized why there were no magical beasts nearby. The captain was scared to death. He realized that this beast was serious competition for him and he couldn't handle it alone. The beast roared, and its body began to overflow with magical energy. The Tiger King had been here the whole time. He had been watching him the whole time. But how? Such a huge carcass went unnoticed. The poor kitten kept complaining meows and pulling his little paws towards his mother. He already felt that rescue was near and wanted to be at home as soon as possible. The man shouted for the tiger to stay away or he would kill the cub. The huge tiger sighed heavily and let out puffs of smoke from his nostrils. He looked at the man with eyes red with rage and was ready to tear him apart this very second, but he was very worried about his cub. The commander gritted his teeth. If this continues and continues, he won't be able to restrain this thing and he won't be able to escape. We have to think of something. Suddenly, from the back of the bushes came a shriek and the captain heard quick footsteps coming straight toward him. The man turned his head in the direction of the sound. A satisfied smile stretched across his face. Someone is coming this way. Would he really have a chance? It was a company of fire mercenaries. They were running away to escape the monstrous creature. They didn't realize they were running straight into a trap where the Tiger King was waiting for them. The protagonist noticed too late that they had run to the wrong place. His eyes widened with surprise and fear. What a devil. They had run right into the trap. He put his hands out in front of him and ordered his friends to stop. There stood the king of the tigers after all. Now he could see why there weren't any magical beasts here. The boy stopped and breathing heavily looked forward in horror. Suddenly, from the nearest bushes appeared Captain Cross, who jumped incredibly high and swinging shouted that he had something for them. The man seemed to float in the air. A small bundle flew at them, cutting through the air. The man swung and threw it with such force like it was some kind of basketball. Xiao Dao caught the bundle and immediately felt that it was incredibly warm. The protagonist looked at it in surprise. I think I can already guess what was in that bag. Captain Echidna smiled and said that they would now become scapegoats. Now, the man will leave with a clear conscience, and these idiots will be torn to pieces by the magical beasts. The sack moved and began to meow pitifully. After a few seconds, the rope came undone and the face of a small kitten appeared. The main characters were horrified. It was a baby golden tiger. Now they're dead. What a bastard. Zhao Dao. Continuing to stand like a stumbling block and holding the little cub in his hands, the protagonist shouted for the guy to drop it immediately. Behind his back, the terrifying muzzle of the royal tiger had already appeared and opened its huge maw to grab its prey. Hu Po shouted for his comrade to be more careful and rushed to his friend's aid. He jumped up and put his arm out in an attempt to push his friend out of the line of attack. He succeeded, but at what cost? Blood splattered in different directions, and there was a crunch of breaking bones. Xiao shifted his trembling gaze back and was horrified to see that his comrade was dead. No one could believe it. For a few seconds, the protagonist stood in a complete stupor. He couldn't believe what had happened, that little fatty had sacrificed himself to save his friend. A look of horror and incomprehension flashed in his eyes. After a few seconds, he realized the irreparability of the situation. Kendall screamed and opened his eyes in horror. The man could not believe what had happened. His heart skipped a beat for a moment. Everyone screamed in horror, but the poor man was already dead. The tiger had bitten his body in half, and now one half of it was flying down, splashing blood in different directions. The poor guy fell to the floor with a squelch. Everyone was looking at him, and I didn't dare to come closer. The fellow was breathing heavily. There was still the last bit of life left in his body. Xiao still couldn't believe it. He just stared at his dead comrade with his eyes bulging, horror, grief, and anger raging in his soul. He realized that right now, one of them was going to die. Hu Po screamed with all his might for the others to run away. Blood was flowing from every orifice. He was literally choking on it. The life was slowly leaving the poor man. He had already closed his eyes and prepared to accept his fate. Xiao shouted with rage. Tears came to his eyes, his mind was empty, and his soul was overflowing with anger. 
his comrade was dead, dead due to the fault of this horrible thing. He screamed that he was about to tear the thing apart with his bare hands. The guy no longer felt fear. He was like a berserker for whom there is only one thing, bloodlust. The guy fearlessly, grasping his sword, rushed straight at the monstrous creature, which had already opened its toothy maw to devour the prey that literally ran towards it. The boy was filled with rage to avenge his fallen comrade. Everyone started to stop him, but he didn't seem to listen. He ran, gaining speed. The guys tried to stop him, but to him it was just an empty sound. Now he saw in front of him only a target to be destroyed. He swung, but the tiger reacted in time and put his paw forward. The protagonist jumped forward and repelled the monstrous attack. He protected his comrade, as he realized that he would not be able to dodge such an attack. The tiger's paw was very heavy and fell to the floor with a rumble. The protagonist was able to dodge at the last moment to avoid being hit by such a monstrous blow. The boy landed a few meters away from the tiger and was breathing heavily. Xiao looked at him with frightened eyes. What was he up to? He's going to kill himself this way, right? The protagonist repelled the attack in time, but the strike was really powerful. His comrade looked at him with a frightened look over his shoulder. The tiger had already prepared to strike next. Its maw opened and thick fire fell from it. This thing can breathe fire too. Now it's going to burn them to death. Bursts of fire began to fly out in all directions, burning everything in its path. It seems that this thing had dragon abilities so it will be harder to deal with it now. The tiger stood on its feet, firmly on the ground, and breathed like a dragon. A huge fire sphere flew straight at the protagonists, a second more, and they will simply be incinerated. The guys shrank back and covered themselves with their hands to protect themselves from the energy power flying at them. Xiao cried out in fear, his insides clenching, and he was already prepared to say goodbye to his life. The protagonist grouped himself and prepared to repel the attack. A monstrous blow flew at them. The protagonist managed to stand and somehow stay on his feet, but his comrade, with great speed, flew into the wall and smearing blood on the stones went down. But adrenaline, which raged his blood, did not let him black out. This blow did not cause him significant damage. He just did not feel pain. In his brain, he had only one thing. He must avenge his brother. The death of a loved one cannot be forgiven. The tiger continued to approach them with slow steps. He could already feel his prey. Flames were flying from his eyes, and there were thick clouds of smoke around him. John told him that he was too seriously injured. It was dangerous for him to move or he would die. But it was as if the guy didn't listen to him. Blood came out of all his orifices, but he clenched his teeth and prepared to fight. The protagonist ordered Kendall to take him with him and run away from here and he would apprehend the king of the tigers. Kendall still couldn't recover from losing his comrade. He just leaned over him and looked at him with a completely devastated look. The man shook his head and said that it wouldn't be like that. It was the protagonist who would take Xiao with him, and he would apprehend the tiger king. It was his duty as the squad leader. The man couldn't forgive the fact that this thing had just killed one of his closest people for nothing. The protagonist shouted that the man was no match for him. After all, he couldn't handle the tiger alone. Kendall, without even turning around, asked, What about him? John replied that he could hold him off to let the others escape. But the man didn't even seem to listen to him. He was approaching the monster with a firm gait. Now there was no fear in his soul, although he realized that the opponent in front of him was quite formidable, but he simply had no chance to retreat. After all, he is the leader and must protect all the members of the squad. The man stood in front of the huge tiger and looked straight into its burning eyes. There was nothing but hatred and anger in his soul. The king of tigers rules the entire forest, and so to escape from him will have to descend from the mountain range. Among them, the protagonist is the only one strong enough to escape and take the others with him. The man shouted that as the leader of the fire mercenaries, he has a great responsibility and duty ordering him to take Xiao Dao and run away from here. The man didn't listen to any excuses. At this moment, an unprecedented amount of courage awoke in his soul. The protagonist looked at him in surprise but did not object. He realized that this fight belonged only to them yours. The man was determined to avenge his comrade and nothing in the world could stop him now. He squinted, 
and still agreed in his heart, the guy realized that this fight would be unequal, and the man would most likely die, but he didn't have much of a choice. The guy grabbed his comrade and ran in the opposite direction, lastly throwing to the man to take care of himself. Xiao Dao, and for all his might, tried to break free and said that he would stay with the leader. But the protagonist held him tightly. At this time, the man stood and, without the slightest fear, looked straight into the eyes of the monster. Xiao shouted for their brother to avenge them, but the protagonist held him tightly and clenched his teeth ran forward. He realized that there was no way he could help him because the leader had made his choice. Xiao Dao screamed and tried to break free. He was spitting blood and tried his best to help the leader, but the protagonist held him very tightly. The guy only had to watch as their leader fought alone against the huge monster. Soon they had moved far enough away to be in relative safety. Now they needed to regain their strength to continue fighting, or at least escape. Jian stood over the body of his wounded comrade and using his holy power tried to heal his wounds. Xiao was lying on the ground and was breathing heavily. He had lost too much blood and strength, and now he was on the verge of death. But the main character wouldn't be able to let him die. Zhao, lying on the floor, asked, Is he going to die? Fear could be heard in this question. The man's voice was trembling. He sincerely wanted to live and was clinging to the last strings of life with all his might. The protagonist leaned over him and shouted that he would be able to use holy power to heal him. Everything will be all right. Xiao weakened voice said that their brother was simply amazing. He can only do everything unlike him, and he is just trash. On his deathbed, he started talking some nonsense, probably already resigned to his fate. His voice was so weakened that it was barely audible in the silence of the night. Qian could no longer contain himself. Hot tears flowed down his cheeks. He couldn't let another one of his comrades die such a death. He shouted for the guy to stop. Just let him be quiet while he healed him. But unfortunately, it was too late. The guy's voice had weakened, and he was muttering something to himself. His last words were hardly audible in the beginning silence. He said, okay, fire mercenaries. Only the protagonist was left. As soon as the last words escaped his lips, the guy's eyes closed and his heart stopped beating. It was all over. The wounds were too serious to be healed by simple magic. The poor man died of his wounds. The hero sat over the body of his dead comrade for a few more seconds, unable to believe that he had lost another friend. Fury burned in his soul, and he could not restrain his emotions. Hot tears continued to flow down his cheeks. He had lost another dear person, though he had so recently gained something like a family. The boy naturally gritted his teeth in pain. There was an emptiness in his soul. Still, he couldn't help himself and shouted that he would definitely take revenge on the Joe mercenaries and Captain Cross personally for taking away their most precious possessions. The guy was incredibly furious now. He was like some kind of beast. Suddenly, from the thick of the forest, he heard a wrenching growl. The boy immediately realized it was the king of the tigers. It seemed that Kendall couldn't handle him after all, it was obvious. Now the boy was all alone. The king of the tigers was close, and the protagonist realized it. Something had to be done now, or the beast would find him quickly. The cracking of twigs was heard. Someone was approaching him. The boy clenched his hands into fists and prepared himself. If he couldn't defeat this thing, he would simply die. But he couldn't let their deaths, the deaths of his comrades, and be in vain. He promised his dead comrade that he would come back here and kill the Tiger King with his own hands. The lad was overcome with unbelief. He had pain in his soul. He could not forgive the fact that his comrades had died such a monstrous death. Jian rose to his feet and prepared to run. He had no other choice but to leave his comrade. Here he really hated to do it, but he would come nevertheless. Jian got to his feet and prepared to run. He had no other choice but how to leave his comrade here. He really didn't want to do that, but will still come. This creature was too fast, and the protagonist realized that he would not be able to fight back with his own hands. In that case, he could only run away. Breaking through the dense forest, he made a risky decision. It was necessary to hide somewhere, and perhaps then he will have a chance to make a crushing blow from hiding. But where could he find a place where the creature couldn't find him? He sprang from the ground and hid somewhere in the thick of the trees. 
Perhaps there the tiger would not be able to find him. Although the probability was too small, this beast knows the forest too well. The tiger moved quickly through the forest thicket. It knew it like the back of its hand. Sinister energy continued to emanate from it. The beast was looking for its prey, and it wouldn't stop until it had killed everyone. It was coming closer and closer. Its heavy footsteps could be heard many meters away. It felt like an army was approaching. The monster was breathing heavily, grinning with its toothy maw, and staring forward with its eyes burning with anger. The boy hid somewhere in the bushes and watched with horror as the beast prowled about, looking for its last victim. It's coming. He had to hide to keep it from finding him. Only then would he stand a chance of you finally killing the beast. The tiger walked a few more steps and slowed down. Now his footsteps were barely audible. It was as if he was moving silently. The tiger prepared to finally find his prey. He stopped just under the tree where the protagonist was sitting. The boy even held his breath so that the beast couldn't detect him. Now it was as if the tiger had gained even more strength. It looked really intimidating. The monster began to breathe heavily, noisily sucking in air with his nose. He was searching, searching for the last victim, and now if he smells the guy's odor, he will definitely be finished. Suddenly the monster raised his muzzle and looked up, right at the crown of the tree. He had probably spotted the kid after all. The beast roared, grinning into its toothy maw. His eyes lit up. He had found his victim after all, and now he had only to get to her, which would be no trouble at all. Opening its jaws, the monster began to gather energy to breathe forward again with its flames. A grave howl was heard now. It would release a jet of energy and sizzle everything around it. The protagonist has already realized that he has been discovered. He gritted his teeth and prepared a whole engine. If he doesn't get out of here now, only ashes will be left of him. The monster opened its jaws and a powerful beam of energy burst out again. It was so strong that it sliced a standing tree in half in a split second. The tree shattered into two pieces with a crack and began to fall quickly to the ground. Gian braced himself and tried to hold back the blow, but the monster's power was unbelievable. He gritted his teeth and bounced to the side. The bastard. One more second and he would just be finished. The guy watched in horror as the earth shook. He had no choice but to fight or run away. The monster saw him. Now he knew exactly where his prey was. He once again glowed his maw and watched the lad coming toward him with rapid speed. The monster realized that this bug was no match for him and that if he opened his jaws, the impudent fellow would be finished. Qian Yi did not think of retreating. He held tightly onto his sword and concentrated as much energy into it as there was in his body. There was only hope for one strike. If he failed, it was all over. Grasping the hard handle of his ball even tighter, he used the divine sword. There was a tremendous forceful impact. The sword overflowing with energy struck something hard. We can only hope that he succeeds. The monster quickly managed to react in time, and its eyes overflowed with blood. The monster didn't expect to be rebuffed so decisively. Suddenly, something didn't go according to plan. An invisible barrier appeared around the monster's body, and the sword hit it, just bouncing off of it. Guise was thrown back a few meters. The monster roared and prepared to grab him at that moment. The protagonist was only a few centimeters away from the toothy maw. The monster raised its muzzle and growled with even more force. This only made him angrier. The fangs from this angle looked simply terrifying. Each of them was as long as a man's arm. John was shocked. He had used all his strength after all, and he couldn't even leave a scratch. Is this monster really that strong? He held onto his sword tightly. The strength was slowly leaving his body. He realized that he couldn't go on like this for much longer. Just a few more seconds, and he would be finished. The monster was already prepared. He opened his mouth again to use the fire beam. The protagonist has only a few seconds to dodge. The guy watched in horror as death approached him. The tiger concentrated as much energy as he had at all, opening his maw. He once again unleashed an incredible beam of energy towards the boy. There was a whoosh and the crackle of breaking trees. This time the beam was much more powerful. It flew further, breaking everything in front of it, sizzling the trees, turning them into mere handfuls of ashes. The whole forest seemed to hear the sounds of this titanic battle. 
After flying a few more meters, the ray crashed into the nearest rock, and there was just the most powerful explosion. It turned out that this energy could sizzle the space itself. The mountain began to crack, and several large, deep cracks appeared on it. It would take a few more seconds for the entire forest to hear how powerful the blast was. A jet of energy rose into the sky, creating a dome in front of me. A few seconds more and there would be a monstrous explosion. Now it appeared space itself was shaking. Thankfully, the boy managed to dodge at the last moment. Now he was standing in a tall tree on a hard branch and watched a large explosion mushroom in the distance. This mushroom looked like a nuclear bomb. At this moment, the thought crossed his mind. Would he really be able to escape? The tiger looks incredibly strong. One attack like this could exterminate all living things in its path. He wouldn't be able to fight it alone. Where did the Tiger King go after all? The boy began to fumble with his eyes, trying to find the monster. The king had gone somewhere, and now he was probably somewhere nearby. The boy didn't have time to react before a huge clawed paw appeared behind his back. It seems that the King of Tigers was much smarter than it seems at first glance. This explosion was just a distraction. It took only a few seconds before the huge beast approached him almost silently, and from the back it brought its clawed paw. The poor guy wouldn't be able to dodge it in time anyway, and then it slammed into him, and he felt a monstrous pain spreading across his back. Blood spurted in different directions. The poor guy's heart skipped a beat. It seemed that now he would just die on the spot. This powerful blow threw him far away on the ground. The guy hit his back, and blood flew from his mouth. That was just impossible. How could such a thing move at that speed? Now was one of those rare moments where the guy almost said goodbye to his life. The monster seemed to be just playing with them. It was approaching the guy almost silently, releasing a puff of thick smoke from its mouth. It looked at him as if he were its victim. Fire sparks flew from its eyes. He had already brought his massive clawed paw over the almost breathless body of the protagonist, and the poor boy could do nothing. From such a blow, his body was almost exhausted. He had lost too much blood and holy energy. Now, his end would come. But then, his body began to emit some incredible energy. A shield formed around him. It was a kind of protective reaction. The body itself mobilized all its strength to protect its master. The tiger stopped his paw and looked questioningly at his victim. He glowered. It was something unfamiliar. Usually he was able to kill his victims at once. The tiger looked up with his bloodshot eyes and grinned his toothy maw. He saw a blob of energy descending from the sky. The air seemed to begin to electrify the monster prepared. A large purple lightning bolt descended straight from the sky to the ground, although there wasn't a cloud in the sky. The tiger continued to look up without taking any action. Suddenly, a holy sword formed from this lightning bolt and literally hovered in the air. The weapon transformed and now looked as if it was more powerful. The sword began to head downward at a great speed. It looks like this was the kid's plan to set himself up so he could then stealthily unleash its full power on the tiger. The tiger roared again. He was getting annoyed. He continued to look at his victim, not even noticing that he was in mortal danger from above. He relaxed because he realized that the boys were nowhere to go and he could enjoy the taste of blood. At the same time, the sword was only gaining speed. Magical power gave him even more fighting power, and now it was only necessary to wait for the sharp blade to descend directly on the body of the hated creature. Out of his last strength, the guy used his last most powerful attack. The air began to cut Squall's blade. The tiger continued to stand over its victim, and as if it didn't notice anything. At the last moment, his eye snatched out that a huge blade squall was moving towards him, but it was all too late. The speed of the ball's flight was simply tremendous. Tiger had no choice but to accept his fate. Moving just some amazing speed, he cut the body of the monster time after time. The monster roared, but could not do anything. In different directions poured rivers of blood. The monster screamed but now came his death hour. The main character had only one phrase in his head. Run! This is his only chance, otherwise he will just be torn here. The sword continued to fly in the air, magical bursts spreading from it, which filled the entire space around it, cutting the air like a blade. Suddenly, 
The energy transformed into a kind of spiral that began to approach the protagonist, infusing him with energy. Even though he was at death's door, he still had one more trump up his sleeve. He remembered absorbing the holy power that healed him from everything around him. And this time, too, he used this tactic. He began to absorb power from the environment. A vortex of holy energy formed around him. A pleasant coldness spread through his body. It was magic that began to heal him. His wounds seemed to heal themselves. The entire space around him was covered with the petals of an unknown plant. Clots of magic fell to the ground like rain. The guy slowly began to black out, his consciousness falling into oblivion. At this time, the nearest town was thriving. The sun was shining brightly, illuminating the surroundings with its warm yellow light. The town was peaceful. The small, neat houses lined up in rows, blending harmoniously with the surrounding nature. The princess was choosing her dress. She had already looked at several options, and now she was looking at them with satisfaction. The girl was satisfied. Now she will get what she wants. At this moment, the girl all decided, she will buy all these dresses. Her uncle said they should hurry and let the lady not waste time. The other uncle said she shouldn't worry so much. There are so many people here that even if people caught up to them, they wouldn't be able to find them. The sales clerk just glowed with happiness. No often she has customers like that. Suddenly, a man in a black hoodie approached the princess from behind. The girl didn't even notice it. The man came closer and closer and whispered that this girl was wearing his scent. Her uncles watched this and became alarmed. Who was this guy rubbing around their mistress? They threw up their dresses and dropped them on the ground and ran closer. What is he talking about? Who the hell is he? The girl looked at them in surprise. The two old men took aim to hit the uninvited guest and shouted for him to get away from the young lady. It seems that this poor man in the hoodie is going to have a hard time now. The man managed to escape at the last moment, leaving only a tattered robe in the hands of his pursuers. The men looked at each other. Had he escaped? Who the hell was this guy? The mistress was beyond pissed. Her shopping had been interfered with, and now she was furious. This girl was incredibly into fastidious. An unfamiliar man stood on the roof of one of the houses, sucking in air noisily, so he had also come to this world. The man's face appeared vaguely familiar. He stood and watched everything that was going on. This was the same lonely old man who had fought with the protagonist. Now his main goal was to find his opponent. At this time, the forest thicket was peaceful. The green crowns of the trees towered upwards, creating a small tent above the ground. The boy picked up a handful of ashes that were lying everywhere on earth. These were all pieces of trees. Strange, who could do such a thing to an entire forest? Goosebumps ran down his spine. He didn't like what he was seeing. His eyes slowly began to open, and a strange picture appeared before them. Tall trees went straight up, and the foliage on them was a strange yellow and white color. The protagonist screamed in fright. What the hell is this place? How did he get here? Where is he? There were broken trees all around. What kind of place is this? Where did the Tiger King go? The boy was in a completely different place. It was not like the forest he was in. The boy picked up a handful of ashes that were lying everywhere on earth. These were all pieces of trees. Strange, who could do that to an entire forest? Goosebumps ran down his spine. He certainly didn't like what he saw. All the trees were burnt. Was it the Tiger King who did this? Was he really that bad? All the trees were broken, and the foliage and the forest didn't look like what it used to be. The boy looked around. No, if it was the king of tigers, he definitely wouldn't be unharmed. This was definitely something else, although it was very much like some large beast had taken over the place. He looked at his wounds. The wound the king had left early was almost healed. What the hell happened here? He was completely healthy. It was as if everything had dried up in an instant. So if the Tiger King is gone, Kendall and the others need to go back. What happened to them after all? A wave of worry ran across the boy's face again. He remembered that the others had stayed there, and the tiger must have killed them. The boy walked a few meters and saw some small hills. It looked like someone had poured earth on them. Each of them had a stone like a tombstone. He didn't want to realize it, but that's what it looked like. The poor man walked closer to one of the tombstones and began to stare at the stone. His eyes immediately went blank. 
and it was as if something inside him had fallen down. Kendall surfaced in his mind, his benevolent, mustached face. He remembered his words. It had been six months since he'd been home. He didn't even know if the world would call him father. He remembered Xiao Dao and his cheerful, constantly cheerful character. The fire mercenaries would definitely become the strongest mercenary group in the entire Blue Wind realm. These words were once again imprinted in the main character's memory. Even if not for long, but they became his family. Tears flowed down his cheeks again. He could not hold back his emotions. He had lost everyone who was so dear to him. Now he was alone again. He leaned against one of the tombstones and hugged it tightly. The only thing he hadn't realized was that he was going to lose them so quickly. The boy cried and could no longer contain the incredible grief within him. He remembered poor Hu Po, who had heroically sacrificed himself and saved his comrades. He remembered his bloody face and the last words he spoke before his death. Memories swirled in his head like a whirlwind, filling all his thoughts. He remembered Kendall, who had so bravely rushed to fight the tiger, all the others to leave. He had acted like a true leader, sacrificing himself. He remembered the smiling face of Xiao Dao, who even before death did not lose his fighting spirit. He was the only one left of the fire mercenaries. The guy had already finally cracked up. He cried bitter tears. It was his fault for being too weak and unable to protect them. Suddenly, he took out a small one from his pocket and looked at him with eyes full of tears. After a moment, he cut his palm, drops of scarlet blood splashed in different directions. The boy stood in front of the tombstone, straight in his back. He clenched his fist and swore here and now with his blood that he would surely, no matter what, go back and kill the king of tigers and mercenaries to avenge his family, which he had so soon lost. There was no way to stay here for long. The guy took a quick step and headed in the opposite direction. He needed to find and kill this thing to avenge his friends. The sun continued to shine, lighting the way to the protagonist. He wrapped himself more tightly in his cloak and walked briskly forward. The guy didn't think that so many things would happen on the mountain range of magical beasts. Lately, it's been very difficult for him finding, and then losing close friends is difficult and hard. He made a decision. First, you have to go back to town and talk to Kendall's wife and daughter. It will be hard to tell them about the death of a loved one, but still have to. And then, yes, be more information about Joe's mercenaries. Suddenly, several figures dressed in strange clothes appeared in front of him. From afar, they looked like merchants, their bodies concealed by thick hoods. The protagonist missed them and tried not to arouse suspicion. He wrapped himself even more tightly in his cloak, but one of the men with a strange hairstyle turned toward him. He ordered the boy to stop and show his face. The man seemed to suspect something. Did he recognize him from the wanted drawing? The guy frowned. Now he's going to have to fight some freaks again. It's getting worse by the hour. But there was nothing to do, nothing to lose. So he turned to the stranger and revealed his face. Did he tell him that? In his mind, the boy had already prepared himself to fight these strangers. The man asked, does he see anyone else here? He came from the mountain range of magical beasts, right? The protagonist stood in front of a group of people who were almost completely surrounding him. The atmosphere was slightly tense. The boy grasped his sword but concealed it under his robe. One had to prepare in case these people decided to attack him. He looked at them with indifference and said, So what of it? The man with the weird hairstyle said that he's heading that way right now and sees that this guy isn't that easy. So let the main character be his guide. He promises that he'll get a lot of perks. And his henchman said with a smile that serving the young master is much more lucrative than being an ordinary mercenary. This is his lucky day. The boy pondered, another useless young master from a wealthy family. It was beginning to annoy him. He had already had a chance to meet these people last time, and nothing good cooperation with them did not bode well. He quickly turned around and said that I was interested in these services. The young master was taken aback at such words. He began to shout that it was a great honor to serve the young master. How dare he refuse? The man was simply furious. He had rarely had to deal with being refused and by some obscure mercenary. Furious, the man jabbed his finger at the protagonist and ordered his minions to catch him. It's worth teaching him a lesson or two. The men in dark robes began preparing their magic spells, and the boy didn't even think to turn towards them. 
The two men in the balaclavas jumped high up and brought their hands in an attempt to attack from the back. The boy clearly signaled that he wasn't interested and shifted his irritated gaze back. Is someone clinging to him again? What's the big deal? Can't you just leave him alone? It took literally a fraction of a second for the very people who had attacked him to receive a powerful blow, first one. And then the second man fell to the ground, blood pouring from their noses, killing them in just one second. The boy looked squeamishly at the immobilized bodies of the incomprehensible mercenaries and shook his hand off the blood. The young master and his henchmen opened their mouths in wonder. Who was this kid? How could he deal with them so quickly? I've never faced such strength before, young master. The man was furious. How dare that bastard hurt his people? Now he'll be the end of him for sure. The man uh, looked very proud and couldn't tolerate such insolence towards him. John. Not listening to all of his tirada, he had already moved forward while the young master continued to rant. The boy took aim to deliver one swift and precise strike. Not even a second later, the protagonist came close to the man, and the man had no time to say anything, but only put his finger forward. The boy moved with incredible speed. An ordinary person could not even see him. The young master had no time to say anything before he noticed too late that a hand was approaching his cheek to slap him. A few seconds later, there was a scathing blow, and the young master flew high up and screamed with fear and rage. He flew back a decent distance. The blow was quite strong. Now the little brat would finally shut up after all. His guards grabbed their weapons to teach the little stranger a lesson. They couldn't stand to see some upstart hit their master. Now they must take their revenge. But for the protagonist, they had no trouble either. It only took a few seconds before the rest of the mercenaries were already lying on the ground completely immobilized. He only needed one blow to immobilize those bastards. The sounds of blows and painful cries spread through the forest. The boy came close to the leader of the gang and knelt down in front of him. In a quiet and ingratiating voice, he said that he did not care who he was. This man has no right to tell him what to do. He looked at him with a look as if he was ready to kill him here and now. His look didn't express any emotion. Tycho Boy said that he was not in the mood right now, so let the man not make him get his hands dirty. The young master at once knew his ardor. He fell on his knees and with tears in his eyes began to plead with the master. He said that he had actually run away from home and wanted to go to the mountain range of magical beasts. He didn't want to offend him. Please let him spare him. The man was seriously afraid for his life. He held out his spatial belt to the protagonist and said, let him take it. He can take all the money, just let him let him go. The guy sighed heavily and agreed. So be it, he would accept this offering. The boy took the spatial belt and hid it in his pocket. He turned his back to him and strode back. At parting, the boy said he had one piece of advice. Let a man not think that he can do whatever he wants because of the power of his family. The young master bowed even lower and said he understood. But at this moment, hatred and anger continued to rage within him. He couldn't bear to be so morally harmed. A young gentleman, the son of an influential family, had just been insulted, and he would by all means take revenge. Soon the protagonist arrived in the City of Awakening. A large gate greeted him at the entrance, and the inside was bustling with activity. The first thing he had to do was to go to the Kendall family's house to deliver the sorrowful news to them. He really didn't want to do that, but there was no choice. His wife, asked the protagonist where her husband, begging sign daughter, looked at him with big blue eyes. On the wife's face, there was obvious anxiety. The woman realized that something terrible had happened. The main character lied. He didn't want to upset these people. He saw how worried they were about their husband and father. The boy put the space belt in front of them and said that Kendall had gone with the others on a mission to the kingdom of Gesun and asked him to deliver the money to his family. Then the protagonist turned to the little girl. He asked, her name is Mira, right? The boy said that his friend kept telling him about her. The boy said that this belt contained 10,000 gold coins that Kendall had given them. As soon as the women heard such an astronomical amount, they were shocked. Where did he get so much money? He never had that much in his life. A concerned woman asked if something had happened to her husband. The protagonist waved his hands and started to deny it. Let them not think he very important missions, and the employer was too generous. Suddenly, the protagonist, literally with his sixth sense, heard that someone was approaching the house. 
The footsteps were heavy, and there were definitely several people belonging here. It was the same young master he had met so recently. With him were more minions. He was demanding that the little fellow come out and fight him here and now. Jian walked outside and told his sister not to worry. Together with him, no one would touch them. The two women hid deeper into the house and watched in horror. The man looked at him with a predatory look and asked, Is he surprised that they haven't seen each other for a long time? Now there was fury in his breast, and he was eager to avenge the moral injury done him. The protagonist looked at him and quietly asked how the man knew where he was. What was this man even up to? Why is there no way to get rid of him? Is this from the belt? But after all, the protagonist checked it and didn't notice anything suspicious, then what's the matter? The man took his side and laughed. Of course, this stranger couldn't reveal the Tianshun clan's secret method. The boy squinted his eyes. It turns out he had underestimated this lousy guy. Well, now he would have to work hard to get these people to finally get off his back. The man looked at the two women who were hiding behind the protagonist's back and disdainfully asked, So it's his mistress and daughter? Let the guy not worry. Once he's dealt with it, we'll take good care of them. The boy clenched his teeth with anger and ordered his sister to take the world to the house, and he would deal with the bastard. The women looked at him fearfully but obeyed, and with a quick step withdrew back to the house. Another conflict was brewing again and the boy drew his sword and began to charge it with his energy. Since there was no fight to be had, it would save more lives. He couldn't let these two lovely ladies get hurt in any way. His sword ignited with energy and began to fill with power. The guy was transferring his holy power to the weapon to slay these freaks with one strike. In his gaze read incredible cruelty now. It was no longer the little boy who studied at the academy and good-naturedly treated everyone. These people were the first to ask for death at his hand, and suddenly the streets of the city were deserted. There was no sign of life left there, as if all the people of the mind had died out. The young gentleman smirked. Is this guy still building up to being a diehard? Now he's going to teach him some manners. Now they were in the majority. The man flashed his eyes and smiled. He folded his arms across his chest. This time, he had brought the masters in his family. Now this little guy would definitely die. And yes, indeed, there were a few more people standing there. One muscular man, another masked man, and a third in a dark robe probability, they were members of his clan. The boy sensed that there were two saint masters and one great saint among them. They certainly couldn't be called weak. He would have to struggle. He might not even be able to handle them. This little upstart was one thing, but experienced fighters were another. The man continued to laugh. He was triumphant as he realized that now he would definitely crush this brat. It's too late to run. After he kills him, that mother and daughter will be his. He doesn't mind girls of all ages. The guy didn't say a word, but only wrapped himself even more tightly in his hood. At the magical beast ridge, he had failed to handle his brother's defense, but now he couldn't let that happen. He began to accumulate magical energy in his hand. His brothers, the people most dear to him, had died right before his eyes, leaving an indelible wound in his soul. This could not be allowed to happen again. Now he must protect his older brother's wife and daughter. The boy prepared himself, and swinging his holy weapon, he pressed himself even more firmly into the ground, adopting a fighting stance. At this moment, he swore to himself that he would not let any of these freaks touch these people. Now these two women were the most precious thing he had. The young master shrieked. He ordered to grab this insolent man. We must make him realize that in Awakening City, no one dares to cross the Tianxiong clan. He smiled and felt his superiority. The man said that he didn't think the boy could handle so many people. The boy didn't even think about moving. He looked at how several people in black robes prepared their magic attacks and jumped right at him. He wouldn't retreat now. A strange magical aura began to form around his body. He concentrated all his power. Now his body was like a blazing magical fire. It only took him a fraction of a second to make a sharp throw with his sword. A distinct smell of blood hung in the air. People screamed and began to fall to the ground one by one. Now all of them were defeated. The boy swung his magic swords and prepared to attack again. Several of the men who had wanted to attack him now lay defeated on the ground themselves. The boy stood on his feet his body still calm, his breathing even. He didn't even raise an eyebrow when he killed those people. 
From his eyes came magical energy like lightning bolts. Now they were much stronger. The guy said he didn't care what this man thought. The young master was now seriously frightened, and so were his masters. How did this happen? He killed them in a split second. How can this kid be so strong? The masked man came closer to him and smiling good-naturedly asked him. He doesn't know who this man is, but he wanted to ask something. Why would he go against their clan? Could it be that there was some kind of misunderstanding? The protagonist didn't think of backing down. He asked, Does this man think that because he's so strong, he needs a special reason? He's just a traveling mercenary. Nothing more. He continued to stare at the young master, who was already shaking with fear. Besides, he wasn't the one who wanted to become their enemy. Some people are just too stupid and don't know when to stop. The young master shouted and pointed his finger at the protagonist. He asked, why is the man negotiating with him? Let them not forget that their clan pays them in exchange for their support. Just have them kill him quickly. 399. The masked man frowned. Since that was the case, he was the one who would have to be rougher. He crunched his knuckles and prepared to teach the boy a lesson. The boy did not think of backing down. He had already realized his weapon and said that it was time for them to stop talking and finally start fighting, because so far he sees only one thing that they are scratching their tongues. With one quick jump, he began to approach the group of malcontents holding his weapon in his hands. The boy had had enough of all the underdogs trying to stop him. Now he was determined to end this once and for all. In one great leap, he approached the masked man and swung his sword. His opponent was able to react in time to block the blow, but still it was hard for him to do so. At the same time, the boy had, besides his sword, a small dagger, which he immediately began to bring nearer to the face of his adversary. The masked man was very frightened. It cost him a lot of effort to dodge the boy's attack. He clenched his teeth as his life was on the line. The dagger was only a few centimeters away from his head, just a little more, and it would have pierced him through. At that moment, the man truly feared for his life. Although he managed to avoid the direct attack, but he had expended a lot of strength. This kid was unusual. He tried his best to fight him off. What was wrong with his speed? Why is this brat so fast? The man turned to his companions and shouted, Of what are they standing like pillars? Let them run and help him. He can't do it alone. The two men immediately rushed to the aid of their comrade. They themselves had a small sense of fear for their lives. But still, three against one would be difficult to stand. They would have at least some chance. The mercenaries all rushed at the protagonist together, but he skillfully dodged their otsos and attacked back. A man in dark clothes tried to swing his pole at him, but the boy quickly parried his blow. Eh, mister watching from the sidelines, he thought his mercenaries were complete nobodies. Three men can't handle some underling. This is ridiculous. But suddenly he shifted his gaze back to the house where there were two women who were completely defenseless at this time. The girl stood outside the door and watched in horror as the fight unfolded. Now no one was protecting them, and they were completely open to being stolen from. At this point, the twink had another idea. While everyone was distracted by the fight, he could quietly take possession of them. The protagonist only heard the woman's heartbreaking scream. She was begging to be let go. At that moment, it was as if something stopped inside the boy. He had been trying to fight off the three men all this time, but he realized that he had now left his most precious possession in danger. The woman screamed for the bastard not to touch her daughter. After saying that, the boy was finally convinced that the creep had gotten to them after all. He turned back and saw a dagger point glinting near the little girl's face. The bastard had managed to get to them after all, and now the defenseless girls were in great danger. The freak held the girl with his hands, putting his feet eye her face. The mother at this time seemed to be lying unconscious, and worst of all, perhaps she was dead. The man shouted, if the fellow didn't want this girl to suffer, let him get on his knees soon. The main character noticed this and shouted that let the man just try to hurt them, and he would cut his whole family out. The scumbag pulled the girl even tighter against him and laughed. Would his family endure? That sounded just ridiculous. He realized that the initiative was now completely on his side. The poor girl tried with all her might to break free, but the man's grip was quite strong. All she did was squeeze her little hands. Well, now they'll see how long this freak can play tough for.
Now the guy was furious, his eyes rounded. There was only anger and endless cruelty in them. He couldn't let these young ladies get hurt. He concentrated his magical energy even harder and shouted for the bastard to let them go immediately. Fire began to swirl around him from the excessive power. The man squeezed the girl's small face even tighter, and the girl gave a squeezed wheeze. He intended to strangle her. The freak pointed his finger at the protagonist and ordered him to drop his weapon, kneel down and beg him for mercy. The protagonist had no more choice. He said he would do anything if only the creep would let the girl go. The guy was just out of his mind with rage, but he had no choice. Either he would obey or those people would die. He couldn't let more deaths happen. He stood on the ground, and the magical energy continued to emanate from him. The man ordered him to move faster. The guy lowered his sword a little lower, but still didn't let it out of his hands. The man shouted that he still had the sword in his hands. Let the man throw it away now, or he would kill those two. Still, the boy had no choice but to throw the sword aside, and it flew backwards with a whistling sound. The scum cheered now. This kid was completely defenseless, and he would be able to kill him unhindered. The man laughed loudly. At this time, his little kunai flew high up. No one even noticed it. The man was too busy narcissizing himself. The boy calmly said that unfortunately, only this scumbag would be the one killed here among everyone. He ordered the girl to close her eyes. The little girl immediately obeyed and closed her eyes. The man didn't understand anything. What is this bastard talking about? At this time, behind his back, a kunai filled with magical energy flew straight at his head. At the last moment, the man turned around and still noticed that he was approaching danger, but could not do anything else. The weapon was moving at an incredible speed. All he could see was a rapidly approaching blade. The kunai was flying so fast that the human eye could hardly notice it. It was streaming magical energy in all directions. The man opened his eyes fearfully. There was nothing he could do but accept his fate. He was going to die. A few seconds later, there was a wet crunch. Blood splattered in different directions, and the weapon pierced through the body of the scoundrel. The mother turned her daughter's head away in time and cradled it to herself so that she could not see the horrible pictures behind her back. All the other henchmen of the master watched in horror as their leader died in a single blow. Now they had no choice but to surrender or run away. The master has been killed. The kunai returned to its master's hands. The boy clutched its hilt in his hands and continued to stare at the remaining mercenaries who were huddled around the body of their dead master. John Tiho said that they would be next. In the guy's eyes, there was only incredible cruelty and the desire to finish them all off here and now. The rest of the mercenaries watched all of this with horror. What should they do now? Did this guy really have some kind of combat skill? They just couldn't believe it. What was even happening now? He's the only one fighting them, and on top of that manages to protect those two women. Even though a horde of goosebumps ran down their backs, but one of them masked, man said, I need to panic. The young master was just being careless. Together, they're even stronger still. Everyone nodded their heads, though they doubted it. The man ordered them to attack and together that way they can defeat and. The guy wouldn't be able to resist them all at once. At this time, the main character just looked at them and didn't say anything. He prepared his weapon to deliver the final blow. It was time to call it a day. He had had enough of this. He grabbed the hilt of his ball and used the azulet sword technique. Raising the blade of the sword upwards, he concentrated all the magic power in his body. A sphere began to appear above the ball, absorbing the energy around it. It was forming at an incredible speed, and in a few seconds, all this power would rain down directly on the mercenaries. As it happened, the boy pointed the blade of his sword at them, preparing to release the energy sphere. All of the mercenaries trembled with fear. They had never faced such power before. The masked man who was commanding them shouted that this guy was too strong. We have to hold him back, while he reports back to the master. It seems his companions realized that they had just been betrayed. What a shame. They've just been left to their fate. The masked man was fleeing from the battlefield. He managed to escape without being hit by the barrage of blades. The rest of the mercenaries were instantly pierced by an infinite number of swords. What a devil. That asshole escaped. That's going to complicate things. The protagonist just looked after the fleeing mercenary. The boy thought if he were alone, he could easily escape. 
but he has to protect his wife and his brother's daughter. He couldn't just leave those two behind. A few seconds later, a rider appeared in the square with the others. These men were similar to the ones the boy just now had fought. Looks like the report got through after all. Jian sat in the same spot where he had fought, not moving not an inch. It was as if he had been waiting for them. The boy sat as if nothing had happened, leaning on his sword. He looked at the arriving men with a disdainful look. Someone shouted, let the master see. It was this man who killed the young master. The protagonist said contemptuously that at last they had arrived, for he was already waiting. The man jumped off his riding animal, which looked like a big bull. The boy thought, we need to buy more time so that the sister and her daughter can get as far away from here as possible. Naturally, the elder master soon arrived. He looked like his son, like two drops of water, only older. The man asked in a squeaky voice, did the boy know that this was his only son and the heir to his clan? And now the wretch had just killed him. The man's eyes lit up with anger. He looked like some kind of beast. His only son had been killed, and now he would surely take revenge. They stood across from each other, the situation getting more and more heated. The protagonist calmly said that his son is selfish, groups, and uses people like things. He just helped God take his soul faster. There is nothing strange about it. Having said that, the boy smiled broadly. As soon as the man heard this, he clenched his teeth even harder and angrily panted like some kind of bear. He couldn't stand the fact that some petty, insolent person dared to insult his family, kill his son. And now he's standing in front of him and showing off. The man swung his energized fist and shouted that he was God in Awakening City. Now he intends to finish the little bastard off. The man ran straight towards the protagonist at a great speed. The boy had already prepared his sword as he realized that now he only had to fight this man and hold him off as fast as possible. He drew his sword and fought back a strong attack, sparks flying in different directions. It took a great effort for him to stay on his feet. The blow was incredibly strong. The guy was horrified to realize that this man was a great saint master. His strength was astonishing. The guy wouldn't be able to deal with him even if he wanted to. The man roared like a beast. He screamed, the guy is only a great saint. How could he kill his son? He didn't stop. He kept asking, how did his son die after all? Suddenly, the same masked man appeared from behind him and said, looks like this guy has some kind of fighting skill. He didn't quite see it, but that was the skill he used to kill his son. The man was just furious. He reached forward and ordered the protagonist to give him all his combat skills, and maybe then he would let him die painlessly. The guy smirked and asked, Do all villains talk so cliched? That's just ridiculous. The man boiled with rage. In that case, the little brats are going to hell. He grabbed his huge hammer and swung it with all his might to finish Snotlout off with one blow. There was a loud bang. The ground shook under his feet. The protagonist dodged in time. The man's attacks, though strong, were terribly inaccurate. He bounced high up and landed on the roof of one of the nearby buildings. The protagonist was moving with great speed, and this man wouldn't be able to catch him. He sat on the roof and held onto his sword, the guy as if to taunt. He spread his hands and said that unfortunately for him, he had to go now. So let him excuse him. The guy used the azulet sword technique. He had to get out of here before that bulky guy tore the whole city to pieces. He had no desire to fight that asshole. The protagonist used the cloud walk to get away from the place as quickly as possible. He had to get as far away as possible so that the man couldn't find him. But still, mentally he realized that pursuit couldn't be avoided. The headmaster roared and ordered his minions to quickly head after this youngster. He can't just let him get away. This brat is just a little bug. The protagonist ran as fast as he could. His sister, along with her daughter, will take the western road, and he will divert the pursuers to the eastern road. That way they would be safe. It was the best idea so far. He jumped high up, and suddenly several flaming swords rushed at him from the very ground. The guy noticed them at the last moment, and it cost him a lot of effort to dodge this attack. A couple more seconds, and his body would have been torn to pieces. The boy gritted his teeth. This man was too fast. It would take some kind of loop to throw him off. The man was running at the same speed. He was already stepping on his heels. Very interesting. The kid is fast and strong. Well, he's going to play with him now. How long can this freak run from him? 
The man stopped and began to look around. The boy quickly swung over the huge fence and ran on. The guy quickly jumped over the roof and ran further down the street, needing to get away from this stalker as fast as possible. But he didn't fall a step behind. John jumped over the fence and quickly flew down. He landed on the ground, clutching his sword tightly in his hands in case any more of the man's henchmen appeared nearby. The boy turned around to see if a tail was following him. There was no one, so he could breathe easy for a few seconds. But suddenly, a few centimeters away from him, the wall began to shake. Bricks one by one began to fall out of it. The man seemed determined to find the shortest way out. After a few seconds, the wall cracked with a crack, and in the gap appeared the same type. He was just in a frenzy, eyes burning red fire. From a distance, he looked like a huge gorilla, but not a man. The guy quickly oriented himself and threw his sword straight at him. It flew splitting the air with its blade. It had to be contained somehow, or the kid was definitely finished. The man deftly deflected the attack with his hammer. He laughed, so this was his fighting skill, but he was already prepared for it. The sword bounced off and flew high up. A clang of metal rang out. Well, now he would see if this brat could do anything without his weapon. The man was triumphant. Now he would deal with this little brat. But it was too soon to rejoice. Who said the protagonist was unarmed? He thrust his arm forward with enough energy in it. The sword sliced through the air, whistling toward the man's back. He didn't even notice it, as he was completely engrossed in narcissism. He was like his son, after all. The man turned around. He was pierced by a horrible realization. He looked back and gritted his teeth in incomprehension and fear. Before, he had never seen such a thing. He saw the sword rapidly approaching him right from his back. At the last moment, he reacted and thrust his hammer forward to block such an attack. He succeeded, but it cost him a lot of effort. The man didn't understand anything. How could a holy weapon fly without any control? He had never encountered such a thing before. Now he was completely baffled, and how was he supposed to fight it? From behind the wall came the sounds of a furious battle. Every now and then, bright energy bursts erupted from there. A man clenched in his teeth lay on the ground and held the weapon that was approaching him with his last strength. The sword blade was already a few centimeters from his face. Now he guessed that's how the kid had killed his son. The protagonist towered over him and looked straight into his eyes. He said that now was the time for him to see his son. The boy swung his sword to finally finish the man off. He concentrated all his magical energy to deliver one last crushing blow. The blade came close to the man's back and there was a scathing blow. The man grimaced, but he didn't fall down and stayed on his feet. The protagonist didn't understand. How could this be possible? It didn't penetrate his armor? Was it some kind of energy thing again? The man smiled predatorily and said that he was the strongest user of the Earth attribute. He wouldn't be easy to defeat. A protective aura began to form around him that no one could penetrate. He turned to the guy and shouted that he was the one who was going to the other world. The man swung his axe with such force that even space itself shrank around him. He tossed the kunai aside, and the guy deftly caught it. The battle was much more complicated than the protagonist thought. It began to drag on. This man was much stronger than the boy expected. The man swung his axe again and prepared to deliver another devastating blow. This man had everything. I had impenetrable defenses and strong attacks. Also, to everyone's surprise, he was incredibly fast. Swinging around, the man struck the hammer with all his might at the spot where the protagonist had just stood. Blue-colored shards flew in different directions. The protagonist's eyes widened in surprise and horror. He realized that this man was much stronger than he thought. This opponent was not to be underestimated. Now the battle could cost him his life. The boy covered himself with his hands to somehow block the incoming damage. He could hardly stand on his feet. The huge blast wave almost completely covered him. Devil! This clan was much stronger than he expected. He would have to mobilize all his strength to stay alive. The man grasped the main character's sword tightly and suddenly felt something. He wondered, does this sword have your own soul? This was the first time the man had ever encountered such an unusual weapon. Suddenly, he felt a sharp pain in his hand. Something cut him very badly. The man yanked his hand. This sword was able to cut through his holy armor. But how was this possible? Until now, no weapon in the world would have been able to harm him. The man grinned 
and looked at his wounded arm from which dark blood was coming out in jolts. The boy stood across from him, grasping his sword and swinging it again, ready to strike. The man stood opposite him and looked at his prey like a beast. The man was surprised. His voice still continued to be menacing, but suddenly the boy heard a note of surprise in it. Kid, what kind of fighting skills does he have? Let him give them up, and he would no longer be responsible for his son's death. The man was offering him a deal. The boy smirked. How petty this man is. Just talking about avenging his son, and now he's going to backpedal? That's funny. Hearing such words made the man furious again. This guy has a lot of courage. As long as he can catch him too, it can make him talk. The man seemed to catch fire, gripping his hammer even tighter. The protagonist looked at him with a calm gaze. It was impossible to show his excitement. It looked like if he didn't deal with him today, he could forget about a peaceful life in the future. He stood in front of him preparing his sword to attack. The battle would certainly be difficult, but there could be no mistake. The man shouted again, swinging his huge hammer. He knows he can't handle it. Is he trying to resist? This guy is brave but stupid. The protagonist told him to stop talking. We have to attack. The man didn't wait long. He swung his hammer to flatten the annoying moth once and for all, but the guy dodged with incredible speed. The blows just didn't reach him. Suddenly, he began to move with some kind of astonishing speed. The man waved his eyes back and forth. She still couldn't catch the movement of her opponent. Yes, what's wrong with this kid? The man swiveled his head in different directions, but only saw bright energy discharges erupting near him. The guy started running around his opponent, creating a strong vortex of air. The man stood in the center and did not understand anything. This kid is going to kick up dust to trick him. This only made the man angry, and he began to fumble around with his eyes to find that annoying little bug. All he has to do is feel his rival's breath, and now he'll have it in his pocket. But no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't feel anything. That kid disappeared? Where did he disappear to? The man opened his eyes and couldn't believe what he saw. His hammer rose up and lit up with blue flames. If you can't find the kid, then he'll destroy everything around him. With all his might, the man swung and struck the hammer straight into the ground. The ground shook like an aspen leaf. Energy shards flew in different directions. The dust cleared, but no one was around. It finally came to him that the kid had escaped. The man was just furious. He had been tricked. This brat pretended to want to fight to the death, but he waited until the moment to run away. This guy's pretty smart. We need to deal with him as soon as possible. The man was furious. Now the primary goal was to deal with the protagonist. His henchmen also saw nothing and only turned their heads in different directions. He ordered one of his servants to go back and gather a group to search. They must by all means find this scum and then let him follow him to the mountain ranges of magical beasts. Soon a group was formed and the others approached the mountain range beginning to explore it centimeter by centimeter. Their master had injured this guy, so he couldn't run far. We had to search the whole place. The acolytes doubted that this kid was able to escape. The master had sent over 30 holy masters and 200 holy masters. This kid has nowhere to go. But none of them saw that there was already a dark silhouette sitting in the tree behind them. The kid was smiling widely. If these freaks want to kill him so badly, then they should be given the opportunity. Now... They only had themselves to blame. The guy quickly and silently jumped down from the tree and like a kite flew at his prey. There was a scream. The men had noticed too late that they were being attacked. Now all they had to do was accept their fate. The masked man looked around. He probably heard them screaming, so someone is under attack. Running a little closer, he saw the mangled bodies of his companions. They lay breathless and covered in blood. He didn't make it in time. The kid was faster, though. Now there were fewer of them left. The screams continued. The man turned his head in different directions, but could not find the source of the sound. This guy was as if invisible. Does he really have such a skill as well? Their master sat on a dais and watched the wounded and dead soldiers being carried from the forest thicket to the river. He was boiling on the spot. His soldiers were just useless. Some brat massacred them all by himself. The man was beyond furious. They couldn't massacre him. And this brat alone somehow manages to defeat dozens of people? It's unthinkable. 
The masked man suggested that this guy seems to be able to completely conceal his presence. Therefore, if you separate the people, he attacks them alone. That was a correct assumption. The enemy stays in the shadows while they're completely hidden. No point in sacrificing your men. It was necessary to retreat. It was unpleasant for the man to admit defeat, but more losses could not be allowed. He turned to his henchmen and in a gruff voice told them to put a bounty on this kid's head. If they can't succeed in catching him, it's let others do it. He just couldn't believe it. This guy's still hiding. There were many flyers with the main character's image hanging near the hole in the wall. Many people were crowded there, discussing the recent events with interest. Was heard rumbling from the conversations. Who is this person? Everyone scrutinized the leaflets on which our hero was depicted. How come the Joe mercenaries and the Tianxiang clan couldn't deal with him begging sign they put up such a big reward for one person? The pictures showed the protagonist in his most horrible hypostases. He was making faces, baring his teeth. These pictures were sure to encourage people to start hunting for him. In the crowd of people, there was one man fully clad in a hoodie. He, too, was scrutinizing the posters along with everyone else. From under the hood, a familiar face with burning green eyes appeared. And this was very interesting. The guy couldn't miss such an interesting order. At this time, the protagonist continued splashing in the water. Finally, he had the opportunity to relax a little and bathe. At least a little he managed to get away from this crazy man, and now he needed to recover his strength. Too bad he couldn't get the satisfaction of the robbery, so he refused to participate. The boy splashed in the water and received indescribable pleasure. Suddenly, a loud splash was heard from behind, and a terrifying monster appeared. It was a huge stone turtle with glowing eyes. It was looking at the guy as its prey and was now ready to devour him. The lad saw it at the last moment and hastened to leap out of the water. It's a level three monster. The guy jumped out of the water. He had to get out of here as fast as possible. He bounced to the side and used his sword to somehow avoid the attack. He was already being hunted. So now he wouldn't have a moment to spare. Someone had disturbed him during such an intimate activity. Now they would pay for it with their lives. An unknown figure jumped up, letting loose a sword to the side. It was probably one of those people who had managed to read the poster after all. He was now being hunted by all the mercenaries in this city. The guy swung around and struck his sword right at the turtle's shell, but the sword just bounced aside. The defense was incredibly strong. The guy gritted his teeth and tried his best to stay on his feet. And how was he going to break through the shell of this monster? He was already being followed. Several people were sitting on tree branches and watching the protagonist. Was he blocking that punch? That's right, medium build, wielding a silver sword, and incredibly fast. People cheered. Smiles began to appear on their faces. He's just one person, he's only 20 years old, and we have many people like this. We should have waited until he was done fighting the third-degree monster. One person in the group suggested that they all attack together. That way they would just destroy it, and then the reward would be in their pocket. 10,000 amethyst coins, and they can take it easy for the rest of their lives. The strange stranger in a hoodie was also there. He was also very eager to get his hands on the reward, and he would do it by all means. The people stopped right in front of him and looked forward in surprise. Who the hell is this guy? What does he want? The stranger threw back his hood a little. Who he is is not important. The only thing that matters is that the money will belong to him. He swung his flaming sword and lunged straight at the mercenaries. He won't let them take his profits. At this time, the protagonist tried his best to fight the turtle, but its shell was so hard that even the strongest blows bounced off it like a wall. The devil! With scales covering his entire body, his defenses were impossible to penetrate. It was just a tickle for the turtle, but the guy was trying to fight as hard as he could. The guy flashed his eyes. He prepared to attack again, even though the turtle was sturdy, but still it must have some weakness. He swung his sword and struck with all his might. A bright beam of purple energy shot straight down onto the shell of the huge turtle. But still, he had to get out of here. The monster was too strong for him. It wouldn't be able to break through his defenses anyway. Guy stepped out from behind a tree and saw a familiar figure. He asked, Why did she gather so many people to deal with him? Do they have some kind of grudge? The figure waved its head in the negative. No, she has no grudge. But there is one but. He owes her money. 
The girl pulled back her hood and the protagonist saw a familiar face. Mu Yoon, what is she doing here? The girl laughed. Is he surprised at me so either a begging sign unexpectedly yes? The protagonist immediately grabbed her neck and started thrashing her head in different directions. Let her speak immediately. Why she gathered so many people to massacre him asked, don't know. The girl wheezed and asked him to let go, or else she would suffocate now. The guy did let her go. The girl coughed and said that the guy is now a very valuable prey. Does he know this forgivable sign the protagonist was surprised, valuable? What's that supposed to mean? The girl continued to cough and said that now both the mercenary corps and most importantly in this city set a reward for his capture. 10,000 amethyst coins. Are there many mercenaries hunting for him? Does he know about it? With so many mercenaries, shouldn't we team up for a robbery? That's better than 20,000 amethyst coins, right? Old rule. He, the magic core, she, the money. How about this? The protagonist put his arm around an old acquaintance and agreed. Well, it's done. It's a deal. The girl immediately threw her hand away and said that no hugging was necessary. The protagonist looked in her direction in surprise. She's just as squeamish. That's when they started working together. Cheetah Mercenary Corps. Intercept and kill four Royal Carabinas. PETA has 67 mercenaries. They were leaping on branches, and no one in the world could catch up to them or match them in strength. A few more days passed at this pace. The rest of the people just looked up at them, and even their eyes could not have caught such swiftness of movement. The mercenary corps bloody cry half a month ago had gratuitously destroyed a village, brutally killing 240 people. The protagonist swung his sword, creating an energy wave that destroyed everything in its path. Mu Yun kept up with him and swung her fiery sword, cutting through the enemies one by one. Each of these bastards is a cursed person. Soon it was over. The protagonists were standing in front of a mountain of corpses. The mercenary caravan was finished. A few more days passed at this pace. Soon Mu Yun was sitting by the fire and was roasting small pieces of meat. In front of her, several people armed to the teeth appeared. They were most likely the same mercenaries. One of them addressed the girl. Did she see any sign of that sword-wielding man? The girl smiled and pointed somewhere to the side. Does he mean that man? The main character appeared from behind the bushes, still holding a few flying balls near him. He said hello to everyone, and people looked fearfully straight at him. Only a few seconds passed as the sword started moving at an incredible speed, chopping the bodies of the mercenaries one by one. Wet crunching and screams of pain were heard. There was nothing humans could do against such speed. Soon at his feet lay the mangled bodies of what had so recently been brave mercenaries, ready to destroy everything in their path. From that moment once more their cooperation was restored. They helped each other in order to survive in this cruel world. Mu Yun rejoiced like a child when he saw coins jingling under his feet. Money seemed to be the only thing that could bring him joy. The first thing he wanted was to get rich. At this time, the protagonist continued to concentrate his magical power. Unlike his companion, his interests were much more lofty. He was not interested in money and fame. All he needs is to protect his loved one's points of the old man. Suddenly, he felt something. Something changed in his body. His strength seemed to increase. After a few seconds, his body overflowed with energy. It was exuding from literally everywhere, filling all available space. The guy sighed heavily. The transition process was complete. He was now a great saint. His companion sat beside him and watched admiringly. Not bad he had become a great saint so quickly. An unusual sight. He was already being followed. A few mercenaries were naturally following them. They could literally smell the amethyst coins. The sight of so much money made them drool. Several people had already prepared to attack from under Tishka. They couldn't let these brazen men get away with their loot. The boy sighed heavily. Again, these cliched phrases that had already grated on his ears. How tired he was. Are mercenaries such monotonous question marks? Mu Yun smiled and said that she was in a good mood today. So let them spare in their lives. Let them throw their spatial belts and run away from here. Is the man angry? John T. looked at them with such a formidable gaze that any man's knees would shake. In front of Joe's mercenary corps, these guys are just trash. 
The guy stood with his back turned to them, his case completely enveloped by magical energy, and in his hand he clutched his weapon tightly. Laughter was heard among the group of mercenaries. Is he afraid? If he's afraid, let him kiss their ass and maybe they'll spare him. The mercenaries mocked the guy, but they didn't know what great danger awaited them yet. There was literally a fraction of a second when a squeak sounded in the air, and a huge energy wave started moving straight towards the group of mercenaries at a great speed. The man looked back in horror, but it was too late to dodge. In his mind, he had already said goodbye to his life as the huge energy wave flew straight at them.